purchased art on Friday or Saturday, today begins your day. You can pick up the art today from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. here at PBS KVIE. We are at 2030 West El Camino Avenue in Sacramento. Be sure to bring a photo ID and a blanket to protect your art for loading into the car. And uh, we're basically at the corner of Five and West El Camino. Now, if you want to preview all of the artwork we're auctioning off today, then visit our website, kvie.org slash art auction. And when you see something that you like, pick up the phone, call 844-KVIE-ART, to place your bid. It is that easy. And you can take home an amazing piece of art and support KVIE, your PBS station, at the same time. It's a win-win. All right, the phone lines are open right now. Let's get started with our first segment of the day. Stay with us. Coming up next is the photography category. Awards juried by Gordon Lazzaroni. This category features a selection of photographs, limited editions, and etchings. View all of the art featured in this year's auction at kvie.org slash art auction. All right, today we begin the auction with the photography category. As we just showed, this portion of the art auction is sponsored by Mansour's Oriental Rug Gallery. And we would like to thank them for their commitment to supporting the arts on PBS KVIE. And now here's an overview of the art that will be up for bid during the next half hour. Let's jump right in. Item 27A is a spouting horn at Cook's Chasm. This is by Carol Clark. The photography measuring 18 by 24. Retail value is $350. Item 27B, if you're hearing this in the other room, come in and look. It's 2001, a miniature odyssey by Martin Christian. This is photography measuring 30 by 20. It was a showstopper at the preview gala. Retail value is $750. Item 27C is Zenya Party by Sue Grau. This is photography measuring 16 by 20. Retail value, 350. Item 27D is Napa Valley Mustard by Grant Kreinberg. Photography measuring 24 by 30. Retail value, 650. Item 27E is Bridal Veil Falls by Alan Ashenfarb. Photography measuring 20 by 30. Retail value is $400. And item 27F is Morning Bloom by George McCamey. This is photography measuring 16 by 20. And the retail value is $325. Okay, let's head over and see the art with our auctioneer and our art expert. Hi there, I'm Christina Salerno, and thank you for joining us for this photography segment. During this break, I am pleased to be joined by Martin Christian. Martin's career spans nearly 30 years as a professional photographer, working as a photojournalist for network affiliates in four different states, and he's had numerous gallery shows in Sacramento. He's won five Emmy Awards for his work as a photographer and has served as an awards juror in the PBS KVIE Art Auction. We're happy to have him back again this year as a contributing artist and as an art expert. Welcome back, Martin. Hey, it's great to to be here, Christina. Awesome. Well, let's get going on our first item. We're looking at item 27A, Spouting Horn at Cook's Chasm by Carol Clark. This is photography measuring 18 by 24 inches and has a retail value of $350. So Carol uh, told me that she loves photographing the patterns that the waves and the ocean creates and wants to incorporate the sky somehow into her images. So she really hit the jackpot here, as you can see, with the sky, this beautiful sky with these kind of stormy, post-stormy, pre-stormy clouds. It's really, really beautiful. This is in Southern Oregon near Yahats, Oregon. That's spelled Y-A-C-H-A-T-S. It's a, it's a strange uh, spelling. It's a beautiful place. It's only five or six hours from Sacramento. So I have a feeling if you're at home and you've vacationed in Southern Oregon somewhere or Central Oregon, this will possibly remind you of that trip. So it's a great piece to take home if you love Southern Oregon. Absolutely. And this is a good reminder that these are original pieces of art. If maybe you spend a lot of time on the coast with your family, what an amazing piece of original artwork that you can take home. All you have to do is call the number on the screen, make a bid. You'll see the current bid on your screen as well. What I love about this, Martin, is all the different colors of blues I see here. I mean, there's so much texture. It's almost like texture to this 
It's fantastic. You can kind of see the green and the emerald color in the ocean. And down here in the bottom, you can see a little green kind of creeping in and, and the, the different contrasts in the ocean, the greens and the sea foam here brings in that orange. There's a lot going on when this photograph, you can kind of hear it. You can just hear yes. the power. This is near uh, Cape Perpetua. Uh, near Cook's Chasm, uh, and this is Thor's Well, which is a well-known area where the, the ocean comes in and spouts water up through these holes, and you never really know what you're gonna get. I have photographed in this area, I took a vacation there, and I'll tell you that there are signs all over the coast about the danger. You just don't oh, know bet. sometimes when the waves are gonna come up, so there is a certain risk associated with this type of photography. Sure, sneaker waves, absolutely. And I love how we were just zooming in on that sea foam, because it's an interesting element that you don't always see in ocean photography. It's mm -hmm. a little bit different, adds a little bit of interest to it as well. I love that piece. All right, well, the number to call is on your screen. The current bid is on your screen as well. What an amazing piece of original artwork, maybe for the nature lover. This would be great in an office, um, living room, hallway, a lot of places you could put this. It's got a great kind of neutral frame around it, really nicely framed. I love this piece. The sand colored frame is a great choice. You can actually imagine going to this part of the world, staying in a hotel and having artwork framed with this type of sand colored frame. It's a great touch. It's double matted, classic white. This is a classic photograph, a great size. You can put this in a small space or a big space. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a great reminder of Oregon and the coast. And you know, it's similar in California in a way, but there are some differences up there in, Cal in uh, Oregon. So it, it takes me back. I loved. Uh, communicating with her because it took me back to my vacation there. Yeah, and a piece like this could take you back to your vacation as well if you have it in your home. Once again, we're looking at item 27A, Spouting Horn at Cook's Chasm by Carol Clark. This is photography measuring 18 by 24 inches and has a retail value of $350. All right, we're going to keep this piece open for you to continue bidding on, and we're going to move on to our next piece. Our next piece is item 27B. It's called 2001, a miniature odyssey, and it's by Martin Christian. This is photography. It's measuring 30 by 20. It has a retail value of $750. Well, we're very lucky to have not only the artist, but the art expert himself right here to talk about his own uh, beautiful image. Tell us about it, Martin. Thank you, Christina. What a joy it is for me to bring this to all of you. Um, this is, an, this is a shout out to Stanley Kubrick in the film 2001 A Space Odyssey. He's a photographer at heart. And so as a young photographer, his films really spoke to me, the powerful images. I, I wanna tell you a story about the creation of this piece. In the middle is the monolith. It, it was given to me as a gift. It, it was called monolith action figure. There's no action, but that's what it was called, the monolith action figure. I knew I wanted to do a miniature recreation, but I didn't know what, I, what to do. So I put it next to my computer and it sat for a year. Wow. I found the Lego Spaceman, the, li the light bulb started to go off, but it wasn't until I found these tiny, tiny little Christmas lights that you put like in your house plant. They're the size of your thumbnail. Oh, wow. And when I found those lights, I thought, aha, I'm gonna do the, re the recreation of the scene where they dig this thing up in the moon. So yeah, it was. Uh, it took me a year to conceptualize it, and then an hour to execute it. I love it. I, it's, to me, what I what I like about it is it's so striking. The dark and the light. I mean, it's so striking. This is something you could see across the room. I mean, tell me about your choice of why it's so black here, then the light. Tell me about that. I knew I wanted to accentuate the Lego character. I chose a narrow depth of field, which is why you can see on camera that the lights are slightly out of focus. The tabletop. That's my granite tabletop in my backyard is slightly out of focus. This is all. All done in the backyard none of this was done in Photoshop so I wanted to make really sure that there were no details in that background which is just a black sheet that's hung on on my fence and uh, and so this was all done in like a classic the classic way in my backyard with these miniatures the real scene I'll tell you Christina in the movie is they find this dug into this underground it's in the moon they dig into the moon oh. I didn't want to dig into my backyard <laughs> So I kind of created the, I, I instead, I took the Liberty and I put it on the moon's surface. So if you love science, miniatures, film, this is, this is the piece for you. And it's printed on metal as well. Can you talk about some of the benefits of that? Yeah, it really rewards contrast and sharpness and clarity. And so I thought that, you know, when I made this image, I thought there's no better way to show this off than to put it on metal. I just love it so much. Uh, taking these is very, very challenging. Uh, there's, there's very, uh, there's a lot of chance for errors when you do something like this. And so um, you have to really think about it and plan things out and, and uh, just make it happen. And so that's what we have. I'll tell you, uh, on that close-up camera we just saw, you can see right here this uh, light. As anyone here, our, Terry, our lighting guy, knows that black absorbs 
light and you can't get detail in black. I had to hit that thing with like four lights just to get this little, this little, your little of column detail. of light there, just to get that. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I know we have a lot of movie lovers in our audience, in our viewers out there. Wow, what an amazing gift or piece to take in your own home. Um, as I said, the, the contrast is stunning. You would put this in an office, a bedroom, living room, um, and it would just draw attention. It's a really good size. As Martin said, this is a 30 by 20. Um, and, and I'll read the card one more time to kind of remind you of where we're at. We're at 27B, it's called 2001, A Miniature Odyssey by Martin Christian. Photography measuring 30 by 20, it's a really good size here with a retail value of $750. You'll see the current bid on your screen. You'll also see the number to call on your screen. As we talked about, printed on metal, really sturdy, good piece that's going to be lasting for quite a while. We're going to keep this piece open for you to continue bidding on it. We're going to move on to our next piece. Our next piece is item 27C. It's called Zinnia Party, and it's by Sue Grau. This is photography. It's measuring 16 by 20 with a retail value of $350. Martin, I love this hummingbird, and it's so perfectly in focus. It's so beautiful. Sue loves uh, photographing birds, and she found this uh, next to a mailbox. I have to share really? this, this story. <laughs> she found a rural mailbox. She shot this from her car and waited and waited for the hummingbird, but the property owner showed up on ATV, and they, <laughs> she says in her words that there were a tense few minutes. Oh. So she went back the next year, shot it again. She went back the next year, and all the flowers in the mailbox were removed. Oh my goodness. So I had to share that story. <laughs> I want to point out, uh, this is a master image uh, displaying uh, what we call, I guess we would call composition. What we really look for in composition. You see the wings here? Yeah. There's no detail behind the wings. It's a perfect red field behind those wings. There's nothing bisecting the wings. Man, she really nailed it there. And the same thing with the tail. There's just a beautiful yellow field behind there. So when you have, you know, branches or sticks or lines bisecting those, uh, those compositional elements of the bird, uh, it can disrupt things. And as a nature photographer, you don't know that's gonna happen, but you take 20 images and then you go back and you look and decide which one is best. And, and that's what I like about this. The head, the wings, and the tail are just, perfect. one is framed in green, one's framed in red, and one is framed in yellow. What a great photograph. This is so, what's so great about talking to an art expert because this brings so much more out to it. I just see the hummingbird and you're pointing out some of these amazing compositional elements that I love. But I mean, wow, it just is so striking, draws your eye right there. This could be for a nature lover, a bird watcher, but honestly, this could go anywhere in your home. Stunning frame. I hope that we kind of get a, a, a chance to pan, there we go, we're gonna pan down a little bit to that frame. I mean, stunning. Everything about this is beautiful. It almost could be a painting. It, it looks almost more like a painting than a, than a, a photograph. What it's, else can you tell us about it? It's literally jumping off the wall at us. It really is. Uh, Sue is a past contributor to the art auction, so thank you, Sue. And uh, our camera, where's that close-up camera? We can go in on the beak. Can you see, Christina, the shadow of the beak through the flower there? Isn't that amazing? Wow, she really captured some amazing details. Um, the number to call is on your screen. You'll see the current bid on your screen as well uh, for this original piece of photography. Uh, as you mentioned, took a lot of patience and skill to get that photograph. And I mean, wow, those colors could really fit in just about any room. Not only do we have this kind of nice, beautiful, natural frame, but wow, those pops of colors. Absolutely. Red, green, orange, yellow. We have all the the colors of the rainbow there. It's a yes. really, really beautiful image. It's one of the best hummingbird photos I've ever seen in the auction after doing this for 20 years. It's really beautiful. Absolutely. All right, well, we're halfway through the break, which means that we're gonna keep this piece open and check in over at the recap station for bidding updates. All right, we're starting off with a great start this morning. Beautiful pieces of photography. I love these three that we're featuring right now. The winning bid is just a phone call away. Will it be you? Well, you have to pick up the phone to make that happen. So please let friends know you're watching the auction and have them join in with you because there's so much wonderful art and it's a great gift as well. Let's go through these three pieces that are live right now. 27A is Sprouting Horn at Cook's Chasm. It is by Carol Clark. Photography measuring 18 by 24. Retail value 350. We have a bid right now for 150 on this piece. We're calling to bring it up to two. Item 27B is 2001, a miniature odyssey by Martin Christian. Photography measuring 30 by 20. Retail is 750. This is a tribute to Stanley Kubrick, uh, a space odyssey. And this one had tons of attention at the preview gala. 
There's a bidding war going on as we speak, so let's have that start rolling. And 27C is Zenya Party by Sue Grau. Photography measuring 16 by 20, retail value $350. And as you heard our art expert say, this is one of the best hummingbird images he's seen in all 20 years of the auction. And that is not said lightly from a five-time Emmy Award winner. Okay, so pick up the phone, call the number on the screen. I was referring to the art expert when I said five-time Emmy Award winner. Uh, pick up the phone, call the number on your screen. 844-KVIE-ART is the way to get involved. And when you do, every single dollar that we raise goes to support right here locally, PBS KVIE, which is your station for information, education, and entertainment. And of course, the arts, which we're bringing all weekend. This is the way to support us right now, and you get something beautiful in return for you or someone else. I know, let's run through these again, 27A, because we do have bidding wars going on on these pieces. Lots of questions I hear. This is Spouting Horn at Cook's Chasm. Photography measuring 18 by 24, retail value 350. Um, this is a bid right now of 150, and we're looking to bring this up. Item 27B is 2001, a miniature odyssey by Martin Christian. Photography measuring 30 by 20. Retail value $750. Right now we have a bid for $300. And this is, again, a tribute to Stanley Kubrick and a space, a space story. I'm sorry, a space odyssey, rather. Martin, beautiful image. And 27C is Zinnia Party by Sue Grau. Photography measuring 16 by 20. Retails for $350. We have a bid for $200 right now. And now we have one, I believe, yep. 250, that's great, they're just starting to climb up. Okay, let's head back for the art for more with Martin and Christina and more art auction. All it takes is a quick call to the number on your screen and you can have some amazing artwork in your home or office to enjoy. All right, we are back with the second half of the category, continuing with item 27D. It's called Napa Valley Mustard, and it's by Grant Kreinberg. This is photography. It's measuring 24 by 30 inches and has a retail price of $650. Martin, take it away. This is a really beautiful image of a well-known cover crop in Napa Valley that, you know, it doesn't happen every year because of our drought, but I have a feeling the last, uh, this year, it, it probably bloomed uh, quite significantly. Grant lives in, near Napa, in between Fairfield and Napa, and those hills maybe near uh, Mancus Corner and Gordon Valley. It's a beautiful, beautiful part of Northern California. And so he revisits this mustard every year to try and get a better shot every year. And, and he was lucky enough to have a big bloom. I'll tell you that uh, there are a couple things going on here. We have a big metal print. You know, 10 years ago, we may have had one metal print. Now it seems like our photography categories are like two thirds metal. So wow. photographers have really embraced, you know, doing away with the mats and the paper and having these big, bold metal prints. I love the size. It's not quite square. It's 24 by 30. Uh, it's close, and so that's a great size for um, a big space or a smaller space. So it's a, it's one of my favorite sizes, right there around 30 inches. This is a good one. It could definitely take up space on a wall. It could really be the dominant focal point on a wall. What a great piece for um, maybe hikers. Who've, this is something you could definitely see hiking through the hills. Um, you've driven through Napa. You've, I mean, it's really iconic California. You see, you see this. You think agriculture. You think California and Napa. What an amazing piece of original artwork that you can have in your home. All you have to do is call the number on your screen. You'll see the current bid on your screen as well. And Martin, I got to say, I love the colors in this because we kind of go for some really bold blues and some bold yellows. So it does stand out when you're across the room, you really do see those colors. Yeah, it's kind of side lit a little, a little bit. You can tell in the petals that uh, the sun is coming in here from the left side and hitting those petals. But then whatever that is in the background, the mountains maybe, uh, they're blue. So there's no sunlight hitting those. So this mm -hmm. is obviously in the morning or in the evening. He, he got the good color, the good light. How else would you get those blues? So it's just a great contrast. As your eye goes to the top of the frame, you you leave the green and the yellows behind and you, and you enter the blue and even some uh, purple here in the upper left-hand corner. There's a lot of good natural colors occurring here. And can you talk a little bit about the composition too because we're seeing this kind of pop out and we've got a couple different layers here. I mean, can you talk a little bit about that? Load up the field so he's isolating this stalk if that's what you refer to it as, a stalk of mustard. And, and uh, I mean, if you think about it, the background is really, really busy with all of the, mm -hmm. the mustard behind it. So. 
Uh, he has, he's, there's a lot of uh, room for error there because when you're shooting like this, uh, if the mustard moves a little bit in the wind, it's going to be blurry. So you've got to be very patient and you've got to have a good sense of timing. And, and if you're going to photograph uh, flowers like this, uh, you have to do so on a still day. If there was any wind at all, he would not be able to take this photograph. So congratulations, Grant, for all that patience. A reminder to our viewers, we're looking at item 27D. It's called Napa Valley Mustard by Grant Kreinberg. It's photography measuring 24 by 30, that really good size that Martin was talking about, really could stand out on a wall, and it has a retail value of $650. You will see the current bid on your screen, as well as the number to call and get it involved in the bidding. Bidding is super fun. We've got a phone bank standing by to take your bids and get Get involved um, once again Napa Valley mustard we're gonna keep this piece open for you to continue bidding on and we're gonna move on to our next piece our next piece is item 27 e it's called Bridal Veil Falls by Alan Ashenfarb. This is photography. It's measuring 20 by 30 with a retail value of $400. Bridal Veil Falls, Martin, a place that's near and dear to so many viewers' hearts. What can you tell us about it? It's right on Route 50. It's difficult to photograph because it is right on Route 50. And so you have to pull over and, and navigate that. Grant says that he was having a, um, a day in Apple Hill and thought, you know, I haven't photographed Bridal Veil Falls and, and went up there and boy, look at the color. Um, he's got a bunch of different color temperatures going on. If you look at the sky, wow. the orange and the blue in the sky, that's kind of the true color that the camera wants. And so the greens uh, that are sunlit here in the foreground, really good color, but that uh, by, by the camera bouncing on the sky it brings out those purples in those rocks because the rocks really aren't purple. It's just the camera sort of is tricked because of all that orange and it, it adjusts its color temperature. It's so beautiful. There's, a, there's just a lot going on with this photograph. I'm, I'm really glad that it, it's here this year. I haven't seen a lot of photographs of Bridal Veil Falls in, in the auction and Grant really really did uh, knock this one out of the park. Yeah, those those blues and those purples and those oranges. It's rare to see so many colors at once it like this too. I also want to bring attention to it's a really narrow piece. So this would this would be something great in maybe a hallway um, bedroom. I mean, where would you place a piece like this in your home? You know, slowly over time, I've fallen in love with verticals. For that reason, they're kind of easier to place when you have smaller walls. So I would pick uh, maybe a smaller wall somewhere uh, in terms of width and, and you could uh, it would fill up that area. Uh, I will say that when you're photographing these, uh, the mist from the water can go directly into your camera lens. So you're constantly, you know, wiping off your camera lens to get that image. But man, he's got like the last little bit of sunlight going over it. So he must have told his, his whoever he was in Apple Hill with, he timed his departure of Ap at Apple Hill perfectly because he got here for the very last light of the day. Oh, stunning. Absolutely. We're looking at item um, 27E. It's called Bridal Veil Falls by Alan Ashenfarb. It's photography measuring 20 by 30. That really nice size that Martin and I were just talking about with a retail value of $400. All you have to do is call the number on your screen to get involved. You'll also see the current bid on your screen. Um, and just a reminder, these pieces go really quick, especially one like this with such bold colors and iconic location. You really don't have very much time to get involved in the bidding. So if this is something you're interested in having in your home and it can be in your home in a matter of hours or days, then get involved now. Call the number on your screen, place a bid. It's really fun. And just a reminder that all of this goes to support the mission of PBS KVIE and the programming that you love from the dramas to the kids programs to the local shows. Final thoughts, Martin. This is uh Alan is a past contributor to the art auction, so thank you, Alan. But not only that, he's a past award winner. So this is a master photographer. Look, how many of you have driven to Lake Tahoe? You've driven right by this and, and maybe grabbed a picture with your phone. So if you want a memory of that drive, this is a good one. Absolutely. We're going to keep this piece open for you to continue to bid on, and we're going to move on to our next piece. Our next piece is item 27F. It's called Morning Bloom by George McAmey. This is photography measuring 16 by 20 with a retail value of $325. All right, Martin, what can you tell us about this piece? George McAmey, this is his Morning Bloom and um, locals might recognize that this is from 
the William Land Park Lily, um, I'm sorry, William Land Park Lotus Lily Pond. Oh, neat. And I don't think it bloomed. It's been a couple years, I think, since it, it's bloomed because of the drought conditions. But Rob Stewart and I did a segment here for KVIE. It's just an incredible, incredible place. I like to tell uh, photographers when they're photographing flowers to sometimes leave the overall flower behind and get in there as close as you can. You'll be surprised with some of the compositions that you can find. I once took a photograph of, I can't remember the kind of a flower, but inside it ended up looking like a poodle face. And, huh. so, and so it was my, my image was How called cool. poodle face. So when you're out there shooting um, flowers, take some of the flower, but then get in there, get in there in the middle and you never really know what you're gonna see. This is the seed pod. And he pointed out that uh, these little seed pods are, the seeds are popping up and he loved the shadows that these seeds created, which is so cool. Instead of being just a flat surface there, the light came in at the perfect angle. What a beautiful image. I love the mat. It has rounded edges on the mat, which is very, very unique. And uh, oh, kind, yeah. of a, kind of a balsa wood finish on the mat. It's very beautiful, very pleasing. It's a very comfortable piece. It's calming. Just, just calming. It just makes me want to sit down and just relax. It, it does. And you know, honestly, when I first saw this, I thought it was a painting. I mean, it almost has that quality too. to it. it mm -hmm. It's not even, doesn't even look like photography. It looks like a gorgeous painting. And I love the history, the, the land park, a place that all of us know and love here in Sacramento. Um, what a beautiful piece. I could picture this easily in a kitchen, maybe above a dining table, a bedroom. Um, those lovely soft purples really evoke a calming sense in me. What kind of kind of mood does this set for you, Martin? The, well, it just makes me want to really relax and yes. appreciate nature and sit out on my patio with a cup of coffee and just really think about nothing. He chose Morning Bloom because that's when he was there. George is a past a a uh, a, a, a I have a a as a uh, shortcut here past art auction contributor here and um, he is a jurors and curators award winner in the past for the art auction. So this is a master photographer who's decorated here in Sacramento. So this would be a great piece to have in your home. The, Absolutely. Si the size 16 by 20, it's one of my favorite sizes. You can put this anywhere. Right, and we wanna thank our artists for donating those pieces. Once again, these are original pieces of artwork donated by the artists to support the mission of PBS KVIE. Again, this is item 27F, Morning Bloom. Gorgeous flower with George McCamey. Uh, photography measuring 16 by 20 with a retail value of $325. You will see the current bid on your screen as well as the number to call as well. All right, well, we are nearing the end of this break, which means that now is your last opportunity to bid on the art featured in this half an hour. So get involved. Let's head back over to the recap station for an update. All right, thank you so much, Christina. An exciting half hour. The phones are ringing and there's so much excitement in here. We have bidding wars on all the almost all of the pieces. It's great. 27D Napa Valley Mustard by Grant Kreinberg. This is photography measuring 24 by 30, a gorgeous photograph. This is retailing for 650 right now. And we are looking for a bid right now, or we have a bid rather. Uh, so call in right now the number on your screen to get involved. Item 27E is Bridal Veil Falls by Alan Ashenfarb. Photography measuring 20 by 30. Right now we're at 250 for the retailing piece of $400. And 27F is Morning Bloom by George McCamey. This is photography measuring 16 by 20. The retail value is $325. We're at a bid right now of $170. So as these pieces come on air and they start to move, there's always a jump up in each piece and people just boom, they connect with it and they start calling in. If that's you, if you're on the fence, make sure you don't stay long because these pieces move very fast. As well as let me run through all of these in one minute. 27A is uh, spouting horn at Cook's Chasm. Bell ringer, yes, fantastic job. Uh, this is right now at $500. It is still open. 27B is 2001 a miniature Odyssey by Martin Christian. We have a bidding war with multiple callers right now. This is up to $400 for this beautiful one-of-a-kind creation. 27C is Zenya Party by Sue Growl. Another bell ringer, photography measuring 16 by 20. We're at 650 for this piece. 27D is Napa Valley Mustard. We need an opening bid on this for one 
$1,500. It could be yours. Also, 27E Bridal Veil Falls by Alan Ashenfarb. Uh, we have $400 as the value from the artist. It's at $250 right now. And 27F is Morning Bloom by George McCamey. This is a $325 value, $175 bid right now. Okay, stay with us. There's more art coming up in the next half hour of the PBS KVIE Art Auction. How many people see what I see? In the symbolic patterns, I see the flowing water of the Tigris. In the handwoven knots, I see an artist's fingers play a loom like a harp. Mansour's Oriental Rug Gallery, celebrating over 40 years. With locations in Roseville and Sacramento. For a beautiful home in a beautiful world. PBS KVIE is committed to the visual and performing arts through national productions like All Creatures Great and Small on Masterpiece, to our local productions like KVIE Art Showcase, and through the PBS KVIE Gallery, exhibiting award-winning art auction artists and California masters. PBS KVIE's commitment to the arts stays strong because of your participation as a donor and art buyer. Thank you for being a part of the PBS KVIE Art Auction and for making art a part of your home today. Coming up next is the photography category. Awards juried by Gordon Lazzaroni. This category features a selection of photographs, limited editions, and etchings. View all of the art featured in this year's auction at kvie.org slash art auction. Hello, I'm Rob Stewart. We're back for another round of photography. And now here's an overview of the art that'll be up for bid during this next half hour. It's an exciting half hour. 28A is Buena Vista Social Club. This is by Michael Solomon. Photography measuring 30 by 30, a fun piece at $650. We have a bid already for 260. 28B is Monterey Fisherman's Wharf by Jeffrey Rolleston. This is photography measuring 16 by 20, retail value $500. Item 28C is Firehole, Spring Yellowstone National Park by Darby Hayes. Photography measuring 30 by 56. That also looks like bump as hell. Uh, this is retail valued at $800. 28D is Delicate Water Lily by Maggie McGurk. Photography measuring 16 by 20, retail value 325. Item 28E is Emergence by David Nassiter. Photography measuring 20 by 26, a retail at $400 on this piece. And 28F to round out the half hour, Coconut Palms, Cancun, Mexico. This is by Kenneth Bittencourt. Photography measuring 18 by 23 with a retail of 150. Now let's head over to see the art with our auctioneer and our art expert. Hi there, I'm Christina Salerno and welcome back for another round of amazing photography from regional artists. I'm here once again with art expert Martin Christian to discuss the artwork this half an hour. Let's get started with item 28A. Item 28A is called Buena Vista Social Club and it's by Michael Solomon. This is photography. It's measuring 30 by 30 with a retail value of $650. Okay, Martin, take it away. What can you tell us about it? I'm so happy we have some black and white photo photojournalism to talk about, Absolutely. Christina. This is really great. This is called uh, Buena Vista Social Club by Michael Solomon and Michael's uh, father, Russ Solomon, the founder of Tower Records. He's also an art lover and a music lover. And so Michael says that Russ would take him to jazz clubs as they were traveling around the country. And so I have no doubt that that love of music and uh, music was transferred to his son. And Michael says he's a street photographer. He emphasize, emphasizes musicians. And so I, when I look at this piece, I just want to kind of imagine what's happening. Yes. Uh, it looks like two musicians are possibly even sharing one instrument. It's hard for me to, to really understand. But this was a popular film that was out about 20 years ago, one of a social club from Cuba, musicians from Cuba. And then they went and traveled the country as a result. And I have no doubt that Russ and Michael went to see this show. It's a great piece, a nice big square image. It's a classic, classic photograph. It really is. And I love, as we're zooming in on their facial expressions, there's just so much to look at. You have the instrument peeking out, but also their facial expressions are so bold. Um, there's a lot to look at in this photograph. 
Um, I, I really love that. Right, so imagine having fun in your home, having a dinner party, or you have a fun room with some music playing. Boy, this would really fit in that space. I, I, it makes me want to go home and dig up that album. I actually have that album, the Buena Vista Social Club. And it's a fun, fun piece. Who, Absolutely. Who knows what was really going on here with their stage show? Something really, really exciting, that's for sure. Yeah, he really caught a moment. I mean, this is a moment in time right there, which I absolutely love. And Martin's right. If you are a music lover, you play guitar, you love uh, this era of music, what a great piece to have in your home, maybe right there next to your guitar. Um, as you said, something that could be a conversation piece that you could talk about. Um, really good size, um, that 30 by 30 size, big, bold, black and white, great image, great action. I mean, it's just the action in this piece. He really caught that moment. It looks like from that photo, that uh, camera shot right there, it's a 12 string guitar. So maybe it takes two of them to play a 12 string guitar. I don't he's know. He's playing it behind his back. It's really wild. <laughs> I have to ask my friend, the guitar player, what is going on here? It's yeah. so cool. Our musicians out there will definitely have some ideas about that. Again, we're looking at item 28A. It's Buena Vista Social Club by Michael Solomon. Photography measuring 30 by 30 with a retail value of $650. You will see the number to call on your screen as well as the current bid on your screen. Martin, final thoughts. Well, it is a legacy family in Sacramento, the Solomon family. If you want to own a piece of artwork from a family that means so much to us in Sacramento, this is your chance. If you're a music lover or you just have a fun room maybe that you want to have a fun piece, this is the piece for you. Absolutely. We're going to keep it open for you to continue bidding on and we're going to move on to our next piece. Our next piece is item 28A, I'm sorry, 28B. It's called Monterey Fisherman's Wharf by Jeffrey Rawlson. This is photography. It's measuring 16 by 20 with a retail value of $500. Monterey Fisherman's Wharf, a place that we all know and love. And wow, what a great moment in time this photographer captured. What, what can you tell us about it, Martin? Well, the first thing you notice are the, are the crepuscular rays here from the sun. It's not often that we point our cameras directly into the sun, because if you do so, you're gonna uh, sacrifice your foreground. So you're gonna have a difficult time getting details right here because your camera is gonna overcompensate and close down to get some details in the sun. Wow. So uh, what a commitment by the photography, photographer here who obviously knows what they're doing because uh, it's, it's really difficult to shoot into the sun and then get details in your foreground. It's a nice modest size, the 16 by 20, so it can fit anywhere. If there's one place that uh, Sacramentans like to go, it's Monterey. So I have a feeling there are lots of people at home thinking about their last trip to Monterey right now. This would be a good way to, re to remember remember that trip. Absolutely. It's interesting because your eye goes straight to that sunlight. That's, exact, that's immediately where I went to was that little sun, sunset probably actually. But then, wow, how much more detail there is in the foreground. There's so many interesting elements. Can you talk about the composition a little bit? Because we also have this tree. We've got the sun. We've got the boats. I mean, talk about what the photographer was doing here. Yeah, so something I learned in college that has stuck with me to this day is that we can all become landscape photographers, but can you be a landscape photographer? photographer and have something in your foreground and what timing with that camera shot right there. Wow. So when you go out and take a picture of a big giant mountain range, can you incorporate something into the foreground? That's kind of what takes things to the next level. And that's what that tree does. That tree takes this photograph to the next level rather than just taking maybe 10 steps forward and getting a shot of that harbor. This photographer takes 10 step back and gets a shot of a tree in the foreground. So a uh, good thing it wasn't windy or you would have a tree blowing around and it would be a little bit blurry. So I love it. A lot it's of almost patience. Like a natural frame. Yeah, a lot of patience. It makes me hungry. I love having lunch in Monterey. It's, I have a lot of great memories in, in uh, Monterey, that's for sure. A reminder to our viewers, this is item 28B, Monterey Fisherman's Wharf by Jeffrey Rawlinson. Photography measuring 16 by 20 with a retail value of $500. You'll see the number to call on your screen as well as the current bid. Um, as we've both said, this is a place that I know a lot of people in this region go to visit. Um, it, maybe you've taken a vacation there. What an amazing piece of original artwork that you can have to either remind you of those times. Good, great in an office, in a bedroom, hallway, so many places you can put this piece, as Martin said, a 16 by 20. Martin, 30 seconds. If you want to put, if you have an area on your wall where you want multiple pieces of art, you've got the double white mat frame, the double white mat and a black frame, it'll go with anything. So you could have a piece of art next to it that's red and yellow and green, and it's all going to go just fine with it. It's small enough to accomplish that. What a great memory of a trip to Monterey. Absolutely. All right. Well, we're going to keep this beautiful piece open for you to continue to bid on, and we're going to move on to our next piece. 
Our next piece is item 28C. It's called Firehole Spring Yellowstone National Park. And it's by Darby Hayes. This is photography measuring 30 by 56 with a retail value of $800. Wow, I have to step back even further because this is such a big, beautiful, bold piece. Wow, I mean, look at how look at how large this piece is. It really stands out, Martin. Whoa, I just want to say it. This photograph is 30 by 56. Wow. I don't get to say that every day. <laughs> so, man, when you have something this big, you better have your technique. You better have everything sharp, everything crisp. Your print has to be fantastic. Your colors have to be fantastic because it's so big. Any errors or anything like that are accentuated. So uh, we thank you, Darby, for giving us such a big piece. Darby revisits Yellowstone every year, and Apparently this is next to um, a larger, um, let me see if I can find it, Firehole Spring. Uh, it's next to Great Fountain Geyser and he said when he went there it was full of people. So they said well let's go over to this smaller neighbor, neighbor Firehole Spring. And so that's what this is and Yellowstone is known for its skies and so uh, look at all those clouds that we have there, boy. That just really balances off the photo, balances out the photograph. Having all this interesting information in the lower half of the photograph is then balanced out by these dark clouds on the on the top of the photograph. He really hit a home run with this one. I love how you mentioned that because there really is something to look at everywhere in this photograph. I mean, you've got the oranges, the water, the, the clouds, the trees. I mean, there is there is something interesting happening everywhere, Martin. It really reminds me of going hiking in areas where you come across something like this. A lot of photographs, I say it's a, a nose photograph where you want to stick your nose up to it and see what's there. Mm -hmm. This one, it's actually the opposite. You might want to step back from this one to really appreciate it. It's almost like, you know, if you, if you put your head in front of it, it's going to be like a green screen for your selfie photograph, you know, and you tell your friends that you're actually there. It's so big and so beautiful. I love this piece. It really is. And once again, we're looking at item 28C, Firehole Spring, Yellow National, uh, Yellowstone National Park by Darby Hayes. Photography measuring 30 by 56, retail value of $800. Something like this. I mean, this could go in, you know, a, a retail office. I mean, maybe you're a small business owner and you have a, a store. I mean, wow, this, this is such a large beautiful bold piece it could also go in your home if you have some maybe tall ceilings lots of space wow that would just draw your eye right there and not only that but be an amazing conversation starter correct Abs Martin? yeah absolutely it's big enough to do all those things even like in your lobby over the receptionist mm -hmm. area to really dominate an area i, I want to say it's also on canvas it's not every day that you see a canvas print this big canvas sometimes can have kind of a soft feel to it. So we love canvas prints with people and children and animals and soft things. So it's not every day that you see a large format uh, photograph printed on canvas like this. And so you can see right there on the camera shot, the detail that you have. You only see colors like this, by the way, in these hot springs. So uh, sulfur and all of the things that come up out of the earth. This is the only place that you see colors like that. So it's really amazing. Really I, amazing I, piece. And it can be yours. All you have to do is call the number on your screen, get involved in bidding. You'll see the current bid on your screen as well. All right. Well, we're halfway through this break, which means we're going to keep this large, beautiful piece open for you to continue bidding and check in over at the recap station for bidding updates while you call in and place your bids. All right. Let's head over there. Okay, thank you so much, Christina. All it takes is a call and a bid, and a piece of art can be in your home today. Here's a recap of the pieces we have looked at so far in this half hour. We are going to start off with 28A Buena Vista Social Club by Michael Solomon. This is an amazing photograph, photography measuring 30 by 30, retail value $600. And $50. We're looking for an opening bid right now of $150 for this highly collected photographer, Michael Solomon, who is the late Russell Solomon's son. Russ was a great man, Tower Records founder. Item 28B, Monterey Fisherman's Wharf by Jeffrey Rawlinson. Photography measuring 16 by 20. Retail value is $500. Item 28C is Firehole Spring Yellowstone National Park by Darby Hayes. We have a bid right now for $300. Retail value is $800. And again, these pieces that are retail priced, that comes from the artist. The artist says, this is what I believe this piece would sell for if I were to sell it in a gallery. 
Then they give it to us and we get to sell it to you and all of the proceeds go to PBS KVIE, but only if you pick up the phone and call the number on your screen right now. And when you do, you'll be able to speak with a friendly volunteer who's standing by to walk you through the process. It is a lot of fun, I have to tell you. And when you call in, you will be calling in your support to PBS KVIE, your region's storyteller. Okay, so let's zip through these pieces again. 28A, Buena Vista Social Club by Michael Solomon, a gorgeous piece of art. Photography measuring 30 by 30. We're looking for an opening bid of $150. Retail value is 650. Item 28B, Monterey Fisherman's Wharf by Jeffrey Rawlinson. This is a photograph measuring 16 by 20. Uh, photography valued at $500, and we have a bid for $275 now. We have a bidding war going on for this one. 28C is Firehole Spring, Yellowstone National Park by Darby Hayes. Photography measuring 30 by 56. Retail value is $800, and we're at $300 right now, and so we want to see these numbers climbing and climbing. We also uh, have an update on 28B, by the way, that just went up to 300. So the numbers are climbing as we sit on each piece, but I'm telling you, we only stay on these pieces for just a few minutes. This is a great way to get involved in the arts early on here in the morning. Call your friends, have them join in with you. Pick up the number on the screen right now, dial that number, and you'll be able to take home a piece of art right now because our art pickup is open, okay? Let's see some more photography with Christina and Martin. There are so many amazing works available for you this weekend. And when you see what you want, don't hesitate as the artwork sells so quickly. All right, well, we are back with the second half of this photography break. Up next is item 28D, Delicate Water Lily, and it's by Maggie McGurk. This is photography. It's measuring 16 by 20, and it has a retail price of $325. Martin, when I first saw this one, I thought it almost looked like a painting. Yeah, Maggie does say that she's a mixed media artist and the closer you get into this, you can kind of see the softness that it's a photograph that it looks like that she's painted on. So it's really, really beautiful. It, it's 16 by 20, but for some reason it gives off that square vibe. So it's a great, great uh, image that would just fit anywhere. Um, Maggie is a longtime contributor to the art auction. So thank you, Maggie. And in fact, uh, she's told me that years ago, she used to photograph for KVI. She photographed our grand opening uh, oh, wow. on the Garden Highway location. So she's a longtime friend of KVI, PBS KVI. So thank you so much, Maggie. Thank you for contributing. Really lovely soft pinks and yellows and greens. Very calming in sense I get when I look at this. What kind of feelings does this evoke in you as well, Martin? It's just, a, it's a really gentle, friendly, yes. loving piece. I love when flowers are isolated like this, where you just have one flower and the petals almost hit the edge on two of the edges. You can see on left and right are perfectly balanced and then two of the edges uh, top and bottom are also perfectly balanced. So, and they wrap around as well. Yeah, it's a, it's a gallery wrap canvas, so um, you can kind of view it from all directions. It's a beautiful piece, yellows and pinks and greens. Uh, again, we talked about an earlier piece when you zoom in, on flowers, you kind of see different things. It's almost like there's an octopus or something or a starfish in the center. Uh, flowers are, are pretty famous for that. When you get deep inside of them, you can kind of see whatever it is that you think you see inside of a flower. So get in there and look inside of a flower and see what you see. A really lovely size, as you mentioned, something like this could go in a bedroom, it could go in a hallway, it could go in an office, somewhere where you just really want to soften up, add some real gentleness to your to your space, a really personal feeling. I love those colors. I love those yellows and those pinks. Um, this is item 28D. It's called Delicate Water Lily by Maggie McGurk. Photography measuring 16 by 20 with a retail value of $325. You'll see the number to call on your screen. You'll also see the current bid on your screen. And as you mentioned, longtime time contributed to KVIE Art Auction. Just a reminder, all of the artwork that you see is donated by artists to support the mission of PBS KVIE, to support the programs you love, the dramas, the local programs, the kids programs, and by participating in the KVIE Art Auction, you are going to support that mission as well. Martin, additional thoughts about this really lovely piece? I'm just mesmerized by the camera work. I love, personally, my own photography. I always shoot with a low f-stop. I want isolation. That's a big part of what I want to do. And so as you see, you you look off to the left, you know, the petal, the petals of the flower are, are blur, they're uh, 
they're isolated from the blurry background, but so is the color. There's no pink or yellow in the surrounding areas, just green. So not, not only is the flower isolated, but the colors are isolated as well. So that really makes it stand out that you just have a solid green and blue in the background. Great job, Maggie. Great job, Maggie. We appreciate it. All right, well, we're going to keep this beautiful piece open for you to continue bidding on, and we're going to move on to our next piece. Our next piece is item 28E. It's called Emergence, and it's by David Nassiter. This is photography, and it's measuring 20 by 26. It has a retail value of $400. Now, this was interesting. You had to tell me what this image was, Martin. So go ahead and share with our viewers. What are we looking at here? So this is a sunflower bud, and sunflowers are pretty big. So um, it, for some reason, the way that it's shot, uh, the narrow depth of field, it really makes me think that this is a small flower bud, but it's not, it's a sunflower, so it's pretty big. It's a large flower. Yeah. I wanted to share something that David uh, shared on his um, information. He, um, he's been working on, uh, let's see, this is part of my Living Between the Darkness and the Light project as he explores the influence of my battles with depression in my photography. So he found this sunflower and he thought that it spoke to him in terms of coming out of the darkness. So this, uh, he, it sounds like this is something about, it reminds him of not just depression, Christina, but maybe coming out of it and moving towards the light. And so he took the time to share that with us. And so I wanted to share that with all of you. And that's the kind of stuff I love about photography that I believe that if you look through your camera long enough that it's yourself that you see reflected back over time because you end up shooting things that you want that speak to you. And so that's how you can kind of identify with the photographers. Uh, over time, you end up kind of seeing yourself. And, and I think David has done that here. It's a beautiful, beautiful photograph. There's so much going on. Technically, I could talk about this for hours, the narrow depth of field. You can see the, the hairs on the forward uh, petals here. What a great, great image. It's really a hopeful message. Mm -hmm. I mean, a really positive message, and I'm glad that you shared that with our viewers. I also want to point out it's, it's black and white, and that's not something that we always see in photography as well. So really stunning and lots of contrast in this piece as well. Um, Martin, where would you put a piece like this in your home? I would want this to dominate the wall. Wherever I put it, I'd want this to be the focal point. Uh, knowing the story behind it, I'd want to share that with my guests for Absolutely. sure. And you know, you mentioned the black and white and black and white photography. We're trying to, we're trying to lose as much gray as possible. Have blacks and whites. And boy, he's done that here. Lots of blacks, lots and whites. Not too much gray. So all of that contrast just brings you in. And this is a, this is an image that just draws me in, and I want to get my nose up really, really close to. Absolutely. We're looking at item 28E. It's called Emergence. And now that title has some significance now that you've told me that, that backstory, Martin. And it's by David Nassiter. It's photography measuring 20 by 26. Really lovely size with a retail value of $400. You can see the current bid on your screen. You can also see the number to call in and place a bid. If this is one of those pieces, and you know, I honestly, photography can be so personal. Artwork can be so personal. And this is a piece that I feel like really spoke to the artist, but it also probably speaks to our viewers out there as well, Martin. I really want to uh, thank David for sharing that story. The artwork that's in my home, I have a connection with the artist. That's what's meaningful to me, having those backstories. So David, thank you very much for sharing that story. Absolutely. We're going to keep this piece open for you to continue bidding on, and we're going to go ahead and move on to our next piece. Our next piece is item 28F. It's called Coconut Palms Cancun, Mexico, and it's by Keth Kenneth Bittencourt. This is photography. It's measuring <clears throat> 18 by 23. It has a retail value of $150. Well, Martin, I'll tell you, when I look at this, I want to be out there in the sunshine underneath uh -huh. those palm trees immediately. <laughs> what, is this, what does this say to you? This is like an album cover of a, it is. Of a, a <laughs> band from the 70s or something. It's so awesome. He sent me the original photograph and it had a blue sky. So I love, oh, wow. I love the fact that he blew out the background and created this white. And what I like to say is he removed details. He removed details in the sky that makes those palm trees stand out. And I have to say, Christina, if the palm trees, if you notice, they are, they're high left and low right. So they go diagonally down. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. It would be a completely different composition if that was not the case. So it's kind of cool that, uh, you know, you have like the mom and the dad on the left and they go down the little, ch little children to the right. It reminds me of those stickers on the back of the SUV, you know, where you have the stick figures of the family. It's really, really cool. Great piece. I love the fact that he's made that background white. The palm trees really jump off the, off the canvas. Absolutely. It's kind of got a mid-century modern feel. It's kind of a modern feel that would really go, this would be a really cool piece to have in your home. Nicely framed, it kind of, it almost pops out of the frame, which is really interesting. So you're just, wow, you're just drawn straight to that piece of art. Um, Martin, and I love that you talked about those whites and the different colors in here. Can you kind of talk a little bit about that, the, the colors? You, uh, I didn't, I forgot to mention, it's a floating canvas, so yep. it has that wood frame on the outside. So you're right, our lighting director, Carrie, has lit this, yeah, and, and it's just like jumping off the screen. Yeah. Look at that. Uh, it's just a really, really beautiful image. And the thing is, I don't know where this was taken. There are palm trees. It could be Sacramento. It could be Los Angeles. It could be San Diego. What a great, oh, I'm sorry. No, it's, it's, it's Cancun, in Cancun Palms, Cancun, I'm, I'm Mexico. I'm so uh, distracted. I forgot <laughs> about the title. So uh, those of us in California that vacation in Mexico, here you go. Here's your reminder of that trip. If you have some family that go to Mexico all the time, this is a great gift. Yeah, and in those cold winter months, what an amazing piece that you can have and, and remind you of those amazing <laughs> times. The number to call is on your screen. You'll also see the current bid on your screen. We're looking at item 28F, Coconut Palms, Cancun, Mexico, by Kenneth Bittencourt, photography measuring 18 by 23 in that really cool frame with a retail value of $150. Final thoughts, Martin. You know, we shouldn't be afraid to blow things out, make them super hot. The terms that we use to have these whites just really, really, really hot. And look what happens when you do that. You remove all that detail and these palm trees really stand out. Absolutely. That's kind of an interesting uh, photography element that you mentioned. I'm so glad you shared that with our viewers. Um, once more, call the number on your screen, get involved in bidding. You'll see the current bid on your screen as well. All right. Well, we're nearing the end of this break, which means that now is your final opportunity to bid on the art featured in this half an hour. A big thank you to our art expert, Martin Christian, for sharing his expertise in photography. Now let's check in over at the recap station for an update on bidding activity. Okay, thank you both. Some great artwork awaits you in this break. And if you have just a few minutes right now, you better take advantage of them because these pieces are gonna be gone just like that. Let's take a look at the pieces that are open right now for your bids. We're gonna start with 28D, Delicate Water Lily by Maggie McGurk. Photography measuring 16 by 20, a retail of $325. Right now we have a bid of 100 and we have several people on the phone. Pick up the phone, call the number on the screen and get involved in the auction. 28E, do you love this emergence? This is by David Nassiter. Photography measuring 20 by 26, retails at $400. We've got a bid right now for 150. And 28F is Coconut Palms in Cancun, Mexico by Kenneth Bittencourt. Photography measuring 18 by 23, retail value 150. We've got a bid right now for $50. So when you call PBS KVIE, you're getting involved in the auction. And these pieces can be in your home today because I just walked outside. There are already people here picking up their art. It's open till five o'clock, the art auction pickup as well as the next couple of days. We want bell ringers. And frankly, when we say we want bell ringers, it's because the artist told us exactly, this is how much this piece is worth. This is how much I could make for it, but I'm gonna give it to PBS KVIE to sell to you so that all the proceeds can go to this television station, your nonprofit television station. So all of the items that are open right now, we're gonna go through them for you in this half hour. Let's start at 28A, Buena Vista Social Club by Michael Solomon. Photography, measuring 30 by 30, retails for $650. This is a highly collected photographer. We have a bid right now for $200 and a couple of people on the phone for that one. Item 28B is Monterey Fisherman's Wharf by Jeffrey Rawlinson. This is photography, measuring 16 by 20. And the retail value is $500. We have a $400 bid right now. Let's get that up to $500. We're gonna make that a bell ringer. We need all of these pieces to come to retail value or more. 28C, Firehole Spring Yellowstone National Park by Darby Hayes, a nationally recognized photographer. His works have been in numerous national park museums and right here in our gallery at PBS KDIE. 
$300 right now with a value of $800. Let's get these numbers going. Pick up the phone, call the number on your screen, and this can be yours. 28D is Delicate Water Lily by Maggie McGurk. Uh, this is a retail of $325. We got $100 for this. Let's take this up to $150. Pick up the phone, call the number on the screen, and take this piece home with you. 28E is Emergence by David Nassiter. This is a $400 retail. We have $150 on there. I love that photograph, that beautiful black and white. And 28F is Coconut Palms, Cancun, Mexico, Kenneth Bittencourt. Uh, we have 50. Let's see 100. Let's bring 100 in for this piece because it retails for 150, and that is a conservative amount, okay? Stay with us. There's much more art coming up in the next half hour of the PBS KVIE Art Auction. Welcome to the 42nd annual PBS KVIE Art Auction. Join us all weekend for a celebration of Northern California's visual arts. Over 270 works of art will be auctioned off to the highest bidder, and you can be part of the action by watching and bidding on your favorite artwork. View the entire collection online at kvie.org slash art auction. Then, when your favorite item appears, call 1-844-KVIE-ART to place your bid. Auction proceeds benefit the programs and services of your PBS station, KVIE. So thank you for watching and bidding. And now, let the auction begin. Bidding on items in the art auction is quick and easy to do. First, explore the collection online at kvie.org slash art auction. Or keep watching PBS KVIE. When a piece of art catches your eye, call 1-844-KVIE-ART and a volunteer will assist you. KVIE accepts all major credit cards for your art purchase and a member of our accounting team will confirm your payment within five minutes of item sale. Thank you for being a part of the PBS KVIE art auction and for making art a part of your home today. Coming up next is the Out in Nature category. Explore the natural world and all of its wonder over the next half hour. View all of the artwork featured in this year's collection at kvie.org slash art auction. We're bringing out the oils, acrylics, and pastels, if that's you. Hello, I'm Rob Stewart, and thank you for joining us for the Out in the Nature category. This portion of the art auction is sponsored by Mansour's Oriental Rug Gallery. We'd like to thank them for their commitment to supporting the arts on PBS KVIE. Okay, now let's uh, have an overview of the art that'll be up for bid during the next half hour, and it is going to be a beautiful half hour. So the oils, the pastels, and the acrylics are on their way out. 29A is the plums, and the, it's called The Plums Are Ready by Judy Knott. This is oil on canvas. It will measure 36 by 18. Retail value is $1,000. We are working on getting the art to being brought to you right now on screen but I promise you it is well worth the wait. So 29B is Colors of Spring by George Lambert. That's coming up in a moment. It's acrylic on canvas. It'll measure 20, it'll 16 by 20 rather for the measurements. 850 is the value. If you're following along on your guide or online at kvie.org slash art auction, you can see all these pieces as well as the next half hours. It's a great way to get a jump ahead. Uh, 29C is California Poppies, which is coming up by Art Livingston. Uh, the next one will be 29D, Reflections by Elaine Mancardi. That one's going to be for 400. Uh, 29E will be Salt Point by Joe Stratton. And that's an oil on canvas. You got to see this. And then 29F is Lone Cypress. You can imagine that by Karen Kogan. Okay, let's take a look at the art for this break. Hi there, I'm Kelly Raines, and thank oh, you for joining yep. us for the Out in Nature category. During the break, I am pleased to be here with Marinda Johnson Sessoms. Marinda is series producer of KVIE Arts Showcase, sharing artist stories, inspirations, and the cultural impact of their work. Marinda, welcome, and thanks for returning as an art expert this Always year. Always a pleasure. We're starting off with item 29A. This is Plums Are Ready by Judy Knott. It is oil and canvas, measuring 36 by 18. Retail value is $1,000. And Marinda, we were talking before we came 
came on air about what a beautiful piece this is. Can you tell us more about it? It is. I, I think one of the most amazing parts is that you can see the weight of the plums as they're hanging down. You see the weight of the leaf. And to me, it kind of reflects somewhat of what the artist talked about, about creating art is fun, frustrating, and forever. And that weight of life and everything that you see in this painting, I, I think it really remin reminisces all that perspective that she has of that. It is really a fun and fabulous painting. There's so much depth and color and, and just texture. I could just want to dive in and have a plum. Yes, so this painting, um, it was just a trip to New Zealand and there was this mom and pop farm and she saw this small plum tree and she just had to take the pictures and paint it later. And I always think when you think of taking a photo and going back to paint it at a later time, you kind of almost see more within the photo that you didn't see when you're on site. And so you see a lot of that in the light and the way it hits the leaves and the way the plums come in on the different perspectives of the, the all the way going d downward toward the end. And you're trying to figure out how is this not falling over? How did it not pull the tree down? So it, it's, it's a beautiful piece with all the colors, the purple, the blue mixtures, and then the little specks of green on some of the leaves where you can see that it's been, you know, straining the tree a little bit. But I love that that was able to be portrayed in the photo. It's, the so, it's so dramatic. The artist went out to the world, got a beautiful picture and painted it. Uh, KVIE takes you out into the world to amazing places and tells you wonderful stories the number to call to bid is on your screen. The current bid is on your screen. Call now because these paintings and works of art don't stay open very long. Um, what else do you want to share with us about this painting? So the background was changed a couple of times. At first, uh, the artist felt that the background was too dark. And so I think with the lighting of the background, it kind of really brought out the plums and the leaves. It kind of helped that to kind of shine forward with the little accents of light throughout each leaf. So really that that change when you're creating a piece and the artist decides to change something to kind of bring something forward. And that's exactly what it did for the plums. You actually, your eye is drawn straight into the plums and the color of those heavy, heavy plums. It's so beautiful. This is Plums Are Ready by Judy Knott. We're ready for you to call the number on your screen. It is oil and canvas measuring 36 by 18, a substantially beautifully tall piece. Retail value is $1,000. The number to call to bid is on your screen. The current bid is on your screen. And any final thoughts in about 15 seconds? Just so we know, this is uh, this artist has been professionally showing for 12 years. It was a Juror Award winner in 2019 from the KVA Art Auction, Best of Show um, in Elk Grove Fine Arts Center. So this artist really loves to create this art and really has an impact on every piece that she creates. Thank you, Miranda. We're going to keep this item open and we're going to move on to item 29B. It is Colors of Spring by George Lambert. It is acrylic on canvas measuring 16 by 20. Retail value is $850. And this is such a colorful painting, Miranda. What do you want to share with us about it? So this is a piece that the artist loves to paint what is seen through the window. And the way that you almost see the wind and the movement with in this painting, it's it's actually absolutely extraordinary the way you see that movement with each blotch of paint, and it's almost textured out. You see the texture of the tree, of the the flowers in the bottom. You you just really see the color coming out and all the texture throughout. It almost gives it almost like a a life of of the movement of the paint because of the thickness of it. There's so much to see when you look at this, just like there's so much to see when you watch all of your favorite programs on KVIE, your PBS station. Call the number on your screen. The current bid is on your screen. Call right away because these paintings and sculptures and works of art don't stay open very long and support the mission of KVIE by getting some beautiful art for your home. What else do you want to share with us about this artist? This artist really loves experimenting with colors and textures. And I mean, you see this in this piece. And it's, it's really amazing sometimes when you see the challenging parts of of adding extra texture to a piece with paint, but this artist really portrays that well. And uh, I don't know, the, just the light and the colors and the mixtures, how the tree stands out from that texture and all the different colors mixed throughout. It, it's, it's a beautiful piece. It's so beautiful. As you can see on your screen right now, the beautiful leaves, the colors in the sky and the tree, it's just so striking and so inviting and immersive. I yes. just want to go into that painting. And this artist has been a constant contributor to the KBIE art auction. So this is one of those pieces where 
where I think sometimes you see the dedication to this artwork and they put it within their pieces and then the, the fact that it's a part of KVA Art Auction, it, it really shows through of how much people really love to create for this. It's so beautiful. It's got such a feel of romance and excitement and just kind of hope and something new beginning every time I look at it. It just yes. kind of feels that way. The artist describes himself as an impressionist, so it's always trying to cre create that impression within the work, and I, I think it's an amazing job of showcasing. Well, you can make your impression by calling the number on your screen and getting this art. It is 29B, Colors of Spring by George Lambert, acrylic on canvas, measuring 16 by 20. Retail value is $850. Call the number on your screen. Immerse yourself into this beautiful, beautiful painting. Very colorful, Miranda. It is, without a doubt. Is there anything else, final thoughts, or anything that you want to share about it? I would say that everything through the window uh, that this artist is trying to portray, you kind of look out the window and you see different things. And I think when you see the way he saw the different flowers and flowing throughout, you see the movement in the grass. You see the flowers popping up throughout. And it kind of shows that, that look of, of sitting in your window and staring out to see what else the world has to offer. It's so beautiful. There's movement and texture. And we're going to keep this open and move on to the next piece. But call the number on your screen. We're moving on to item 29C. It is California Poppies by Art Livingston. This is pastels measuring 21 by 27. Retail value is $375. And Marinda, we were talking before when we were, I thought it was a photograph when yes. I first looked at it. This is stunning. What can you share about it? This is absolutely beautiful. And like you said, you see the life in it. You, it looks like you're looking at a photograph. And what this artist does is with the cool greens and the shaded trees in the foreground, but what is portrayed is almost as if you're walking barefoot. You can see the softness in that path going out to all the poppies throughout. You can take your shoes off and walk right through this painting. It, it's extraordinary the way the almost looks like it's glowing when you get to the flower field in the background. It's so beautiful. This artist is taking you on a journey. PBS KVIE takes you on a journey every day and night of the year with all of the wonderful programs that you love for you and your family. Call the number on your screen to bid on this beautiful pastel piece of art. And the current bid is on your screen, so don't delay, call now. I love, we talked about before, I love all the different vista points. Kind of, the, there's one thing after the next to look at. Well, this artist loves to let imagination run wild. And you see that throughout the different textures of the trees, throughout the softness you can actually see within that path. But one of the things is this artist uses contrasting textures, cool and warm colors to create that feeling of movement. And so I think that's exactly what's coming out when you look at this piece. And I, I think it would be amazing to go with any location in your home because it really gives you that shared of creation and, and that life that you feel so throughout beautiful. the painting. You can see the colorful life on your screen right now. Look at those deep saturated colors. This can be a painting in your home or office or anywhere you just wanna escape for a minute or a few more than that. Look at those beautiful, probably poppies or wildflowers. I absolutely love it. And, and it's just so just the way the sun is, uh, the, excuse me, the, the clouds are kind of peeking through the trees. I mean, it's really life. You, you see it through this. Piece. It's so beautiful. Again, this is California Poppies by Art Livingston, item 29C. This past Sells measuring 21 by 27, 375 dollars is the retail value. Call now. Um, call the number on your screen. The current bid is on your screen. Support all of the arts programs that you love on PBS KVIE and support this local artist too by getting this art. Any final thoughts for this? One of the things that the artist did state was that they feel the need to keep their brain active and enjoy the sense of accomplishment when, comp when completing a painting. And it's really that admiration and it admiring art and the excitement that it creates within life. And I really think this piece captures that. I love that. Art is an action oftentimes, and you find all kinds of action on KVIE through the Masterpiece programs and Frontline Stories and all of our local programs. Call the number on your screen for item 29C, California Poppies, the California State Flower by Art Livingston is pastels measuring 21 by 27, beautiful painting, and the retail value is 375. Call the number on your screen. And we are happy halfway through the break, which means we're going to keep this piece open and check in over at the recap station for bidding updates. 
That's right. Speaking of active, I just walked out front and you should see it. There are so many people coming and picking up their art. It is so exciting. That can be you if you pick up the phone and call the number right on your screen for these beautiful pieces of art that are available right now in this half hour. But you have to call and we want to see bell ringer after bell ringer. And that depends on you. Let me show you the art that we have right now wide open for you to bid on. 29A, The Plums Are Ready by Judy Knott. It is a gorgeous, big piece of art. Oil on canvas measuring 36 by 18. Frankly, it looks bigger than that hanging. Retail value is $1,000. Right now we're at $500 for this beautiful one of a kind, as all of our art is. 29B is The Colors of Spring by George Lambert. Acrylic on canvas, bell ringer, yes, measuring 16 by 20. <laughs> Retail value $850 and we have hit it. Fantastic job and we are so close to the next piece being a bell ringer which is fantastic for excitement this morning. 29C is California Poppies by Art Livingston, a treasured artist. Pastels measuring 21 by 27. Retail value is $375 and we have a bid right now for $300. Let's take that on up to higher. In fact, if you're on the phone for $300, would you like to throw in $75 more and make it a bell ringer, you have that ability to do so right now. And that would keep each of our items on the retail status, which is where we want and need to be because all of the money goes to support your PBS station, KVIE. Okay, so this is an exciting auction. There's a lot of buzz about this this weekend around Northern California, and it is so exciting to be involved in. It takes all year to put together, and it's just for you. All right, let's go through these items that are up for bed right now. And wait do you see the next three after these. This is 29A, The Plums Are Ready by Judy Knott. Make sure you're ready to place your bid and jump on the phone quickly. This is $500 right now. It is valued at 1,000. I can promise you it is well worth it because I just stared at this one in person. I couldn't get beyond it. Uh, let's see 550 right now. Come on up to 550 for this piece and then to 600. We're at a bell ringer right now for 29B. Fantastic job by Colors of Spring. It's by George Lambert. It's gorgeous. Acrylic on canvas, 16 by 20. Retails for 850, and we are there with 850. Let's keep going higher on that one, too. California Poppies is 29C. It retails for 375. We're sitting at $300 right now. Call someone. If you think they might like this piece, just call up and say, hey, pick up the phone and check out PBS KVIE or go online and or check it out on your phone, whatever. But get involved in the auction because the pieces move so quickly. And I can tell you, I see the joy on people's faces when they come to pick up their art. And I hope and wish that same joy for you. All right, we're just getting started in this break. So let's take a look at more artwork with Kelly and Marinda. All right, we are back with the second half of this collection. Up next is item 29D, Reflections by Elaine Mancardi. This is oil and canvas measuring 20 by 20 inches with a retail value of $400. Marinda, take it away. Reflection. This is everything about reflection. And you can see the reflection in the water and the way the blues, the whites, the greens, all kind of mixed together like the flow of water. I thought that was one of the most beautiful things when I saw when I first looked at this piece. It's so beautiful, Reflections. You know, when you're watching PBS TV, you're reflecting the community back to you as you see yourself. So tune in for all that wonderful programming and call the number on your screen right now. The current bit is on your screen. This is stunning, the reflection, the quality, just the luscious blues and greens. What's extraordinary is that this was an used oil sticks on canvas. Wow. And I, I hadn't heard of oil sticks before for a canvas, but you see the oil look throughout and it kind of just, it washes it. It, it. it creates that look of reflection throughout. And the way the trees are, the way you see, the way it's smooth, it's almost like a blur of the trees, almost like you can sense the movement of it. I don't know, I've always loved when you can see the movement within a work of art. It, it, it kind of adds that life to it that makes you kind of stare at it a little bit longer. It's so beautiful and you need to move to the phone and move the fingers to dial the number to bid the current bid on your screen and surpass that. Call that number right now. These beautiful works of art don't stay open very long and this is just a, such a statement piece in any room that you would want to put it in. What else would you like to share about the artist or the art? 
Well, really, this is depicting the elements of nature to inspire others to kind of see the beauty around them. And a lot of things that the artist stated um, that we've kind of become bombarded by a lot of the darkness and turmoil in the world. And I think with this color and the light and that reflection of self, it's really showcases and shines well through this piece about really stopping and admiring and acknowledging the beauty that's around us. And, it's and so it beautiful. beautiful. It's, it's like it's a refuge in a sense. And, and KVIE is a refuge from all the bombardment of social media and, and commercial uh, television that's out there. This is the place for you and your family to find a refuge, an oasis for exploration and discovery. This is item 29D. It is Reflections by Elaine McCarty, oil on canvas measuring 20 by 20. Retail value is $400. Call the number on your screen. The current bid is on your screen. Any final thoughts about this, Miranda? It's reflection of us and nature. And I think with everything the artist talked about, about that turmoil of life and really stopping to take it in, you would love to just lay here and look at this piece on your wall and just relax and see those moments of beauty around us. So. It's so beautiful. And I love all the little details that, the, again, the reflections, like you mentioned, and there's little flowers over to the left and just the, the trees behind. It's so beautiful. It all reflects. Even the trees are reflecting back. So it, it, it really captures reflection well. It's really beautiful. We're going to keep this item open. We're going to move on to item 29E. That is Salt Point by Joe Stratton. It is oil on canvas measuring 16 by 20. Retail value is $450. And what a beautiful painting, Marinda. What would you like to share with us about it? Well, first off, this artist is a nine-year <coughs> contributor to KVIE Art Auction. Um, and it's really amazing to see that this was a second attempt um, at painting oils. And and wow. the artist knew that this piece was going to go to KVIE as soon as it was started. And so that, that you see the, the, the kind of the light and, and the dedication to making sure this piece was perfect for the art auction this year. Oh, I love that dedication. We're dedicated to bringing you all the programs that you love from science programs, nature programs, all of the investigatory, investigatory journalism on Frontline. Call the number on your screen to support local art and support your PBS station KVIE. The current bid is on your screen. Call right now. This painting won't be open very long. What else would you like to share? With us. Well, this piece is oil, acrylic, pen, ink, pencil, color pencil, pastel, or charcoal is used in many of these pieces. Wow. But this one, it's you, you, I could not imagine that there was that many different uses of, of, of art in this. Like, I, I didn't even realize when you start to really look at it, you see all of the different colors and the smoothness of the fence. You see that there's other textures in there outside of just acrylic paint. It's so and beautiful. It's, it's so bright. I, I don't know. I, I've, I've been to, you know, where you see the hay laying out and peeking through the fence, and to me, you, literally can feel yourself laying there, seeing this, walking through past the pasture and seeing all this. That's beautiful. I love art that can take you somewhere else, wherever you are, and this is a piece that does that. KVIE can take you anywhere, too, that you want to. Adventures, explorations, and discoveries. Call the number on your screen. The current bid is on your screen. This is item 29E, Salt Point by Joe Stratton. Oil on canvas and other uh, mediums that we heard about. Measuring 16 by 20. Retail value is $450. And the current bid is on your screen. Don't let this uh, escape your, your ownage. Well, this artist, one of the things is that um, he stated that he's always observing his observing his surroundings to see what else he can paint. And I hope he continues to take that journey because it's amazing when you can capture a moment and you feel like the viewer can be there and, and you actually can see that within a painting. This is so beautiful. The artist is a longtime contributor. We get something from them uh, for several years now. And we are so grateful, Joe, for all of your artwork. Uh, any final thoughts? I love the frame and how it kind of matches the fence a little bit. It's just... perfect. No, it was a perfect match to the fence. I know a lot of times when you go into picking different frames, it really does change the dynamic of the piece. It can change the whole look of the piece. And this fit perfectly because it kind of fits perfectly into the fence wood and it all goes together. It's so nice. We are talking about item 29E, Salt Point by Joe Stratton. Oil and canvas measuring 16 by 20. Retail value is $450. The current bid is on your screen. We're going to keep it open, but we're going to move on to the next piece. And that is item 29F. It is Lone Cypress by Karen Kogan. It is oil on canvas measuring 18 by 24. Retail value is $800. And Marinda, we were talking about this before. We've both been there. Can you tell us more about this, this painting? 
Well, the thing is, is that the cypress is estimated to be 250 years old. And really the artist established art was ignited from her mother who taught her about loving, seeing things and loving it. And what I loved most was that uh, she had said that she went out there to paint it, pulled out her easel, started to paint it, but it was too windy and ended up taking photos, going home and painting it later. And what I love most is you can actually see the wind. You see the movement in the wind of that photo she probably captured and took it back to paint it. And so it's just amazing to be able to feel the movement of the water. I'm, I've, as you can see, I love movement because it kind of really takes you to what you're looking at. And so seeing all the different textures and understanding that value, this is Monterey, um, uh, uh, Cypress. It, it really in, in encompasses everything about seeing something, painting it, and then capturing that for others to be able to enjoy. You can see our camera operators are capturing all the drama and color and beautiful drama of this painting. And KVIE will bring you beautiful dramas. I know I talk about drama a lot, but hey, we are the place for drama. The number to call is on your screen. The current bid is on your screen. This is item 29F, Lone Cypress by Karen Kogan. It is oil and canvas measuring 18 by 24, a substantial piece. Retail value is $800. Marinda, what else would you like to share. I love how the artists express that oil is patient with her. And so to me that you see the loose strokes throughout the water, throughout the, the heel side, you see it throughout the trees and the way there's the little spritz of color, like you see it, how it's kind of patterned throughout to kind of match the flow of the wind. It, it, it's a beautiful piece in the way you see the movement of those strokes of the brush. I, I, I think it's beautiful. It's so beautiful. It's an iconic image that can be yours, part of our beautiful coastline here in California. Call the number on your screen. The current bid is on your screen. This is item 29F, Lone Cypress by Karen Kogan. Oil and canvas measuring 18 by 24. Retail value is $800. This piece is not gonna stay open very long like all of the other beautiful artworks. So call now. Uh, time is of the essence. Any additional thoughts, Miranda? <laughs> It really, the artist did an amazing job of kind of maintaining the mood of what was seen when they were there. So I just love the way that that's captured and, and you really are seeing the kind of that endless into the water and how it goes right into the sky and they all seem to mix as one. The way those colors match throughout to kind of see that flow throughout the ocean is beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Thank you, Mirinda, for your expertise. We are nearing the end of this break, which means that now is your last opportunity to bid on the art featured in this half hour. Let's head back to the recap station for updates. Okay, thank you both so much. So much excitement here in the studio now. We are live and the phones are ringing and the phone bank is having a ball talking to all of our lovely, lovely viewers. Let's jump in and go through the numbers right now where things stand in this gorgeous art. 29D Reflections by Elaine Mancardi. And guess what? We have a bell ringer right here, right out of the gate. Fantastic. And the name fits so well, this beautiful piece of art. Reflections, absolutely gorgeous. Do not reflect long because these pieces go by so fast when they are live on the air. 29E is Salt Point by Joe Stratton. This is oil on canvas measuring 16 by 20 and we are right now at $250 and this is a value of 450. I can tell you that Joe Stratton's work is always a showstopper. People gather around his creations. 29F is Lone Cypress by Karen Kogan. Oil on canvas measuring 18 by 24. This is almost a bell ringer. It should be, it's at 500 right now. So phone a friend, get on the phone, call us, we're your friend, and show your support at the phone number on the screen. All of the money goes to PBS KVIE. Let's go right through all of these beautiful pieces of art that are open right now. So much excitement and so many bell ringers, which is fantastic. That means we've hit our retail value, the amount that the artist wanted us to receive, okay? 29A, we go right off the top for a beautiful piece that is a large, gorgeous showstopper. The Plums Are Ready by Judy Knott. Oil on canvas measuring 36 by 18, a retail of $1,000, and we are at $500. 
$100 right now. I got to tell you, you should see people stop and look at this when it was hanging preparing for the auction. 29B Colors of Spring by George Lambert. Acrylic on canvas measuring 16 by 20 and it's a bell ringer. Yay, that's fantastic. $850 retail and we're right there at 850. It's still open though. We've not closed these pieces just because they're bell ringers does not mean they're closed. Keep on calling the number on your screen. 29C California Poppies, check this out. Look at that. Art Livingston has knocked it out of the park with $950 bid for this phenomenal piece of artwork. Gorgeous, quintessential California. It is valued at $375, but clearly much more valuable to someone who is watching. Thank you for that. 29D is Reflections by Elaine Mancardi. It is a bell ringer, fantastic. 20 by 20 is the size. Oil on canvas, and look at that. We're up to $700 for this gorgeous piece by Elaine Mancardi. Thank you for that. Item 29E is Salt Point by Joe Stratton. We're at a bell ringer. Yes, we got it up there, 475, and we're still climbing. It takes a minute for people to jump on it, but when they do, you'd be surprised how quickly they fly by. So please take action. Lone Cypress is the next piece in this half hour, 29F. We're up to 525. This one's climbing now too, and that's how it happens. They just start moving and go so fast. 525 for a retail of $800, and this one is a uh, auction as we speak right now. There is a battle going on in the phone banks for these. So what does that mean? It means it's time for you to pick up the phone, call the number on the screen. This is your chance to get some of the best art available anywhere in Northern California. And it took a year to prepare this collection just for you, okay? Stay with us, there's much more art coming up in the next half hour right here live on the PBS KVIE Art Auction. How many people see what I see? In the symbolic patterns, I see the flowing water of the Tigris. In the hand-woven knots, I see an artist's fingers play a loom like a harp. Mansour's Oriental Rug Gallery, celebrating over 40 years. With locations in Roseville and Sacramento. For a beautiful home in a beautiful world. Picking up your purchased artwork is quick and easy to do. Visit PBS KVIE Sunday through Tuesday during these posted hours to claim your art. All purchased artwork must be claimed within 30 days of auction closure. For questions, location, and hours, visit kvie.org slash art auction. Thank you for being a part of the PBS KVIE Art Auction and for making art a part of your home today. Coming up next is the Sculpture category. Awards juried by Linda Gelfman, Sculpture features three-dimensional artwork in a variety of media. View all of the artwork featured in this year's auction at kvie.org slash art auction. Okay, welcome back. It's so great to see you. I'm Rob Stewart, and I'm so glad that you're joining us for the sculpture category. It's a fun one. And now here's an overview of the art that'll be up for bid during the next half hour. If you're following along online, it's kvie.org slash art auction. 30A, I love this. It's a lot of two cakes by Jeff Nebaker, a highly collected artist. Ceramic measuring six by five and five by five. Isn't that delicious? The retail value is $200. Wow, a bit of $75. That one's gonna soar, I have a feeling. Item 30B is Fun Line by Douglas Zawadney, and this is glass measuring seven by 10. Retail value is $1,000. We have a bid for $350. Item 30C is Red Lantern Tea House by Frank Barrera. This is mixed media measuring 16 by 12 by 24. Retail value is $400. Item 30D is Both Sides Now by Linda Gelfman. Ceramic measuring 8 by 12 by 10. This is a retail value of $500 and we have a bid right now of 210. Item 30E is Granny's Bowl by Robert Beers. Porcelain measuring 13 by six. It is a gorgeous piece of art. Retails at 800. 30F is Tamarack by Carol Soibelman. And this is 12 by 12 by 12, it's ceramic. How pretty is that? 
Retail value, $200, and guess what? It's already a bell ringer before we have even started, okay? The phone lines are open and ready to take your bid, so let's see the art with our art auctioneer and expert. Hi there, I'm Kelly Raines, and thank you for joining us for the sculpture category. I'm back with our art expert, Marinda johnson Sessoms, and we're going to begin with this break, which is item 30A. This is Lot of Two Cakes by Jeff Neveker. This is ceramic measuring six by five and five by five. Retail value is $200. And Marinda, Marinda, I'm sorry, what were we chanting when we were talking about this art and looking at it? Cake, 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 cake. You cannot go wrong with cake. <laughs> One of the most extraordinary things I found out about this artist was that they were a cake decorator, a baker for 50 years, and the sculpting reflects that interest and a celebration of that. And that to me, it's almost like you transition from baking a real cake, doing the frosting, all of the different textures, all of the different you know designs and, and the toppings, and then you turn that into sculpting and you realize those are so related, it's almost, the same movement, the same, I said movement. I love movement. I always realize I love movement of art, but it, it's, it's extraordinary to realize those transitions from one art to the other. I just love that so much about that. It's so beautiful. You can see the details of the cake on your screen right now. They're, they're sweet little confections that can be in your home or your office, wherever you want to have cake all the time. This is item 30A, Lot of Two Lakes by Jeff Nebaker. Two different sculptures, but they go together. This is ceramic measuring six by five and five by five. Retail value is $200. The number to call is on your screen and the current bid is on your screen. What else do you want to share with us about cake? cake the cake? thing that made me smile about these cake was that the artist stated that most of the cakes um, are some of the more classic flavors. And sometimes I think as desserts expand and as we kind of look at different sweets, we kind of start to invent other things, but these stay to the classic, those loves. You can't help but eat them because the, you know what your favorites are. And I, I just love that the artwork kind of sends those, uh, stands for those staple cakes that when you cut it open, you eat it, it it's, you want to, but you can't. These are perfect lifetime display cakes in your home that you can have forever. And then it may make you want to go get a cake, but still, these ones last forever. There's such a beautiful item to add to a current collection or start somebody out who loves cake with a collection. Uh, start their art collection and their cake collection, their forever cake. Item 30A, Lot of Two Cakes by Jeff Nebaker. The number to call is on your screen. The current bid is on your screen. And I love that you're getting a, this is a fun contemporary piece. Anything else that you want to share? With yes, uh, these were featured at the Crocker Art Museum. Um, well, this artist was featured at the Crocker Art Museum and was recently shown in the candy store exhibit. So Ooh. again, more sweets. You have to have these cakes. Um, I'm going to have to go buy a cake after <laughs> seeing these beautiful sculptures of cakes. But it's just they're extraordinary pieces. They're so extraordinary. You know, we have lots of cooking and baking shows on PBS KVIE, so you can get your baking and cake on while you're watching KVIE, but you can also have these beautiful sculptures in your home. We're gonna keep this item open. We're gonna move on to item 30B, which is Fun Line by Douglas Zawadney. It is glass measuring seven by 10. Retail value is $1,000. And Marinda, this is such a striking, beautiful, beautiful piece. It is absolutely gorgeous. And Doug is a glass hobbyist. And I don't know if you can see it, but it, I had to look a little bit closer he's inspired by ladders and when you really look at this bowl you see the different structures of ladders throughout you can climb throughout each side ladders going different directions and then you realize that each piece is made from separate um, fusing separate pieces together oh, wow. and this piece the artist stated was over 500 individual pieces of cut strips. So to imagine just a bowl in itself, but coming together with that whole structure and thought of a ladder inspiration and then building it all together into a bowl and you still see all of the different layers of ladders throughout. I, I, I it just, that was extraordinary to me. I have goosebumps as you're telling me about that. That is so beautiful. It's, it's like a community of glasswork making this beautiful, beautiful item. And your community, uh, when you 
you contribute to PBS KVIE and you call the number on your screen and get this beautiful art or any of the art pieces that you like. The number is called on your screen, the current bit is on your screen, and continue to make those phone calls and support PBS KVIE. This is item 30B, Fun Line. It is definitely a fun line by Douglas Zawadney. Glass measuring seven by 10. Retail value is $1,000, Miranda. It's striking. Yes, and one of the things when I spoke with Doug himself, he doesn't consider himself an artist, but that's why I think it makes his art so impactful. Um, he's creating it just for us, just for himself. He's creating it just to create. And sometimes for me, I, I feel that I feel like sometimes that's a little bit more impactful because you actually are creating it for the beauty, for the understanding of it, for whatever you're trying to put out there. And there's no reason behind it. You actually are finding the reason within the creation of it. So I don't know. I just felt that that was an amazing statement when he said, oh, I don't consider myself an artist. So he's creating to really create for us to be able to see it. It's so beautiful. You can see the beautiful colors. It's such a statement piece and such a great conversation starter. All the little different pieces coming together to make this beautiful, beautiful. Look at those colors and the lines. It definitely is fun lines. That's the title of the piece. And it's such a statement. It, you don't even have to put anything. It just stands yes. alone on its own. You can kind of, you know, climb the ladders to see where it all takes you around this bowl. It's so beautiful. And there is a little stand that comes with it. This is item 30B. It is Fun Line by Douglas DeWadney. Glass measuring 7 by 10. Beautiful glass. Uh, retail value is $1,000. The number to call to make this your own Fun Line is on your screen. And the current bid is on your screen. Support local art by owning local art and your PBS KVI station. Do we know if this can be inside or outside or both? Or? Um, this one, I believe, is inside. Uh, but the other thing to realize is that you would want this one inside. Um, just the different weather and the, the wear and tear that would, you have to keep that vibrant color and really be able to capture that continuously. Throughout. It's so beautiful. We're gonna keep this item open, item 30B. We're moving on to item 30C. It is Red Lantern Tea House by Frank Barrera. It is mixed media measuring 16 by 12 by 24. Retail value is $400. And Marinda, I've, I've got goosebumps and I'm so giddy about this. What can you share with us about it? I wanna say first that this artist has been donating pieces to KVIE for the past 11 years. Um, and every year it's a different medium and I, I'm i just blown away by this choice of medium for this year. Um, this piece is inspired by the spirit houses found in people's houses and yards throughout Asia, including Japan and China, but it also was made uh, through the, the, excuse me, through the theme of the tea house, which was also inspired by children's fantasy novels of which this artist wrote and published. So you're, he's literally taking us into a whole imagination world and, and taking us into a book, uh, you know what I mean? It's a fantasy world. He's taking us into adventure. KVIE takes you into adventures. We're going to try to, I'm, I'm hearing, lower the lights down in the studio a little bit so you can see the extraordinary detail on this sculpture. You can see the little lanterns on your screen. Uh, there's little sculptures. And so, like, I'm going to lift up the little top lid. Just briefly, there's a battery pack inside, so there's working lights. So this is a practical. So you can kind of get in there. There's beautiful details and little furniture inside the doors. Yes. And Kelly, let me just say that this is mainly wood as a building material and added metal and other materials like wood, brass, sheets, uh, miniature, real LED lanterns, um, yellow LED LED string lights, copper shingles for the roof, uh, acrylic paint, and gold dragon charms. I mean, this really is, if you, this is a fantasy novel, like this is, a, and you can have it right in your home. It's extraordinary. It's so beautiful. Speaking of a home, you can see on your camera, the doors are open and there's furniture with a little table and teacups inside. And the, the, the attention to detail on this work of art is extraordinary. There's little dragons throughout, there's little bells and lights. You can look into the window and see the little vignette that's on the inside of this beautiful, beautiful structure. Yes. I'm just, it, it takes my breath away. You can actually close your eyes and really take to that fantasy that he wants each viewer to, to go to. And he also stated that he wants the viewer, viewer to come away with viewing, when viewing his artwork, with a sense of wonder and magic. And I can say 100% I have been taken away to a whole nother fantasy world and I sense the magic and the dedication to creating such a 
beautiful piece. It's so beautiful. I, I have continuous goosebumps looking at the <laughs> screen right now. It's so gorgeous. The number to call is on your screen. You do not want to get let this magical piece uh, get by you. Look at the beautiful red lanterns and up above the lights that work. It's the so, copper roof. So beautiful. Uh, it's 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 extraordinary. And each of the lanterns can turn on. You've got the little lights that go across, but all of these red lanterns they can turn on as well. This is your opportunity to get this beautiful, beautiful work of art in your home. Call Indoor. the number on your screen right now. The current bit is on your screen. And don't miss out on this beautiful, beautiful thing. And we are halfway through the break, which means we're going to keep this piece open and check in over at the recap station for bidding updates while you call in and place your bids. Thank you, Kelly and Miranda. And I want to tell you something right now that we just found out at PBS KVIE. Frank Barrera, the artist on the piece you just saw, has passed away. Um, we want to uh, tell Frank's family how sorry we are. We extend our sympathies and condolences, and we are so grateful for the beautiful artistry of Frank Barrera, a longtime donor here to the PBS KBIE Art Auction. I, I can't help but notice the lights were on in that beautiful art creation, and it can be yours. What a tribute by picking up the phone and calling the number on your screen, which is 844-584-3278, or KVIE Art. Okay, thank you to Frank's family. Okay, we are going to go through all of the pieces right now. 30A is Lot of Two Cakes by Jeff Nebaker. Uh, this is ceramic measuring six by five by five by five. This is up to $300, well over a bell ringer status. Fantastic job, thank you, Jeff. We have a bell ringer on this one right now. Great job. Also, 30B is Fun Line by Douglas Zawadney. Glass measuring 7 by 10. Retail value is $1,000. And we have a bid right now at $400. And then the next piece right now is the one we were just discussing, 30C, Red Lantern Tea House by Frank Barrera. Mixed media measuring 16 by 12 by 24 a $400 value right now. We have a bid of $150. So pick up the phone, call the number on your screen, and when you do, all of the money goes to PBS KVIE, your PBS station. And every single dollar stays right here locally for the programs and the services that you have come to depend on through PBS. People are already coming out here to pick up their art. It is so exciting to watch. They come through and they're so happy. And I wish you could see their smiles when they leave. That could be you if you pick up the phone and call right now, okay? 30A is a lot of two cakes by Jeff Nebaker. It's at $300 right now for these beautiful ceramic pieces. We're now at $400 on this piece. Double bell ringer. Let's keep climbing on that. I promise it's well worth it. 30B is Fun Line by Douglas Zawadney. Glass measuring seven by 10, a beautiful piece of art. $400 for this retail of $1,000 on a very difficult piece of glass. And 30C is Red Lantern Tea House by Frank Barrera. Mixed media measuring 16 by 12 by 24. The retail value is $400 right now. And we see 150 right now. We're calling for 200 on this gem and this collector piece. It is exquisite. As you just saw, Kelly and Miranda, they lifted the top open so you could see in. The lights are on, which is fantastic. It's an interactive piece of art, and it illuminates so much as you see it right there on your screen, calling for 200 on that one as well. And guess what? We just got a bell ringer on it. Yes, bell ringer for Red Lantern Tea House. Fantastic. Thank you, Frank Barrera's family. We have a bell ringer for the beloved Frank. Okay, now let's take a look at more art for the second half of this break with Marinda and Kelly. All right, we are back with the second half of the break, continuing with item 30D, Both Sides Now by Linda Gelfman. This is ceramic measuring eight by 12 by 10 inches with a retail value of $500. I'd also like to say that in addition to donating this artwork to KVIE, Linda Gelfman also served as an awards juror in the sculpture category in this year's art auction. We thank Linda for her service. Okay, Marinda, take it away. Exploring the true Gemini. <laughs> and we've all known some Geminis in our life, and this is a great portrayal of that. Um, this artist put in a lot of texture in this piece and negative space. I mean, you can kind of look around it and see that ultimate tour of the Gemini. 
It's absolutely beautiful. I love all the details and the colors, and I love, you can see that foot near the hand, and they're, you know, holding up these three kind of vessels and there's just so much drama and angles and movement going on in it. Gemini. Gemini. And so you really, this artist was inspired um, by figure um, and it's hand-built ceramics fired to cone, excuse me, a six using glaze and um, it, it really, I don't know, I, I just love the way you see the different ripples within I just don't even know how that was done. I, I didn't have the chance to ask the artist how these lines were created throughout, but it gives it so much texture, almost like you see the, the, the depth of the, the structure. It's so beautiful. There's so much detail. Look at the, the spool of thread in the hand and just the, the lines in the body. There's such a strength in the piece. There's strength in your PBS station, KVIE, when you make it so by calling the number on your screen. The current bid is on your screen. Call now to get this beautiful sculpture and there's something else in the hand. There's, they're balancing something mm -hmm. constantly and there's the detail of the little fingers. I love it. It goes into that balance of when you think of a Gemini. You think of the balance of two different sides two different personalities and when you look around this entire piece you really do start to see the different kind of pull of both sides you're trying so to see but beautiful. but they still are centered they're centered in those pieces of the three vases they're holding that's centering them and so you see the chaos you see the the different things that are spoiled uh, spooled bringing them back together with yeah. the the thread in the hand so it all threads together and I, I kind of think we all kind of have that sense of being pulled in different directions and there's those things though that center us it sets the foundation for where we're supposed to get back to and I think it portrays that beautifully. And speaking of different directions, Miranda, we're going to ever so gingerly kind of move this around because as a sculpture, there is something to look at at every angle. I love the little toe that's a little askew from the other toes. Mm -hmm. And you can see that negative space working. And as I turn it, the expression on the uh, the faces mm -hmm. and it's just so extraordinary and this is something that you want to have in your home and the only way to do that is by calling the number on your screen and bidding in this art auction supporting your local PBS station KVIE and this artist and awards juror wonderful work this is item 30d both sides now by Linda Gelfman ceramic measuring 8 by 12 by 10 retail value is $500 don't delay any any other thoughts Miranda you really just can't help but see both sides of this piece and it I, I think it's extraordinary to be able to have the opportunity to like really have such a piece to talk about in your home. It is extraordinary. We're gonna keep it open very shortly. Uh, we're gonna move on to item 30E. It is Granny's Bowl by Robert Beers. It is porcelain measuring 13 by 6. Retail value is $800. And we were talking, Miranda, about how delicate and elegant this work of art is. Tell us about it. The thing is when you look at this you see the intricate lines throughout where there's like a cast of blue throughout so the entire piece you see almost like the aqua greens on the outside but when you look within the lines of the the the, the scraped sides you see where all the indentions were made within the holes you see that there's color within that color De deeper it's almost a deeper uh, shade of that color within the piece I don't know it, it just it's almost like it's flowing throughout you see that the color kind of bleeds into itself and then it, it almost makes it brighter and the texture throughout and the added holes I think kind of gives your eye almost that that double look like you're trying to see am I seeing through it and then it, it gives it so much more texture it's so beautiful. The stand that it's sitting on comes with it. This is item 30E Granny's Bowl by Robert Beers. Porcelain measuring 13 by 6. Retail value is $800. The current number uh, to call is on your screen. That's always the current number. But the current bid is also on your screen. Call now. Don't delay. It's so beautiful. The saturated colors you can see on your screen. The delicate uh, curves that it has and the different colors. Yes. And I, I love the play on a vessel or a bowl or a plate or something having holes in it. But it still holds all this beauty. And when I think think about it what the artist said was that he was inspired by his grandmothers and when you think of the little what what are they called the the little cloth um almost doilies doilies I actually see a doily and and that's kind of you know when I went to my grandmother's house she always had those throughout I see the texture of fabric 
on porcelain. Like, how extraordinary is that? It's so beautiful. Robert is a longtime contributor to the auction, and we thank you, Robert, for all your beautiful artistry and your philanthropy in donating to the art auction. Call the number on your screen. The current bid is on your screen. Don't delay. Granny's Bowl is item 30E. This is so beautiful, and again, delicate and it's a piece about family and yes. nostalgia and you know family is what you you think of when you also talk, uh, talk about PBS KVA and all the programs for you and your family to enjoy anything else you want to yes show so this bowl is thrown and altered and it is for indoor use only and I could imagine this is it has such a gloss and a glow you'd want to keep that sometimes the elements of outside everything isn't meant for that when it comes to art so this is an, um, an indoor piece it's absolutely stunning. You are possibly indoors wherever you are. Hopefully there's a phone so you can call the number on your screen. The current bid is on your screen. This is item 30E, Granny's Bowl by Robert Beers. It is porcelain measuring 13 by six. Retail value is $800, meant for indoor, but also for a lifetime of enjoyment. And we're gonna keep it open and move on to item 30F. It is Tamarack by Carol Soibelman. This is ceramic measuring 12 by 12 by 12. Retail value is $200. And Marinda, I have to say, I am in love with this little, little bear. He is absolutely adorable. And so when I first saw it, of course, I was drawn to how adorable this little bear is. But what I learned was that back in July 2021, the Tamarack Fire burned over 68,000 acres, affecting thousands of people and animals. And so the artists wanted to make sure there was kind of that, that light, that hope. And this was a bear who was showcased on the news um, that survived. And a lot of people always wondered what happened to the bear. And I think it's extraordinary to kind of have that, that light that comes out of situations that we can't really find, you know, that, that happy place within it. But it's moments like this where you see that life survives, hope is still there. And this bear kind of continued to represent that for so many that had lost so much during those fires. It's so, it's so beautiful. You know, we have lots of nature programs on KVIE that you love and, and all the, there's beautiful programs about bears. This is a bear you can bring into your home safely and enjoy all the time. And I'm actually gonna spin it around. Look at the detail. There's a little, his little paws in the front. And look at the little cup that's right there. It's so, and I love his little nails from a distance or safely in a sculpture. Um, it's just such a beautiful, beautiful way to add to a collection or start your nature bear lover on a collection of their own. And I'm gonna go ahead and spin it now. Look at his little nose as he just goes around. His little ears, he's just got such a little personality. Mm -hmm. And I love the texture, Miranda. Yes, no, and, and it, it kind of, it, it encompasses kind of the overall history of this artist with over 14 years of sculpting um, and continues to be inspired by different events and um, different news stories that she sees and kind of after retirement um, began to experiment with clay and we are so glad she did because you see a bear cub in this. You you see the texture of, uh, I, I've not been close enough to see a bear skin, but you kind of get the life uh, like of, of, of a real bear. And then of course, I, I love that it's holding a little teddy bear because it kind of adds to that hope of the things we kind of all want to hold on to um, after situations that, you know, we kind of have a reflection of that through it this bear. Is so beautiful. This is item 30F Tamarack by Carol Soibelman. Ceramic measuring 12 by 12 by 12. Retail value is $200. The current bid is on your screen. Call the number on your screen. I love the details of his little claws. They're just so And adorable. his little nose and the eyes. Like the eyes actually even kind of give that hope uh, it's it has almost like a sadness but also that hope that you know what's to come so i don't know it, it, it's it's beautiful to look at i i i this is an indoor bear not an outdoor bear so this is a bear that you can have in your home um to look at to see and to enjoy how often can you have an indoor bear? <laughs> Only now. Call the number on your screen. We're nearing the end of this break, which means that now is your last opportunity to bid on the art featured in this half hour. I'd like to thank art expert Marinda Johnson Sessoms. Thank you for sharing her expertise with us today. Marinda, thanks for being here, and let's check in over at the recap station for an update. Thank you, Marinda and Kelly. So the call right now is to get involved in the PBS KVIE art auction by picking up the phone and calling the number on your screen. Hey, time's running out on this half hour, so you gotta make sure you call in quick. Get involved. Okay, 
The first item we're going to talk about is 30D Both Sides Now by Linda Gelfman Ceramic, measuring 8 by 12 by 10. Retails at 500, and we got a bid right now for 210. Let's get that up to 250. Item 30E is Granny's Bowl by Robert Beers. What a beautiful name for a piece of art, Granny's Bowl. It is porcelain, measuring 13 by 6, retail at $800. And we have a bid for 275. 30F is Tamarack by Carol Soibelman, and this is ceramic, measuring 12 by 12 by 12, and it's a bell ringer. Great job. 225 on this piece. It is still open and available for you. So please call the number on your screen, 844-KVIE-ART. And I also just checked, and we have a lot of people following us and viewing online as well. So if you're on there, I want to tell you that you have to call to place your bid. Even if you're watching online, and there's a lot of you doing that, call the number on the screen wherever you're seeing this so you can place your bid. We're happy to see you there. Okay, let's go through the entire half hour. 30A <laughs> is Two Cakes by Jeff Nebaker. Look at that, it's $350, it's a bell ringer. Jeff's work is so cool and actually delicious. Look at those cakes, my goodness. We have cookies here from Marcy Bombola. Thank you, Marcy. Oh, those are so good. Okay, get back on track, Rob. 30B, fun line, Douglas Zawadney, glass measuring seven by 10. Retail value is $1,000, we're up to $600 on this. So this piece is starting to climb. 30C, Red Lantern Tea House by Frank Barrera. I am so pleased to tell you and Frank's family that this piece is now at double bell ringer status from four to $800 right now. Uh, this is a gorgeous piece of work by Frank Barrera. Item 30D, both sides now by Linda Gelfman. Ceramic piece, it's $500 value. 210 is where we're sitting with the bid right now. Let's pick up the phone, call the number on the screen and get these numbers up to the retail value minimum, please. That's what, that's what the artist wants to see and I know we can do it. I know we can. Item 30E is Granny's Bowl by Robert Beers. This is porcelain measuring 13 by six, retails at 800 and that's up to 275, so we're climbing. And Tamarack is 200 retail, 225 bid, so that makes it a bell ringer, which is fantastic. It's 12 by 12 by 12, and look at that beautiful, adorable tamarack. How cute is that? Hey, do you want it? If so, pick up the phone and make a call right now because Art Pickup is open until five o'clock. We're at 2030 West El Camino, right at the corner of five and West El Camino. So it's real easy to get here. And when you call and pick up the phone, you can be involved in the art auction. Get involved now so that you can be ready when your piece in the next half hour comes open. But these pieces are gonna move fast. All of the numbers are climbing, so you gotta call now, okay? Stay with us, there's more art coming up in the next half hour right here on the PBS KVIE Art Auction. Welcome to the 42nd annual PBS KVIE Art Auction. Join us all weekend for a celebration of Northern California's visual arts. Over 270 works of art will be auctioned off to the highest bidder, and you can be part of the action by watching and bidding on your favorite artwork. View the entire collection online at kvie.org slash art auction. Then when your favorite item appears, call 1-844-KVIE-ART to place your bid. Auction proceeds benefit the programs and services of your PBS station, KVIE. So thank you for watching and bidding. And now let the auction begin. Bidding on items in the art auction is quick and easy to do. First, explore the collection online at kvie.org slash art auction. Or keep watching PBS KVIE. When a piece of art catches your eye, call 1-844-KVIE-ART and a volunteer will assist you. KVIE accepts all major credit cards for your art purchase and a member of our accounting team will confirm your payment within five minutes of item sale. Thank you for being a part of the PBS KVIE Art Auction and for making art a part of your home today. Coming up next is artwork from Viewpoint Photographic Art Center. Located in Midtown Sacramento, Viewpoint focuses on the thriving, energetic, and supportive photographic community through exhibits, lectures, and events. View all of the galleries featured in this year's auction at kvie.org slash art auction. 
Hi there, I'm Rob Stewart, and thanks for joining us for the Viewpoint Photographic Art Center break. It's an excellent break every year. This portion of the art auction is sponsored by Mansour's Oriental Rug Gallery, and we would like to thank them for their commitment to supporting the arts right here on PBS KVIE. I'm so glad you are with us, and I hope that you will stay here all day long with us, bringing you Northern California's largest collection of art right now. And here's an overview of the art that'll be up for bid during the next half hour. Let's go through it. Item 31A, Portofino Piazzetta by Rachel Rosenthal. This is photography measuring 25 by 31. Retail value 350. We have a bid right now for $100. Phones are ringing. That's great. Let's keep that up. 31B is Desert Bighorn by Jan Lightfoot. Photography measuring 18 by 24. I love that piece. Retail value 425. We've got a bid for 150. 31C is Ancient Wisdom, If Only We Could Hear Their Howling Stories by Alan Fishleader. Photography, measuring 18 by 24. Isn't that gorgeous? Retail, $450. 31D is An Evening at the Golden One Center by Ed Nordstrom. Photography, measuring 26 by 20. Retail, 300. We got a bid right now for 150. The next one is 31E. Jazz Boy, Adults Only is the title, by Rhonda Campbell. Photography measuring 14 by 14. The retail value is $325. And 31F is Navarro Beach, Mendocino County, by David Rutterman. Isn't that pretty? I'm sorry, Ruderman. And that's photography measuring 22 by 28. How rude of me to mispronounce his name. David Ruderman, okay? Retail value is $800. And David, you've already got an opening bid right now for 250. Fantastic. These are the artworks available to bid on this half hour. So let's see the art with our auctioneer and expert. Hello there, I'm Scott Syfax, and thank you for joining us for this Viewpoint Photographic Art Center break. I'm pleased to be here with art expert Rebecca Gregg to discuss the work this half hour. In addition to being a well-known photographer in the greater Sacramento region, Rebecca is a founding member of Viewpoint, which has been serving Sacramento for over 30 years. Rebecca continues to serve on the organization's board of directors, and thanks for being here today, Rebecca. Thank you for the opportunity, Scott. So we are looking at item 31A, Portofino Piazzetta by Rachel Rosenthal. This photography measures 25 by 31 and has a retail value of $350. Rebecca, take it away. Well, Scott, there's several things that I think any viewer would notice, and part of it is the serenity in this view, and also that there's a, a what a, an opposition between the buildings being so close to the water and this multitude of boats with, and there's not a person around. It's noon, you can tell that from the shadows underneath the boats. It's a very tranquil, quiet kind of uh, moment that the photographer, who's Rachel Rosenthal, is from Nevada City and uh, Nevada County, and uh, has been a a photographer for only a few years, but she travels and brings us back views like this of the world as we might hope to glimpse it. When you see the boats, the diagonals leading you out to uh, you know, this grand perspective all the way up to the castle on the hill, it's a, a very beautifully seen image. It, it's interesting when you look at the composition. I, I wonder what about the artist's background informs how she put it together. Do you have any thoughts on that? I know that in her style of working, she is trying to do, to see things so, that would inspire any viewer. So bring you back something that captures a sense of this place. Uh, Rachel is a, a retired educator and from a long, and an engineer uh, uh, having a really? field of math and engineering. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I think she pays close attention to the print quality, to the clarity. There's uh, the depth of field, to talk a little photo here. The interesting thing is that this building is as sharp as the one in the foreground. And so you're drawn to this grand piece of uh, expanse while you are seeing details at the same time. And I suspect that in her working life, she had to always see the overview while paying attention to the details. And the current bid is on the screen and the phone number is on your screen. We're gonna keep this open and move on. Beautiful piece. 
Now, item 31B is Desert Bighorn by Jan Lightfoot. This uh, photograph is measuring 18 by 24 and has a retail value of $425. Rebecca, when you look at this uh, just striking image, what does that say to you? Well, it is almost statuesque, isn't it? And yes. So Jan is uh, an avid nature photographer, but she and she connects with nature so well. And part of her aim is to help all of us be inspired to also connect. You know, part of what I like about this image is the warmth of the colors. Um, she has manipulated by changing the background from the exact location, but you don't think of that as unreal because the hyper reality of this majestic animal, the bighorn, he is very proud. The colors in his eye or the amber color re relates to the background colors uh, and the clarity, the texture of it. I think also the, the freedom that she had not to show the entire animal, you know, that we're seeing yeah. only this upper part. Uh I will tell you, this is your chance to get involved, folks. The number is up on your screen. This uh, piece, uh, the, the subject looks almost regal, wouldn't you say? Oh, yeah, <laughs> I would. Because of the lighting on the side lighting, actually, it, the light uh, is entering the image from this direction, which that kind of upper angled light causes the texture of the animal to show so much more. But you can see the catch light in his eyes. I love the way his head is lifted up in hyper alert, it seems. Um, but I think that it's timeless. Uh, you don't, there is, aren't clues to the time period except the warmth makes it feel like our hot summers. The other thing that, that's striking to me are the eyes. Mm. The, the eyes seem to communicate so much intelligence here. I could, I could see this hanging potentially, what do you think, like either in an office, a study, a library? A, a den. A den, you know, yeah. It, it's a very beautiful image, and I think he seems fully in control. You know, he's very alert, very aware of all around, and so I think that it has the kind of simplicity um, that even is accented in uh, this island presentation in the mat is is isolating him, and the whole image does that, too. I, uh, I think that being a nature photographer requires knowledge of where you are, but also a lot of patience. You're lucky to get an well, image and and this is selling right now and goes to support KVIE. Um, our, the numbers are open, and uh, this is just a magnificent piece. I agree. Any additional thoughts? One of the things that I think that uh, really do accent the foreground background is the way that the lighter spot behind him, uh, it carries you into a very softened background so that you're getting uh, a sense of how one can isolate an animal like this and not, and they kind of pop out of the scenery. Look at this detail on here. I mean, literally the image leaps out at you. It, it's it, just a very, very striking and singular work. Even his chin whiskers show. Let's keep this one open and we're gonna move on. Item 31C is Ancient Wisdom, If Only We Could Hear Their Howling Stories by Alan Fishleader. This photography measures 18 by 24 and has a retail value of $450. And Rebecca, when I look at this, it's like we're being transported away. What does this one say to you? Well, it, perhaps it's because we are approaching the Halloween season, but uh, I can't help but see faces, that, and of course the title, the howling in the title. Uh, I, I love the fact that he is using this directional line, you know, to this kind of leading line uh, along this uh, repetitious only that none of them are the same, but the forms are there as the same. But the, the mouths, the eyes that are there, it's uh, quite, quite an interesting It's funny image. because it, to me, it looks like almost a royal procession, like a parliament mm -hmm. of trees, ah, so yeah. to speak. I, I'm curious, you know, this, this particular piece really kind of transports you and takes you away. I wonder, do you know where this 
came from? It, it's near Woodland mm -hmm. uh, on a country road, you know, off of uh, 113. And uh, I think that uh, this these are very, very old, probably the oldest uh, olive trees in the area of, uh, of that it's in. And they've been there a long time. Obviously, life has touched them. The, um, one of the things that he is doing technically is that the depth of field or the focus uh, gets a slightly softer as the trees are further in the background. And you can also... Now's your see, time to get involved, folks. You can see the differences in the olive color and the background color, so that also makes them pop out. Right. Well, I, I did want to say, to go back to your theme about what time of year it is, this is a little bit kind of sleepy hollowish, oh. you know, and Halloweenish like this. If, if you are looking for a piece that people will comment about and will captivate them when they come into your home. This is one that's a keeper. Our, our lines are open and the number's up on the screen. Any additional thoughts, Rebecca? Well, Alan is an avid nature photographer and he is, I celebrate him for taking pictures close to home. And that, you know, we, it takes us certain kind of luck to see anything and a certain kind of uh, dedication to see the close at hand. Sometimes we overlook scenes like this one because they're common to our lives. We've seen them before, sure. perhaps, in sure. our own territory, but he's showing us this anew. Right, again, this is ancient wisdom. If only we could hear their howling stories by Alan Fishleader, and this piece is 18 by 24, it's perfect for so many areas uh, in your home, in your office, wherever it is that you want to place it. And like I said, this will be a conversation uh, starter. It's only, uh, reta its retail is at $450, but you know, to support KVIE, we, we hope that you come in and you make this one your own. All right, we're halfway through the, uh, the break, which means we're going to keep this piece open and check over at the recap station for bidding updates. Thank you so much. We are looking to hear from you right now with your bids on this great photography from Viewpoint. So here's a quick recap of the bidding activity so far. Here we go. Item 31A is Portofino Piazzetta by Rachel Rosenthal. Photography measuring 25 by 31. Isn't that gorgeous? It's a value of 350 and we've got a bid right now for $100. Pick up the phone, call the number on the screen, and that's how you place a bid. You can pick it up as early as today because we are open. The next piece is 31B Desert Bighorn by Jan Lightfoot. It's a showstopper. Photography measuring 18 by 24, and this retails for 425, and right now we're at a bid for 150. 31C is Ancient Wisdom. If only we could hear their howling stories. I love that image by Alan Fishleader. And this is photography measuring 18 by 24, retail 425. I hear something that I'm hoping will change. I don't hear the phones ringing right now. Let's get the phones ringing. We just got a bid for 150 for Ancient Wisdom. If only we could hear their howling stories. There's another phone ringing. We love to hear that. Pick up your phone and call the number and get involved in the art auction. And when you do, you are showing your support for PBS KVIE and all of these artists who have given these pieces to us so that we can sell them here today in an auction and all the proceeds go to PBS KVIE. Let's go through these fantastic pieces that are live right now for bid. 31A is Portofino Piazzetta by Rachel Rosenthal. This is photography measuring 25 by 31 and showing you again this gorgeous piece of art. And that is retailing for 350. And right now we have an, a bid of $100 on this one. Desert Bighorn is by Jan Lightfoot. This is photography, 18 by 24. Your measurements there, $425 uh, retail value. And we're at 150. Let's get these phones ringing, everybody. Pick up the phone and call the number on the screen. These pieces close so quickly. And this is Ancient Wisdom. If only we could hear their howling stories. I love the title by Alan Fishleader, photography 
be measuring 18 by 24, retails at 450. We have a bid right now for 150. So all the pieces here have bids, but they are not at retail value. So let's get these numbers going higher by calling the numbers on your screen. Also call somebody if you think they would like the works that you're seeing. I'm sure it makes you think of someone. So share that with them and have a conversation about art and then call us. Let's take a look at some more great photography from Viewpoint. And we are back for the second half of this Viewpoint Photographic Art Center segment. Up next, we're looking at item 31D, an evening at the Golden One Center by Ed Nordstrom. This photography measures 26 by 20 inches with a retail value of $300. Rebecca, this is obviously a very familiar landmark in Sacramento. Tell me what's happening here. Well, I like to quote, I'll quote Ed. He said he was there, he was on the second, you know, the upper level, and he saw an opportunity that he couldn't refuse. I think that is such a great way to talk about photography and the moment. You know, photography is about capturing the moment. And photography, the very word itself, means light writing. Well, here we can so appreciate the light because it's that time of day that is uh, the, called the blue hour. And so that's why that sky has Prussian blue in it. It and uh, it's so electric almost uh, to vivid vivid it's oh incredibly really vivid. vivid and then it's uh, echoed by the complementary colors of yellow that are on both sides of that perspective and what, one of the things that uh, I enjoy about this is the scale that's provided by the very small people there and none of them uh, they're mingling you know there's in stride for a few of them, but they give us a sense of proportion of how really uh, fantastic this is. And also the building in the background acts as kind of a stopper to our eye so that we are held in. So Ed, I think, uh, was right to take this opportunity. Well, when you look at, at this piece, it really makes you say, my gosh, <laughs> Sacramento's pretty darn exciting. And uh, how it draws you in. Tell us about how it is that the colors and just sort of the composition itself like speaks to us and, and kind of elicits these feelings of intrigue. I think they're energetic, don't you? The, yes. That the ones over on the right hand side, the windows there are almost uh, Tiffany-like, quilt-like uh, if you want to go from different kinds of materials, but the um, it's mirrored into little pieces that would make a great puzzle, wouldn't it? But I see this in someone's, uh, a sports fanatic, um, man cave oh, yes. place oh, yes. or uh, the room, you know, if you've gone to a favorite concert there, this would be hold a memory for you. Uh, it also uh, is telling it for all of us who love Sacramento and love seeing it become more, even more metropolitan and offering such entertainment venues as we now have. Well, folks, if you want to enliven up your family room, your, your man or woman or person cave, <laughs> whatever it may be, this is a piece for you. Call the number now, the current bid is on your screen, and this, uh, this piece can have a new home in your home uh, very, very soon. And we are going to keep this one open and we're gonna move on. All right, next is 31E, Jazz Boy. Adults Only by Rhonda Campbell. And this photography measures 14 by 14 and has a retail value of $325. Rebecca, there is a lot going on here. Uh, help, help us decode the magic of this particular work. Oh, what great words. Decoding is part of what looking at any photograph and what any viewer who studies something over time is doing. So uh, Rhonda Campbell is a uh, an artist who very much enjoys combining images. So this is a collage uh, done on the computer rather than with scissors and paste. And it is uh, from the Mammoth Jazz Festival. So there are a lot of things going on, including the uh, sense of being the smallness, the 14 by 14 size, is reminiscent of kind of being in this crowded place, listening to music. Uh, you'll see when you look at the details, there's a saxophone, but behind it, a violin. Uh, there are other instruments on the edges and, and a clarinet up in the upper right. Again, you have the complementary colors of blue and yellow. You also have some compu computer effects that are on the uh, young man's 
uh, legs where the there's a negative positive kind of energizing of the kind of unstable light. She Rhonda is known, I think, too, for uh, including words within her creations. And so, laissez le bon temps rouler is uh, let the good times roll. And so that we feel that in this. And it's contrary to the squareness. You know, when, when square images are very contained and often said to be the hardest shape uh, to make an energetic composition because they uh, evoke calmness and, and things contained rather than going off but this is not this is uncontained you can almost hear the sound oh of music. yes and it can be yours well, just call uh, um, let's get into this and uh, this one can be yours as well Rebecca question for you with all this going on the one thing that really jumps out is the young man <laughs> and I can't figure out whether musician, dancer, or, or he's some other player in this tableau. What do you think? Well, in Rhonda's, uh, in the talking with her, she pointed out this part where it says adults only in, in a sign. And he wasn't able to go and be on the dance floor. Ah. But he's dressed with uh, festive suspenders or and something around his neck, some beads around his neck. His hands are in his pockets as if he's resolved him uh, to not being able to dance. But he certainly looks like he would want to. Um, I, so I think that he's an innocent bystander who wants to be a little more grown up. Mm -hmm. you know? And again, this is Jazz Boy, Adults Only by Rhonda Campbell with a retail value of $325. And when I look at this, Rebecca, uh, it just reminds me of a smoky speakeasy, <laughs> maybe in New Orleans or something mm. like that. But you know that there, whatever's happening there tonight, it's going to be interesting. <laughs> I think it's there in there. We're going to keep this one open and we're going to move on. Item 31F is Navarro Beach, Mendocino County by David Ruderman. This photography measures 22 by 28 and has a retail value of $800. Now this one, Rebecca, you've got to walk us through this because it is so interesting in just its simplicity, but it really grabs your attention. It does. Uh, I th this who would know what the story is? David is an exquisite printer, and so the print quality alone, uh, just looking at the image in terms of the rich blacks, the vibrant uh, mid-tones that are there, and the highlights that are all captured, just the technical part are interesting to me. However, the story and the evocative nature of it is even more appealing because <laughs> I'm someone who, um, can see too much perhaps in images, but I see this as the driftwood crawling out, you know, some sort of alien form coming out of the ocean. I also see it as lovers on the beach. I, you know, hearkening back to some old movie probably, <laughs> or seeing it as people desperately trying to get to the water. You know, it's so interesting to me. And his composition accentuates these aren't stoppers, you know, you don't stop with them. In fact, you, they lead you further into these stacks that are out here so that there's a tremendous triangle going on between those two and these two, you know, pairs of things. Sure. And they're only things hinted at. It's a very deserted beach close uh, to sunrise. Rebecca, I'm curious, you know, um, people choose their own mediums. This artist chose to go in black and white. Uh, is there anything behind that particular choice for, for well, rendering a piece of art like this? I think one of the things that it does for this image is that the fog becomes more important then because fog, the colors would be very muted. But David himself works primarily in black and white. He's mm -hmm. been published many times in, in uh, Lens Culture uh, magazine and also Black and White magazine. Uh, he has you know, become an expert at seeing black and white uh, while you, very few people in the world see only in black and white. So it's a total translation then when you are taking a color uh, situation and enhancing the black and white response to it. Friends, this is one that is absolutely an eye catcher. Uh, that driftwood has a story to tell. I love 
all the stories <laughs> that, that you brought up, but it definitely has a story to tell. This is item 31F, Navarro Beach, Mendocino County, by David Ruderman. And uh, the we're open, we're, we're ready to go. This one could be yours. We are nearing the end of this break, which means that now is your final opportunity to bid on the art featured in this half hour. Now let's check in over at the recap station for an update on the auction bidding. Okay, thank you so much. Lots of excitement here in the recap station. Here's an update on all of the open items for this break. 31D is where we begin right now with an evening at the Golden One Center by Ed Nordstrom. This is photography, measures 26 by 20, retail value $300, and we have a bid right now for $150. Pick up the phone and call the number on the screen and get involved quickly because these go so fast. Item 31E is Jazz Boy Adults Only by Rhonda Campbell. This is photography, measuring 14 by 14, retail 325, and if you love jazz or know someone who's a jazz lover, this is a perfect gift for them. We need an opening bid right now of $100 on that piece. Will we get it? Pick up the phone and call. 31F is Navarro Beach, Mendocino County by David Ruderman. This is photography measuring 22 by 28. We have a bid right now for 250, which is fantastic. And we have a retail on this for $800. So when you pick up the phones and call, you are reaching some of the most friendly volunteers you will ever ask to speak with right here at PBS KVIE. They will walk you through the process. It is simple, but it requires you to do one thing, and that's to call and get into action. And when you do, you can even pick up the art if you're the winning bidder today because we're open till 5 o'clock for pickup, okay? I'm going to run through this entire half hour because it's an exciting half hour. This is item 31A, Portofino Piazzetta. This is a bid right now of 100 and we're trying to get 350 for this, which is the retail value. Photography measuring 25 by 31. Item 31D is Desert Bighorn by Jan Lightfoot. This is a bell ringer, yes! <laughs> Fantastic, now we got it going. Photography measuring 18 by 24, and these bell ringers are contagious, so make a call now. Value 425, we're at 450. It's gonna keep climbing. 31C, Ancient Wisdom, if only we could hear their howling stories by Alan Fishleader. If only we could hear more phones ringing, and there they go. Photography measuring 18 by 24. Retail, $450. We're at 150 right now, and let's see 200. Let's see 200 for ancient wisdom, if only we could hear their howling stories. Item 31D is an evening at the Golden One Center by Ed Nordstrom. Photography measuring, uh, measuring 26 by 20. Retail value is $300. So pick up the phone and call the number on your screen. Okay, um, and then the next piece is 31E, Jazz Boy, um, adults only. And this is by Rhonda Campbell, and we just got an opening bid of $100. $100 for the opening bid, which is fantastic for Jazz Boy, adults only. 31F is Navarro Beach, Mendocino County by David Ruderman. This is photography measuring 22 by 28, and we have 250 as well. Stay with us. There's more art coming up in the next half hour of the PBS KVIE Art Auction. How many people see what I see? In the symbolic patterns, I see the flowing water of the Tigris. In the handwoven knots, I see an artist's fingers play a loom like a harp. Mansour's Oriental Rug Gallery, celebrating over 40 years, with locations in Roseville and Sacramento. For a beautiful home in a beautiful world. PBS KVIE is committed to the visual and performing arts through national productions like All Creatures Great and Small on Masterpiece, to our local productions like KVIE Art Showcase, and through the PBS KVIE Gallery, exhibiting award-winning art auction artists and California masters. PBS KVIE's commitment to the arts stays strong because of your participation as a donor and art buyer. Thank you for being a part of the PBS KVIE Art Auction and for making art a part of your home today. 
Coming up next is artwork from Viewpoint Photographic Art Center. Located in Midtown Sacramento, Viewpoint focuses on the thriving, energetic, and supportive photographic community through exhibits, lectures, and events. View all of the galleries featured in this year's auction at kvie.org slash art auction. I'm Rob Stewart. We're back with another break from Viewpoint Photographic Art Center. And now here's an overview of the art that will be up for bid during the next half hour. It's a beautiful half hour. 32A is Lone Tree, Vancouver Island by Victoria Ruderman. This is photography measuring 28 by 22 and the retail value is $800. We have a bid for $300 right now. Item 32B, Graceful Lotus by Joey Johnson. Photography measuring 16 by 20, retail $300. And we have next, 32C is Reddish Egret Wave Retreat. Oh, how beautiful. By Leonard James. Photography measuring 24 by 30. This retails for $1,200. 32D is Barnes and Noble Elements by John Matthews. Photography measuring 22 by 24. And the retail on this one is $400. Item 32E is Shrimp, Plant and Urn by Judy Yemma. Photography measuring 38 by, I'm sorry, 28 by 22. And it retails for 800. This is your Jurors Award for photography right there on your screen. 32F is Young Harpy by Robert Flurkey. This is photography measuring 22, I'm sorry, 21 by 27. Retail value is $500. The phone lines are open for bidding. So let's take a look at the art with the auctioneer and the art expert. Hello, I'm Scott Syfax, and we are back for another round of photography featuring the work of Viewpoint Photographic Art Center artists. I'm joined once again by Rebecca Gregg to discuss this work this half hour. Rebecca, let's get started. But first, I would just want to welcome you and thank you so much for being a part of this. Oh, thank you, Scott. All right. Item 32A is Lone Tree, Vancouver Island by Victoria Ruderman. This photography measures 28 by 22 and has a retail value of $800. Rebecca, Tell us what you see when you look at this piece. The first thing I want to say is that Microsoft gave us the word landscape to, to imply that we were supposed to shoot landscape in the horizontal position. Part of what makes this image so fantastic is that it's done in the portrait as is computer language now calls it. Of course, this is vertical. It makes the upright quality and the isolation of this very calm, Asian feeling image. And it's totally lost scale. You don't know whether it's large or small. Uh, it is an early morning shot, but there's obviously very little wind. In fact, um, Victoria, who has spent many of her last uh, efforts in photography manipulating Polaroids and working with pastels and doing color and now has turned back to black and white and is making extraordinary efforts with printing uh, that there's so much uh, isolation and it's like there's a like it's on stage you know that this is the ballerina out there with the spotlight right on her so I'm intrigued by the softness of the water by the diagonal of the rock and by the lack of uh, information about the background except just uh, the blur so it's a very calm it feels so still uh, just very serene and uh, I'm, I'm wondering what do you make of the juxtaposition between uh, the small tree rising up and then its reflection against what appear to be other tree uh, trees that are moving in the opposite direction <laughs> Does this not remind you in some ways of the I think I can, I think I can kind of effort? Think how little soil is available to that tree. And e even in a rain, most of it would fall, you know, most of the water would fall away. So I would like to know the age of this. The tree is almost uh, uh, bonsai in effect, uh, you know, in its struggle. Now is your time to bid on this amazing piece of art. It does remind one of a bonsai in a beautiful, serene garden, or, um, but standing all by itself. 
this is, this is the peace you want in your home when you come home after a hard day and it will just completely transport you away. This is, again is item 32A Lone Tree, Vancouver Island by Victoria Rudiman. The lines are open. Folks, this is an amazing piece. You'll feel good if you do it. Final thoughts, Rebecca. Very meditative, I think. You know, this image uh, is quieting. Hmm. We're going to keep this one open and move on. Item 32B is Graceful Lotus by Joey Johnson. This photography measures 16 by 20 and has a retail value of $300. Rebecca, when you look at this piece, what feeling does it evoke in you? I see a dancer. You know, I, I really think that this um, has such theatrical qualities because the, the photographer um, has taken us to a place very local. This is Land Park. Really? Really. And so it, not only are we working close, but there's another meaning in that she has brought us close to the locus. Uh, as it's usually these are seen with the cup up, you know, and that's the more typical way. But look at how strong the stem of the diagonal and then that tremendous U-turn that and then the spotlight on the flower itself working uh, in the highlights of the sun on the flower, but into shooting into shadow. And I think that the isolation that Joey has done here is really, really beautiful. I think I used the word ballerina on the on Victoria's image and I feel that about this partly because of the color. It does and, and it seems so delicate and beautiful all at the same time. You know, I, I wonder when you look at something like this in isolation, what does it tell you about how photography can uh, sort of bring forth a different perspective than traditional brush art. I think that part of uh, photography is so realistic that when you are looking at those petals, it's almost as if you could touch them, you know, that they are actually there. And of course, the she's done some things to that highlight and push that forward, you know, so that there's so much dimensionality that, and yet it's a flat surface, but you feel the roundness, you feel the volume of the flower. And, and there's such a feminine and yet powerful way that this flower occupies the stage. Mm -hmm. The current bit is on the screen. The number is on your screen, folks. Another beautiful piece that could be yours. It's time to get involved right now. Don't delay. Any final thoughts, Rebecca? I just heard you say the word peace, P-I-E-C-E, -E, and the lotus is, of course, the symbol of peace. And so it's not spelled the same way, but I think this is a very peaceful image. Undoubtedly. We're going to keep this one open and move on. Item 32C is Reddish Egret Wave Retreat by Leonard James. This photography measures 24 by 30 and has a retail value of $1,200. And this one <laughs> leaps off the wall. Rebe Rebecca, <laughs> tell me how is this type of work even possible? Well, Digital uh, opens so many doors for us, you know, and one of the things with that, just talking a little bit of technical here for a second, this, the, Leonard did this shot at uh, one five thousandth of a second, you know, that's 5,000 Mississippi ones, you know, it's, it's amazing. Wow. <laughs> yeah, 5,000. So it's, it's amazing that that kind of, uh, with digital cameras, they can we can have shutters that are that fast, so that little spots of water are all stopped. His uh, the motion of the wings, we can see every bit of that. And when you're as close as Scott and I are able to enjoy this, which you would be able to in your own home, you can see the separation of all of these feathers and the intensity of the eyes. That's partly because the stop motion of that fast shutter. And for the photographers in the crowd, let me tell you that the ISO was 2,500. Uh, usually in the old days, we only shot as high as 400 in our sensitivity to light. And so you can stop the waves, stop the motion of this leaping reddish heron. Right. Folks, look at the detail up on this screen. This, uh, 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 this image is amazing. It looks like 
this egret is actually either dancing or might be a martial <laughs> artist. <laughs> I think volleyball, don't you? <laughs> and it is, and the, the thing that's so amazing, Rebecca, is it's printed on metal. Tell us a little bit about this particular medium for di displaying this type of work. Well, that's another thing that both harkens to the very, one of the very first photographs, the daguerreotype was on metal, and now with digital, uh, metal is a, a common choice for making a print, and let me tell you that they are very, uh, archival in there can even be displayed outside if there, it's not direct sun. Uh, they, they are very long lasting. You can buff fingerprints off of them so that it's, it's a very sturdy kind of image so it could ha it could be in your outside kitchen or in you know in the family room or reminding you, you that you want to go to the ocean to cool off. If you really want a snapshot uh, of a moment of life in action, this is it. Again, this is item 32C, Reddish Egret Wave Retreat by Leonard James. Uh, the, the bid is up on the screen and um, the phone number as well. Uh, please, this one is a one of a kind. Rebecca, any final thoughts on this one? Well, I've never seen a reddish egret, and so I had to do a little research. Uh, I think it, East Coast, Gulf Coast, um, the Caribbean area, but they're ne on the near endangered list, you know, so they're becoming more and more rare, and it's a rare image of that. So capture it now, folks. Uh, get involved. Uh, the lines are open. All right, we are halfway through the break, which means we're going to keep this piece open and check in over at the recap station for bidding updates. Okay, thank you so much. Here's a chance that you can have to win a fabulous photograph featured in this break. Our volunteers are standing by ready to take your calls right now. Let's go to 32A Lone Tree, Vancouver Island by Victoria Ruderman. This is photography measuring 28 by 22, retail 800. We have a bid right now for $300. Let's get that number up by picking up the phone. Call the number on your screen. This is a one of a kind creation specifically for you. 32B is Graceful Lotus. Is that not exquisite? By Joey Johnson. Photography measuring 16 by 20, retail $300. And this is a beautiful piece of art. We're looking for an opening bid. Right now, 32C is Reddish Egret Wave Retreat by Leonard James. This is photography measuring 24 by 30. This is a $1,200 value. We have a $400 bid right now. And I hear something that we need to change, and that is silence in here. Let's get the phones ringing by pick up the phone. Call the number on your screen, because when you do, you are taking part in the PBS KVIE art auction. We put this entire gallery together for you. Jill Estroff is our curator, put together 270 works that are one of a kind and created specifically for art lovers and those who are looking to start their collections or to give a gift right now is the perfect way to do so. Pick up the phone and call the number on your screen to do that. Let's hear them ring. Okay, 32A is Lone Tree, Vancouver Island by Victoria Ruderman. This is photography, 28 by uh, 22 retails at 800 and the bid right now is $300. 32B, Graceful Lotus by Joey Johnson. We are looking for an opening bid on this spectacular piece, $100. This is what happens during photography. People stare at the, the, the monitors because they're so pretty, but the time passes, so get on the phones. Retail value is $300, and we're looking for opening bid of $100. Also, 32C is Reddish Egret Wave Retreat by Leonard James, photography measuring 24 by 30. Retail value is $1,200. We have a bid right now for $400. Will you be the one to make the phones ring right now? Will you be the one to take home a piece of art by being the winning bidder? Will you be the one who shows up here today to pick up your art because we're open till five? Well, only you knows the, an knows the answer to that. So hopefully you will get active on that, okay? Let's head back to the art for the second half of this Viewpoint Break with Scott and Rebecca. All right, we are back for the second half of this Viewpoint Photographic Art Center break. Up next, we have item 32D, Barnes & Noble Elements by John Matthews. 
This is photography measuring 22 by 24 inches and has a retail value of $400. Rebecca, initial thoughts here. Kind of fanciful, like the book he calls it, as you said, uh, Barnes and Noble, and there is a sign that says that. Barnes and but Noble, right Barnes there. Barnes and Noble, mm -hmm. right there. And so uh, he was, I know John and, and know his um, interest in manipulating with various tools digitally so that he creates n new magic within the image. And so if we were to go to the Palladio in Folsom, this would not be the way that we were encountering it. He's created uh, an element with the trees that move uh, into like, um, the positive negative kind of feeling, the shadowy grays that come over the streets, uh, the street and street sign is here. And yet, when you look in the upper right hand corner of this image, it is as if you're in a, a Greek, um, you know, architectural yeah. feature. And that's part of the dreamlike quality of the palette that he's using. It's not really a traditional kind of black and white interpretation even. It's, uh, there is a sense of dreamland, a sense of bookstore with all the possibilities on the Other shelf. Otherworldly. Otherworldly. Mm -hmm. And in fact, uh, he said that he had been watching The Fifth Element, which you were aware of that movie, and it's- Bruce Willis uh, Bruce and Chris Willis Tucker. And, and the, that uh, it had a lot of imaginative qualities to this uh, saving the world. And it's almost as if we're walking through a different dimension here. Mm. Oh, oh, um, what were some of the techniques that were used here in order to generate this effect? I have to confess, I've never watched John at work, but I have often been amazed at the tool that ha what he can get out of Photoshop and other uh, layering and uh, HDR and you know se taking several exposures and combining those things because he's not limited by showing us what is, he shows us what could be. And so it's not easy to identify his technique or working, working method. Well, it, as you say, it's almost like we're looking, we're peeking behind mm. reality here, okay? Our reality and right behind our reality is this. This could be yours. And just to remind you, this is item 32D, Barnes and Noble Elements by John Matthews, measuring 22 by 24 with a retail value of $400, bids up on the screen and the lines are open. This is a work that will mesmerize and captivate you for hours on end, and it can be yours. Any additional thoughts, Rebecca? I like the one point perspective that he only hints at, you know, that this is moving back and it pulls us. I also really enjoy how it's high contrast, but still has gray elements so that the tree is transformed into cloud-like qualities. All right, well, we're gonna leave this open and we're going to move on now. Item 32E is Shrimp Plant and Urn by Judy Yemma. This photography measures 28 by 22 and has a retail value of $800. Incidentally, this particular piece won the Juror Award for Photography and it, it, it is really a piece that uh, makes you stop and pay attention. Rebecca, what are your thoughts here? Well, one of my thoughts is to congratulate Judy as well as congratulating anyone who uh, purchases this. Judy is also on the board and has been a longtime member of Viewpoint. And uh, in her practice as a photographer, she is a landscape, uh, enjoys the natural landscape, but uh, her work with flowers and still life is extraordinary. And in the recent time, she's been uh, working with new lighting and uh, some of her images are window uh, lit by natural light through the window and others are uh, by uh, large LED lights that are giving a softening to this. And that's what I think you'll experience when you see this in your, in, uh, home and can see on our screen now is the texture that's in the background. Our viewers are getting a sense of the composition here. What can you tell us uh, about what's going on? 
So this, it, the plant, uh, Judy's Garden, is uh, beautiful and wonderful. The plant, the shrimp plant, is in from her garden. I see the spheres and the repeated spheres that are going on in, in the urn itself. And it has an aged kind of quality, so it, it harkens back to uh, painting from uh, the earliest, uh, you know, in, in the kind of the French scholars who were doing sure. these studies. One of the things that you can tell, though, is that it's circular in its motion t that keeps you within the frame. As you're looking on screen now, you're seeing the dropping of the shrimp plant. You know, the shrimp plant is pink and very vibrant, uh, pink and kind of orange, and they drop those, uh, they shed these parts of the scales. It mimics the shape of the scales on uh, shrimp, and that's where its uh, common name comes from. But I so enjoy those leaves across the bottom because they establish a line against the, there's a, a disappearing line in the background here. Uh, and at each, the detail is so uh, fine and so carefully wrought. I th it, it, it is careful and it looks like the plant is balanced on a razor's edge and that, <laughs> you know, you caught it right at a moment where it could stay still or maybe could move. This is item 32E, Shrimp Plant and Urn by Judy Yemma, measuring 28 by 22 with a retail value of $800. The lines are open and the bid is up on the screen. Any final thoughts before we move on, Rebecca? I think the warm tone is uh, really appropriate. It, and also it has uh, elements that are it's traditional black and white uh, in the, the tonality, but there's a warmth to it that you feel uh, as being important uh, to hearken. That's part of why it harkens back to earlier techniques, I think, is that warm tone. All right, well, we're gonna keep this one open and move on. Item 32F is Young Harpy by Robert Flurkey. <laughs> this photography measures 21 by 27 and has a retail value of $500. And Rebecca, <laughs> if this one doesn't reach out and grab you, I don't know what does. What do you think? I think that this looks like a, a, a teenager waiting to be fed. <laughs> and in fact, this harpy uh, eagle, uh, Robert Forky was a, a, a biologist, um, a wildlife biologist, and in his retirement years, he continues to enjoy and make uh, images that are of to inspire us from nature. This image is taken in Brazil. He is up about 100 feet in the air. That, uh, you know, think how many telephone poles. That's wow, a 10-story really? building. Huh. Uh, and you can see, there's a kind of grumpy look on this uh, young harpy's uh, face. They only get fed uh, every few days, and so he looks like he's uh, had about enough. He's about 60 feet, um, Robert said, from him, and so this is another example of having a long lens can bring the details. I mean, when you can pick out individual feathers, you would never be able to see this. You know, we in the United States, we can only see a harpy eagle in, in a zoo, where the zoos have become... Uh, places where we're trying to make this species continue to be around us. I think he so masterfully isolates in this portrait, and you don't think of the birds having the ability to frown, <laughs> but this one uh, seems to be quite grumpy, I think, and, and serious. He's going to grow up into being a leader. It does look like uh, um, they're saying, don't mess with me. <laughs> yeah. I'm curious, once again, we, you know, when we look at pieces like this and the decision to use black and white rather than color, is, uh, is there a particular, uh, you know, rationale that artists consider when doing that? Oh, I'm sure that there are. Partly it will be related to the subject and partly related to the artist's preferred way of seeing. In a way, striking, pulling the color out, uh, this bird in maturity is actually gray and white, and uh, the adults have a tremendous um, top knot on them that distinguish them. These, this uh, looks a little more like he's had this, you know, his, uh, 
his bit of haircut. a haircut. Yeah, his haircut <laughs> down the middle is a little different. But here, I think the decision to take the color away still stays true to the bird itself, but lets you not uh, go wandering off into color that might be on the tree where he is perched. Um, or into any kind of shading in the background. Uh, it would instead uh, let you see the emotion and the tenacity in that bird's expression. Well, again, this is item 32F, Young Harpy by Robert Flurkey, measuring 21 by 27 with a retail value of $500. And we're gonna have to leave it there. And we are nearing the end of this break, which means that now is your opportunity to bid on the art featured in this half hour from Viewpoint Photographic Art Center. I'd like to thank Rebecca Gregg for being here to represent the gallery and today as an amazing art expert. Thank you, Rebecca. And now let's check in over at the recap station for an update on the auction bidding. All righty, Scott, thank you. The number is on your screen. And now's the time to pick up the phone and call as we are hearing, love hearing the phone rings. Why don't you make one ring too, okay? Let's start at 32D Barnes and Noble Elements by John Matthews Photography, measuring 22 by 24, retail 400. We just got a bid for $300. Let's take this up to retail status by another bid to get it to $400. 32E is Shrimp Plant and Urn by Judy Yemma. What a gorgeous piece. This is a juror award-winning photograph. It won the Juror's Award in photography, and we need an opening bid for 250 on this piece. This is a photography, 28 by 22 again. We're looking for an opening bid on this gorgeous piece. This is a harpy eagle. Isn't it adorable? It's 32F, but it's called Young Harpy by Robert Flurkey. Photography measuring 21 by 27. That is adorable. It is a retail value of $500. We got a $150 bid right now. We're calling for 200 to bring that piece up because these pieces will fly away just like that bird when it grows up. They're just gonna fly right out of here. But you have to pick up the phone and call and be the winning bidder to get it. Our doors are open out front right now with secured methods to pick up your piece of art by calling the number on your screen, 844-KVIE-ART. And when you do, you will speak to one of our wonderful volunteers who's waiting to speak with you. Speak with you about the piece that you want, okay? We're gonna go through this whole half hour for you really quickly so you can see what we have and then call quickly. 32A is Lone Tree, Vancouver Island by Victoria Ruderman, photography measuring 28 by 22, retail value $800. Item 32B is Graceful Lotus by Joey Johnson. We have a bid right now of $100 for this gorgeous lotus and this measures 16 by 20. 32C is Reddish Egret Rave Retreat by Leonard James. This is now at 650. It's a little more than half of retail. And this is a showstopper. Look at that piece right there on your screen. It is absolutely gorgeous. Barnes and Noble Elements by John Matthews. We have a $300 bid for this piece. It retails for 400. This is exquisite. I thought that was a painting looking at it across the studio. It is so beautiful. Okay, the next one is 32E, which is your Juror award-winning photography piece. This is photography measuring 28 by 22, and we are looking for an opening bid of just $200. Will you be the opening bid? Pick up the phone and call and you can be. And 32F is Young Harpy by Robert Flurkey, photography measuring 21 by 27, and this has a bid right now of 175. So much beautiful art. I have to really stress, we're looking for an opening bid on the Jurors Award winner for the photography section. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous piece of art. Okay, that is 32F, by the way. Stay with us. There is more art coming up in the next half hour of the PBS KVIE Art Auction. Welcome to the 42nd Annual PBS KVIE Art Auction. Join us all weekend for a celebration of Northern California's visual arts. Over 270 works of art will be auctioned off to the highest bidder, and you can be part of the action by watching and bidding on your favorite artwork. View the entire collection online at kvie.org slash art auction. 
Then, when your favorite item appears, call 1-844-KVIE-ART to place your bid. Auction proceeds benefit the programs and services of your PBS station, KVIE. So thank you for watching and bidding. And now, let the auction begin. Bidding on items in the art auction is quick and easy to do. First, explore the collection online at kvie.org slash art auction. Or keep watching PBS KVIE. When a piece of art catches your eye, call 1-844-KVIE-ART and a volunteer will assist you. KVIE accepts all major credit cards for your art purchase, and a member of our accounting team will confirm your payment within five minutes of item sale. Thank you for being a part of the PBS KVIE Art Auction and for making art a part of your home today. Coming up next is the landscape category. Awards juried by Philippe Gandiel, landscapes celebrate the natural beauty throughout our region and beyond. View all of the art featured in this year's collection at kvie.org slash art auction. Good afternoon, I'm Donna Epidone. Thanks for joining us for this landscape break. We have an overview of the art that will be up for bid during the next half hour. First is item 33A, Mount Shasta in December by Connie Carson Romano. This is oil on canvas measuring 18 by 24. The retail value is $675. Next, 33B, Sonoma Coast Symphony by Velma Davidson. This is oil on panel measuring 21 by 27 inches. Retail value is $2,100. Item 33C is California Burning by Judy Day. This is watercolor measuring 20 by 16 with retail value of $300. Item 33D is Blending by Vicki Foote. This is acrylic on canvas, measuring 28 by 12. Retail value is $400. 33E is called Big Field Tree by Bob Green. This is acrylic on canvas, measuring 36 by 24. Retail value is $800. And the last for this half hour, item 33F is Petoskey Bridge by Barry Jameson. This is pastels, measuring 16 by 20 inches. Retail value is $525. Now let's head over to see the art with our auctioneer and our art expert. Hi there, I'm Jessica Lasky, and thank you for joining us for this landscape segment. During the break, I am pleased to be here with art expert Natalie Nelson. For the past 18 years, Natalie has worked as the director of the Pence Gallery in Davis. In addition to her vast experience curating gallery exhibitions, Natalie has worked extensively in managing arts-focused educational programs for children and adults at Pence Gallery, the Crocker Art Museum, and beyond. Welcome, Natalie, and thank you for being here with us. Thank you so much. I'm so glad to be back. Oh, good. We're glad to have you back. So let's get started. We're going to start with item 33A, which is Mount Shasta in December by Connie Carson Romano. This is oil on canvas measuring 18 by 24, and the retail value is $675. This is a beautiful piece, and I'm obviously immediately struck by the blue. Can you kind of tell us about how Absolutely. this color speaks to you? That's yeah. something that I noticed right off, too, was this artist's use of basically white and blue to dominate the whole landscape and give us a sense not only of the, the time of year, but also just kind of the chill in the air. Yes. There's a kind of a crisp air over here. She has no clouds. And you can see in the foreground, it almost looks like snow drifts are coming across yes. Shasta. I'm a little cold looking yeah, at it, absolutely. quite honestly. <laughs> and it's, well, it's if, such an iconic place. It really is, yes. I want to actually ask you more about that. Um, but first, I have to remind our viewers at home, if this is a piece that you would like to have in your home, because it is beautiful, also with those colors, those rich blues, those sort of stark whites, this would look wonderful wherever you decided to put it. It would go with a variety of decors, which means that you need to call in and and bid. So the current bid is currently listed on your screen. Call the number on your screen to have a piece. These are all original pieces that we're going to be looking at. And uh, ones like this that are just 
so beautiful, so richly done. Um, and again, Natalie, like you were saying, with the color composition too, it's interesting, she's actually able to sort of evoke the season as well? Absolutely, and I think Shasta is one of those places that looks so dramatic all year round, but particularly in the winter. Yeah. And just the way that she makes this shape so simplified, um, especially on this snow kind of mountain over here, I think it just is really lovely to show kind of the, the angle of the mountain mm -hmm. and just its height, it's really, really dramatic. It's also almost geometric. I think yeah. it's interesting because obviously this is like I said, it's oil on canvas, so she gets that richness of pigment, but that way she's actually able to bring in some detail of like that, the different rock faces and everything. Absolutely, I noticed that too, to really kind of bring out these different shapes and really make it look three-dimensional, almost as if you were there. Yes, yeah, you can you can feel the chill yeah, coming off the Yeah, absolutely, peaks. <laughs> and she was there. She saw it and took a photograph of it. So oh, excellent, that's great, that. yeah. And just as a reminder, this is item 33A. It is Mount Shasta in December. Ah, oh, that's why it's cold. Mm -hmm. This is by Connie Carson Romano. It is oil on canvas measuring 18 by 24 with a retail value of 675 dollars and final thoughts about this piece I mean other than it's making me both want to go to the mountains and Absolutely. also be cozy with a cup of cocoa I think it would be a great reminder for anyone who loves um, California natural places as well as Mount Chest in particular definitely Just to be able to look at this every day so call in and we're gonna make keep this open and we're gonna move on to our next piece our next piece is item 33 B Sonoma Coast Symphony by Velma Davidson this is oil on panel, measuring 21 by 27. The retail value is $2,100. Now, the first thing I think of when I see this piece, but also hear the title, Sonoma Coast Symphony, is there something behind that title? Absolutely. Um, Davidson was writing about how all the pieces of this composition just came together when she was working on the painting. From in the foreground, these ice plants that have these beautiful colors, to just the crashing waves, and then she was looking at all of kind of the cliff face. And in painting that, she really felt like the composition was more of a, of a symphony, and it was all mm. working together, all the different parts, which I is why that. she calls it that. Yeah, you can really see that. I mean, like you were talking about all of the different elements, especially because, again, this is oil, and so the fact that you get that sharp detail and those really mm -hmm. intense little tiny colors with the ice plants, you can really feel like you're there, especially the Sonoma Coast, how many of us are familiar with the Sonoma Coast. If this is a piece that you would like in your home to remind you of that sound, the beautiful crashing waves and the breeze, call the number on your screen. The current bid is also on your screen. And it is a wonderful piece to be able to have, um, especially to remind you, yes, but also it's very peaceful looking at it. The composition of it sort of lets you get carried away. Absolutely, and I love the way she's chosen to depict the water in this kind of turquoise formation with these lapping waves, and it really draws you into what's going on with the waves and kind of coming up into the beach. So she really puts you in the landscape and makes you feel like you're right there at Bodega Bay, yes. being surrounded by all of this. Yeah, yeah, like you're on the little mountaintop. Absolutely. Especially as you're talking about with the, with the waves coming yeah. crashing in and blending with the sand, um, that you can actually see that sort of mixing of nature. Absolutely, and you can see that in her brushwork where she's combining these different colors and brush strokes to combine those two different areas of the land. Yeah, especially because oil is not necessarily a very easy medium to work no. with. It's definitely not, but she uses it really well to pick up these colors, these different textures of the plants, as well as the rock formations and the cliffs. Yes, and as a reminder, this is item 33B, Sonoma Coast Symphony by Velma Davidson. It is oil on panel, measuring 21 by 27, with a retail value of $2,100. Now, as we're also looking at it, I mean, it almost has an abstract or an impressionistic quality. Can you kind of talk about Absolutely. how she sort of saw it? And the, the artist definitely paints an impressionistic style, meaning she has looser brushwork. She doesn't love to make details really defined um, so that colors can be paired next to each other. It makes them more vibrant. It really gives a loose kind of casual feel almost to the scene, um, kind of a very active composition. So you see that particularly in the waves and then in the way that she's combined colors in the water. I love that, just yeah. beautiful. We're gonna keep it open and we're gonna move on to our next item. So make sure you are calling the number on your screen. 
Our next item is 33C California Burning by Judy Day. This is watercolor measuring 20 by 16 with a retail value of $300. Now, with something like this, especially with its title, what does this make you think of immediately? Um, well, definitely of California the past couple of years yeah. and what we've experienced in Northern California in particular, a lot of the fires. Um, but I also think, um, you know, again, we, we see this beautiful mountain lake and I think of all these communities here that we need to remember to help as well as to think about the impact of a lot of these fires on them. Definitely. Especially you doing something so beautiful out of something that was obviously, you know, destructive and, and sad. But the fact that she really is able to bring out those colors and again, watercolor, also not an easy medium, um, but she really masters that sense of heat and smoke um, and it's it's really just beautiful especially considering I mean if you're watching this you're probably Californian or at least live here and it's one of those pieces that can really evoke what we love about California obviously the fires not so much right but it's something that you probably um, would love to see on your wall any any day and any time um, so make sure that you are calling the number on your screen the current bid is also listed on your screen um, so tell me more about sort of what this evokes for you absolutely um, I did a little research and Judy Day the artist actually um, she didn't witness the fires directly, but she had some photographs and her sister lost her house in the Creek Fire of 2020. Um, so a lot of this is inspired by that and this beautiful little lake here, um, she said is based on, I believe it's Shaver Lake, um, as well as you can see what she's done with the sky is to really show that kind of impending fire coming. Yeah. Um, at the same time, you think, well, maybe it's a sunset, you know, and you have these gorgeous, evergreen trees. Yeah. So again, kind of pairing this beauty of nature with kind of the destructive possibility of fire, I think in one image is really powerful. It really is, especially like you said, nature. I mean, it's nature. It, it's fire is part of nature. Absolutely. Not fire is part of nature. Exactly. Yeah. The, the calm of the lake is ready yes. to get, you know, um, altered. Yes, exactly. Especially the, the silhouetting of the trees where it's got that, that almost very sweet um, sort of calming presence right. while, you know, with also having that, that vibrant color of... Absolutely. That's impending. a good point about the silhouetting, how she outlines them and kind of alters the color a little bit so you see trees behind each other, but then behind you see this vast color. Yes, which just is coming, coming in, at you. Right, yeah. and reflected down here as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. And speaking of coming at you, if you want this piece in your home, again, these are all original art pieces, the time is now. Uh, call that number on your screen. The current bid is also listed on your screen and once these are, are closed that's it you don't have a chance to bid on them again so make sure if you're interested in this piece or any of the pieces we've seen so far make sure you're calling in all of the proceeds go towards supporting the program that you love on PBS KVIE and this is definitely one of those wonderful examples of the amazing original art that we get to have in this auction. Absolutely. Any final thoughts about this piece? I just think art is meant to make you think and this piece really evokes a lot of thought and really makes you think about the artist's own journey um, in processing the fires. Yes, that's, that's a great reminder, the journey, yeah. All right, well, we are halfway through the break, which means we're going to keep this piece open and check in over at the recap station for bidding updates. All right, some fantastic artwork available for you to bid on in this break. This portion of the art auction is sponsored by Mansour's Oriental Rug Gallery, and we'd like to thank them for their commitment to supporting the arts on PBS KVIE. Okay, the number to call is on your screen. Let's recap the bidding activity for these first few items. Item 33A is Mount Shasta in December by Connie Carson Romano. Oil on canvas measuring 18 by 24. Retail value is $675. We have a bid of 350 for this piece. So I know we can go a little bit higher. You can see the sun, you can see the shadows on this piece. It's just like being there except in your own home or office. It's perfect. Item 33B is Sonoma Coast Symphony by Velma Davidson. This is oil on panel, measuring 21 by 27. You can just hear the waves crashing against the beach there, can't you? The retail value for this is $2,100. We're looking for a starting bid of $625 on this. You could be the first person to start the auction for Sonoma Coast Symphony. Item 33C is California Burning by Judy Day. 
This is watercolor measuring 20 by 16. The retail value is $300. We have a high bid right now of $235 for California burning. We might be able to take that all the way up to 300, maybe even higher. It really captures the power of the fire and the smoke that we know way too well. I'll tell you what, this is your opportunity to make your bid for one of these pieces of art. Why would you put this off? This is perfect. One of these is going to look so good in your home, in your office, or maybe even as a gift to someone you know. All you have to do is call the number on your screen, decide how much you want to bid on one of these pieces of art, and then do it. What could be any easier than that? And you know, all of the artists who contribute their art for the art auction do so from the goodness of their heart because they want to continue arts and culture programming on PBS KVIE. You're really doing very much the same thing when you make your bid. Let's go over these again. Item 33A is Mount Shasta in December by Connie Carson Romano. Oil on canvas measuring 18 by 24 with a retail value of $675 and a high bid of $375. 33B is Sonoma Coast Symphony by Velma Davidson, oil on panel, measuring 21 by 27, retail value $2,100. We're looking for a starting bid on Sonoma Coast Symphony of $450. Why don't you kick that off? And then 33C, California Burning by Judy Day, watercolor, measuring 20 by 16, with a retail value of $300. <laughs> A bell ringer, how about that? We did that, you did that. You're the person who makes this possible. Every bell ringer makes such a big difference to everything you watch on PBS KVIE. That's the news from the recap station. Let's see some more art. All right, we are back for the second half of this landscape break. Up next, we're looking at item 33D, which is Blending by Vicki Foote. This is acrylic on canvas, measuring 28 by 12 inches, and it has a retail value of $400. So Natalie, tell me, what, what place does this make you think of? Uh, right away, I thought of Sacramento, but it's funny, you just, you see what you want to see. Yeah. Because I think, especially, I, I live in Davis, so I'm thinking of the river and kind of coming into Sacramento and seeing the river and the buildings of downtown, but right away you said you thought of a different place. I thought of New York because right. I used to live there. And so, yeah, the, that interesting quality of it's whatever your imagination takes you or your memory, like Absolutely. you're saying with Davis. Yeah, it's where you live. It's also really interesting to me the composition that the, the sort of the horizon is lower. Can you talk about that? Absolutely. And an artist does that a lot of times because they want to focus on the sky. And the mm. sky is amazing in terms of the pastels that she uses. You can see, again, the blending that she refers to in the title is partially about the color blending, but mm. it's also the blending of the water and the buildings. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, all of the different compositional elements. Right. That makes sense. Right. So if you kind of put the composition lower, it makes everything look a little bit larger and more grandiose at the top. Uh. Oh, that's a really interesting technique. I love yeah. that. Well, no matter what this makes you think of, whichever city that you are reminiscing about, uh, make sure that if you want it in your home, that you are calling the number on your screen, that you are um, looking at the current bid. Uh, that is what the item is going for right now. So if you want in, make sure you are calling and all of your proceeds. Again, they benefit the station and uh, all of that programming that you love so much on PBS KVIE. So can you also tell me a little bit, you mentioned that blending obviously refers to how she's treated the paint. Right. Um, can you talk kind of about the colors? Because they're I, I love the way that she paints. It's yeah. really interesting because if you get up close to it, especially in the foreground, you can see kind of this crosshatch brush marks. Mm -hmm. So she's using kind of an underlayer here, of kind of blues and maybe a little bit of purple. And then on top, she's got these very loose brush strokes that are white and this purplish lavender color. It's a mm -hmm. really different way of putting on color and I really love it. It's, it's really interesting, gives you a sense of the reflections of the buildings as well as the clouds and the water. Yes, yeah, you kind of get both elements all together, yeah. And especially with the sky, I mean, there are so many colors in the sky, Absolutely. especially you were talking about underpainting. I'm like, I can see at least seven colors in Absolutely. there. Absolutely, <laughs> and the texture she puts on makes you yeah. think of clouds and she's got 
wonderful kind of sense of movement through the sky. So you really kind of look upwards towards that blue at the top. Absolutely. And again, this is item 33D, Blending by Vicky Foote. This is acrylic on canvas measuring 28 by 12, and the retail value is $400. And the current bid is on your screen. So make sure you are calling that number to have this amazing piece in your home. So you can kind of just stare at it. Honestly, it gets my imagination going because I'm thinking, well, what city could this be? I wonder what people are doing down at the waterfront. What time of day is it? Exactly. Yeah. What are people doing? Are there tiny people down there having breakfast or nice. dinner. <laughs> I think yeah. a great work of art can raise more questions than it answers, and this piece certainly does that. I love that. I love that. Well, we're going to keep it open, and we're going to move on to our next piece. All right, our next item is 33E, Big Field Tree by Bob Green. This is acrylic on canvas, measuring 36 by 24, with a retail value of $800. Now, I am immediately struck by, actually, the size. This, sort of the scale of the piece itself, but obviously the subject matter as well, is very dramatic. Absolutely. This is a larger canvas, and yes. it really focuses on a big subject, which is this field tree. He said he was really um, amazed by the size of this tree, he had to get it on canvas, and then you can see contrast it with this smaller kind of conifer tree here. Yeah, it's really sweet, especially, again, the color. I love the color and the texture. Can you kind of tell me, the camera obviously will be able to pick up this amazing texture how did he achieve that? Um, the artist loves to use textured gesso underneath. And gesso is kind of like a base kind of paint. Um, usually it's tinted. Hmm. And so you can get some unusual effects with it. And we see it in a couple pieces at KVIE auction. And so you can maybe make the tree textured. You can make the foreground different kinds of plants. And then hmm. you can layer pigment on top of it to really give it an interesting kind of three-dimensional effect. Yeah, OK, so the color can actually go on top of that gesso so Absolutely. that it comes through. Oh, that's really interesting. I also notice um, the signature that the camera can probably pick up in the lower left hand corner is a signature. Now the artist's name is Bob Green. That is what I am reading on my card. However, the signature does not exactly look like that, and I think, Natalie, you know why. Um, I read that he uses Bobert as his artist's name. So sometimes artists do that. They want a, a different name um, to reference their paintings, and they'll sign it like that. Mm -hmm. And apparently he was traveling in a different country, and they didn't know his name, and so they put down Bober and they called him that when he came to register and he thought that was so funny that he yeah. decided that would be kind of his artist's name. I love that. Bober. That's so cool, yeah. And it gives it a little something different. He's like, yeah. oh no, Bob Green is my like outside in the world name. Absolutely. This is my artist's name. Yeah, my creative name. That. Yeah. Well, if you need to get creative, you need to get on that phone because the current bid is listed on your screen. Call the number on your screen to add this piece to your collection, add any of the pieces that we've seen so far. Again, all of the proceeds go to your PBS KVIE station, all of the programming that you know and love. And again, this is all original artwork. This was done by real hands, real people, um, and you can really tell the difference. I mean, these are stunning pieces of work, especially with, like, we were talking about the texture and the color. It really makes a difference having it be done Originally, I mean, it's, it's I agree yeah. and seeing the artist hand. There's nothing like it and seeing the way they apply the color and just his point of view is so unusual with focusing on this giant tree paired with this huge field. Yeah. And then the little tiny conifer, like you mentioned, too. Obviously, it's not that tiny because, again, this piece is, is a good size. It's uh, 36 by 24. So it's it's a nice size piece. It would really go anywhere, no matter what your decor Absolutely. is, because there are so many colors. Um, and it has, again, that sort of impressionistic quality, a hazy quality. It does. He loves the impressionist style of painting and really choosing colors that blend kind of in your eye on canvas rather than mixing them on his palette. Oh, that's interesting. Great. Well, we're going to keep this piece open and we're going to move on to our next one. So make sure you are calling that phone number. All right, our next item is 33F Petoskey Bridge by Barry Jameson. This is pastel measuring 16 by 20 with a retail value of $525. Now, I have to plead ignorance because I don't know where Petoskey Bridge is, but I don't know that it's in California. Do you know? Um, I do know. It is actually in upstate Michigan. Oh. And the artist 
took a photograph of this, made a sketch, and came back in, in two different studios and did depictions of it with pastels. He works largely with uh, soft pastels on the sanded paper, and you can kind of see down here in the foreground, the rocks, you can see a little bit of the paper surface that's not covered. Oh, that's yeah. actually paper. Oh, interesting. And it looks a little bit like sandpaper and actually yeah. does have a grit to it, and artists actually make that sometimes, and this artist does that. Wow, that's interesting, especially yeah. that it gives that, that really textural, sort of realistic Absolutely. quality, because rocks are obviously kind yeah. of sandy, <laughs> sandpapery. And it's also a very practical thing. It holds the pigment as well. Yeah. I was going to say, because pastel, I'm used to seeing sort of wide swaths of color, color with pastel, not the really tiny detail. This is very This intricate. is amazing, yeah. yeah, in terms of its use of of chalk pastels. We were looking earlier at the grasses here and kind of just the little dots of color that he puts in, probably with the tip of the pastel. Yeah. Um, and just gets these tiny little lines here for the trees and all the changing colors of autumn. It really almost looks like a photograph. I mean, it's it it's does. kind of amazing. And then knowing, obviously, when you get up close and you can see it in the camera, that that detail really is by a hand, a very deft hand. Absolutely. Um, I also love the contrast of the bridge, kind of this man-made structure with nature behind it. Yeah. And it kind of makes two little windows that you look into to see the background oh, I here. I love that. Yeah, well, if you're looking to put something next to your window, see what I did there? Make sure that you are calling the number on your screen. The bid is also on your screen, the current bid. Uh, make sure that you are, you know, hopping on that phone because once these pieces are closed, they are closed and you will miss the opportunity to take a piece like this home especially because all of these pieces are so beautiful. The proceeds benefit, obviously, PBS KVIE, but you need more original art in your house. I mean, you really do. We all do. It's something that it makes a difference when you're looking at it. You can feel more emotion. You feel more connected knowing that it was actually done by a human. <laughs> Absolutely. It makes you want to go out into nature, too, when you see things like this. It really does. And again, this is item 33F, Petoskey Bridge by Barry Jamison. It's in pastel, again, which is just incredible, measuring 16 by 20 with a retail value of $525. Natalie, at 30 seconds left, anything else you want to say about We this? didn't mention the water. The way he does the water, I think that's extraordinary down here with kind of the little rapids as well as the reflections from the grasses. And obviously we know from being around the Sacramento River, just the drama of the water as it rises and falls. Mm -hmm. I think that really combines together in this piece to give it a sense of unity. I, I love that. You can feel, almost feel the movement. Yeah. yeah. Well, we are nearing the end of this break, which means that now is your final opportunity to bid on the art featured in this half hour. Now let's check in over at the recap station for an update on auction bidding. Okay, you've now seen all of the artwork for the break. We're gonna have an update on the bids for our remaining items. I think you can probably hear the energy behind me in this room. There's a lot of energy because a lot of bids are coming in. There's a lot of excitement because a lot of people wanna get their hands on this art. So here is a little bit of a rundown on what's going on. First of all, 33D Blending by Vicki Foote. The retail value for this piece is $400. We we have a bid right now of $150. I know we can go a little bit higher than that and get a little bit closer to $400. And you could be the person who does that. That'll be exciting right there. Next up, we have 33E, Big Field Tree by Bob Green. The retail value of this is $800. We're on our way. We have a bid, a high bid of $450 for this. It says $425 on your screen. So we're well on our way to getting to that full value for Bob Green's Big Field Tree. Now it's 500. See how fast that happens? You have to really keep your eye on this. You have to keep your face to that phone all the time. The number is on your screen and you can keep going on this. Next, we have 33F, Petoskey Bridge, which we now know is in Michigan. Barry Jamison made that for us. The retail value is $525. Our high bid right now is $150. From, I'll tell you, there's a lot going on here. Item 33A, Mount Shasta in December by Connie Carson Romano. Retail value $675. We have a high bid of $375. Sonoma Coast Symphony 33B by Velma Davidson. Retail value $2,100. Our bid is $725. It's a bidding war going on right now for Sonoma Coast Symphony. 
33C, California Burning by Judy Day is a bell ringer. All right, that's pretty cool. 33D is Blending by Vicky Foot. Retail value $400. We're up to $150 for that magnificent, beautiful uh, landscape there. 33E, Big Field Tree by Bob Green. Retail value is $800. We are up to $625, a little bit higher than what it says on your screen. We can just keep going with that one. And 33F is Petoskey Bridge by Barry Jameson. Retail value $525. $5. We have a high bid of $150. Be, be nice to have that in your home, wouldn't it? Stay with us. There's more art coming up in the next half hour of the PBS KVIE Art Auction. Picking up your purchased artwork is quick and easy to do. Visit PBS KVIE Sunday through Tuesday during these posted hours to claim your art. All purchased artwork must be claimed within 30 days of auction closure. For questions, location, and hours, visit kvie.org slash art auction. Thank you for being a part of the PBS KVIE Art Auction and for making art a part of your home today. Coming up next is the photography category. Awards juried by Gordon Lazzaroni. This category features a selection of photographs, limited editions, and etchings. View all of the art featured in this year's auction at kvie.org slash art auction. Hi, I'm Donna Apidoni. Thank you for joining us for this photography break. And now here's an overview of the art that will come, be coming up for bid during the next half hour. First of all, we have 34A. It's called Transformation Bridge. The artist is Louise Vidari. This is photography, measuring 20 by 15. The retail value is $300. 34B is Southwestern Violets by Anna Barber. This is digital illustration measuring 20 by 32 with a retail value of $500. 34C is Old Boat by Marianne Carrasco. This is photography measuring 18 by 24. It has a retail value of $325. 34D, Evening Noyo Harbor by Betty Bishop. This is photography measuring 26 by 20 with a retail value of $250. Item 34E is Autumn Flame by Paula DeLeo. Photography measuring 16 by 20. Framing services provided by University Arts Center. The retail value of this piece is $275. And the last for this half hour is 34F, Paradise Found by Diane Hill. This is photography measuring 32 by 32, and it has a retail value of $400. The phones are open for bidding. Now let's see the art with our auctioneer and our art expert. Hi there, I'm Jessica Lasky, and thank you for joining us for this photography category. During the break, I'm pleased to be here again with art expert Natalie Nelson. Lots of great artwork to explore this half hour, so stick around and make sure you are calling that phone number. So let's get started with our first item, 34A, which is Transformation Bridge by Louise Vidari. This is photography measuring 20 by 15 with a retail value of $300. Now, right off the bat, I'm noticing this is photography, but it looks a little different. Do you know why? <laughs> it does. Um, this is a digital photograph, so it's something that Louise took on her digital camera, went home, edited it on a computer, and changed it in terms of the shadows and the colors. There might be some other overlays here, but you can definitely see how the tower is really highlighted, and there's kind of that glint here, mm -hmm. as well as some of the texture under here, I think might be a later addition or a filter. So you can mm -hmm. do so much on your computer nowadays to alter digital images so that you might start with an image of the Tower Bridge, but you're changing it drastically. Yeah, hence transformation perhaps you're trans like in the title. <laughs> Absolutely, you're transforming into something new and different, which Excellent. is so exciting. It really is, especially with all of these new mediums that are coming out now. I mean, that have also, dating myself, they've been around a while, <laughs> all of this true. digital photography, but but really seeing it in, in an artist's hand, how interesting and different something can look. Yes. Um, and especially if you love photography, if you love Sacramento, this is an, an iconic place in our city, uh, make sure you are calling that number on your screen 
screen. Make sure you are checking the current bid to know where the bidding is so that you can get in on it. Um, and again, this piece, I mentioned transformation, and I think, Natalie, you said that Louise had something to say about her own transformation? Right, so she did title it Bridge of Transformation because she said she was going through a change at this point and she really felt like bridges are always this pointing to a better place. And mm. so it was kind of an optimistic uh, photograph for her. And I think also emphasizing the tower as well as kind of this diagonal direction. You get this sense of movement and positive feelings. Yeah. Um, certainly like the gold color as well as this beautiful heavenly sky. No clouds, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, really makes you think of this positive place. It really does. It's a very happy photo. It is. Yeah. And especially I think too the, the sort of angle of it is interesting too because it's not just the classic bridge it photo. It's like, right. you're not driving on it like yes. we normally are. Yeah. She was actually on a boat underneath going uh, rather quickly and uh, she had to snap it very quickly to get this point of view. Yeah. Um, and she was so excited because when she saw it, she just knew it was going to be a great photo. Yeah. The artist I knows. They, <laughs> She's she like, I got it. Know. Yeah. Yeah. It's really incredible. I mean, those colors, especially that blue. If you live in Sacramento, if you've spent any time in Sacramento, you know that blue sky. There's certain times of day, certain times of year where that really clear blue sky just sticks out like that. But then with these amazing other colors that I understand maybe were enhanced by the transformation Absolutely. process. So certainly you could enhance things like this, lighten certain parts, add different textures. So again, it's not so much what you're seeing, what the eye is seeing, but what she wants to create in terms of an effect. Definitely. And I mean, the, the techniques are just, there's thousands yeah. of them. Yeah. So it really opens up the door for the artist. How cool, and she's, well, she's very good at it. Again, this is item 34A, Transformation Bridge by Louise Vidari. It is photography measuring 20 by 15 with a retail value of $300. So make sure you are calling the number on your screen to grab this piece, any of the pieces that you've seen so far, any of the pieces that you're about to see, we want to hear you and we want to make sure that these pieces, you know, make it into homes that people get to look at them and appreciate them every single day. This is a piece that you definitely would just, every time I'd walk by, I'd see something different. I'd go, oh, I didn't notice that before. So we're going to keep this open and we're going to move on to our next item. And our next item is 34B, Southwestern Violets by Anna Barber. This is digital illustration measuring 20 by 32 with a retail value of $500. Now, the first thing that sort of immediately hits your eye is the color. Absolutely. It's amazing. You, you see all of this bright color here, oranges, yellows, bright purples and violets. So Anna is really playing with the potential of digital illustration to really amp up color, um, but also to splice in things that are very realistic. So this is probably from a photograph of violets that maybe she took or she found, um, and it's literally been cut and spliced together with this background image, as well as many other images, I'm sure. Yeah, it's, it's almost got a collage quality, but obviously it's all one one fine sort of image plane. But yeah, it's, it's amazing all of the different things you can see in it, especially digital illustration. I'm gonna be this, the noob. I'm not entirely sure that what that means other than something on the computer. Absolutely, <laughs> and Anna, it's, it sounds like, starts off with um, a tablet where she's drawing things, taking bits of photographs, and you can do with different digital tools, um, different kinds of layering and effects, um, so that the end result could be many, many images, as well as some of your own hand-drawn images. Wow, a lot of time too. I mean, the a layers that you see where it's like you almost have these little transparent violets, That's almost true. radioactive looking, and then some very, very natural looking sort of in the corner, it's like, that's that's just a leaf. That's I, I noticed especially this background image, which I think she started with, which was a rose, almost becomes like a mountain. So it's very surreal how what you can start with ends up becoming something totally different. Yeah, hence the artistic part about it. Yes, <laughs> I mean, that's, and hence maybe the title, I don't know. Yeah, that's interesting. Well, if you love this piece, I mean, it's stunning, and you want it in your house and you want to get to stare at it all day, every day, call the number on your screen. The current bid is also listed on your screen. This is an original piece of artwork as are all of these pieces in the auction and they're really things that I mean they're unusual they're unique they're one of a kind there are these kinds of pieces that you can really enjoy for years and years and I feel like every single person who came into your house and saw this piece would have to just stop and stare at it for a few hours because there's so much to see with all of the layering. Yeah, and the fact that it's on aluminum gives it this reflective kind of shiny quality. Mm -hmm. It's a very contemporary look. 
I love how it just looks very seamless. You don't need a frame. Mm -hmm. This could go on any wall and just be finished. Yes, I love that. Wonderful. We are going to keep it open and we're going to move on to our next item. Our next item is 34C Old Boat by Marianne Carrasco. This is photography measuring 18 by 24 with a retail value of $325. This one just looks like it has a story. I don't know, Natalie, if you know sort of the background of this boat. <laughs> um, I did do a little bit of research. It is a World War II boat that was decommissioned okay. and it was owned by a gentleman who pulled it up onto shore to do some repairs a couple uh, decades ago actually yeah. and he just never got around to it. <laughs> you can see it has the boat's name stenciled on here, Point Reyes. Um, I don't know if that was added later or not um, but it's undergone some different things. There was the fire on it. It's obviously been battered by the sea a bit but it's such an icon that people, when they were going to remove it, actually protested and photographers said, please leave it oh. because it's such an iconic part of Point Reyes. Interesting. I mean, really, if you were walking by this and were at all phot photographically inclined, you'd have to stop and snap you'd a picture. Have to stop. Especially the composition, the composition that Marianne chose. Uh, can you kind of talk to that? Because sure. it's beautiful, but I don't know as um, much about it. <laughs> I, I love that she chose, really, the boat is the main focus of the composition. Mm -hmm. And in the background, you see kind of the receding water and some of these low hills, and then the sky. She said it was really an overcast day, as is often there in <laughs> Point Reyes. And so she chose um, a black and white kind of monochrome look to emphasize the clouds and just that feeling of it kind of being cloudy and being in the mist. Um, yeah. And down here, she focused a little bit on the reflection, but it's really, you can tell the boat is really up on shore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting the texture that she's able to get, because like you mentioned, with it being monochromatic, you can still see all of the layers Absolutely. of the reflection and the the plants. different wood, absolutely, yeah. all of kind of the decay. It's just called old boat. It's falling apart into the yeah. ocean. Um, to me, it reminds me of the power of the ocean. Yes, that's true. And all of nature, like you were talking about with the overcast sky, I mean, it almost looks a little bit stormy. Again, this makes me a little chilly. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> but, it creates yeah. this great sense of place as well as just feeling of kind of the environment itself. Yeah, yeah, you're surrounded. And if you would like to be surrounded by this in your very own home, make sure you're calling the number on your screen. All proceeds benefit the PBS KVAE station and its mission and its programming. And you get to take home amazing pieces of artwork like this photograph, Old Boat, which again sort of emphasizes the power of nature like you were saying, Natalie, with the fact that you can see something violent clearly happened to this vehicle. Absolutely. <laughs> but now it's it's resting. It's like got a calmness to there, it. There is a beauty, I think, to seeing something that's been weathered by the storm yeah. and just kind of the iconic nature of seeing it generation after generation and driving past it and people pulling off and taking their photo next to it. Yeah. If you've ever seen it, you know this is really an interesting uh, boat. Yeah, yeah, and a piece of history which you could have in your very own home. So right now we are halfway through the break, which means that we're going to keep this piece open and check in over at the recap station for bidding updates. We have some amazing photography pieces up for bid this half hour, and they can be yours with a call to the number on your screen. If there's a piece of art that you want this break, we wanna hear from you right now, okay? Here we go. Thirty-four A is Transformation Bridge by Louise Vidari. It's a bridge you probably see every day, but Louise is letting us see it in a brand new light. The retail value for this piece is three hundred dollars. We have a high bid of one hundred dollars. We can go higher. We can go as high as that bridge is. Let's let's keep these bids coming. Thirty-four B is Southwestern Violets by Anna Barber. These. Violets are just so calming, but the colors are so brilliant. The retail value on this is $500. We have a high bid of $200. I know I've seen this boat somewhere, or maybe just a boat like it, but they always capture my imagination. 34C is Old Boat by Marianne Carrasco. The retail value for this piece is $325. We have a high bid of $225. It's gonna look great no matter where you hang it, in your home or office, and it will capture your imagination too. You can make up all sorts of stories to go with this piece, but you have to bid on it in order to make that happen.
one. You can't hang it in your home until you bid on it and win the auction item that you are most interested in. You can do that by calling the number on your screen. We have a lot of excitement behind me right now as people are calling and bidding, and those bids are slowly going up. It's pretty exciting stuff. There's also some excitement outside as people are coming to pick up the items that they bid on the last couple of days. So again, 34A, Transformation Bridge by Louise Vidari, a retail value of $300 with a high bid right now of $100. Let's see if we can do 150 on that. I'll bet you can do that. 34B is Southwestern Violets by Anna Barber. This is a digital illustration valued at $500. We have a high bid of $200 right now. I'll bet we could get that up to 250. Old Boat by Marianne Carrasco, $325 retail value with a bid right now of $275. It's a bidding war for this one. If you want this hanging in your home or your office, you better get on the phone right now. Let's make this a bell ringer. We're so close right now, and I know we can do it. Just another $50, and we'll get those bells a ringing for you. So right now, we're going to head over to the art for the second half of this break from Natalie and Jessica. And we're back for the second half of this photography segment. Up next, we're looking at item 34D, Evening Noyo Harbor by Betty Bishop. This is photography measuring 26 by 20 inches, and it has a retail value of $325. So now, I actually don't know where Noyo Harbor is, but Natalie, I understand you might. <laughs> um, it's actually located in Fort Bragg. It's a very busy harbor, so it's got commercial boats, it's got personal boats. Um, and you see some people walking right here down the dock. I noticed, yeah, there's a little, a little guy. Does that kind of give you some scale in terms of realizing how big Absolutely. the boats are? Absolutely, and I think you naturally kind of follow where the people are and imagine they're walking out here to their boat, it's late afternoon, and they're probably going maybe out here or to one of the other boats. Mm -hmm. The composition is really interesting because it does keep your eye moving, that idea of if you were a person on this dock, Absolutely. You'd be coming toward the viewer. Yeah. Right. It makes it more dramatic, I think, to have this diagonal. And then over here is very quiet. So you get the sense of the peacefulness of the water and the boats. And then over here is very active. Yeah. The time of day, too, because it has that sort of ethereally lit quality where you're like, yes. early morning, late evening, sort of. Right. I think I said afternoon. I think it's supposed to be early evening. Yeah. OK. Maybe kind of the sun is almost setting and you can see in the back. It's kind of this misty quality of the air. Yeah, you can kind of smell actually the the harbor water, I guess. Absolutely. I was going to say because it's Noyo Harbor, so it is harbor water. Um, and if you would like to uh, potentially be able to sniff the air as you look at this photograph, uh, call the number on your screen. The current bid is also listed on your screen. All proceeds go toward programming at PBS KVIE. And pieces like this, I mean, they're going fast, so make sure that if you are interested and you see something that you like, put in a bid. Uh, make sure that you stick with it until the item closes because that is the only way you're going to get it to have on your wall. Um, this also seems like something, I mean, depending on where you're from, because obviously I think a lot of people feel connected to water. Yeah. And so this is a way for people to be able to feel that sense. Like you were talking about the calmness in the lower left-hand corner. Absolutely. Looking at this here, how calm it is mm -hmm. and yet how active it is over here. I love how the artist contrasts the two of those mm -hmm. and just gives you a sense of that beauty of that light, you know, the evening yeah. light as the sun is starting to set and people are settling into their boats and quiet yeah, time. Yeah. And taking a stroll too, like if you're on a vacation, Absolutely. if this is a way for you to remember a vacation that you've taken and and you can, yeah, you can sort of picture yourself on the dock, those peaceful, relaxed moments that we so rarely get. But when we do, Absolutely. this is a great touch point to have to be able to put yourself right back um, at, at a harbor at sort of dusk time. I yeah. think that shows that Betty is really thinking about placing the viewer because you really do picture yourself in the scene. You really do. And again, this is item 34D, Evening Noyo Harbor by Betty Bishop. This is photography measuring 26 by 20 with a retail value of $200. $50 and the current bid is on your screen so make sure you are calling that number to snap this piece up and again it could remind you of vacation it could remind you of a more peaceful time just even hearing sort of the water lapping at those um, pylons the time that I've spent you know by the water it's a very calming it is presence yeah and it's such a nice depiction of such a beautiful area and I think if you've been to that area you know how 
gorgeous it is with the trees and this shows kind of a different side definitely yeah. focus more in the harbor definitely well we are going to keep this open and move on to our next item and our next item is autumn, or excuse me, third item 34E, Autumn Flame by Paula DeLeo. This is photography measuring 16 by 20 with framing services provided by University Art Center with a retail value of $275. So when I look at this, I think, something something is different something something must have been done because it's this vibrant amazing but i'm also like there's actually a lot going on can you kind of talk to us about sure. how she did this the, the composition is really very active in the foreground you've got all this kind of green grass down here and you have some it looks like leaves and different colors and then in the background you have kind of these um autumn leaves from a bush or a tree and then a bit of blue sky behind and kind of this um, lighter blue. So the artist is taking images that she's capturing actually in her own backyard. She lives on a three acre property, so pretty large. Yeah. She says there's plenty to take photos of. <laughs> and then she's altering them in her phone itself, so not on the computer. Oh, wow. Again, with whatever kind of editing tools you might have, you can add different shapes, make things abstract, change the background, yeah. add in lots of different things. Interesting. Especially considering I can recognize some of these pieces. Like I'm, I'm looking at it going, that's a leaf that's a branch yeah. but the way she's put it all together creates almost a surreal quality more abstract quality Absolutely. which is a really interesting use I think of obviously she's surrounded by nature it sounds like right yeah. uh, this is not someone who wants to draw your attention to an exact depiction of a place mm -hmm. she really wants you to think beyond that and think about what nature could be or what's in her imagination what she's trying to show with all these different shapes and colors yeah I love that what nature could be mm -hmm. I love that well what this could be is hanging in your house if you call the number on your screen make sure that you're checking out the current bid that is also listed on your screen uh, this is really a unique piece especially considering all of the work that went into the multiple layers the eye that you first have to have to even take the pictures in the first place since this is photography but then the artistic eye to be able to manipulate them in a different format is just fascinating to me um, especially with the style can you kind of speak to it does she have a particular um, style that she describes? I would it? say to, from this one photograph, she has a little bit of a surreal style, mm -hmm. meaning things seem a little bit more dreamlike. I was just noticing that this shape I thought was a leaf looks much more like a bird. Yeah, um, so there's some really fun, playful things she does. Yeah. So, um, and then down in the foreground, there's lots of color and, and overlapping textures. So mm -hmm. again, it makes you think of things not as they are, but as maybe they could be. Absolutely. And again, this is item 34E, Autumn Flame by Paula DeLeo. It is photography measuring 16 by 20 with framing services provided by University Art Center with a retail value of $275. And Natalie, you were talking about the, the sort of layering and the texture. The mm -hmm. bottom part of it almost reminds me of a Klimt painting where it's oh, like you have yeah. lots of different flecks of things and the more you look at it, again, the benefit of having it in your house right. to stare at as much as you want, um, you get to just keep finding all of these little discoveries. Absolutely. And you find blue. more and more, depending on where you're standing, I yes. think as well, if you're standing further back, things will blend. And we're standing rather close up, so yes. we get to see lots of detail. But a lot of times when you step back, you'll get to see a lot of that blend. I love that. Yeah, well, we are going to keep this open and move on to our next item. Our next item is 34F Paradise Found by Diane Hill. This is photography measuring 32 by 32 with a retail value of $400. Now, as soon as I look at this, I get a certain a certain feeling. Do you get a certain feeling? I Natalie? do, I do. It feels like a very tropical, kind of a humid environment. Yeah. Some place like Hawaii or Mexico where you're going to see this type of um, plant, where you're gonna see this type of tree, some sort of palm tree and the sky just looks really full kind of, of heat and intensity. Yes, yes, by contrast, this is not making us chilly. This is making us a no. little sweaty. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but especially with that, the bird of paradise plants oh. just sort of striking you across the foreground. Yeah, Amazing. Diane said that she was really caught by these plants kind of stretching into the sky. And that was when she decided to take the photo because they almost looked like they were reaching up, almost like a hand. Yeah. Um, so it's really dramatic and they're kind of backlit. The sun is behind them. So yeah. they're dark, but then the, the 
sort of uh, flower part is all lit up and is really beautiful. Yeah, it almost looks like she did that. Like if you had this in a studio, you would have put a little light behind it to cast that light up on the, the leaves and the petals. I don't know if those are petals, right. call that for a bird of paradise, <laughs> but, but yeah, that the orange part, it, mean, it makes it glow from within it practically. Does. And especially knowing, because obviously, seeing the detail as we can, the birds of paradise plants themselves very in focus, very sharp the rest of it not so much. Can we kind of talk about Absolutely. that? Absolutely. I think it's a neat contrast because it keeps you in the foreground, makes you feel kind of like you're in that environment. Mm -hmm. But as you go further out, you see this beautiful um, sky and then the heat of the sun and then just a little promise of blue out here, yeah. almost <laughs> like the sky is going to clear up. Yeah. Um, so she both keeps you close as well as gives you a hint of the the foreground, yeah. um, or excuse me, the background. Yeah, and it makes you feel like you're standing there. I mean, it really, like you're sort of peeking through Absolutely. the foliage. And this is large, so yeah. this is a good format. It I is, think. and it's a fantastic format. Essentially, wherever you might picture this in your home, it's one of those focal point pieces where no matter where you have it, um, the eye is going to be drawn. Again, it has lots of great colors. So if it's something that you think you want, Call in right now, call that number on your screen. The current bid is listed, um, what it's going for right now. So get on, get in on the act, get in on that bidding. Cause again, once these are closed for bidding, uh, that's it, they will be no more and they will go to somebody else. So make sure you get in on that action. And final thoughts about this piece before we move on. Um, I love that it's a square composition. I, I hate to say it, it makes me think of Instagram, not that yeah. it's lesser, but that I think it's very yeah. contemporary <laughs> and I love the rounded corners. It's a unique thing I haven't seen in many photographs so yeah. I, I'm impressed. Yeah I love it it's it's unusual, unusual. It's, it's unique. Yeah. yeah that's what we look for here. Well we are nearing the end of this break which means that now is your final opportunity to bid on the art featured in this half hour. So now let's check in over the recap station for an update on auction bidding. Well, you can see from everything you've seen so far that there is a piece for everyone in this auction. And if you see the one you want, don't hesitate. We're going to go over the bids now. We're going to start with 34D, Evening Noyo Harbor by Betty Bishop. We have a high bid right now on this piece of $150, but I know we can get up to two. You know what? Let's go beyond 200. Let's go all the way up to the full value of $250. And let's see if we can do that in the next couple of minutes. Let's get that going right now. We also have 33, 34 Autumn Flame, that's 34E. I love this. The vibrance of the red and the aqua and that lime green are so striking. There's a value, retail value on this piece of $275. We have a high bid of $100. We can go, let's see if we can get up to $150 right now. We, have, uh, we do have some people uh, who are not on the phones right now. I know they have their headphones on and they look like they're answering the phones, but we wanna hear those phones ring and then we wanna hear bell ringers going for all of these. Let's get going on this. So $100 now, let's get it up to 200 right away. 34F is paradise found. I love those birds of paradise, don't you? This retail value is $400 for 34F paradise found by Diane Hill. We have a, a high bid right now of $150. We wanna hear some phones ring. We wanna make sure that you know what you are doing, not only by adding art to your life, to your office, to your home, but by adding art to our whole community. We want to make sure that you have your opportunity right now to bid. Reviewing again, 34A, Transformation Bridge by Louise Vidari. It's a bell ringer. Excellent. That's fantastic. Those bells give you a very important message. If you could still bid if you wanted to, you could go even higher than the full value of $300. 34B, Southwestern Violets by Anna Barber. The retail value is $500. We have a high bid of $200. These are so pretty. These are so gorgeous. Bidding a little bit more, $250 could be the next phone call that comes in, and that number is on the bottom of your screen. You can bid right now. 34C is Old Boat. I love this piece. Another bell ringer. Look at that. 
The value is $325, and we have a bid of $450. That is excellent. You're going to enjoy having that beautiful black and white photography in your space. 34D is another beautiful piece of photography, Evening Noyo Harbor by Betty Bishop. $250 is the retail value for this. We're pretty close. We are up to $175 already. Let's make it $200 right now. Let's put a time limit of two, five minutes to go up to 250. How's that? All right, 34E is Autumn Flame by Paula DeLeo. Beautiful piece of photography, $275 is the value on this. We have a bit of $100, but I bet we can get up to $175 in no time at all. Let's make those phones ring to that number that's on the bottom of your screen. And 34F is Paradise Found. Beautiful photography by Diane Hill. Retail value is $400. Our high bid right now is $150. We can go up to $200 without any trouble at all, and I think we can do it right now. Stay with us. There's more art coming up in the next half hour of the PBS KVIE Art Auction. Welcome to the 42nd Annual PBS KVIE Art Auction. Join us all weekend for a celebration of Northern California's visual arts. Over 270 works of art will be auctioned off to the highest bidder, and you can be part of the action by watching and bidding on your favorite artwork. View the entire collection online at kvie.org slash art auction. Then, when your favorite item appears, call 1-844-KVIE-ART to place your bid. Auction proceeds benefit the programs and services of your PBS station, KVIE. So thank you for watching and bidding. And now, let the auction begin. Bidding on items in the art auction is quick and easy to do. First, explore the collection online at kvie.org slash art auction. Or keep watching PBS KVIE. When a piece of art catches your eye, call 1-844-KVIE-ART and a volunteer will assist you. KVIE accepts all major credit cards for your art purchase, and a member of our accounting team will confirm your payment within five minutes of item sale. Thank you for being a part of the PBS KVIE Art Auction and for making art a part of your home today. Coming up next is the bold and bright category. This half hour explores techniques emphasizing color and texture in a variety of media. View all of the art featured in this year's auction at kvie.org slash art auction. Hi there, I'm Don Apidoni. Thanks for joining us for this bold and bright segment. Bold and bright, that's not only the art you're gonna hear, you're gonna see, but it's also the sound you're gonna hear in the background. It's sort of our attitude for everything we're doing this afternoon. We are just bold and bright. Here is an overview of the art that will be up for bid during the next half hour. We are starting with River Palms. It's 35A, River, Palm, River Palms by Vans Vest. You. This is acrylic on board, measuring 16 by 20, and it has a retail value of $600. 35B is called Beyond the River. It's by Barbara Arnold, oil on canvas, measuring 18 by 24. Its retail value is $800. Nostalgic Man with Ox and Cart. That's the title. The number is 35C. It's by Michael Smith. It's mixed media, measuring 16 by 27 by 7, and its retail value is $800. 35D, Copper Kaleidoscope by John Clunder. This is photography, measuring 16 by 20. Retail value is $150. 35E is Summer's Promise by Dave Minusis. This is acrylic on canvas. It measures 24 by 18. Its retail value is $950. And 35F is Rocks Rock the World by Pramila Kriplani with assistance from Louise Jarquin. This is rock and metal. It measures 10 by 6 by 6, and its retail value is $450. These are the pieces up for bid this half hour. Now let's take a look at the art with our auctioneer and our art expert. 
Hi there, I'm Jessica Lasky, and thank you for joining us for the Bold and Bright category. During the break, I am pleased to be here again with art expert Natalie Nelson to continue our conversation with more exciting artwork. So let's get started. Item 35A is River Palms by Vance Vasu. This is acrylic on board measuring 16 by 20, and the retail value is $600. Now this piece is incredibly textured. Can we kind of talk about that? Because it's really unusual. Absolutely. Vance uses a lot of texture in his paintings, and this one has a fair amount, mm -hmm. um, particularly in the trees, in the background, as well as this little bush here, as well as in, in the water. Mm -hmm. um, and artists can do that in a variety of ways. Sometimes they use things called textured gesso, which is what he's using here. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they use sand or different kinds of texture medium that they mix in. Oh. So it gives it a sense of, of real texture yeah. um, and adds a lot of interest. Yeah, you almost want to touch it. I mean, don't unless you've bought it. So if you want it, go ahead and call the number and then you can touch it all you want. But it is that really interesting texture where it has more like, like it's coming at you more. Absolutely, and I think especially in the trees, it really attracts your eye because you have this vibrant green paired with yellow and then those textures literally jump off the canvas, yeah, like really what do. you were saying. Yeah, yeah, and as far as the location, because obviously this could kind of be anywhere, right. but you mentioned water, so. Yeah, it's it. supposed to be <laughs> on the Sacramento River Delta. We okay. don't have a particular place, but you can see a building in the background, maybe a place that Vance knows, sees a lot. It certainly seems like he knows this area well. There's this lower kind of fence here and this vibrant, I see it as a bush that's reflecting yeah. in the water. Yeah, it's interesting too because having the planes not be like really sharply delineated, delineated because of the um, style, it has again that sort of almost impressionistic quality but Absolutely. that the colors sort of coming together really interestingly. Right, and the colors are really stylized. Yes. Again, you're not gonna see this quite vibrant color out there. Um, but I love that he accentuates the color because, you know, the River Delta is such a gorgeous area and he really picks up, especially in the sky on the greens, I think. Yeah, yeah. It's also very soothing. I mean, there's something, obviously, yes, there's that vibrant orange, but then having that soothing sort of seafoam or aquamarine. Right, yeah. and especially the background. The mountains have that beautiful emerald green, and mm. so he's kind of pairing that brightness of the orange with the background, I think, which does calm your eye a bit. Yeah, it's a good contrast. And again, this is item 35A, River Palms by Vance Vasu. This is acrylic on board measuring 16 by 20 with a retail value of $600. And the current bid is listed on your screen, so make sure you're calling that phone number if you would like to take this piece or any of the pieces that we have seen or are about to see home with you. This is a great opportunity to do that and also support your PBS KVIE station, as well as these amazing artists. I mean, they've donated these pieces, so this is um, something that we're very grateful to them for doing. They've done all of this amazing work and they're donating it to us so that we can sell it to you. So make sure you're calling that number. And any final thoughts about this really, really cool, very vibrant piece? Um, I just think this piece must have been inspired by Gregory Condos because he oh. did so much of the Delta as well as outlining these trees. And when I was reading, it turned out that the artist had actually taken a workshop with him oh. and was very influenced by him. So it was kind of neat to find that out. How neat, yeah, that's a wonderful influence. Wonderful, we are going to keep this open and we're going to move on to our next item. Our next item is 35B, Beyond the River by Barbara Arnold. This is oil on canvas, measuring 18 by 24, with a retail value of $800. This gives me a very particular feeling. I'm wondering if it does to you too, Natalie. Absolutely, it's so calming. Yeah. Something about the way she's painted it, especially in the foreground with the water, and this is supposed to be, again, on the on the delta, mm -hmm. um, the calmness of the, the river here, and then kind of this foreground area where she has the grounds. It just seems very calmly painted in one color, kind of a stripe here, yeah. and then the background is also very much one color, almost like a little block. Yeah, and yet still vibrant, which I, f I find interesting that it's a very bright green, a very bright yellow, but all together, the composition ends up being very calm and soothing, which is... Absolutely, she heightens the color, yeah. and yet she does have this sense of just that things are very peaceful and calm on the river. Mm -hmm. And I think she does that because of her brush strokes are very horizontal, and she's got mm. this great vertical, I'm sorry, this is horizontal here, 
um, the horizon line, and then she puts this little farmhouse here, which yeah. actually isn't so little. It really is. I mean, it's quite a, a large structure, especially considering there's also another structure to the right that looks kind of like it's sort of a, a right. lone and building. I think this is an older home because it's usually there paired with a water tower so that you could actually have a windmill and have water and things oh. like that before the advent of electricity. Yeah, so we're really looking back in history. We really are. In a way. Yeah. I love that, and Mount Diablo is in the background, so it really situates us in a place in California not so far from us. Yes, and if you would like to be reminded of that place, maybe you know this place really well and you actually know what this building is, in which case you could stare at it all the time. You could also tell us eventually what this building is, uh, but make sure to call that number on your screen. The current bid is also listed on your screen so that you know exactly how much people are bidding at this moment so that you know how to get in on that um, and this painting I mean again with that it has a it, it is a landscape but it also still has a gestural quality because of those brush strokes because of her use of color um, can Absolutely. you kind of talk us through right that sort of I love when artists kind of go off on their own and yeah. do things like these wonderful cherry trees yeah. and really use their imagination to kind of amplify the natural colors in the landscape so I see it there as well as some of the trees in the background yeah so it is kind of expressionistic yeah you know not necessarily feeling beholden to the colors your eye sees yes especially with the reflections I think down below in the water That's obviously nice. it's that red coming from those mm -hmm. roofs but it's an interesting little splash down there where or we just expect blue water. It is, and there's just a little bit of paint here, and um, it's a little impasto, meaning a thickened paint, mm -hmm. to show kind of the whiteness of the building reflecting down here. So very small hint. That's so interesting. And this is again item 35B, Beyond the River, by Barbara Arnold. This is oil on canvas, measuring 18 by 24, with a retail value of $800. And the current bid is listed on your screen, so make sure you are calling in to make this piece one of your own. And we're going to keep this piece open and move on to our next item. Our next item is 35C, Nostalgic Man with Ox and Cart by Michael Smith. This is mixed media, measuring 16 by 27 by seven, with a retail value of $800. And this piece is different, obviously, than the ones that we have seen in our break thus far, but it's really, really cool. So first of all, I wanna kind of talk about, again, like I said, it's called Nostalgic Man with Ox and Cart. Do you know why it's called that? Absolutely, the artist really wanted to draw attention to the idea that people in the past didn't necessarily have a better life, they had a hard life. Yeah. And so I think by showing this man, kind of this symbolic figure up here, and then the, the cart, and the oxen, he was really showing that it was a lot of hard work back in those days yeah. to, you know, um, basically get your crops out of the field, things like that. Yeah. And so we shouldn't necessarily romanticize it. Yes, yes, because if you weren't there doing it, yeah, you, you could have this shiny view of it, but you're from a distance. Yeah. Right. I'm also just fascinated by the material. I know it says mixed media, but actually being up close and you can see it on the camera, it's this amazing sort of rock-like texture? Do you know what this is? Right. I feel like you it's, do. <laughs> it's like this crystalline yeah. um, glass-like substance, and he calls it slag glass. And I looked it up, and it's a glass that's kind of formed when you um, make steel. And so you have kind of this remainder left over, and it makes these beautiful crystalline shapes. And we call this a found object sculpture, meaning he found these and he altered them slightly, but these are pretty much the shapes that he had. This one for a person here with the hat and this one for the oxen. So it just triggered to him in his head, oh, you know, look at, Look at this. That looks the, like an ox. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. And he looked around for a person. Yeah. Um, and then this he actually had as a piece of pine from his studio that he kiln dried. So he dried it rather quickly okay. and then obviously finished it off. Yeah, and polished it. Is that oh, something you can yeah, do? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Polished Very it. Very smooth. Probably put a polyurethane coat. Um, but it but would be an indoor piece. Okay, that's clear. good yeah. to know. Yes, make sure that you are thinking about, if you're thinking about adding this piece to your collection, an indoor piece. It's also, it has a, a delicacy to it um, as well because obviously these metal sort of wires. The wire work and yeah. all of the little detail that he puts in is really charming. It's incredible, yeah, especially considering this is, the, the subject matter might seem rather industrial, right. but then when you actually look at it, it's got these, it's almost got a sweetness to it because I think he's got a little cap on Absolutely, too. <laughs> this little cap here and then yeah. the reins and how they kind of 
um, go around the oxen. This is a lot of work. Yeah, and then these poles that go through yeah. um, this cart here. So I, I love that it's so inventive and yeah. imaginative and coming up with that concept I thought was really interesting. Yeah, incredible workmanship too. And this workmanship could be in your very own home. If you call the number on your screen, the current bid is listed on your screen. These are incredible hand done pieces. I mean, obviously this is hand done. All of the pieces that we've seen are hand done. They are original. It really makes a difference when you're thinking about adding to your collection um, in your own home, in your office, um, wherever you want to look at art and feel that feeling that you get when you're looking at original art. Now is the time to make these pieces your own. And again, as a reminder, this piece we're looking at right now is 35C Nostalgic Man with Ox and Cart by Michael Smith. It is mixed media measuring 16 by 27 by 7 and the retail value is $800. And we are about halfway through this break, which means we're going to keep this piece open and check in over at the recap station for bidding updates. That's right, we're halfway through this break, which means it's your opportunity to pick up the phone and win the piece you want, okay? Here we go. Starting with 35A River Palms by Vance Vasu. It's acrylic on board. It's valued at $600. $600 is how, how much Vance would sell this for if it were in a gallery. We have a bid of $200. Well, you know that we that's a pretty good deal. That's one thing. But we want to get more bids in. We want to get more phone calls on this piece. And we want to get that up to the full retail value for 35A River Palms by Vance Vasu. 35B is Beyond the River by Barbara Arnold. This retail value is $800. We have a high bid of $500. Let's see if we can get to $600. Let's see if the next bid that comes in is for $600 for Barbara Arnold's Beyond the River. That way we can get a little bit closer to that full value of $800. The next piece has captured everyone's attention and we're all wowing over it. It's so unexpected and it gets a lot of oohs and ahs. 35C, nostalgic man with ox and cart. Michael Smith put this together, it's mixed media. Its retail value is $800. We have... We have a bid of $300 right now. And so we have a, a few more bids that we want to get to get this up to its full value. We want to make sure that we can do this. The art that's the art that's in our community is just so amazing. So many artists have contributed their art to make sure that we know what their work is and that we can talk about their art, but also so that we have all of that to, to ra raise money for PBS KVIE. Now we are going to see some more art coming up next and we're looking forward to that. Item 35A, just to review, is River Palms by Vance Vasu. $600 value, we have a bid of $200. We, let's say 250, okay? Next call that comes in makes it 250. 35B is Beyond the River by Barbara Arnold. $500 bid for a full value of $800. Let's see if we can get up to 550 for the next call that comes in. The number is at the bottom of your screen. And then 35C, Nostalgic Man with Ox and Cart by Michael Smith, an $800 value. We have a bid of $300. And we're very grateful for that bid, but we want to go even higher. We want to get a lot closer to 800. So let's see if we can get up to 400 with the next call that comes in. The number is at the bottom of your screen. Screen. And now we're going to see some more art with Natalie and Jessica. And we're back for the second half of the Bold and Bright segment. Up next, we're looking at item 35D, Copper Kaleidoscope by John Clunder. This is photography measuring 16 by 20 and has a retail value of $150. Now this piece, Natalie, I really want to talk a lot about because John himself as an artist has quite an interesting background as far as other mediums he works in. Can you kind of talk about that? Absolutely. Although this is a photograph, he's also a ceramic artist and he does Raku firing, which produces these amazing copper kind of colorful effects. They can be yeah. purple, they can be orange, they can be black. Um, so he loved that effect in ceramics. So he decided to try to replicate that in photography. Ah. So this is a photograph of a copper bottom of one of his 
stainless steel pots. That's um, cool. I know, and it's altered to create this kaleidoscope of different colors. Wow. So again, an altered photograph showing amazing effects. Yeah, it's mesmerizing. I mean, you've got all of these different colors kind of swirling around. It's got Absolutely. a lot of movement. I almost weirdly like almost see a face. I don't I know do if that's too. just me. Oh, no, okay. I agree. Good. You can see a lot in this. You I really think. can, yeah. Especially considering like you're talking about coming from another medium and seeing something that you're working with and going, wait a minute, if I sort of tweak how I look at this. Translate that, yeah. correct. Yeah. yeah, I love the way he plays off that idea and does it in a different medium that makes it so different than it would be in ceramic. Yeah, because you could notice the, the copper bottom and go, that's really pretty and shiny. But then when you see it captured in a photograph, because again, this is a photograph. I mean, yeah. this is this is a, a still image of something that you can still get a lot of movement, especially with the light, the way it would shine off of. Absolutely. Because you said Raku, so that's, is that right. fired and then kind of right. glazed? Um, it's more of a natural glaze from the ash of the firing. Okay. Um, and so it creates these metallic almost effects, which oh. you can see kind of here, he's playing off the metallic of the pot. Yeah, it's just wonderful. And again, I mean, these kinds of pieces, original pieces, wonderful colors so that they can go anywhere you would want to be able to look at these day after day. They would go with a variety of decors, home, office. So make sure that you're calling the number on your screen and checking out the current bid that's also listed on your screen because that's how you know what this is currently going for. Get in on that action. Make sure you call that number. These pieces are, again, one of a kind, hand done, and all of the proceeds go toward your PBS KVIE station and all the programming that you love. And also, it's a great way for the artists to know that you like their work because, I mean, with John obviously knowing, you know, lots of different mediums and working across um, various genres, for lack of a better word, um, he's clearly got an eye he for does. what he wants. Yeah. He does. And he loves this abstraction, I think, that you can find in everyday observations. Mm -hmm. And just tweaking that, I bet if you asked people when they came into your house, where did this come from? They would have no idea. Right. Or lots of different ideas. Yeah, or maybe like, lots. It's an oil slick. It's ice cream. You, you could know what was on their brain by asking them. Absolutely. <laughs> it's like a Rorschach test. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Well, we're going to keep this item open and move on to our next item. And our next item is 35E is Summer's Promise by Dave Manousis. This is acrylic on canvas measuring 24 by 18 with a retail value of $950. Now this gives me a, a feeling that's actually quite sweet. How does this make you feel, Natalie, when you I look at agree. it? I agree. I felt like it was a very sweet figure, very innocent, and he or she was offering me something, um, which was the sunflower. So it's a very simple um, composition. It's called Summer's Promise. So the idea of the sunflower being kind of a promise to us. Oh, I like that. And is that something too with the composition? Obviously the sunflower really stands out against this dramatic, beautiful blue um, and the, the figure itself. But yeah, can you kind of talk about that? Absolutely. I think the figure is a little bit simplified so that we really focus on the flower. Mm -hmm. And the artist said that flowers, sunflowers in particular, turn towards the sun, of course, so they're kind of seen as optimistic flowers. And he loved that, that it was something that kind of turns towards the good. Yeah. Um, and you can see, you know, this figure is not very highly detailed, but it looks a little sad. Maybe it's very wistful, mm -hmm. very little detail, but it's beautifully painted. There's some reds on the cheeks and things like that. And then you kind of have this drippy, um, lovely glaze almost mm -hmm. down here of the acrylic paint yeah. as it comes down. Almost like it's in the rain. Like yeah, I like that, rain. that yeah. effect of kind of the blue falling down as well as the other colors. Yeah, it's also an interesting texture because obviously it's on canvas mm -hmm. um, and with acrylic, I think, because correct me if I'm wrong, acrylic is rather fast drying. So you kind of have to, if you're gonna get texture, you gotta go quickly. <laughs> Absolutely. And there's a little bit of crackling you almost see. It might be just because the canvas is a little textured or it could be mixed it with something, but it has a really beautiful beautiful effect, almost a little powdery up here in the face. Yeah, yeah, it's a beautiful effect, yeah. And this, again, this can be yours if you call the number on your screen. This is Summer's Promise. It is by Dave Manousis. It is acrylic on canvas measuring 24 by 18 with a retail value of $950, and the current bid is listed on your screen, so make sure you are calling in to really, I mean, you could put this piece anywhere, and it has that, like you were saying about sunflowers, that optimistic quality, Absolutely. but also that sort of surreal quality because the figure is interesting. It's very enigmatic, right? Yes. You could debate, you know, is he sad or, or are they sad? You just don't yeah. know. But again, there's that idea of promise, I yeah. think. And like you, you mentioned too, the idea that 
is it a he, is it a she? There's no hair, there's really no other features. Um, it's actually quite open, which I really love. I love that too, yeah. And the hand is just kind of outlined, so it's minimal suggestion of the person. Yeah. So it leaves it very open to interpretation. It does, and then you've got that sunflower that's like actually quite detailed by comparison. Absolutely, uh, yeah. and textured in the center. And of course we see sunflowers everywhere, but they're still so amazing when they come out. Yeah, they're, yeah, it's beautiful. Well, make sure you are calling that number on your screen to get this piece any of the pieces that you have seen thus far into your home, into your office. It's a wonderful way to support PBS KVIE and get your hands on incredible original pieces of artwork that are going to stick with you for the long haul because you'd never get tired of seeing this. It's just incredible. We're going to keep it open and move on to the next item. And our next item is 35F, Rocks Rock the World by Pramila Kriplani with assistance from Luis Jarquin. This is rock and metal measuring 10 by 6 by 6 with a retail value of $450. Now, this is clearly um, partially rock, <laughs> as, as the name would suggest. Absolutely. But it's such an interesting amalgam of pieces. Can you kind of tell us about it? It is. The artist really loves natural rocks and minerals. And when she travels, sometimes she collects them, brings them home, uh, pressure washes them so that it really takes off some of the exterior and really highlights the colors that she loves, mm -hmm. coats it with a clear um, sealant. Um, so that gives it oh. kind of that slight sheen that you see. I was wondering, yeah. And you could see it looks like a maybe a ceramic built sculpture that's been glazed. It's yeah. just amazing that it's out of the earth. Yeah, it's natural. It's absolutely natural yeah. and forms this natural base. And here is this metal shape that she's made which has five sides, is kind of this almost like a globe-like figure, mm -hmm. except it's got triangles. Um, and I love that you can look through it. So mm -hmm. kind of like the world, but not opaque. Um, yeah. So you can see things through the structure as well as around the rock base. Yeah, and you mentioned too that obviously Pramila is is the artist, but then it said with Luis Jarquin. So right. what sort of how would and he he's have actually helped? done the constructing over here of connecting the two pieces oh. um, to really make the piece. You can see how it's kind of hidden here, how it's connected. So you mm -hmm. so you can actually put this outside because it's been adhered to this rock base very okay. solidly. Sturdy, yeah. <laughs> with some sort of adhesive. And okay. it just looks like it's almost within the rock. So yeah. he's done that part. Oh, very cool. It also has a delicacy. So the fact that we can put it outside is great to know because it is something that would look wonderful. I mean, it could be an amazing centerpiece, honestly, on a table. Whether that table is indoors or outdoors would be up to you. But it has that sort of delicate balancing quality and yet knowing that it's very sturdy. I mean, we're obviously right next to this table. It's very sturdy, <laughs> um, but also has that the sheen like you were talking about that is actually part of the treatment of the rock so that it looks purposeful but also natural. Absolutely. In contrast. And perhaps it's a uh, rock that was wet, there's been rain. I mean, I love that effect because it kind of puts you in a place where you think maybe you could have seen this type of amazing rock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're thinking, why didn't I bring it into my house and make art with it? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, and this is again item 35F, Rocks Rock the World by Pramila Kriplani with assistance from Luis Jarquin. This is rock and metal measuring 10 by 6 by 6 with a retail value of $450. And the current bid is on your screen, so make sure you are calling in because this piece is really interesting. It's one of those that... It can kind of go anywhere, use your imagination, mm -hmm. but especially because the symbolism of it you can kind of see whatever you want. That. Do you think of anything in particular? I, I just think it's funny that she said rocks rock the world. Yeah. It's a great <laughs> title. Um, and just because she loves rocks and minerals so much, I yeah. think it has to go to somebody who really appreciates the base of it. Yes. And then kind of as a metaphor, you know, the whole idea of the world and our connection to the world. So I think it, it speaks on bigger terms too. Definitely. Well, what a unique piece. Thank you, Pramila. I mean, it's wonderful. We're nearing the end of this break, which means that now is your final opportunity to bid on the art featured in this half hour. I'd like to thank Natalie Nelson for sharing her expertise with us and serving as the art expert during this and previous segments. Thank you for being here and thank you Natalie for being here. Now let's check in over at the recap station for an update on auction bidding. Just a couple of minutes left in this break, so we want to review all of the open items. You have some bidding to do, my friend. We're going to start with 35D, Copper Kaleidoscope by John Clunder. 
this is so interesting. It has a certain mystery to it, and it's a bell ringer. We already have the full value <laughs> bid of $150, but it, a bell ringer is so exciting, but you know, we could still go higher than that if you want to, and I can see why you would want to. There's so much interpretation involved in this piece, and it's so much fun to look at. That's 35D Copper Kaleidoscope by John Clunder. Yeah. Next, we have 35E, Summer's Promise by Dave Manousis. This piece, out of hundreds of votes from people in our area, was selected as people's choice. Oh, I can see why, can't you? It, look at this piece, and it just makes me happy. That was my first reaction the first time I saw this. 35E has a retail value of $950. Our high bid right now is $350. Do you know what fun it would be? Be and how exciting it would be for PBS KVIE if we could get up to the full retail value of $950 the next couple of minutes. Uh, it's up to you. Let's make that happen. 35F is Rocks Rock the World. This is by Cam Pramila Caprani, and it's a beautiful piece that re has a retail value of $450. I love that combination of the sharp edges on the top and then the density of, of the rock on the bottom. It's such an interesting contrast. We have an opening bid of $150, but with a full retail value of $450 on this piece, we have a ways to go. We want to hear, we hear your your bid right now. One possibility is for 35A, River Palms by Vance Vasu. We have a $600 retail value and a $200 uh, bid in so far. 35B is Beyond the River by Barbara Arnold, a retail value of $800. We have $700 in so far. We could keep going. That would be great. 35C, Nostalgic Man with Ox and Carp by Michael Smith, a retail value of $800 and a high bid of $450. You can bid a little bit higher, I'll bet, for that. I know you want 35D. It's Copper Kaleidoscope by John Clunder. Retail value is $150. We have a high bid. Whoa, we have a bell ringer there. $225 is our high bid. 35E Summer's Promise by Dave Manusos. The selected is People's Choice. Retail value $950. We have $450 in as a bid and we can go higher. 35F Rocks Rock the World. This retail value is $450. We have a high bid of $150 and we can't wait to hear from you. Stay with us. There's more art coming up in the next half hour of the PBS KVIE Art Auction. PBS KVIE is committed to the visual and performing arts through national productions like All Creatures Great and Small on Masterpiece, to our local productions like KVIE Art Showcase, and through the PBS KVIE Gallery, exhibiting award-winning art auction artists and California masters. PBS KVIE's commitment to the arts stays strong because of your participation as a donor and art buyer. Thank you for being a part of the PBS KVIE Art Auction and for making art a part of your home today. Picking up your purchased artwork is quick and easy to do. Visit PBS KVIE Sunday through Tuesday during these posted hours to claim your art. All purchased artwork must be claimed within 30 days of auction closure. For questions, location, and hours, visit kvie.org slash art auction. Thank you for being a part of the PBS KVIE Art Auction and for making art a part of your home today. Coming up next is artwork from the Lodi Community Arts Center. Located in downtown Lodi, the Community Arts Center is a member organization designed to stimulate and encourage interest in the visual arts, offering a gallery space, art instruction, and more. View all of the art featured in this year's auction at kvie.org slash art auction. Hi there, I'm Michael Sanford. Hi there, I'm Michael Sanford, and thanks for joining us for this Lodi Community Art Center break. Here's an overview of the art that'll be up for bid during the next half hour. Let's start with item 36A, Centurion's Wet Spring by Marilyn Eager. This is oil on canvas measuring 24 by 40 inches. Its retail value is $2,000, and this won the Juror Award in the Landscape category. Item 36B is Float Like a Lily by Patricia Kennedy. This is oil on canvas measuring 20 by 16 inches. Retail value is $350.
Item 36C is Alchemy of the Elements by Randy Crimmel. This is clay measuring 19 by 18 by 3 inches. Its retail value is $250. Item 36D is Sand Hill Silhouettes by Dean Taylor. This is photography measuring 18 by 18 inches. Its retail value is $350. Item 36E is The Wave by J.C. Strout. This is glass measuring 8 by 18 inches. Its retail value is $350. And item 36F is Fresh Spring by Beverly Felton. This is a watercolor measuring 30 by 22 inches. Framing services were provided by University Arts Center and the retail value is $800. The phone lines are open, people are calling in. Let's get your bid in. Now let's see this art with our auctioneer and art expert. Hi there, I'm Rob Stewart and thank you for joining us for this segment featuring artists from the Lodi Community Arts Center. During this break, I'm so pleased to be joined by our friend Patty Kennedy. Patty has been a longtime member of the Lodi Community Arts Center and now serves as the board's president. She has decades of experience as an artist ranging from painting to printmaking and photography. She's also an arts educator and enjoys working with community programs, I love this, that increase the accessibility of arts in schools. We are glad to have her with us this year, both as an art expert and a contributing artist. It's great to see you, Patty. Thank you, Rob. Good to see you. Awesome to have you here. Patty LaBelle was just here and it's say my name, Patty, Patty. <laughs> so, hey, Patty. All right. This first piece right here is item 36A, Centurion's Wet Spring by Marilyn Eager. It's a gorgeous piece. This is oil on canvas measuring 24 by 40. Retail value $2,000. You are looking at the Juror's Award for Landscape. What a beautiful piece of art. Take it away. Where, where do you want to begin on this masterpiece? Well, Marilyn's work is just amazing. Marilyn is one of the treasures of the Lodi Community Arts Center. Not only does she exhibit every month in our gallery, she's also our, our gallery curator. Mm. So she comes in every month, takes a look at all of the different art that has come in, and she manages to curate a show, and we get that show hung in three hours. That's amazing. And as, as you can see, the art is on your screen right now, and it is beautiful. Pick up the phone, call the number on the screen. You see the current bid right there, as well as the phone number on how to get involved. As an artist just looking at this, I have to ask you, what are your first impressions of it? Marilyn's use of color just always amazes me. Uh, the way she knows how to use color, the feelings that she creates with the color, her, her confident use of brushwork, mm -hmm. uh, such a, a beautiful painterly impressionistic style. She celebrates the Central Valley with her painting. Yes, that's very well said. She knocked it out of the park with this one, with celebration. And, and this is part of a series, uh, one of the pieces from this series was published in Museums Edition West magazine. Do you know where she did this? Well, this was done in her studio. It was based on photographs. It was based on the view outside of her studio, outside her window. And part of it is her imagination. She placed things where she wanted them to be, not necessarily where they are in real life. I love it. Absolutely. Do you love it? I hope so. Pick up the phone, call the number on your screen. Also, to all of your group threads with your text. Please send messages to everyone to get involved with the art auction. There you see the number on the screen to place a bid. You've got to act fast. These move quickly. Uh, your current bid is up there right now. This is 36A Centurion's Wet Spring by Marilyn Eager. And wouldn't you love to have that and live with that? Yes, I would. I absolutely would. Is this the Delta? Uh, this is uh, the Delta area. It certainly does look like it. it. And that's what I love about quintessential California. Uh, pieces of art yes. is that they take you where you want to go. You can place yourself in this and it can be placed in your home by picking up that number and calling PBS, KVIE and speaking to our friendly volunteers. This piece is going fast, so we're gonna keep this one open and move to the next piece. But we wanna thank Marilyn Eager for this gorgeous Centurion's Wet Spring. Okay, the next piece is 36B. It's float like a lily and this is by, voila, you, 
by Patty Kennedy. Uh, this is a gorgeous art piece, oil on canvas. You're gonna hear a special story about this coming up in a moment. Measuring 20 by 16. Retail value is $350. And again, this is by Patty Kennedy, who is right here with us. How nice you get to talk about your own art. Thank you, Rob. <laughs> this is a return to oil for you. Yes, in fact, I returned to oil in uh, June of 2022 by taking a class in color theory oil painting with Marilyn Eager. And you jurred right in the next <laughs> year's art auction. I juried. Not which, mad. Which <laughs> you got in. I'm proud of it, but Marilyn needs to be proud of that too. That's amazing, I uh, love it. Tell me why you did this. You. So, um, I, I wanted to work with, I wanted to work with these water lilies that I had taken photos of. Uh, I'd gone to Locke, okay. and I was in the memorial garden there with some friends, and I saw the water lilies, took photos of them, did some quick sketches, and I loved how the sky reflected off the water that oh, they were floating wow. in. So I sketched out the uh, design on my canvas on a Friday, and I was thinking about a friend of mine named Valerie, and on Saturday morning I got up and I started painting, and I received a call that on Friday night Valerie had suffered a stroke. Oh no. Um, so I spent the day painting this, thinking with every brush stroke, I was thinking of Valerie and how she took all of life's obstacles and challenges and floated with them and mm. kind of let life take her where she needed to be. And she had this strength. She was rooted in this strength. And it just made me think of her as I was painting it. How and beautiful. Then as I, I put in this element of the leaf up there, to me, it was letting Valerie go off to her next great adventure with the same strength and support and beauty that she always had. I love that. So I have to ask you, I, I assume Valerie is she, no she, she passed away, but she, she passed away quickly and mm -hmm. in the way that she wanted. Well, I do have to tell you that that is very, and I'm sorry for your loss. And I also will say that I love how this is about rebirth. It, it is, it and is. And this is a celebration Definitely. of her living. So pick up the phone, call the number on this screen. I think it's a great uh, gift in honor and memory of your friend, as well as for someone who is searching for inspiration, because my goodness, this is an inspirational piece. Pick up the phone, call the number on your screen. Patty Kennedy is the artist. This is 36B, float like a lily, float wherever you may go. <laughs> and this is a beautiful oil on canvas. It was your return to oil. It's 20 by 16. Retail value is $350. And it is such a special story and a tribute to a good, good friend. You've been a good friend to us for so long, and we are so grateful for that. This is a hot piece. We'll keep it open and move on to the next. Thank you, Patty. Thank you. 36C is Alchemy of the Elements by Randy Krimmel. This is clay measuring 19 by 18 by three. The three is how far it would stand or float. Retail value is $250. And this is a joy, alchemy, I love that word, um, of the elements. Wow. And I think alchemy of the elements is so appropriate for Randy's work because he really enjoys the process of working with ceramics. You can tell. <laughs> he, he likes the challenge of making it work physically with the clay and getting the different elements to work on there, to get it fired so that it will take the firing without cracking. Uh -huh. And then he goes in and he has a lot of fun with the glazing. And you had mentioned he teaches, he's a teacher. He's, he's a retired teacher. He taught um, high school art and he taught at Modesto Junior College. And he really enjoys the um, the chemistry, the alchemy yeah. of working in ceramics. And alchemy is so important in life in general. Yes. I love how this, yes. this piece reminds you of that, um, how things come together and they can be brought together for the greater good. This piece shows that. It is uh, Alchemy of the Elements by Randy Kremel. As we mentioned, clay measuring 19 by 18 by three, retail 250. Pick up the phone, call the number on the screen, get involved in the art auction. I do wanna ask you, can this go anywhere? This is an inside outside piece. Okay, good. 
Uh, some of his work, he, he's always showing at the Lodi Art Center. We always have his work in there. Some of his work is functional. Mm -hmm. This is a decorative piece. And how about the glazes? Um, I'm not really good about the glazes on his on his functional pieces. Or I'm but, sorry, uh, I'm, I said that wrong. His process. Oh, his process. Mm -hmm. uh, so he works with a very dark clay. He starts with a very dark clay. So up here you see the unglazed clay. Okay. Okay. So and you can see the Is actual. Is that what it was? Yeah. Wow. So. So that's the unglazed clay. You can see the texture of the clay. And when you can see the texture of the raw clay that's been fired and compare it to the areas that have been glazed, you can see how much work Jeez. has gone on to bring it from that to this. I had that. no idea that that's the raw element of it. That is the it. raw element of it. That's the alchemy part of mm -hmm. it uh, showing through. I love this technique and I can tell based on what you've said, that he's such a good teacher. And that's what we do at PBS KVIE. You know, the E is for education in KVIE. And so we love to educate, inspire, entertain, and uplift and bring you the art as we are right now through Alchemy of the Elements by Randy Kremel. And Patty's been telling us about this wonderful artist and this piece of art. Pick up the phone, call the number on your screen and get involved in the auction. Place your bids, because we are halfway through the break, which means we're gonna keep this piece open and check in over at the recap station for bidding updates now. Thank you, Rob and Patricia. Well, we're halfway through this break, looking at some beautiful artwork that's available for you right now. And all the proceeds benefit PBS KVIE and all of our programs and services. And we're grateful to you, we're grateful to our artists. Let's review the bids so far in this section. Item 36A, Centurion's Wet Spring by Marilyn Eager. This is oil on canvas, measuring 24 by 40 inches. Retail value is $2,000. We have a high bid of $675. Not a bad start, but we need to get up to $800 on the next bid. How about an $800 bid on that one? Reminder, this is a juror award in the landscape category. Fantastic piece of work. Item 36B, Float Like a Lily by Patricia Kennedy. Oil on canvas, measuring 20 by 16 inches. Retail value of $350. We are awaiting our first bid. Let's get a $100 bid in there right now for this beautiful piece of work by Patricia Kennedy. Item 36C, Alchemy of the Elements by Randy Krimmel. Again, another wonderful piece of ceramic art. Clay measuring 19 by 18 by 3 inches. Retail value $250. We have a current bid of $80. Let's get that up to $125 in the next bid. What do you say? All right, so this is what it's all about. Promoting art in our community is something we're so happy to do at PBS KVIE with all of our programs around art, including Art Showcase. But this is a way that artists Donate to us, show their generosity, and this is your opportunity to show your generosity and your, your gratitude for all of us who bring you the programs that you enjoy so much on PBS KVIE. Don't forget the number, 844-584-3278. Call right now. Let's get some of those bid numbers up again. Let's review these first three items one more time. Item 36A, Centurion's Wet Spring by Marilyn Eager. Oil on canvas, 24 by 40 inches, $2,000 is the retail value. Again, juror award in the landscape category. We're still at $675 as our top bid. Let's get that up to 800 in the next bid. The phones are ringing right now. Let's keep some more calls coming in if you want this beautiful piece of work. Item 36B, Float Like a Lily by Patricia Kennedy. Oil on canvas, 20 by 16. Still awaiting our first bid, which we hope will be $100 to start. Call 844-KVI-ART to make that bid. And item 36C, Alchemy of the Elements by Randy Krimmel. Clay measuring 19 by 18 by 3. Beautiful piece of artwork. Our current bid on that one is $80. Let's get that up to $125. You can bring that home, put it in your house. You're going to remember it forever. All right, and now we're going to head back to the art for the second half of this break with Rob and Patty. That's right, the number to call is on your screen and when you purchase art today, you'll be supporting PBS KVIE as well as the arts right here on PBS KVIE and in our region. Up next is item 36D, Sand Hill Silhouettes by Dean Taylor. This is photography measuring 18 by 18 inches, retail price of $350. And Patty, tell me your first impressions on, on these 
beautiful sandhill cranes. Oh, the silhouette is lovely, and the colors, the reflections in the water are just beautiful. And because Dean is a Stockton Lodi photographer, I made the assumption that these were photographed in the Central Valley. Yeah, you would think because they come through here so, so annually. But this was taken on a trip uh, that Dean had taken to the New Mexico. Bosque del Apache National Wildlife Refuge in New Mexico. Wow. And I, I call him our peripatetic member of the Lodi Community now what, Arts Center. What does that peripatetic? He's, he's always traveling. Okay. He, he travels from... <laughs> he's got goitis. Yeah, from the coast <laughs> to the Midwest, uh, north and south, seeking images. But he's always back in town for the Tuesday hanging day at the Lodi Arts Center. Okay. Where he is an important member of our hanging crew. Oh, so that's, his, that's a big role that's there. That's a big role. And your gallery all have, each person can have a role if they want that. Yes, yes. Yeah. We encourage, because we are a community arts center, we do rely on our members to share their talents with just, us. Just as we do you who are watching right now. So if this is connecting with you, this beautiful Sand Hill Silhouettes by Dean Taylor, pick up the phone, call the number on your screen. The retail is $350, and there you see the current bid as well as how to get in touch with us, because when you call, you speak to a friendly, volunteer at PBS KVIE who will walk you through the steps, but you have to act quickly because these pieces go very fast, just like birds. But you can have these birds in your home forever if you are the winning bidder and you buy this piece today. Uh, tell me what else about this, this piece. You said the timing of this on his trip. <laughs> So he had taken this trip with a friend to this preserve in New Mexico, and they'd been there three days, and he wasn't satisfied with the photos he was taking. And it was the end of their third day, and he noticed that the Sandhill cranes were grouping for the night, and there was this small group of five that were off by themselves. Mm. So he snapped the picture, and he, he thought, you know, he, hadn't, he wasn't sure how he had done with it until he checked it out at home. Uh, so this was the last shot of the last day, and it's beautiful. It is absolutely gorgeous, and they're so big. Yes. Their wingspan is seven feet. And they're about this tall. Yeah, that's the same as <laughs> uh, Michael Phelps' wingspan, the, the swimmer. And look here, this is, this is gorgeous. This can hang, and it can fly right into your home if you're the one picking up the phone and winning this piece and being the winning bidder, which means that you buy this and take it home. Uh, within a matter of moments or days, depending on how quickly you want this. It's by Dean Taylor, photography measuring 18 by 18. The retail's on the screen, and so is this beautiful image. And what is this on? Uh, this is uh, a photo printed on metal. I love photos on metal. They just look so wow factor, <laughs> if, if you will. It's almost, there's a, it takes you right into it. It's immediate. And, and this almost doesn't look like a photograph. Yeah. It, it, it's very painterly. That's what sometimes I think metal does, and, mm -hmm. and as well as the artist. So yes. we're going to keep this piece open, but there you see it one more time on your screen as you pick up the phone and call and place your bid on Sandhill Silhouettes by Dean Taylor. Thanks, Dean. We're going to keep this piece open and move on to the next one, which is 36E, The Wave. What a beautiful piece of art by J.C. Strote. Glass measuring eight by 18, retail value $350, emotional value is priceless. <laughs> Tell us about JC's creation. Well, JC works Ooh. in fused glass. Sorry about that. And yep. uh, so th these are all pieces of glass. She likes uh, blue. She uses blue quite a bit in her pieces. Uh, some of her pieces are indoor, outdoor. This is an interior piece beautiful up against a window. So this piece... Oh, for light? Yes, for okay. light. So this piece, in some places, the glass is three or four layers thick. Wow. So what she had to do was first she obviously cut out all of the glass. She had to fuse the glass onto a flat sheet of glass. And she had to do that slowly because of the thickness of the glass, because there were so many layers to it. So that required 16 hours of firing. 16? 16 hours. And then she had to achieve the waveform by putting that flat piece of glass into a mold and then slowly firing it again for another 16 hours. This, wow, that's amazing to so me. So 32 hours in firing alone. Look at these edges. 
where the glass, it's almost like one side is underwater for a wave and yes. the other side is on top. I would have never in a million years uh, known how to put the colors of a wave <laughs> in art in any art, <laughs> let alone glass for crying out loud. That's hard. And there's so much movement to it. Pick up the phone. We need you to move on this piece quickly if you want it because they, they go so fast. The numbers on your screen as well as the current bid. And this is a sturdy piece. I'm, you know, yes, this is not is. going anywhere. Um, except for to your home <laughs> if you're placing the winning bid. And there is activity on this as well as all the pieces. So pick up the phone and call the number that you see there. Uh, what is the, in, the importance of using glass and art for you? Do you, in, what do you think in color, when, when, when it comes to color? Color is, is amazing and JC uses bullseye glass and what, do you have any idea what that is? I don't. Um, it's a, a firm that produces glass for art glass. Okay, okay. Um, I think they're out of Portland. Uh, some of this is iridized glass, I believe, through here. Uh, Bullseye is known for the quality of their glass and uh, the iridescent and the colors that, the, that they can achieve. Ah, okay. So, and then that is the huge factor for thus the light that comes through. Yes, yes. I love glass in art. Uh, I think the stand is gorgeous. Uh, she she does a great job with her stands. It, there you it, this to me, it looks like a wave coming up on the beach. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean it's this. If you look at it for a second and you don't know the name, you're going to figure out that it's yes, a wave yes, very quickly you know. because of this artist expertise. And this um, wonderful foam. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah, right there, it's so beautiful. Uh, they go so fast as you can see, boom, this segment for this piece just, just flew by. Pick up the phone, call the number on your screen, connect with this piece and we connect with you by you being the winning bidder. The number is on your screen as well as the current bid. Act quickly, they move fast. Thank you so much, JC. Great piece of art. We're gonna move on to 36F, Fresh Spring by Beverly Felton. This is watercolor, a beautiful watercolor measuring 30 by 22. The framing services provided by University Art Center. Retail value is $800. And this is a legacy piece? This is a legacy piece. Uh, Bev Felton was one of the founding members of the Lodi Community Arts Center more than 60 years ago. Wow. Uh, she was a prolific artist. Uh, her husband was also one of the founding members. He was a photographer. And uh, Bev loved to work in watercolor. She worked in a variety of, of media, but she really enjoyed working in watercolors. I can't and believe that's watercolor because it's I, so bright. I, it is, it's so bright and, um, and it's, it's large. It's, it, we, I think we tend to think of watercolors as being smaller. And I mean, the command of her, her paint throughout this. Yes, and the color. The color is so motion. bright and lively. I love this piece and I love that it is a legacy piece from from your organization. It's a gorgeous piece of art. Watercolor is so beautiful and look at how it showcases the color. It just explodes that's, with the fruit down lovely. here at the bottom. Isn't that beautiful? A pomegranate, maybe a mandarin, I can't quite tell. Um, and then of course the beautiful daisies there in the vases. Pick up the phone, call the number on your screen and this can be in your home and just a, a very short matter of time. This is 36F Fresh Spring by the late Beverly Felton watercolor measuring 30 by 22. The framing by University Art Center and the retail is $800. It's a big, big piece of art. And what a powerful statement to say that you got this through the PBS KVIE art auction by being the winning bidder. Art tells a story and so does your actions. So get involved. How does it make you feel? It's, it's so happy it, and it, it gives me such a sense of abundance. Great. Um, and it's, it's not quite spring-like to me. It's, it's sort of like harvest abundance to me because of the oak leaves and uh, the pomegranate, the persimmons. But I, just the way she handled that vase there, just with strokes of color to create the whole thing. You know what it says to me? Um, you know, we, when she's a, a legacy artist, so this is by the late artist. Uh, Beverly Felton and so many times you see the birth year and the death year but the dash in the middle <laughs> yes, and this is yes. all about the dash it is so it it's is. not dated to a season it doesn't have to be spring it's all throughout life the flowers and the fruits the uh, that we have the abundance yeah 
Uh, did she paint late in life, do you know? No, she, she worked for decades, um, I, I think 60 years good, good <laughs> at for least. Her. Good for her. Well, pick up the phone and get involved in the auction because they're moving so quickly each piece. You see the current bid on your screen. That's great to see. We are nearing the end of this break, which means it's uh, your final opportunity to bid on the art featured in this half hour. Let's check in over at the recap station for an update on auction activity. Thank you, Rob and Patty. And as Rob mentioned, just a few minutes remaining in this break, which means if you don't call in now to bid, you might miss out. And the phones are ringing. That's a great sign. Our volunteers are busy. Now's the time to get in your bid. Let's go over these last three pieces that Rob and Patty were talking about, starting with item 36D, Sandhill Silhouettes. It looks like we have a bell ringer on this one. Is that correct? We have a bell ringer. We love Sandhill Cranes. They're so precious and so well known throughout our region. What a fantastic photograph. We have a current bid of $500, which exceeds the retail value of $350, but it's still open. Get your bid in on this one. 36E, the wave, another bell ringer. This beautiful piece of glass art by J.C. Strote has a current bid of $550. Fantastic. It looks so good in your home. Get your bid in, it's continuing on that one. Item 36F, Fresh Spring. That's a $600 current bid. Retail value $800 by Beverly Felton. This is a wonderful legacy piece of art that would look beautiful in your home. This is something that you really want. Get your bid in now, it's $600. Let's, all right, let's go through the, all six of these quickly. 36A, Centurion's West Spring by Marilyn Eager. Retail value of $2,000. Current bid is $1,400. 36B, float like a lily. Current bid of $350. That is another bell ringer. Patricia, our art expert on right now, Patricia Kennedy. 36C, alchemy of the elements. $250 high bid, another bell ringer. This is a great half hour. Thank you for calling in and bidding on this great art. All right. So stay with us. There's more art coming up in the next half hour of the PBS KVIE Art Auction. Welcome to the 42nd annual PBS KVIE Art Auction. Join us all weekend for a celebration of Northern California's visual arts. Over 270 works of art will be auctioned off to the highest bidder, and you can be part of the action by watching and bidding on your favorite artwork. View the entire collection online at kvie.org slash art auction. Then, when your favorite item appears, call 1-844-KVIE-ART to place your bid. Auction proceeds benefit the programs and services of your PBS station, KVIE. So thank you for watching and bidding. And now, let the auction begin. Bidding on items in the art auction is quick and easy to do. First, explore the collection online at kvie.org slash art auction. Or keep watching PBS KVIE. When a piece of art catches your eye, call 1-844-KVIE-ART and a volunteer will assist you. KVIE accepts all major credit cards for your art purchase. And a member of our accounting team will confirm your payment within five minutes of item sale. Thank you for being a part of the PBS KVIE art auction and for making art a part of your home today. Coming up next is the Contemporary category. Awards juried by Barry Sakata. this category features abstract and non-objective works in a variety of media. View all of the artwork featured in this year's auction at kvie.org slash art auction. Hi there, I'm Michael Sanford, and thank you for joining us for this contemporary break. We just came out of a break where we made some fantastic bell ringers. That means you're supporting PBS KVA and getting some great art in the process. And now, here's an overview of the art that will be up for bid during the next half hour. Let's start with item 37A, MS 2022 by Jessica Gaskin. This is mixed media measuring 60 by 48 inches. Retail value is $5,000. Item 37B is Pukra Finestra by John Chaff. This is a fabric artwork measuring 19 by 25 inches. Retail value is $625. Item 37C is Sparks Fly by Ree McLaughlin Brown. 
This is acrylic on canvas measuring 60 by 20 inches. Its retail value is $200. Item 37D is Siempre Frida by Barbara Hugo. This is mixed media measuring 14 by 11 inches. Its retail value is $325. Item 37E is My Beloved Cowtown by Frank Chavez. This is a collage measuring 16 by 20 inches. Its retail value is $200. And item 37F is Windows to the World by John Titus Krempel. This is oil on canvas measuring 30 by 30 inches. Its retail value is $1,600. These are the works available during this break. Now let's see the art with our auctioneer and art expert. Hi there, I'm Rob Stewart. Thanks for joining us for this contemporary segment. I'm back with Patty Kennedy and we're going to explore another round of exciting artwork this half hour, starting with item 37A. You were looking at it right now. It's MS 2022 by Jessica Gascon. It is mixed media measuring 60 by 48. Retail value $5,000. And this is a beauty. Take it away, Patty. Tell me your first impressions. Well, you can certainly see the Jackson Pollock inspiration of this piece. Yes. But the other feeling that I got off of it was sort of like the sparks off of nerve endings mm. and the flashing of nerve endings and synapses. And, uh, and then I looked at Jessica's inspiration for this piece. She is inspired by Jackson Pollock, but this piece is about her diagnosis of multiple sclerosis. That's the MS in the title, okay. And this is her painting out her feelings of her diagnosis and having to deal with the effects of MS. But to me, I almost see this white streak coming through here as sort of the nerve center or the spinal cord or nerve reactions coming off of it. Mm. And, uh, and Jessica says you could also look at this, you could turn this 90 degrees and look, have this in a portrait format rather than a landscape format. In fact, format. we did that, right, yes, while did. everything else was going we on. Did. We were going back and forth with which way, because it's so beautiful each way, called the artist and, and the artist told us what to do. But I will tell you <laughs> that it was gorgeous each way. And, and in fact, she said, I didn't think about yeah. doing it portrait. It's fantastic. This is a beautiful piece of art and it's popping through your screen right now. Pick up the phone, call the number on the screen, get involved in the art auction. The current bid is on the screen. This is a retail value of $5,000 MS 2022 by Jessica Gascon, a gorgeous piece of art telling the story, a personal story and look at how beautifully she told it. I mean, I could just stare at this all day. Uh, you have, by the way, I want to mention the size again. It's 60 by 48. It's a big, bold piece, and it goes vertical as well, so whichever way. What else strikes you about this, or would you like to say about it? Well, I, I love the movement of it. I love the hidden little treasures, the pockets of things to find yes, throughout the image. Yes, you see some there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I love when you look through, you do see the multiple patterns. And it, I just, it makes me want to really like tell her that she did a great job at getting her feelings out. And, and the lines also, each line feels different. You know, some of them are more frenetic and some of them are much more peaceful. And yet it is there. such a statement. It is. Command piece. This is a uh, this is a piece of art that you would put somewhere to tell a story. Um, it is a focal point. It is a centerpiece. It is a $5,000 value. It can be a showstopper in a contemporary home or you beautiful could, in an office. Yeah, or an office or you put it on a gallery wall mm -hmm. and you could still surround it with others. And this would be the one that would say I am here. Uh, this is 37A MS 2022 by Jessica Gascon. Mixed media, 60 by 48, can go horizontal or vertical. The retail value is $5,000. You see the current bid on the screen. This is a masterpiece. Don't miss out. Okay, we're going to leave this piece open uh, by Jessica Gascon. Thank you, Jessica. And we're going to move on to the next one. 37B, this is by John Schaff. 
and the piece of art is called Pulcria Finestra and it's 19 by 25 in size, a great size. Retail value is $625. Again, Pulcra Finestra by John Schaff. 625 bucks is the retail. Okay, this is gorgeous. This is such a fun piece. It looks like a stained glass window. I, I honestly, from a distance, I thought it was a painting of either or it, a stained it does, glass window. It yeah. does, and, and he's definitely inspired by stained glass windows. And what he does is he takes, these are pieces of leather. Really? These are pieces of leather that he has cut and created this collage with. How He, he cool. does have some other uh, substances in there, some other media in there, but most of it is leather. What a talented person. Looking at all of these pieces in there, what a, it, it's meticulous, it's a lot of work. And I love, you know, the story of stained glass, that it's broken glass put together to be beautifully and light shines anew. And this tells a story as well, because these pieces of fabric, each of them are individually placed perfectly. I love it. Pick up the phone, call the number on the screen. There you see the current bid. Uh, this has a retail value of $625 and this is item 37B. It is Pulcra Finestra and it is by John Shaft. A beautiful piece. Just look at that detail, Patty. Tell me more. His work is just compelling. It uh, is. That's a good word. He's been doing this for uh, several years. When he started, he did a lot of uh, more organic images. Mm -hmm. And because of the way he was working, the style in which he was working, it tended to have um, the sense of uh, Native American art. Mm. Uh, and then he moved into going to more towards these uh, stained glass window designs. I love all the color. And I think you could put it anywhere. Oh, yes. I think it could be great above a door turned the other way too. I mean, I, I really get make people mad when I start telling <laughs> art hanging different ways, but I have to tell you, I love when you can do both and this is a great piece. And there's movement to it, even though it's, it's static pieces of leather. I mean, it feels like this is going to, to move and create something happening here. It's almost mechanical. Yeah, we, can, you t can you talk about or, or speak to how you feel about the color choices? There's they're just spectacular the way he's put them together. Because I'm looking at the fabric on your coat, <laughs> and then I'm looking at the fabric in here, and yours is a piece of art, by the way, from yes, your art center. it is from Lodi Community Art Center. I, I love the way he's got those yellows popping out here. The texture on this orange over here is just fantastic. It's super cool. And I'd love an outfit made out of that. <laughs> and it's balanced by that the brown that has so much texture in it. It's awesome. And there you see the artist signature right there at the bottom. Okay, we're gonna keep this piece open. My goodness, you see the current bit on the screen right there. Uh, we're gonna keep this open. Thank you so much, John, for this piece. And we're gonna move on to the next. 37C Sparks Fly by Ree McLaughlin Brown. <laughs> this is acrylic on canvas measuring 16 by 20. An awesome piece of art here. Uh, retail value $200, and again, 37C Sparks Fly. Wow, nice piece. It, it gives you the sense of watching a grand parade, or being part of a grand parade. It really does. It also gives me the feeling of like a, I don't know, like a really great restart. Excellent. Don't know why, but that's what it felt like to well, me when I, I looked at Well, I think the artist would be really pleased to hear you say that because she was inspired by a poem from the 19th century called Gone From My Sight, uh, attributed to the Reverend Luther Beecher. Okay. And uh, I, I can't read the whole poem out mm -hmm. loud because it gets very moving. Okay. Uh, well, you can <laughs> certainly see that in the feeling. Yes. If you can see a feeling, it's, this is where this you is do it. it, this piece of art. And the poem starts with, I am standing upon the seashore, a ship at my side spreads her white sails to the moving breeze and starts for the blue ocean. She is an object of beauty and strength. I stand and watch her until at length she hangs like a speck of white cloud just where the sea and sky come to mingle with each other. Mm. Then someone at my side says, there, she is gone. Gone where? Gone from my sight, that's all. A breath away. 
So this is about the journey that we all will be making. Mm -hmm. And as we pass into the next life, imagine all the people who are so glad to greet you I and love meet that. you there. And what wow. a celebration that will be. Absolutely. You know, there's two things you can't practice for, this is birth true. and death. <laughs> this is true. And I, if you can practice for it, this is how I want to practice. <laughs> a celebration. <laughs> right it's a transformative piece of art. And I, I, I love when art evokes a story and an emotion, uh, especially one that can take something and put a beautiful feeling to it. And uh, this piece right now, the current bit is on your screen. Pick up the phone. You see how that happens? We get so sucked into it <laughs> that we forget we're on television trying to sell you this piece of art. But that is something that we need to do. Pick up the phone. Call the number on your screen for Sparks Fly by Ree McLaughlin Brown. Acrylic on canvas measuring 16 by 20. Retail value $200. And there you see the current bit on your screen. I love the moment in time that is here that can be in your house in just a matter of moments by picking up the phone and call the number on the screen. I love that description, Patty. We are uh, halfway through the break. They go so fast, which means we're going to keep this piece open and then check in over at the recap station for bidding updates on all the pieces we've looked at so far. Thank you, Rob and Patty. Very evocative and thoughtful interpretations of this incredible artwork. And each piece of art really reflects the journey, the vision of the artists themselves, and it's something that you can experience and enjoy and have in your home. All you need to do is call the number on your screen when you see the piece you want and bid. It's that easy. Okay, let's review. Item 37A, MS 2022 by Jessica Gaskin. This is mixed media, measuring 60 by 48. Its retail value is uh, $5,000. We have a uh, hopeful... Opening bid, we need an opening bid of $750. Let's say $750, call the number on your screen. You can see it on the screen behind me. Go ahead and call on that one right now. Item 37B, Pultra Finestra by Von Schaff. This is fabric measuring 19 by 25. What an interesting piece of mixed media. Retail value $625. We have a current bid of $275. You can easily go to $350 on the next bid. Why don't you call in right now? Our volunteers are standing by. We're not getting a lot of phone calls right at the moment, so now's a good time to get your call in, talk to one of our volunteers, and bid on this beautiful piece of work, 37B by John Schaff. 37C, Sparks Fly by Ree McLaughlin Brown. This is acrylic on canvas, measuring 60 by 20 inches. Retail value is $200. We have a bid of $175. We're almost at a bell ringer. One more bid gets us to 200, and maybe that bid will be from you. And, and you will be able to join us and pick up this art and bring it home. You'll see the graphics on your screen shortly, but okay. All right, let's look one more time at these three pieces of art. 37A, MS-22 by Jessica Gaskin. Mixed media, measuring 60 by 48 inches. Retail value, $5,000. Still awaiting that first bid. Let's make it $750. This is an impressive, huge piece of art with really evocative and, and personal meaning to the artist, and I'm sure it'll evoke the same response in your home or office when you bring it home. 37B, Pultra Finestra by John Schaff. Fabric 19 by 25 inches, retail value $625. Let's get that bid in now. It's uh, $325 is the current bid. Item 37C, Sparks Fly by Ray McLaughlin Brown. Acrylic on canvas, measuring 16 by 20. Let's see what the current bid is on that. Still $175. Call in right now. Get that to $200. Let's make it a bell ringer, and maybe that'll be the bid that wins it, and you can take it home for you. All right, let's take a look at more artwork coming up this half hour with Rob and Patty. All right, we're back for the second half of this break, and we're moving on to item 37D. It's Siempre Frida by Barbara Hugo. It's a mixed media measuring 14 by 11 inches with a retail value of $325. And Patty, this, uh, again, is Siempre Frida, which is Spanish for always Frida, and it's so interesting. You could spend the whole day looking through this piece. What, do you, what, what strikes you? Well, I love how the image of Frida Kahlo is right there in the center, sort of a, a strength and everything else. She's supported by the, the heart. 
And it's almost like you're going into her treasure box and finding all of the things that she's collected. Oh, cool. And I love looking at it on air because I could then see the line through the middle of heart, heart, heart. And the color. Yeah, absolutely, and the color. And there's Frida right there. And of course, uh, siempre Frida, always Frida. This could always be yours by picking up the phone and calling the number on the screen. There you see the current bid, and this is a retail piece of $325. I'll tell you again, it's 14 by 11 if you're interested in size. Mixed media? Yes, certainly mixed media. And she What inspired this? She was inspired uh, by a trip to Mexico City where she visited Frida Kahlo's home. And she collected items. She likes to collect things and make use of them, things that we forget about, things that are forgotten on the sidewalk. She likes to collect them and use them to create her expressive artwork. And we will just say that she did not get these from Frida Kahlo's home. <laughs> she did not. <laughs> <laughs> but they are certainly a tribute to Frida Kahlo, and I, I, I love this piece. And you mentioned traveling to her home. Uh, that's what we do. We are your, your station to transport you at, when you have your front row seat, of course, to anywhere in the world that you want to go through, PBS, KBIE. We love that about our mission here, to take you around the world, and you have the front row seat. And right now you have the front row seat to Frida, uh, this beautiful piece of art, uh, Siempre Frida by Barbara Hugo. Pick up the phone, call the number on your screen. It's mixed media, 14 by 11 is the size, and the retail value is $325. Uh, Frida Kahlo is iconic, and there's a beautiful mural in Sacramento that just went up last year on Del Paso Boulevard of Frida Kahlo, and this, this is just, there are some pieces of this in there. And it all is about uh, showcasing her heart. And that's right here, of course, at the bottom of this and the top. And, and her strength. That's really the truth. Strength, incredible strength. Pick up the phone, call the number on your screen to get involved and take this piece home with you when you are the winning bidder. You have bought a piece of art that stays with you or you can give it as a gift. And you have made a gift to us by buying this piece of art and keeping the programming coming that you have come to enjoy, including the travel programming that takes you all around the world. Final thoughts. I, I love this celebration of Frida. Yeah. And I, I love just looking at all of the little elements to it. And Very she, she just well. looks so strong yeah. there. Yeah, absolutely. It's a celebration. It's a celebration. Of always Frida. Siempre Frida. Okay, thank you so much, Barbie Hugo. Love that piece. We're gonna move on to the next one. 37E, My Beloved Cowtown <laughs> by Frank Chavez. And this is a collage measuring 16 by 20. Retail value, $200. And Frank is a very <laughs> loyal uh, artist to PBS KVIE and he's won all kinds of awards. He has. He's, and every year it's different. He's taken five KVIE five jurors, jurors awards. Yeah. awards. And if you like his work, this is the only place it to is. buy it. Only place he will do that is right here <laughs> on PBS KVIE. Okay, this is cool. Jump in and tell me your thoughts. So this is a celebration of uh, Sacramento and Sacramento's status as a cow town. Let's be proud of that. And look at the strength of that. And look at the diversity of the heroes of our town. Our, you know, the people who do our work, the people who make our, our city lively and going, and so many different people. Yeah, and I have to tell you, I'm looking at it, and I see the celebration in the cow and then the contrast on the red. By the way, you see the current bid on your screen, so pick up the phone and call the number to get involved in the auction. This could be yours. And I love owning the word Cowtown. Yes. I do, <laughs> because I think it is a compliment. I really, really do. And inside of this, uh, you see hometown heroes, you see people who are experiencing all kinds of things, and yet they're in it together. Yes. What, do you, what else do you see as far as inspiration here? Well, I, I love that this, the shape of the bull is looking around, running and looking, there's movement to it. 
and I like it, it reminds me of the cowbells at King's Games. Yeah, absolutely. And, and turning that again into a celebration. And that everybody is is moving part together of yeah. as one. It is a collage in every sense of the word, including a tribute of a collage or a mosaic of all different walks of life that we all come together to be better. Uh, pick up the phone, call the number on your screen. The current bid is on your screen right now. This is a retail value of $200, and Frank Chavez only, only donates <laughs> art to PBS KBIE. So this is the only place you can buy his creation. And every year he sends something completely it different. Does. And he gets jurored in. This is a jurored competition. We receive a lot of art from a lot of artists but the best of the best uh, are here and we are celebrating the region right now with this award-winning artist and it can be yours by calling the number on your screen and you can pick this up in just a matter of moments or days and it will be in your home. You can also do this as a great gift. I always think it's a great way to start um, someone on art is through I, I a agree. gift. I agree, I agree. Yes, we're gonna keep this piece open. Thank you so much, Frank. And we're gonna move on to our next piece, which is 37F. Windows to the World ah. by John Titus Krempel. Love this artist. This is oil on canvas measuring 30 by 30. Retail value is $1,600. And I can tell you that John Titus Krempel is highly collected and has been a long time supporter of the PBS KBIE art auction, as well as the arts in general all across our region. First impressions, I know what mine are, but I wanna hear yours, <laughs> you're the art expert. Well, my first impression was this is what I would see outside my train window as I'm traveling through New York City or Chicago. Or Boston, landing in New York. Or landing. Because mm -hmm. that's where you're from. Yes. I'll throw that in. Yep. And uh, to me, these are windows. And I, I then read what, what he had to say about his work. And he's inspired by, he's influenced by mid-century uh, California expressionism and abstractism. Um, but also, he's. this is also an influence from Hitchcock's rear window. Wow. And you can see that. When, when I read that, I went, oh, yeah. But you want to look in and see what's going on in all these different places. And you see in spots what looks like maybe a face, mm -hmm. something looking out at you. I wondered that here too. Yes. Absolutely amazing. Pick up the phone and, and call the number on your screen because this is a conversation piece for sure in your home or your office. We had John on Rob on the Road a dozen years or so ago and the reaction to his art was off the hook. People really connect with his art because it can be modern, mid-century modern, it can be uh, honestly, anywhere. And to me, he's, I can see the sense of wanting to look into those windows and seeing what's going on inside all of those windows. And he's really trying to get across what we try to understand from others through our own experience by looking in on others and trying to understand what's going on with them. Wow, that's such an interesting perspective. I love how it's in the floating frame. Um, I love how it's it's just such a special piece. And every time I look at a different spot, did I say that right? Is that a floating frame? Yes. <laughs> it is, and I, I love how every time I look at a different spot, you do see different life. Although you don't see people, you see life. And And, there is some newsprint in here, but if you look at the newsprint, it's done upside down. Mm -hmm. It's not done so that you can easily understand it. And I think that's part of it. And there you see the artist's signature, JK, right, right there at the bottom. Okay, this is a marvelous piece, an electric piece to come to you right now through PBS KVIE. Pick up the phone, call the number on your screen for this beautiful John Titus Crumple collection piece of art. This is a collectible artist. Don't miss out on this. There you see the current bid. The retail is $1,600. Thank you, John. We're nearing the end of this break, which means it's your final opportunity to bid on the art featured in this half hour. We want to thank Patty Kennedy. Thank you, Patty, You're for welcome. discussing a fine collection with us today. Uh, it's been great to have you here so thank much. Thank you. My pleasure. All right, let's check in over at the recap station for more on the bidding.
All right, thank you, Patty and Rob. Great job helping us understand this fantastic contemporary art. We have been looking at some great art this half hour, and now is your opportunity to take one home. Our volunteers are standing by to take your call. A lot of them are on the phone taking bids right now, but they're waiting for yours. Let's go over the last three paintings we just looked at. Siempre Fride by Barbara Hugo. Mixed media 14 by 11. Guess what? This is a bell ringer. We know this community loves Frida Kahlo. So does the world. Some smart bidder has $500, but it's still open. So keep your bids coming in. We're at $500 right now. Let's go to 37E. We want to thank Barbara's family. We were told she passed away recently, and we want to thank you for her donation. It's really made a huge difference. And the popularity of this piece is certainly reflected in the bid that she received. So let's move on to 37E, my beloved cow town. We have a bid of $200. Looks like that is a bell ringer again for Frank Chavez, his generous artistic contributions to us year after year. Once again, all of you out there really appreciate his work, as do we. That is still open, though. $200 is the current bid. Call now if you'd like to bid a little bit higher than that. Item 37F, Windows to the World, by John Titus Krempel. Very collectible, very accomplished artist. Oil on canvas, 30 by 30. It has a retail value of $1,600. We're still awaiting our first bid. Why don't we make that first bid $475? $475 at 844 KVI Art. Get in your bid for certainly one of the most collectible pieces you can find. All right, let's go back through all six in this half hour. 37A, MS 2022 by Jessica Gaston. We're looking for a high bid, or at least a starting bid of $875. All right, we have a high bid of $875. Let's go to 950 on the next one. Next one on this one, 875 to 950 on MS 2022 by Jessica Gaston. 37B, Poultra Finestra by John Shaft. A current bid of $375. We're looking for another bid. Say that's $450. Let's go $450 on this beautiful piece of artwork. Fabric, 19 by 25. 37C, Sparks Fly by Ray McLaughlin Brown. Current bid on this one is $200. That's a bell ringer. Let's keep the bidding going. Back to 37D, Siempre Frida by Barbie Hugo. 14 by 11, mixed media. Uh, we want to thank the family once again on behalf of Barbie Hugo and her great contribution. Bidding remains open on that one at $500. 37E, My Beloved Cowtown by Frank Chavez. Again, bidding remains open. Thank you, Frank, once again. That's a bell ringer at $200, but please call in if you'd like to top that. All right, 37F, Windows to the World. We're still waiting for our first bid. Let's start with $475 on this wonderful work by John Titus Krempel. All right, stay with us. There's more art coming up in the next half hour of the PBS KVIE Art Auction. Picking up your purchased artwork is quick and easy to do. Visit PBS KVIE Sunday through Tuesday during these posted hours to claim your art. All purchased artwork must be claimed within 30 days of auction closure. For questions, location, and hours, visit kvie.org slash art auction. Thank you for being a part of the PBS KVIE Art Auction and for making art a part of your home today. PBS KVIE is committed to the visual and performing arts through national productions like All Creatures Great and Small on Masterpiece, to our local productions like KVIE Art Showcase, and through the PBS KVIE Gallery, exhibiting award-winning art auction artists and California masters. PBS KVIE's commitment to the arts stays strong because of your participation as a donor and art buyer. Thank you for being a part of the PBS KVIE Art Auction and for making art a part of your home today. Coming up next is the photography category. Awards juried by Gordon Lazzaroni. This category features a selection of photographs, limited editions, and etchings. View all of the art featured in this year's auction at kvie.org slash art auction. Good afternoon, I'm Michael Sanford with you again, and thank you for joining us for this photography break. And now here's an overview of the art that will be up for bid during the next half hour. Let's start with item 38A, Grand Entrance by Wendell Minshew. Photography measuring 16 by 20 inches, framed by Midtown Framing. Its retail value is $500. Item 38B is Reflection in Red by Daryl O'Sullivan. Photography once again, of course, measuring 18 by 24 inches, retail value $350. 
Item 38C is Canyon Sunrise by Janice Rosner. This is photography me measuring 16 by 20 inches. Its retail value is $400. Item 38D is Dusk at the Golden Gate Bridge by Jane Steele. Photography measuring 12 by 18 inches. Its retail value is $400. Item 38E is The Praying Monk by Barbara Summers. Photography measuring 19 by 22 inches. Retail value $350. And finally in this break, item 38F, Shasta in the Afternoon by Philip Venable. Photography measuring 18 by 24 inches. Its retail value is $300. All right, the phone lines are open. They're busy, but call in. They're ready for your bids. Now let's see the art with our auctioneer and art expert. Hi there, I'm Christina Salerno and thank you for joining us for this photography segment. During this break, I am pleased to be back with Martin Christian. Martin's career spans nearly 30 years as a professional photographer, working as a photojournalist for network affiliates in four different states, and he's had numerous gallery shows in Sacramento. He's won five Emmy Awards for his work as a photographer and has served as an awards juror in the PBS KVIE Art Action. We're happy to have him join us again this year as a contributing artist and as an art expert. Welcome, Martin. Thank you, Christina. It's such a joy to be here. All right, let's get started on our first item. Item 38A is called Grand Entrance, and it's by Wendell Minshew. This is photography. It's measuring 16 by 20, and it's framed beautifully by Midtown Framing with a retail value of $500. All right, Martin, let's take it away. Grand Entrance, what can you tell us about it? Wendell has contributed many years. He has won many awards. Thank you, Wendell for supporting us all of these years. This is a 16 by 20 photograph. It is the Stanford Mansion in downtown or midtown Sacramento. So oh, interesting. Many of you have probably walked by, so he's accentuating this uh, really big, bold architectural element. The front steps there just make me want to climb right into this photograph. But Wendell is known for his printing techniques, and I want to read this to you so that uh, I'm as accurate as possible. He created a hand-coating vellum with light-sensitive palladium solution. He placed a digital negative in contact with the vellum and made an exposure under a UV light, washed, processed, varnished, and then he applied 12-carat white gold leaf to the backside of the image. Really? Yeah, which creates this print that has depth, and it ultimately gives it this reflective quality. Wow. So it's very, very cool. It's a small image on a large mat, so it's a bold statement. Wherever you have this, it's going to draw a lot of attention. Anyone that lives in Midtown, works in Midtown, loves history, loves Sacramento history. This is a great, great piece. You know, it could also be great for a small business owner who maybe owns a business in Midtown Sacramento. Um, and I love that you pointed out that detail of how this was made because now that I'm looking at it, wow, you really do have the depth of those stairs. You almost feel like you could just walk right up those stairs with that, that detail that you mentioned. Really good size. Your eye goes straight to the image in the middle. Um, and black and white as well, Martin, but some grays. It's kind of an interesting color scheme. Yeah, I have a feeling that printing process uh, brought out some different tones of black and white. It made it very, very interesting. Um, it's just a really, really neat piece. It makes me want to go visit, take a second look at these stairs here. What a, what a great image. This is item 38A called Grand Entrance by Wendell Minshew. Photography measuring 16 by 20, framed by Midtown Framing with a retail value of $500. And let's touch on that framing too, because really beautifully done with the, the golds and the, um, and the blacks and even some more gray that really accentuate this. Yeah, thank you Midtown Framing for donating your, your uh, hard work and your materials and, and your expertise. Well, I mean, what better uh, color to highlight from the frame than gold for yeah. such a grand entrance so a lot of thought went into selecting that frame and and having things just be so so appropriate so elegant it's a really really great piece you know it's a six it's a six by six image but it's a grand image it's it's really fascinating interesting yeah well the number to call is on your screen the current bid is on your screen as well for all of our um, viewers out there who love midtown sacramento wow what an amazing piece of our um our landscape to have in your home to have in your office to have in your small business pick up the phone get involved numbers are on your screen to call as well we're going to keep this piece open for you to continue bidding on and we're going to move on to our next piece 
Our next piece is item 38B. It's called Reflection in Red, and it's by Daryl O'Sullivan. This is photography. It's measuring 18 by 24 with a retail value of $350. Wow, Martin. Okay, that title, Reflection in Red. That is just some beautiful, bold red we're looking at. What can you tell us about it? Daryl says, uh, and I quote, close-up images are surprisingly beautiful, and yet he describes himself as a landscape photographer. And I think landscape photographers, we kind of go through that, that process where we discover one day that we can drive up to the mountains and get a beautiful vista of the giant mountains and, and that scenery, but sometimes you just turn a rock over and there's something incredible underneath. And wow. that's what happened here. He was just driving by, noticed this color in the water, and, uh, and he created this low angle image. It's really, really beautiful. I mean, it's an abstract nature, photogra nature photograph, an, an abstract landscape photograph. You don't put those terms together all that often. It's really, really beautiful. And, you know, let alone the time of year, how often, how long are the colors gonna be that? How long will the leaves be that color before they start to turn? I like that it's an ordinary thing that we see frequently, you know, leaves, but wow, he's made them look so interesting. And with that reflection, there's so much to look at in this piece. I mean, can you talk about the kind of the, the composition? We've got this beautiful detail of the water here and then the big leaves. I mean, wow, it just really draws your eye. It's uh, look at the dew on the leaves oh, yeah. as well. Isn't that interesting? So we wonder, like, did it just rain recently? That the and the water itself has that foil quality as our camera moves in. It it looks, you know, kind of painted. You know, like they they did something kind of funky to the to treat this photograph. But that's not the case. That's just the the reflection without sunlight. It's in uh, you know in shade. It's not. It doesn't have the disruption from harsh the harsh sun sun's rays. So uh, that indirect light brings out all of those colors. And and he really had to nail his exposure here. There's just there's just a lot of uh, a lot of choices he made here as a photographer. Interesting. Well, this would be a really great piece to have in your living room, especially if you have some of these shades, the reds, the oranges in your living room, maybe bedroom, office. Wow, great size, kind of that square shape. We're looking at 38B reflection in red. Wow, look at those reds. Every time our camera pans over, I'm stunned by those colors. Daryl O'Sullivan, photography measuring 18 by 24 with a retail value of $350. You can see the number to call is on your screen. The current bid is on your screen as well. Um, wow, I mean, for our nature lovers, but also just somebody who loves big bold colors right Martin I mean where would where would something like this go in your home I don't even know if saying red does it justice it's like such a different color yeah. you can see the camera if it can continue to pan down I've always found it fascinating how you can take little snapshots of uh, images like kind of down here and make other art pieces of art if you can imagine that for a minute you could have a picture just like right in here in this area right here it's so cool there's so much going on a lot for the eye to look at wow what a beautiful piece we're going to keep this piece open for you to continue to bid on and we're going to move on to our next piece our next piece is item 38C. It's called Canyon Sunrise, and it's by Janice Rosner. This is photography. It's measuring 16 by 20 with a retail value of $400. Canyon Sunrise. Wow. So I'm assuming this is in the Southwest, Martin. Yeah, this is in Utah. She, Janice takes many vacations there. She's in Southern Utah near Arches and Canyonlands Beautiful. National Parks. She told me that she hired a guide because there was an a part of these canyons that she wanted to visit that was inaccessible, so she needed to hire a guide. And th thankfully she did because she said the road was so gnarly that she doesn't think she would have ever been there uh, it w on her own, but they did so in the dark. Wow. So that they could be there at this moment that the sunlight comes up and hits the spires here. You can see that's, you know, you don't get that for very often, very, very long, just a couple of seconds because then the sun is going to illuminate the canyon floor and then you'll, it will no longer be isolated. You know, this is isolated because the sun is just barely creeping through. Got all the colors that you need there in landscape photography, the blues and the oranges and the reds. It's really, really beautiful. I haven't been to this part of the country. It makes me want to go there, that's for sure. Yeah, right, I know, and I, you usually see pictures of Zion and Bryce, and I love that backstory that she chose kind of a road less traveled to get this beautiful image. So for our viewers out there who've spent time in Utah, the Southwest, Arizona, and seen some beautiful vistas like this, wow, what an amazing piece of original artwork, original photography that you can take home and have in your home or your office, your bedroom. Um, as we zoom in, I just, I'm stunned by these colors. They're so, um, it's hard to believe 
believe these are natural colors that we, we're so lucky to see in nature. It's also a good size, you know, it's a 16 by 20, so you don't need to have a gigantic wall. You can put this in a small space and encourage your guests and your visitors to get their nose right up to it and see all of that incredible detail. Makes me want to strap on a backpack and walk down into this canyon. It's really, really beautiful. And uh, it sounds like she has quite a memory. It, it was a difficult photograph to obtain, a difficult place to get to. And so I have a lot of, I have a feeling that she's very, very proud of this photograph. Right. And Martin, as, we're, as the camera's pointing in, I, I wanted to see if you could talk a little bit about this horizon. You know, you've got the sky up top and this one here at the bottom. I mean, can you talk a little bit about the way that she's kind of framed this photo the composition of it yeah the sun is coming up from the left and it's striking Gorgeous. it's going from left to right and so it's creating these shadows and the isolation and it's also illuminating the bottoms of the clouds and so you mm -hmm. get these funky oranges and all these different textures and colors and sometimes when you have clouds like that some are high and some are low and so you get really interesting compositions when you're fortunate enough to be out there when there are clouds of different height and that's what's happening here uh, we're looking at item 38C, Canyon Sunrise, as we've been talking about, seeing that sun come up over those beautiful mountains by Janice Rosner, photography measuring 16 by 20, that great size. You can fit anywhere in your home with a retail value of $400. You'll see the number to call on your screen. You'll also see the current bid on your screen. I just love how the sky is just as interesting as the rocks. I go back and forth between, gosh, they're both so beautiful, so stunning, Martin. Doesn't it look kind of stormy, though, in the background? It makes me think that maybe they had to jump in the car and escape a rainstorm. It's really, really beautiful. Beautiful piece. All right. Well, we're halfway through this break, which means we're going to keep this piece open and check in over at the recap station for bidding updates. All right. Thank you, Christine and Martin, part of our talented production team that brings you some of the great programs that we so are so glad to bring to you here at PBS KVIE. Gorgeous work we just saw waiting for your bid. Let's review all the active bidding for the break, starting with 38A grand entrance by Wendell Mishu. Photography 16 by 20 inches. This is framed by Midtown Framing, retail value of $500. We are have, we need an opening bid of $150. How about $150 to open a bid on this beautiful piece of photography at the Stanford Mansion in Sacramento? Really, as Martin pointed out, it is uh, just beautifully framed, beautifully photographed, and, and quite unique, capturing the incredible architecture right here in our community. All right, next one, 38B, Reflection in Red by Daryl O'Sullivan, 18 by 24 inches. We have a current bid of $100. The retail value is $350. This is an amazing piece of work. It's hard to believe it's photography. It looks like incredibly talented painting, but it's an incredibly talented photograph. So $100 is our current bid. We can easily uh, exceed that by you calling 844-584-3278. Item 38C. Canyon Sunrise, as Martin pointed out, and he's quite the hiker, to be able to reach this point in the canyon lands and around arches and capture this precise moment in time is truly a once in a lifetime experience that you can enjoy in your home and office, or what a great gift this would bring to somebody else. 844-584-3278. All right, now's the time to show your support for PBS KVIE, show your appreciation for these fantastic artists, we love bringing you the great programs that we do from Nature, Nova, Frontline, Antiques Roadshow, Finding Your Roots, and of course, all of our local programs, Rob on the Road, America's Heartland, Viewfinder, Art Showcase, all of part of our effort to bring you the quality, uh, highest quality programming that you can find in our region. Now, we just need to see about the top three once more. Grand Entrance, 38A by Wendell Minshew, Photography, 16 by 20. Do we have a bid on that yet? We are still awaiting our first bid. So let's make it $150. Call the number on your screen. 38B, reflection in red. $100 is the current bid. Retail value of $350. I hear the phone's ringing. Let's hope the call coming in right now is for this wonderful work by Daryl O'Sullivan. And item 38C, Canyon Sunrise. I knew this would be a popular one. The bid is currently at $225. Let's make this a bell ringer with a retail value of $400. This is a deserving photograph. Make your call right now, will you? Support PBS KVIE and our great regional artists. And now let's head back to see some more landscapes with Christina and Martin. 
some really beautiful art in this break, and we want you to get involved in the auction and win your favorite piece today. Up next is item 38D. It's called Dusk at the Golden Gate Bridge, and it's by Jane Steele. This is photography measuring 12 by 18 inches with a retail value of $400. Okay, Martin, let's get started with this iconic bridge. This was taken uh, at Baker Beach below the Presidio. It's really uh, interesting that she's chosen a smaller 12 by 18, so it's a great opportunity if you have a smaller space, you know, maybe uh, in a hallway or a kitchen or somewhere with a smaller. Normally when you see like a Golden Gate image, it's gigantic and, and it's difficult to find a place for it to go in your home. So I really like the fact that Jane has given us something a little bit smaller. You can take a piece of San Francisco and find a place for it in your home. Absolutely, and so this is dusk, so you can definitely see that the kind of colors are changing here. So the, uh, it's almost like the bridge is kind of bringing that orange is out, Martin. So I have a surprise for everyone, and I see our camera operator, Virginia, is ready to zoom in. Look here in the middle, what is that? It's the ferry, so she, oh, timed, so she timed it perfectly. So, uh, yeah. There's she, the ferry traveling at dusk. In her description, she was very proud of the fact that she got that ferry right there. That's so cool. Well, I know this is a beach that many of our viewers have been to. Obviously, a lot of people in Sacramento go to go to San Francisco frequently or have lived there in the past. So, wow, what a beautiful piece to take home to remember the, the city on the bay here, the, the, the iconic Golden Gate Bridge. As Martin said, it's a great size to go in your home, your office, your bedroom. Um, maybe you, you own a retail store. I mean, what a great piece that you can really place just about anywhere, Martin. Um, the number to call on your screen is um, up, and the current bid is up on your screen as well. Pick up the phone get involved just a reminder that all of the artwork that has been donated by artists is original artwork donated to, P to kvie to support the mission and to support the programming that you love the kids shows the dramas the local shows all of the art auction goes to support that mission uh martin additional thoughts on this beautiful piece look at the uh, close-up we just had there of the golden gate bridge one of the iconic image of california and also of this country the golden gate bridge and yes. you can see the rocks here stained by the seagulls and she says she was there to photograph the waves and the ferry just appeared and as she said here I go. So she was, she sounds like she was pretty excited to see that fairy. Really cool. I can just, makes me hear all the sounds associated with an image like this. We're looking at item 38D, Dusk at the Golden Gate Bridge. Again, you can see that really pretty orange coming up over the orange bridge. It's by Jane Steele. It's photography measuring 12 by 18 with a retail value of $400. Um, you can see the current bid on your screen. You can also see the number on your screen. And also, Martin, I want to point out this is on metal. It sure is, Re rewards contrast. Uh, you can get uh, more image in a smaller space because there isn't a mat in a frame. And it's a great view of the Marin headlands. You can see Sausalino peeking through in the corner there. As the camera can tilt, oh, uh, can pan over to the right a little bit and then go up, you can kind of see Salt Sausalito. So a lot of us have connections to San Francisco and the Golden Gate Bridge, and it's a great memory of that. Absolutely. All right, well, we're gonna keep this piece open for you to continue bidding on, and we're gonna move on to our next piece. Our next item is 38E, is called The Praying Monk, and it's by Barbara Summers. This is photography, and it's measuring 19 by 22, with a retail value of $350. Wow, this is stunning, um, really interesting. Piece. What, what can you tell us about it, Mike, Martin? Well, I know that we're not supposed to say this, but this is my favorite piece of all the photographs that I've been fortunate enough to help bring to you in your home. It, it's, you know, a great moment in time, a photojournalism. The image in the foreground is brighter than the images in the background are a little bit darker, a little bit softer. So our, our primary image in the foreground uh, is brought out uh, as a result of that, really just a great photograph. I wanna share one uh, note that she gave me. She said that this was taken while on a trip to Wuhan, China, uh, while visiting a Buddhist temple. There was a call to prayer, and I was positioned by a side door entry, and the monk was standing and suddenly turned and dropped down to pray. And photography is allowed there as long as the public is respectful and do not interfere with the activities. So uh, photojournalists, I think, have to know their camera, they have to know light, and they also have to anticipate action and create 
beautiful images, have them be technically sound, do all of those things in the blink of an eye. So Barbara, congratulations to you for this masterful image and I, I feel like I'm a better person just to be able to stand here and look at it. You know, you really feel looking at this that you're standing there at that doorway to that Buddhist temple because it, you're almost peeking into this image. Beautiful moment in time. I mean, the colors are stunning. She framed it so nicely with this, this red here complementing the yellows. So imagine if we could ask the camera to pan down uh, pretty, if we could get down to the floor. Imagine if that floor had been green or red or yellow, right. it would be completely disrupt uh, the image and then the orange and the yellows of the robes wouldn't stand out as much. So look at that gray floor right there. That's an important element to making that, look at the, uh, right here off to the left, these round objects. If the floor was white or, or black or red, it would not have this, it would not be as accentuated. So man, talk about being in the right place at the right time. All right, I'm really skilled. This is item 38E, we're looking at the praying monk, as you can see is the, the one we're just panning over right there by Barbara Summers. Photography measuring 19 by 22 with a retail value of $350. You'll see the current bid on your screen. You'll also see the number to call on your screen and get involved in the bidding. A piece like this is going to go quickly. Um, we, you know, the, these pieces aren't open very long. You know, once they close, they're gone. So if you're interested, you want to take a piece of original artwork home with you, especially one as beautiful as this, call now, get involved, pick up the phone. We're going to keep this piece open for you to continue bidding on, and we're going to move on to our next piece. Our next piece is item 38F. It's called Shasta in the Afternoon, and it's by Philip Venable. This is photography. It's measuring 18 by 24, retail value of $300. We've had some really iconic um, locations that, that we've been talking about, Martin, and this one is no exception, Shasta. Wow, there's a beautiful view of Shasta there. What is an incredible photograph. Philip was driving back from Washington State from visiting his son. He talks, uh, our camera is perfectly positioned. He, he was really uh, excited about that lenticular cloud. Lenticular mm -hmm. clouds are, they look like UFOs. They don't appear for very long. So he was pretty excited to get that perfect halo over Mount Shasta. And if our camera could continue to come out, uh, one of the lessons I, I heard long ago, can you take a picture of a photograph of that mountain, but can you work something into the foreground? That will take your photograph up to the next level and look at that. He's got that dark shape in the foreground, a little bit of uh, agriculture in the lower. What would this photograph be without that dark mountain and that uh, agricultural area? This is a master landscape photographer and this is a tremendous image of something that we drive by all the time and Philip took the time to really deliver us this outstanding image. And I know, you know, you drive past these, you don't always get to see them. A lot of times they're hidden in clouds, they're obscured. So this is just, wow, a stunning view. You can see almost every detail on that mountain, something we don't always get to see. How lucky that we can take a piece of original artwork to honor this part of California home with you. Um, Martin, what else can you tell us about it? I mean, it's kind of got this blue-gray feeling to it as well. For sure, that's kind of a natural color. You can wow. see blue when you get uh, indirect light in the mountains, you get some blues. And uh, it's also, Christina, it's an investment in equipment. You can't take this kind of photograph with your cell phone no. or a point and shoot camera. This is someone who has uh, very expensive camera equipment and knows how to use it, knows how to be in the right place at the right time. Look at the contrast we're getting off the mountains in the foreground. Like in Lake Tahoe, they say it's most beautiful when it's white and green and blue. So the, the, uh, it would not be the same image without that snow creating all that contrast right there. You can see the contrast between the white and the black of that hill in the foreground. It's everything you want in a landscape photograph in a landscape photograph is right here. And it's printed on metal, which I know we've talked about a little bit as well. Does that help bringing out all those beautiful contrasts you're talking about? Absolutely, absolutely. Metal rewards contrast, and boy, it's rewarded Philip. Thank you, Philip, for submitting this. Lots of people drive by there. We have a lot of people in the region that go back and forth between the northern part of the state, and I have a feeling there are a lot of people that would like to see this in their home or office. 
Absolutely. We're looking at item 38F, Shasta in the afternoon. Well, that tells you what time of day it was taken by Philip Venable. This is photography measuring 18 by 24, really good size, retail value of $300. All right. Well, we're nearing the end of this break, which means that now is your final opportunity to bid on the art featured in this half an hour. I'd like to thank Martin Christian for serving as an art expert this break and sharing his expertise with us. Now let's check in over at the recap station for an update while you pick up the phone and get involved. Thank you, Christina and Martin. And yes, the phones really are ringing off the hook. I'm not just saying that, I can see it right over here. People love these photographic works of art and they're calling. Now is the time for you to call in in the final few minutes of this half hour. Bidding is competitive, but you just might be the winner. Let's go over the three that we just saw. 38D, Dusk at the Golden Gate Bridge by Jane Steele. Uh, it's a $400 retail value. What a wonderful image of the Golden Gate Bridge. We've seen many, many pictures of the bridge, but this one is unique and I think exceptionally good. Almost a bell ringer. The current bid is $325. Bidding remains open, so now is the time to call in at 844-584-3278. Item 38E, The Praying Monk. This uh, was Martin's favorite as he admitted to us, but you see, it's almost like a, a painting. It's so beautiful, so incredibly well framed. What an evocative moment. We have a high bid right now of $100. It has a retail value of $350. So this is a great one to call in right now. Perhaps put in a bid for $150. Now's the time. 38F, Shasta in the afternoon. This, my friends, is a bell ringer. <laughs> Lots of photographs have been taken of Shasta. This one stands out by Philip Venable. Truly an amazing photograph. Everything about it is just outstanding and unique. The bidding remains open on this, though. $500 is the current bid, so call in now, and maybe you can take this home for your home, office, or as a wonderful gift. All right, let's go back to the top. 38A, grand entrance by Wendell Minshew. Photography measuring 16 by 20 inches. We have a current bid of $250. Let's get a $300 bid in there, 844-584-3278. Incredible black and white photograph of the Stanford Mansion here in Sacramento. $250 current bid. Call on this one now. 38B, Reflection in Red by Daryl O'Sullivan. Photography 18 by 24 inches. $145 is the current bid. It has a, it has a retail value of $350. A unique. What a moment in time he captured and what great work by the photographer in the field and afterwards to get this incredible combination of colors. 145 is the current bid. Kenyan Sunrise. This is a bell ringer too. Fantastic. $525 is the current bid. <clears throat> Over on a retail value of 400. Bidding remains open on this. So call now if you want this unique and incredible photograph of the beautiful southwest part of our country. 38D, once again, dusk at the Golden Gate Bridge. Bidding is still at $325. Now's your chance to get in. Make it a bell ringer at 400 and maybe you can take this home. 38E, The Praying Monk, $350 retail value. This is by Barbara Summers. Again, the bid is at $100. Let's call in $150 right now. Why don't you do that? And finally, 38F, Shasta in the afternoon. Bidding is at $500. And again, a bell ringer. But bidding remains open for a few minutes more, so now's the time to call. All right. It's time to wrap up this break. Stay with us. There's more art coming up in the next half hour of the PBS KVIE Art Auction. Welcome to the 42nd Annual PBS KVIE Art Auction. Join us all weekend for a celebration of Northern California's visual arts. Over 270 works of art will be auctioned off to the highest bidder, and you can be part of the action by watching and bidding on your favorite artwork. View the entire collection online at kvie.org slash art auction. Then when your favorite item appears, call 1-844-KVIE-ART to place your bid. Auction proceeds benefit the programs and services of your PBS station, KVIE. So thank you for watching and bidding. And now let the auction begin. Bidding on items in the art auction is quick and easy to do. First, explore the collection online at kvie.org slash art auction, or keep watching PBS KVIE. When a piece of art catches your eye, call 1-844-KVIE-ART and a volunteer will assist you. 
KBIE accepts all major credit cards for your art purchase, and a member of our accounting team will confirm your payment within five minutes of item sale. Thank you for being a part of the PBS KBIE Art Auction and for making art a part of your home today. Coming up next is the landscape category. Awards juried by Philippe Gandiel, landscapes celebrate the natural beauty throughout our region and beyond. View all of the art featured in this year's collection at kvie.org slash art auction. Hi there, I'm Michael Sanford and thanks for joining us for the landscape break. Here's an overview of the art will be up for bid during the next half hour. Let's start with item 39A, May the Sun Shine Upon You by Michelle Andres. This is oil on canvas measuring 24 by 20 inches. Its retail value is $1,100. Item 39B is Across the Water by Jim Dark. This is acrylic on canvas measuring 28 by 22 inches. Its retail value is $450. Item 39C is Spring Blossoms by Elita Waki. This is acrylic on canvas measuring 30 by 30 inches. Its framing is by Skyline One Framing and its retail value is $700. Item 39D is Corkscrew Wilderness by Ron Wade. This is oil on canvas measuring 20 by 18 inches. Its retail value is $600. Item 39E is White Poppies by Patricia Leenders. This is photography measuring 16 by 20 inches. Its retail value is $150. And the last item in this uh, half hour is item 39F, Must Be January by Susan Whitley Brady. This is mixed media measuring 20 by 30 inches and its retail value is $900. These are the works available this half hour. Call in now. Let's see the art with our auctioneer and art expert. Hi there, I'm Kelly Raines, and thank you for joining us for this landscape category. During the break, I am pleased to be here with Marinda johnson Sessoms. Marinda is series producer of KVAE Arts Showcase, sharing artist stories, inspirations, and the cultural impact of their work. Marinda, welcome, and thanks for returning as an art expert this year. Always, always a joy. We're going to start off with item 39A. This is May the Sun Shine Upon You by Michelle Andres. This is oil on canvas measuring 24 by 20. Retail value is $1,100. And Marinda, both you and I are in love with this painting. I absolutely love this painting. And the sun shines upon you. You see the light hit that white paint and it looks like you are there. I, I mean, the way this piece is light and dark and the way the artist describes it as knowing the world is busy enough, she tries to capture and share the sheer joy of surroundings, but bring an appreciation for the more intimate spaces. And this is solitary. This is something, but it's, it's not like a sad solitary. It is the light on that built that helm. The, the, it, it's just so much light. There is nothing somber about this piece. Like you, you oh, I don't know, it, it's breathtaking to me. And just standing next to it, it was right after a rain. You see the wetness of the rain on the roof. Like that, that to capture all of that in such a simple, elegant way, it's absolutely beautiful. It's beautiful. There's so much drama in it, and there's all kinds of drama in all of the programs that you love here on PBS KVIE. The number to call is on your screen. The current bid is on your screen. This has a retail value of $1,100. May the sun shine upon you, and the sun certainly is shining upon this beautiful structure. And we were just so impressed by the light that's on that one part of the building. It does give it a sense of hope. No, and it also, it, it, it the artist also would, within the the um, solitary state. Um, it can be peaceful, safe, lonely, our relationships, rather it's a relationship, a level of comfort, but really, me and you talked about this, to be able to be alone. Sometimes I think we see that sometimes as loneliness or depression, but it actually, there's a light to it. And this piece, uh, it, it really encompasses that perfectly to understand that sometimes we do need to get away. We do need to listen to ourselves a little more. We do need to have a better understanding understanding of who we are and what we are when we're by ourselves. And this 
is the most beautiful way to articulate that in a work of art. It is so beautiful. Beauty and solitude. It is an opportunity for inspiration and growth. And this is your opportunity for inspiration and to have this beautiful painting in your home. Call the number on your screen. The current bid is on your screen. Retail value is $1,100. May the sun shine upon you. May this art be upon your walls in your home. Item 39A by Michelle Andres. I love the framing too. It just kind of centers all of this gorgeous just drama and solitude. It fits to the whole understanding of that uh, solitary. Um, it's very simple, um, but it fits perfectly to understand that whole solitary of self, understanding the light shining there in such an empty space. There's so much space for reflection. Those blues, I, I mean, it, it was the perfect choice of colors for this. And, and I'm gonna say it, the movement in that grass, you see that there was a rain, you see that there's the, the grass is growing, you see the absolute beauty of this isolated, Home. It is beautiful. And we're going to keep this one open and move on to the next piece. Call now. The next one is item 39B. It is Across the Water by Jim Dark. It is acrylic on canvas measuring 28 by 22. Retail value is $450. Another, I just, I am so awestruck by the talent in this art auction, and this painting is so beautiful. Tell us about this. I love the way the artist stated, unpeopled landscapes. Again, it kind of fits to that solitary feel, but this is capturing so much life without people. And it shows the way the sky and the grays mix with a little bit of green and the way you see the almost the light, but it's the sun coming over the back part of the, the hills in the background. It is absolutely extraordinary why you see the darkness and the light in a piece that has so much empty space, but it's not empty because the way that color, the movement, you're almost seeing like maybe a storm coming in or something. It's so beautiful. There's so much drama and there's so much movement. It goes around the canvas. I, I, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I think this is a gallery wrap canvas. So the painting goes around. And so the story just keeps continuing. Like the stories, all the stories that you love in our local programs and the masterpiece programs, those stories continue too. When you support your local PBS station, KVIE, by calling the number on your screen and getting this beautiful painting in your home, the current bit is on your screen. This is Across the Water by Jim Dark, acrylic on canvas measuring a, a wonderful size, 28 by 22, retail value is $450. What else would you like to share, Marissa? The artist stated it as interplay of light and clouds reflected on the water. And for me, it's it's almost like you're seeing almost this, this, this overcast and then the water kind of feeds into the reflection of the sky. So you're seeing this reflection of that, that overcast of a storm coming in or whatever that look is of this unpeopled place, but you see so much life in it. And uh, this was completed in a studio and it was based on several photographs. And I think when we look back to some of the other pieces, the whole idea of capturing something through a photograph and going back to pay, uh, paint it or create it or turn it into something else, a different art later, it really gives you an understanding of how you start to really see things differently when you take the time to really look at every piece of it, every line, every color, you actually then are able to bring out so much more of just that photo. A photo speaks a thousand words is what I used to always remember here. It hearing. really does. And you, it's speaking a thousand words, when you look at your screen right there, look at the light breaking through those clouds and through the horizon. The horizon's a little bit lower, so there's all kinds of room for that storm drama to play up above. So look at just the way the he works with light is stunning. It's it's absolutely beautiful. You, you it just it, it all kind of flows together. And I actually appreciate no frame on this one because it really wraps you around the whole idea. Uh, uh, it shouldn't have a frame because it's unpeopled landscape. So there isn't any involvement of people. It's just nature speaking for itself. And it can't be contained. This is across the water by Jim Dark. Item 39B acrylic on canvas measuring 28 by 22. Retail value is $450. The number to call is on your screen. The current bid is on your screen. This is your chance to own this not containable, <laughs> beautiful vista nature in your home. 
And we're gonna move on, keep this piece open uh, briefly. We're moving on to item 39C, Spring Blossoms by Alita Walkie. This is acrylic on canvas measuring 30 by 30. Framing is by Skyline One Framing. Retail value is $700. And Marinda, I just wanna dive into this painting. Light speaks so extraordinary in certain pieces. It, 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 you almost feel like you're standing in the sunlight of this piece. And um, the artist explained it of, it's kind of free-floating anxiety that has the artist feeling excited and energized, but the sense of renewed optimism when the sight of spring blossoms, it's an it gives her an irresistible urge to paint. And this is excitement. The, the bright colors of the sky mixed with the pinks. You don't really think of pink with sky, but when you really do take the time in those early blossoms when spring begins, you really do start to see pinks and little purples mixed with the blues within the sky. And this artist captured that perfectly. You can see it on your screen, all those beautiful pinks and, and the pinks and the flowers and the foreground and just all of the foliage and nature that's just, I, I can hear the breezes through the trees and I can hear even the clouds moving. It's stunning. Look at those colors on your screen. Call the number on your screen while you're looking at those colors on your screen. And the current bid is on your screen as well. Call it now. This item won't be open very long. What else do you want to share, Marin? The artist stated that this is a time to celebrate new life. That's the mood that the artist hopes to portray, leaving people that a reminder to always keep looking up. Mm. And when you look at this piece, you look all the way around and you especially look up at that beautiful sky that comes down and it casts into those mountains and the hills behind, the trees. And the thing I love is that the, uh, the, she said that the quick drying consistency of acrylics, it really allows her to build the layers without having to wait for the previous layer to dry. And it's extraordinary to really even think about that because a lot of times when you're painting, if you want to change it or add something, if you have to wait for it or you'll, you'll smear it. And this actually shows you that that whole idea of spring blossoms, the flowers are all blooming. Everything is just starting to pop out. The colors are popping out and the ability to be able to paint on top of before it dries or when it's dry so fast, it actually gives you that exact feeling of spring blossoming out. It's so, so beautiful, Miranda. Item 39C is Spring Bo Blossoms by Alita Walkie. It is acrylic on canvas measuring 30 by 30, substantially sized painting, framed by Skyline One framing. Retail value is $700. The current bid is on your screen, so call the phone number on your screen. Call in now. The items don't stay open very long. Time is of the essence. And it's just, so, I love the frame too. It's kind of bringing outdoors with it. Without a doubt. And, and it brings that texture in, but also this was an experiment with sponges. Nice. And uh, that, even you think of a paintbrush, especially with acrylics, but this was sponges and it actually added so much texture to each tree and the grass. I, I think it was an extraordinary experiment that came to a great completion. It is a wonderful painting and we are halfway through the break, which means we're going to keep this piece open and check in over at the recap station for bidding updates. All right, thank you, Marinda. Thank you, Kelly. The phones are ringing. Our volunteers are busy. You've seen the first three pieces in the landscape break, and we want to get even more phones ringing with bids. Call the number on your screen now to get involved in the action. In the meantime, let's look at the first three items that we just shared with you. 39A, May the Sun Shine Upon You by Michelle Andres. Oil on Canvas 24 by 20. The current bid is $750. What a beautiful, evocative piece, I think, Marinda really described how this one draws you in. It's now $800. We're close to our retail value. We have a bidding war going on. Why don't you jump in and join it? Maybe this will be yours. 39B, Across the Water. This is a bell ringer. Look at that. $600 is our current bid. Just came in. Retail value, $450. But remember, bidding remains open on this. What a fantastic piece of work, acrylic on canvas. Get your bid in now, maybe you can make this yours. 39C, Spring Blossoms by Alita Waki. Acrylic on canvas measuring 30 by 30. The current bid on this is $200, has a retail value of $700. So this is a great opportunity to take this piece that Marinda talked about the process so beautifully and Kelly did as well. What a great, unique piece. And this is something that you can make yours. Good time to call right now at 844-584.
Big call to action, okay. Actually, the thing that, that to remember right now is that this is uh, your only opportunity, really, within the next half hour or so to make your bid on this. Beat out the other bidders, bring home this incredible work. And don't forget, you're not only supporting these artists and helping bring their work to a larger audience, as we're doing, you're supporting programming on PBS KVI, your PBS station for Northern California. And what does that mean? That means you support all of our local programming, our national series, America's Heartland, our showcase, Rob on the Road, Viewfinder, all the great programs, Inside California Education. It's all really great stuff. Let's look over these three one more time. 39A, Sunshine Upon You by Michelle Andres. What's the current bid on that one? 850, wow, it's still going up. 844-584-3278. Across the water, it is a bell ringer, as we said. It's $600. Bidding is continuing on that. Call your bid in now. Spring Blossoms, $200 for 39C by Alita Waki, acrylic on canvas. This is a wonderful piece of work. The bidding should be more robust on this, and I think you should be the one calling in on that one. All right, now we're going to head over to the art for the second half of this break with Kelly and Marinda. All right, we are back with the second half of the break, continuing with item 39D, Corkscrew Wilderness by Ron Wade. This is oil on canvas measuring 20 by 18 inches with a retail value of $600. Marinda, first impressions? Wow. wow. Um, the way you see that path going up and you see the rocks, it, it, the, the texture and the, the very intricate detail of those rocks, that, that's what hit me first. I, I was so surprised of almost sensing and feeling the walkway, the path. But um, this is a landmark peak, uh, Corkscrew Peak in Death Valley National Park. And this makes me want to go and see this because it's not only the path where you see kind of the new life, the old life, because it's kind of, you know, more of a drier season, it looks like when this was captured, but just that walk up to those hills, which goes to the different colors, the browns, the gray hill, which leads into the darker browns, which goes to the rocky hill. I, I don't know, I, I just think it's it's a beautiful site that makes you wanna go and see it for yourself, but how extraordinary to be able to have it to look at every day in your home. I love that, you would be able to go and see it for yourself. Uh, PBS KVIE takes you to places that you might not get a chance to, to see in person, but it's right there on your screen, however you watch it. Uh, call the number on your screen the current bit is on your screen this is item 39d it is corkscrew wilderness by ron wade oil on canvas measuring 20 by 18 retail value is 600 dollars and i love all the details the gravel and the little tree branches and the bushes it's so extraordinary no and it, it's it's really extraordinary the way you see the rock formations on top of these hills it, it almost like it very detailed with being able to sense that it is rock and then this one seems more like dirt that leads down to the the bushes and all the the path it's it's amazing when an artist is able to capture the different textures of nature itself on a piece I, I just always think that's beautiful to be able to see that through the paint um, this artist has been exhibiting professionally for 20 years and you can see that this artist has has mastered the craft um, like I said with those abilities to be able to really see the life of plants and even in this kind of path of dirt and rocks and everything combined, you can actually see that that texture and that detail of those items. And you can see the texture on your screen right now. It's so beautiful. Look at all the details and just that outside landscape. Ron is a longtime contributor to the art auction and we thank you, Ron, for all of your talent and, and your contribution to the art auction. The current number to call to bid for this beautiful painting is on your screen. The current bid is on your screen. This is item 3098, Corkscrew Wilderness, and it definitely is just this extraordinary outside beautiful landscape. I think also the frame really supports it. Um, it, it really takes it because the different dynamics of those hills, those mountains, it, it gives you those layers. The browns, the the, the lighter hills, it, it really encompasses that within the frame. And I, I love so when the beautiful. frames really match it. Yes, absolutely agree. We're gonna keep this item open, night item 39D. We're moving on to item 39E. It is White Poppies by Patricia Leanders. It is photography measuring 16 by 20. Retail value is $150. I love poppies. And what can you tell us about this art and artist, Marinda? This just makes 
makes me want to smile. The color that is popping out of this photography is you see the sun hit the flowers and it's reflecting back and it fills up so much of the space. You just, it makes you want to run outside, but it also makes you want to stand here and just look at this beautiful work of art. Um, and this piece was taken by a camera. Um, it was a mega spring bloom after three months of rain. And I almost want to look closer. You know how the rain kind of sits inside the flowers after a rain? It, it's, you always capture that little uh, kind of dance of nature where the rain kind of holds on to the petals and it makes me kind of look, I'm kind of going through and seeing the different uh, color, bright colors jumping off. It is so beautiful. This is item 39E, White Poppies by Patricia Leenders. Uh, uh, she's a longtime contributor to the auction and we thank her for her artistry. It is photography measuring 16 by 20. Uh, retail value is $150. The number to call on your screen is there at, to bid and the current bid is on your screen. Now, is the, correct me if I'm wrong, Melinda, is this a metal print? It is on uh, a metal frame, um, uh, not frame, sorry, and I'm saying that wrong. So uh, we'll get the specs on that, but I, it's it's mounted on but the thing that i love is that it's it really does make you take a moment um and if you kind of know the artist there's this light that comes in whenever you kind of are around her True. and to me this kind of really brings out that light that she brings to a space and her art really does speak to that and it's, I love this. It's, it's unique in a landscape piece to have a vertical composition. And it's so extraordinary. And, and I know the artist as well. And I, she told me one time that she just loves to take her camera out for walks and see something beautiful that you might not see otherwise and snaps a picture. And here we are in an art auction. This is item uh, 39E, White Poppies by Patricia Leenders. Photography measuring 16 by 20. Retail value is $150. The current bid is on your screen. The number to call is on your screen. And when you're doing that, you know, call in, celebrate the region, celebrate the, the state's national, or yes. not national, the state's <laughs> state flower. <laughs> Forgive me for my language. And it's just beautiful to bring outside into your home. And this Any is an unusual, um, uh, the artist stated this color of poppy is unusual. So imagine the ability to be able to capture that and be able to share it with someone in their home of something that they may not see within their own area or travels. This was a moment captured of an unusual color of those poppies and she did that. It's beautiful. We're gonna keep this open for a brief moment. And we're moving on to item 39F, must be January, by Susan Whiteley Brady. This is mixed media, measuring 20 by 30. Retail value is $900. Wow, Marinda. First impressions. I know mine is I'm just awestruck, but what, what, tell me what you're thinking. There is so many different mediums used within this piece. And so when you first walk up to it, you almost lean in because you're trying to figure out why are you seeing so much uh, depth and texture coming out. And that's because this is... Um, mostly paper and dye constructed to create the body of work. And then it's using oil paint and any other textures that work, including acrylic mediums um, and different leaves and other things to kind of create that texture. It's almost like um, blanketed, like the different trees, you're actually able to see that it has a texture to it. And there's so much depth to it and so much drama and, and you can find all kinds of drama. I've talked about drama before, but Hey, we are the place for all your favorite drama programs and also the place for your favorite art. And I think this is your next piece of favorite art. Call the number on your screen. The current bid is on your screen. Screen. This is item 39F, Must Be January by Susan Whiteley Brady. It is mixed media, measuring 20 by 30. Retail value is $900. And it's, I love the oranges peeking through all those blues and reflected. And then it reflects off of the, what you see as water, but then you see this almost like webbing shine texture throughout which is more mixed with the paper and the acrylic paint and then it gives the illusion of water it really it, it, the reflection from those colors off of that and then also um, this artist started um, 
had been painting um, and then stopped um, uh, painting after uh, gradu uh, graduation. Um, and she said, as many women of her generation took on the role of wife and started again about 15 years ago in hopes that this would inspire others who will dust off their dreams and really start again. And with those mix of all those mediums, it kind of is like, you know, it expresses that life where you have a dream of things and other things come into play, but you realize it leads you back to your dream. And so I think that this artist really articulated that well within this piece with seeing that journey back to her art and then mixing it all with the textures, the papers, the acrylic, it kind of encompasses that journey back. It's so beautiful. Look at here on your screen. There's just so much drama, so much drama, so much emotion and mood in this piece. And like all the different mediums that the artist has used, you know, we are made up of all kinds of different experiences. And there's all kinds of experiences and different things for you to discover on your local PBS station, which is KVIE. Call the number on your screen. This is item 39F, extraordinary. It is Must Be January by Susan Whiteley Brady. Mixed media measuring 20 by 30 really beautiful size any 15 second final thoughts Martha? the artist stated the hope is that her work makes the viewer more aware of what is around us wow. and this with all those mixtures really establishes there's so much to be seen and you can see some of it in this piece there is so much to see thank you Miranda we are nearing the end of this break which means that now is your final opportunity to bid on the art featured in this half hour now let's check in over at the recap station for an update all right, thank you, Kelly and Marinda. You can get in on bidding for this half hour by calling the number on your screen right now and taking home a beautiful piece from the Landscape Collection. Let's go over these really quickly. Look at the current bid, starting with 39D, Corkscrew Wilderness by Ron Wade, oil on canvas, 20 by 18. Current bid is $275. Retail value is 600. So there's room to put in a bid right now and get this beautiful piece, oil on canvas by Ron Wade. Item 39E, White Poppies by Patricia Leanders. This is a bell ringer. Yes, $150 is the current bid. Thank you, Patricia, for this incredible piece of photography. The bidding remains open on this, so get your bid in now, and you can still take this home. Item 39F, Must Be January by Susan Whitley Bradley. We're still awaiting the first bid on that. How about a bit of $275 on this beautiful piece of mixed media, which has actually got a retail value of $900. So $275 would be a good start. Call right now. Okay, let's go back from the top. Item 39A, May the Sun Shine Upon You by Michelle Andress. How about that? What a beautiful piece of work. The current high bid is $1,000, very close to the retail value. Let's get it to the retail value. One more bid on this, put it at the retail value, and maybe you can take home this unique, beautiful oil on canvas measuring 24 by 30. May the sun shine upon you. 39B is across the water. Look at that. We have a bell ringer, do we not? We do. 775. 775 is actually, it'll show up in just a second here. It says 725, but it's actually 775. But again, a reminder, bidding remains open on this beautiful piece of work, Across the Water by Jim Dark. Item 39C, Spring Blossoms by Alita Waki. Acrylic on canvas measuring 30 by 30. Spring Blossoms, the current bid is $200. Retail value is 700. There's room to bid on this one. Now's the time to call 844-584-3278. A beautiful, evocative piece of work by Alita Waki. All right, let's go through the bottom three items in this half hour once again. Item 39D, Corkscrew Wilderness by Ron Wade. $300 is the current bid. Item 39E, White Poppies. Again, this is a bell ringer, but the good news is it's still open for bidding. So get this incredible piece of photography from our region right now by calling the number on your screen. And... Oh, the bells came late, but there they are. <laughs> We're happy to, happy to hear them. 39F, the final item. Must be January. Still awaiting our first bid on that. Susan Whitley Brady, $900 retail. Really nice piece of mixed media. All right, let's see 200 just to start on that. All right, stay with us. There's more art coming up in the next half hour of the PBS KVIE Art Auction. Picking up your purchased artwork is quick and easy to do. Visit PBS KVIE Sunday through Tuesday during these posted hours to claim your art. 
All purchased artwork must be claimed within 30 days of auction closure. For questions, location, and hours, visit kvie.org slash art auction. Thank you for being a part of the PBS KVIE Art Auction and for making art a part of your home today. PBS KVIE is committed to the visual and performing arts through national productions like All Creatures Great and Small on Masterpiece, to our local productions like KVIE Art Showcase, and through the PBS KVIE Gallery, exhibiting award-winning art auction artists and California masters. PBS KVIE's commitment to the arts stays strong because of your participation as a donor and art buyer. Thank you for being a part of the PBS KVIE Art Auction and for making art a part of your home today. Coming up next is the Still Life category. Awards juried by Karen Burns, this category depicts natural or human-made objects, focusing on form, color, texture, and composition. View all of the artwork featured in this year's collection at kvie.org slash art auction. Hi there, I'm Michael Sanford, and thanks for joining us for the PBS KVA Art Auction and this Still Life Break. Here's an overview of the art that'll be up for bid during the next half hour. Let's start with item 40A, Camellia by Jamie Cola. This is acrylic on canvas measuring 36 by 36 inches. Its retail value is $500. Item 40B is Backlit Roses by Victoria Brooks. This is oil on canvas measuring 20 by 16 inches. Its retail value is $1,700. Item 40C is Pops Roses by Kurt Hausman. This is an acrylic on canvas measuring 30 by 40 inches. Its retail value is $1,200. Item 40D is Bushelful by Susie Hoffman. This is a watercolor measuring 29 by 22 inches. Its retail value is $350. Item 40E is Red Flower by Paul Basie. This is acrylic on canvas measuring 14 by 14 inches. Its retail value is $175. And finally, item 40F is Lemon Chiffon by Diane DiCarlo. This is oil on canvas measuring 16 by 20 inches. Its retail value is $375. The phone lines are open for bidding. Now let's see the art with our auctioneer and art expert. Hi there, I'm Kelly Raines, and thanks for joining us for this Still Life category. I'm pleased to be joined again by Marinda johnson Sesums to explore another half hour of exceptional artwork. Let's take a look at our first piece. Item 40A is Camellia by Jamie Cola. This is acrylic on canvas measuring 36 by 36. Retail value is $500. Marinda, this is impressive. Talk about it. This just makes me say, take a closer look. Yes. When I first saw this piece, it, it I, I couldn't imagine like that it's one flower. And I think when the artist explains it best, really likes to take, um, look at the beauty and the colors that are found in nature by taking something small and dialing it up. And this is a close up of this beautiful flower. It is so beautiful. It's so dramatic. Look at the colors on your screen. Look at the details and the petals and the, and the colors of the little uh, items on the inside of those petals. Absolutely beautiful. This is 40A Camellia by Jamie Cola. Acrylic on canvas, a beautiful big size of 36 by 36. Retail value is $500. The current bid is on your screen. Call the number on your screen to make that bid and get this beautiful painting in your home. Start a collection or add to your collection or gift it to your favorite art uh, lover and flower lover. Call that number on your screen. What else do you want to share, Miranda? It's a camellia. And, and sometimes I think when we look at flowers and you see them all in a garden or amongst other different types of flowers, this artist gave us the opportunity to really look within every detail. And you don't even think about when you look at a flower, the little, the browns and almost like, I don't know if it's called the flesh of a flower, but just that those intricate little parts within the way a flower blooms out, it, it really does. This is a close up. This is, is a, a focused look at a beautiful flower in such its grand form. It is such a big, beautiful, bold piece. It really does command attention. A huge statement piece on any wall in your home or office. And the opportunity to have it is now 
Don't miss out. Call the number on your screen. The current bid is on your screen. I love all the saturated colors. And you're right, it really immerses you in. It goes, you know, the painting goes beyond the canvas, around exactly. the sides of the canvas, because this flower just cannot be contained, but we get really up close. I love that. No, and, and it's, you can almost smell it. Like, when, as soon as you walk up to it, you, you start to look and you see it's a flower and you start to look at all the different lines. And I almost love the way it almost like smudges the color because when you look at a flower, you see it in its whole, especially when you're looking at a whole garden. But here you're able to see the intricate kind of smudges of nature and the way it kind of bleeds out into the flower and the way its color is created. And you see that within this flower. And the artist has been exhibiting art professionally for over 23 years. And really this piece was painted on the living room floor during a snowstorm. Oh wow. So just to be able to hear nature performing while you're creating such a beautiful captured moment of nature and something so tiny that we all may pass by, this artist was able to give us a close-up look of this flower and, and the camellia. It's so beautiful. We thank the artist for sharing it with us and we're sharing it with you and this is your opportunity to share it with all of your friends and family when you have it in your home. Call the number on your screen. The current bid is on your screen. It's such a beautiful statement piece. Item 40A is Camellia by Jamie Cola. Retail value is $500. Don't miss out on this opportunity. We're going to keep it open. We're going to move on to item 40B and that is Backlit Roses by Victoria Brooks. That is oil and canvas measuring 20 by 16. Retail value is $1,700. And Marinda, tell us about these gorgeous, elegant roses. Everyone, not everyone, but most people love roses. And the way the artist was able to capture that light hitting uh, the tops of those roses, it, it's always beautiful when you're able to get light to be seen through paint. And so this is back, backlit roses. It was completed completely from life from her Loomis studio. And it's amazing to know that this is one of our California masters who have contributed to the KVI art auction for m almost 30 years. Wow. And it really shows that dedication, not only to the work and the beauty that is created within her art. It it's extraordinary to see that she's still a part and still uh, playing a role in just such extraordinary art that we have. And this piece was um, created for a uh, tea time a series collection um, it was still life paintings um, and it kind of it was showcased in the gallery um, 48 in Folsom and this one really captures you see the little teacup and I, I I just love how it has the single rose that's you know from the whole bushel of flowers and it, I, I just love the way that that's captured on the table I love it too I love that we're able to feature this California master in this uh, beautiful break and this is item 40b backlit roses Victoria Brooks thank you for your artistry and your donation. This is oil on canvas measuring 20 by 16. The retail value is $1,700. Look at the detail in the rose and those leaves and that stem. And it's, it's like a little intimate moment with that teacup and just up the glass and the vase. And you can see the water line. The, the detail is so extraordinary. And you, this is your opportunity to have this beautiful, beautiful painting in your home. Call the number on your screen. The current bid is on your screen. What else would you like to share, Miranda? The artist stated that uh, she travels the world extensively to paint and gather subjects that matter for her paintings. And it's always about looking for light and how it illuminates the landscape or the figure or the portrait that is being created. And it's just extraordinary to see so much of that being able, when an artist thinks of something they want to capture and they capture it, and then you look at the frame and it almost has light itself. So it kind of adds to what the artist was hoping to capture with that finding light and the frame selection itself really captures that as well. You're talking about the light. It's so important. I mean, it's in the title of it, Back Like Roses. And we want to bring this light into your home, the light of these roses, the light of that window, the light of this beautiful art. Call the number on your screen and uh, support local programming on your local PBS station, KVAE, by also having local artists work in your home. The current bid is on your screen. Call now and... 
it's a wonderful California master. Anything else that you want to share with us? The artist really wants to leave uh, the viewer with kind of this impression of imagining the fragrance, imagining kind of seeing all the different color palettes that were chosen to create this piece. And, and you do see so much diversity of the colors that were selected for roses. You think red roses, but there's so much of the faded ones and you see all the different colors that kind of come with as flowers age and all of that. It, and the light itself really does add to this piece. Thank you for all your expertise, Marinda, on that. We're gonna keep it open for a little bit. We're gonna move on to item 40C. It is Pops Roses by Kurt Hausman. It is acrylic on canvas measuring 30 by 40. It is retail value of $1,200. And this is an extraordinary, extraordinary painting. I love the size and the colors, everything about it. I got goosebumps. Tell us, Marina, tell us all about it. So this artist is inspired by great grandpa who raised these roses over a hundred years ago. Wow. And I think what a lot of people need to understand about what this artist says was that his great grandfather, um, uh, was he was learning to walk while his great grandfather was bound to a wheelchair and he would spend hours in the hot sun raising all these varieties of tropical plants and it's just you kind of think about memories and different moments of your life that art is able to capture. And it's just extraordinary that these roses remind him of those special moments. And when you can see, I at first, when I looked at this, I was asking, what, what is the squares? Why am I seeing squares and all the different shapes coming from the table and even reflecting off of the roses? And the artist talked about how that's just kind of the burst of light and how it amplifies naturally and organically when it hits the table, the light, the vase and it's extraordinary that you ask those questions I love when art helps you to be able to start asking questions about what am I looking at this art is making us ask questions you know on all the programs that you watch on PBS KBA that you love throughout the year they make you ask questions but they also provide answers to you and you can't usually find that anywhere else so call the number on your screen to support your local PBS station KBA but also to get this beautiful statement piece emotional piece it's got such mood in it and this is item 40C Pops Roses by Kurt Hausman. Acrylic on canvas, a very large size of 30 by 40 inches. Retail value is $1,200 and the current bid is on your screen. What else would you like to share, Martha? I love that the artist stated, art does keep us connected, inspired, memories, moments. It sets a foundation for us to build from. And to imagine that his great grandfather planted these a hundred years ago, and then as he came into play, and then his life continues on, and he's able to share a captured moment of that with his next generations throughout his family. I love that the grandfather planted the seeds for something to grow. When you're contributing to PBS KBIA by getting this art, you're planting the seeds for your future future generations to enjoy all the programs that you're enjoying right now, wherever you watch it, on a tablet or on air or however. This is item 40C, Pops Roses by Kurt Hausman. It's extraordinary. Acrylic on canvas measuring 30 by 40. Retail value is $1,200. The number to call is on your screen. Call it now because all of these items, they don't stay open very long because there's somebody else waiting for you to not call and, and get this for yourself. And we are halfway through the break, which means we're going to keep this piece open and check in over at the recap station for bidding updates while you call in and place your bids. All right, thank you, Kelly and Marinda. As you both expressed so beautifully, each one of these pieces is a memory and a life experience for these artists. And you can make your own story part of the story behind this incredible artwork by calling right now. We're starting off this break with three beautiful pieces. You can get involved in the action by calling that number on your screen, 844-KVI-ART. Let's review these first three items in this half hour once again. Item 40C, Camellia by Jamie Cola. Acrylic on canvas, 36 by 36. Curtain bid is $300. Retail value is $500. Why don't you call in right now with a bid of $350? That would be perfect. Item 40B, Backlit Roses by Victoria Brooks. Oil on canvas, measuring 20 by 16. We are still awaiting the first bid on Backlick Roses, which is incredibly well-deserved. What a beautiful piece of legacy artwork by an incredibly accomplished and well-known artist, Victoria Brooks. How about an opening bid of $500 on Backlit Roses 40B? 40C is Pops Roses, keeping with the roses theme. Great backstory here that Kelly just shared with you and Marinda. Kurt Hausman, acrylic on canvas, 30 by 40. Current bid is $350. It has a retail value of 1200 
So the opportunity is here right now. If you call 844-584-3278 to put in your bid for this incredible piece of work with an amazing story that, again, you can make part of your story. Let's get those phones ringing. It's a little quiet right now. Let's call in right now. This is incredible still life. Some of the best art you'll find anywhere, not just in California, but anywhere. It can be in your home, your office. What a great gift for the holidays as well. So let's go through it one more time. Item 40A, Camellia, Jamie Cola, acrylic on canvas. Current bid is $300. Retail value is $500. Let's put in a bid for $350. How about a $350 call right now to 844-584-3278. Item 40B, Backlick Roses. Well, I know I just mentioned it a few seconds ago, but we're still awaiting our first bids. So how about that be you? $500 be a great starting bid. 844-KVI-ART. And item 40C, Pops Roses, Kurt Hausman. The retail value is $1,200, and we have a current bid of $350. All right, let's head back to see the rest of the artwork in this break with Marinda and Kelly. All right, we are back with the second half of our break, continuing with item 40D. This is Bushel Full by C Susie Hoffman. This is watercolor measuring 29 by 22 inches with a retail value of $350. Marinda, tell us about this beautiful work of art. Have you ever heard of masa paper? I have not, tell me about it. This is rice paper that is actually has no rice in it. But the process of using it, this artist uses it with watercolor. It crinkles, she crick, uh, excuse me, she crinkles the paper by weighting it up and submerging it into water, lays the paper flat on a towel, paints it out of focus with an out of focus painting, and then after it dries, it adheres to the watercolor paper and then paint it, e e the edges even harder so that it, it kind of brings out the focus, that process alone to be able to take such intricate time through all of that process, and then I hadn't even heard of masa paper before, it really brings almost like this aged texture and I just thought the frame fit perfectly because it says that the frame is a unique distressed wood that looks as if birds have been trying to eat at the apples. And it literally, that's what it looks like is birds have pecked all around the frame. So it's perfect for the apples that the birds have been trying to get to. I love all the thoughtful details that an artist puts into their work. And I love the story behind that frame and the paper. That is so fascinating. And look at all the details you can see all just all of the, the natural occurrences of the wrinkles and the papers and what that adds, that texture adds to the painting and the overall artistry. I absolutely love this. This is item 40D. It is bushel full by Susie Hoffman. It is watercolor measuring 29 by 22, which is a substantial size. Retail value is $350. And the number to call on your screen to bring this beautiful uh, work of art into your home is there. Call that number, dial now, and the current bit is on your screen. And I love that there's apples everywhere. <laughs> they just cannot be contained. Right? Yes, and I don't know why, but even when I just buy apples from the store, some always fall out onto the counter or whatever when you're carrying them in. And I just th think this captures perfectly a basket of apples, the texture of that paper, and then it, the way it's laid out, it gives almost like a life, like, like you could grab the apples out of the frame. It's so beautiful. It has a fall feel. You know, we're so close to Apple Hill in this region, and there's such beautiful agriculture all throughout our, our viewing area. And this is something to cherish and behold. And you can cherish and behold all of the wonderful programs on PBS KBIE. And call in right now. The number is on your screen. This is item 40D, Bushel Full by Susie Hoffman. Retail value is $350. The current bid is on your screen. What else would you like to share, Marin? So this artist has been exhibiting professionally for 15 years, and actually KVI donated to KVIE last year for a bell ringer oil painting. Wow. So this is this this artist really takes such intricate time to really create beautiful pieces to be a part of the art auction. And this one, I just the process alone to create and the thought of the birds and the frame, it all goes so perfectly together. It's so beautiful. We're going to keep this one open ever so briefly. We're going to move on to item 40E. It is Red Flower by Paul Basie. This is acrylic on canvas measuring 14 by 14. 
value. Retail value is $175. And Marinda, I just, we talked about this before. We absolutely love this painting. What can you share with us about it? This one is such, it's a simple, and the artist described it as kind of happy and sad. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes when some of the busyness, busyness of some um, pieces, this one is so simple, and you can kind of sense that happy and sad that the artist mentioned. Um, it, it's the, the, the vase is brown and the flower has a brown, but then the center part is red. So it kind of brings that sad, happy feel to it. And then I was, I really had to look closer to realize there's pencil on to create the shading throughout the window, the flower, the vase, even the shadow of the vase is pencil. I, I don't know, I just think it's extraordinary when artists really take the time to really find other mediums to use to capture something that we're used to it being done by another medium. And and I you know you think of drawings and a pencil to create so much beautiful shading like that. It, it really is nice to see. It's really beautiful. You can see the detail of the vase going down. Paul is a longtime contributor to the art auction and he always brings such beautiful compelling and and thought-provoking work and I love that just the, the little shadow going there and I love the contrasting colors you can see all the beautiful line work in that painting that he's offered us and it's such a sweet quaint little intimate uh, size and it's very contemporary and this is item again 40e red flower by Paul Basie which is acrylic on canvas measuring 14 by 14. Retail value is $175. Call the number on your screen to place a bid and the current bid is on your screen. You wanna surpass that, you wanna bring this art home. What else would you like to share, Miranda? Paul has been exhibiting professionally for over 30 years. Um, and I think that kind of speaks to how he was able to take this acrylic on panel um, and create so many of the different shapes. I, I think that, that it, it's always amazing when you can see the shape structure of every shape that's there and it kind of, the simpler it is, it almost makes you ask more questions. Like, oh wow, what is that with? And you start to really see the defined lines, the defined colors, because there isn't a lot happening, but there's so much there. And, it, and it, I just love looking at it and seeing, I'm even looking now and seeing the little uh, glares of things coming through the window frames. And I'm thinking, what is that? What, what's coming through the frame? So all of that kind of encompasses coming together and. The shadows of the pencil is really what, what made me smile. I was like, wow, oh wow, that's pencil. It's so wonderful. And we thank Paul again for his artistry. He's also an art expert in this art auction this year. And we thank him for his art and his volunteering and his expertise. This is item 40E Red Flower by said Paul Basie. It is acrylic on canvas. 14 by 14, it's a very intimate little piece. And we're gonna keep it open and move on to item 40F. It is Lemon Chiffon by D Diane DiCarlo. This is oil on canvas measuring 16 by 20. Retail value is $375. And Marinda, I love the colors in this painting. Tell us about it. Yes, I absolutely, <clears throat> I just love the way the blue, it's already so eye-catching. And then you, the way the artist created the little uh, brushes of white to show that kind of glare of glass and you actually and you see the fragileness of the glass and that it is a glass vase but also the way this artist added the scarf and the lemon from their own lemon tree and just a gift these flowers were a gift from a friend put it in the blue vase and it kind of captures kind of just moments of things that you have things that are kind of almost like a wedding you know something old something new someone borrowed something blue oh, sweet. it kind of gives that overall about how all things kind of in your life come together and you kind of place them on here so it gives different textures and depth um it, it, I don't know, it's just extraordinary to see the oil on canvas and all the little pieces that added a personal flair to it. It's so beautiful. There's all these little things coming together to make this beautiful whole. There's all kinds of little things in all the programs that you love day in and day out on your local PBS station, KVIE. Call the number on your screen to get some local art by a local artist. Look at those beautiful hydrangeas on your screen. The colors, I can smell the fragrance coming off those flowers right now just by looking at it. The beautiful lush green leaves. Call the number on your screen. The current bid is on your screen. And again, Miranda, what else would you like to share about this gorgeous piece? I think piece? something that everyone, especially if you're bidding, you have to bid on this piece. And especially the illustrator 
vision that you see in this. And this artist has been an illustrator, graphic designer at the Sacramento Bee for over 38 years before retiring in 2016. Wow. And to me, I when I found that out, you kind of see why those personal flares are there. You're kind of always, when you're an illustrator and a graphic designer, you kind of have those touches, those special touches that you're always trying to add a story or something else to the piece. And this artist captured that perfectly. But 38 years, Sacramento Bee, this is a homegrown artist. This is someone who's dedicated to Sacramento and KVIE. So I, I, I just, it's a beautiful piece and the grays of the frame really bring out the blues and the flowers. It's so lovely. And the blues and the flowers are contrasted so beautifully with this lemon. I am I am obsessed with the lemon. I am all things lemon. And I just, I love how it just complements everything so beautifully. Yes, it's a beautiful decorative piece. Um, um, the artist stated it would be a permanent bouquet of flowers for any room in your home. And I'm telling you, anyone who walked past, past this in your home, they're gonna stop. And then they're gonna see that lemon first, which I think captures this piece so wonderfully. And then everything else that plays into it. The artist, the purples, I love purple. So that already captured it in, and it all just fits perfectly it's together. Perfect, thank you, Marinda. This is item 40F, Lemon Chiffon by Diane DiCarlo. It is oil and canvas measuring 16 by 20 retail value. It was $375. And we're nearing the end of this break, which means that now is your last opportunity to bid on the art featured in this half hour. I'd like to thank Marinda Johnson Sessoms. Thank you for sharing her expertise with us today. Now let's check in over at the recap station for an update on the bidding. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you, Marinda. And uh, you know, the phones are ringing. It's busy here, but not too busy for your call. I just learned something about Kelly. She's obsessed with lemons, but who isn't? They're fantastic, and they appear beautifully in that last painting. All right, we're in the final few minutes of our still life break, and we want to hear from you. Call the number on your screen, take home a beautiful piece of art featured in this half hour, and someone just pointed out to me, and it's really a, a smart thought. You know, you can buy flowers for people, but flowers fade. Something like this is a lasting memory for you, for your family, for the recipient of one of these beautiful works of art as a gift. So keep that in mind as you call in at 844-KVIR. Put in your bid for one of these beautiful still life paintings. All right, let's go through these last three that they were just talking about. Then we'll run through the entire list. Starting with 40D, Bushelful by Susie Hoffman. Good news on this one. This one is a bell ringer. <clears throat> Current bid of $425 with a retail value of 350. But keep in mind, the bidding remains open on this one. So see if you can exceed that bid and maybe you can bring home this beautiful bushel full by Susie Hoffman. Item 40E, Red Flower by Paul Basie. Good news on this one, $450, that's a bell ring or two. More than double the retail value. It just shows how much we appreciate your help in getting through this art auction with these wonderful bids, supporting PBS KVIE, and getting some incredible art to bring home. All right, 40F. Oh, by the way, that one's still open, so keep bidding on that one, too. Item 40F, Lemon Chiffon, with the lemon that Kelly loves. That is a bell ringer, too. $375. It'll show up on screen there in just a second, but it has achieved its uh, retail value. But again, oh, there it is, $400. Bidding remains open on that. Beautiful piece of work by Diane DiCarlo. Okay, from the top, item 40A, Camellia by Jamie Cola. Acrylic on canvas measuring 36 by 36. The current high bid is $300. The retail value was $500. Still room and still time to bid on this one at 844-584-3278. What a beautiful rendering of a beautiful flower by Jamie Cola, Camellia, 40A. 40B, Backlick Roses by Victoria Brooks. Retail value of $1,700. Bidding is up to $550, which is good, but there is room for more. 844 KVI Art is how you can bring this incredible work by an extremely well known, renowned, and accomplished artist, Victoria Brooks. Bring it into your home with that incredible painting of roses backlit by beautiful sunlight. All right. Next one, 40C, Pops Roses by Kurt Hosman. This one has a bid currently of $375. Room for growth on this one. This is a good one to bid on, 844-KVI Art. Retail value of $1,200. Again, Kurt Hosman, acrylic on canvas, 30 by 40, Pops Roses. 
All right, let's go through the last three items one more time. 40D, Bushelful by Susie Hoffman. Watercolor measuring 29 by 22. All right, it's a bell ringer, as I mentioned. The bidding continues on that one, $425. However, your bid is awaiting, so call 844 KVI and maybe you can get it up to 450 and take it home. 40E, Red Flower by Paul Basie. Retail value $175, more than double, almost triple, $450. Bidding remains open on that one. All right, 40F, Lemon Chiffon, the last one in this half hour by Diane DiCarlo. $375 retail, again, a bell ringer, $475. I'm glad all of us love Still Life. You've shown your love for Still Life in this half hour, and you have also shown your support for KVIE, and we are grateful. Stay with us. There's more art coming up in the next half hour of the PBS KVIE Art Auction. Welcome to the 42nd Annual PBS KVIE Art Auction. Join us all weekend for a celebration of Northern California's visual arts. Over 270 works of art will be auctioned off to the highest bidder, and you can be part of the action by watching and bidding on your favorite artwork. View the entire collection online at kvie.org slash art auction. Then, when your favorite item appears, call 1-844-KVIE-ART to place your bid. Auction proceeds benefit the programs and services of your PBS station, KVIE. So thank you for watching and bidding. And now, let the auction begin. Bidding on items in the art auction is quick and easy to do. First, explore the collection online at kvie.org slash art auction. Or keep watching PBS KVIE. When a piece of art catches your eye, call 1-844-KVIE-ART and a volunteer will assist you. KVIE accepts all major credit cards for your art purchase, and a member of our accounting team will confirm your payment within five minutes of item sale. Thank you for being a part of the PBS KVIE Art Auction and for making art a part of your home today. Coming up next is the landscape category. Awards juried by Philippe Gandiel, landscapes celebrate the natural beauty throughout our region and beyond. View all of the art featured in this year's collection at kvie.org slash art auction. Hello, I'm Dee Neath, and thank you for joining. Thank you for joining us for this landscape category. Put your dinner down and pick up the phone. This portion of the art auction is sponsored by Rescue Dog Wines, and we would like to thank them for their commitment to supporting the arts on PBS KVIE. So let's hear about what's coming up next. Item number 41A is Firehouse by Patricia Peak. This is an oil on board measuring 16 by 20 and has a retail value of $200. Item number 41B is Grand Gesture by Rochelle Sherbert. This acrylic on canvas is a big one measuring 40 by 60 and has a retail value of $500. Item number 41C is Shoreline Gualala Point Regional Park by Patrick Cosgrove. This oil on board measures 24 by 36 and has a retail value of 2400. Item number 41D is Ready, Set, Go by Nina Thompson. This oil on canvas measures 24 by 30 and has a retail of $400. Item number 41E is Grape Harvesting in the California Foothills by Paula Pezzavento. This is an oil on canvas measuring 16 by 20 and has a retail value of $600. Item number 41F is Dreams of Patagonia by Kathy Donna. This oil on canvas measures 18 by 36, was framed by Archival Gallery and has a retail value of $450. Okay, like I said, put down your dinner, pick up the phone. The phone lines are open to take your bids. So let's see these exciting pieces with our new auctioneer and art expert. Hi there, I'm Rob Stewart, and thanks for joining us for this landscape category break. During this break, we are pleased to be here with Steve Memering. Steve has had a long career as a teacher and an artist, and will be sharing his expertise as our art expert this half hour. Steve is well known in this region for his recognizable painting style, which is beautiful, uh, such as depicting familiar Sacramento area 
icons. We also are so grateful to Steve for participating as an artist in this year's art auction as well. So Steve, it's great to see you. Thank you, Robin. And I, I just, I'm thrilled to be able to be here working with you. And it was lovely to be re-invited to do this again. So uh, the good news too, Rob, is that we have such a wonderful group of paintings here to 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 share with our, our viewers. And so let's jump in let's and tell them about in. the first one. And you're right, we have a great collection. 41A Firehouse is by Patricia Peak. Oil on board, measuring 16 by 20, retail value $200. Steve, I've been looking forward to this. Just take it away because you're so good. <laughs> Go. <laughs> what do you want to say? Well, you know, the first time I saw this, when, when, the, when, uh, when I saw it in, in, in true, in real space at the uh, preview, I was struck by how much like seeing a piece of, uh, uh, seeing a landscape like through a prism. Mm. It is absolutely, it, re, it, it, she incorporates every color of the rainbow in this in her own particular sky, style. It's really quite amazing. Her, her background is a, as an impressionist, but the fact that she's painting on board with a palette knife creates an entirely different effect than it would be if it were uh, done with a simply brush on linen can, canvas. Uh, I love the way uh, she kind of invites us into the painting with these very cool, lovely uh, 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 foreground uh, hues. The colors and are beautiful. You see stunning. the current bid on your screen right there. Pick up the phone, call the number on your screen to get involved in the art auction. The current bid right there, retail is 200 And you're right, they are stunning. Uh, it's like a rainbow. It goes from, uh, it, it incorporates literally every color in the spectrum in various forms and, and variations and it's used very cleverly. Uh, when the, the uh, center of interest, of course, is this area right here, and uh, the geometry of the, uh, the uh, firehouse is, is uh, catches our eye immediately. And uh, it uh, has a lot of atmospheric perspective, which is uh, unique. Uh, the, uh, the firehouse blends into the background with cool shades of green and blue. And uh, it, the, the overall effect is absolutely stunning Isn't on it? a small scale. Yeah, it's absolutely uh, beautiful and it packs a punch packs on a, a punch. small scale. Rob, Pick up the phone, call the number on your screen and there you see the current bid. Keep going. Yeah. Rob, I, I was just going to say that uh, the framing is just perfect for it. It creates a window. It oh. frames it like a window. So we are, it's like we're looking out a window. It's kind of an old fashioned way of viewing the picture plane, but uh, Patricia just makes it work perfectly. Yeah. I absolutely Could love that. Anywhere. A window. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to read the uh, information for you one more time in case you are just tuning in or really interested. Pick up the phone, call the number on your screen for 41A Firehouse by Patricia Peak. Oil on board, measuring 16 by 20. Retail value is $200. Um, five seconds, final thoughts. Well, my final thought is uh, this is a painting that would literally go anywhere in your house or office. Uh, stick it in, in, in its own little niche and it will give you, it, it'll just uh, glow off the wall for the rest of your life. Every time you walk by it, you'll want to smile. Fantastic, and it can be yours by picking up the phone and calling the number on the screen. It'll be yours in just a matter of a couple of days. All right, we're gonna keep this one open and move on to the next. The next piece is 41B Grand Gesture by Rochelle Sherbert. This is acrylic on canvas measuring 40 by 60. It's big. Yeah. And uh, retail value is $500. Steve, what do you think about this creation by Rochelle Sherbert? Well, you know, you see a lot of landscapes and they're very pleasant and they're very nice and it's easy to walk past them. It's mm. not easy to walk past this particular masterpiece. Uh, when I saw it in the original in the pre-show, I was stunned. It was, it's a breathtaker. Gorgeous. Uh, she is uh, a, such a capable artist. Uh, she's using things, uh, 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 strategies to get you involved in the painting. Like? Well, for example, she, uh, she introduces, uh, she invites us into the picture right here and then she stops us and then we move in this direction and then she invites us back. Oh. And so we have a path through the painting. So that's intentional. You it's have to be intentional if you want to win this piece by picking up the phone and dialing the number on your screen. The current bid is right there. This is a $500 value. And as Steve was, Steve and I were saying, this is a really large piece and the retail is set at 500. Oh, uh, for $500, this is a statement piece and a steal. 
the, uh, uh, the kind of the subtleties of this piece uh, 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 intrigue me. For example, do you see this this lovely warm rosy color? That's the exact complementary color of the greens here, and everybody benefits because the greens look richer and the rose color in the sky looks richer. She's a real smart artist. She repeats things like the blues here reappear and reappear in 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 a variety of uh, interesting ways and all of these things create a cohesive effect uh, which is uh, hard to beat. And there's that path winding through that you were talking about that the artist leads your eye. You can see it right there on your screen. This is Grand Gesture and it certainly is by Rochelle Sherbert, a statement piece a as statement you piece. called it. And this is acrylic on canvas measuring 40 by 60 retail value is $500. What a steal. What are final thoughts on this? Well, uh, it's the kind of thing that uh, it could absolutely uh, create an atmosphere for a room or an office. This is a major piece that you can't dismiss and you would enjoy having it in your life. It is gorgeous. We're gonna keep this piece open, lots of excitement. You see the current bid there on the screen and we're gonna keep this open. Thank you, Rochelle, for this beautiful piece. Move on to the next one, 41C, Shoreline, Gualala Point Regional Park by Patrick Cosgrove. Beauty, oil on board measuring 24 by 36. Retail value, $2,400. I'm dying to know what you think. <laughs> I see you thinking. Well, yeah, I, it's a breathtaker. And the thing, it, it, when you look at this painting, there's the shock of recognition. This could be no other place than Northern California coastline. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it, it captures that without being a tedious report card of what the details look like. He's able to imply that through his clever uh, uh, manipulation of texture, palette work. Uh, this is an artist that goes in and reworks it and scrubs it and, and uh, uh, makes that surface really organic and rich, not just a simple put the paint on the brush and stick it onto the canvas. That's not his style at all. That's so interesting you said that because you can see it. Oh yeah. With the thickness. Exactly, exactly, and the fact that he's doing this on a board, the board takes that palette knife and that kind of textured uh, effect very effectively, very, very differently than you would if he were just doing it on a lovely piece of linen canvas. Ah. The, uh, uh, this is such a wind, windswept view. Uh, it uh, just, you can almost fear, uh, feel the wind blowing through this, this masterpiece. It's a beauty. Pick uh, up the he, phone, call the number on your screen if this is connecting with you because you have to call to place your bids. Current bid is on the screen right now, retail $2,400. Yeah, a, a real smart painter here uh, also. Uh, his, uh, these colors are the ones that seem to dominate and he has very cleverly uh, incorporated all of those colors but in a muted form in the foreground. Mm. Uh, so it's very cohesive and uh, without that, uh, this could have been a real distraction, but it's not. It's all its all a very co uh, cohesive and uh, a piece that really works. I love your explanations because they just make, they make the piece even make more sense. <laughs> I love you. that. Uh, this is live right now on your television screen, the monitor right now, or you're seeing it right now on your monitor. And it's 41C Shoreline, Gualala Point, uh, Regional Park. Patrick Cosgrove is the artist. Oil on board measuring 24 by 36. That is one of my favorite areas of the painting, the tree right there with the beautiful cliff, uh, those gorgeous colors in the trees. Retail value $2,400, and you see the current bid on the screen. Uh, final thoughts. Breathtaker, it's a breathtaker, and uh, done by a, a consummately competent uh, painter who knows exactly what he's doing. That's an excellent statement right there. Thank you. That's awesome. All right, we're going to check in. We're halfway through the break, which means it's time to keep this piece open. See how fast they go. Don't miss your chance. Call the number on your screen. Let's check in over at the recap station for bidding updates. I am so excited about the great pieces in this break, celebrating landscapes. We're looking for you to get involved in the bidding right now by calling the number on your screen. It's the only way you can bring one of these beauties home. Item number 41A is Firehouse by Patricia Peake. This is an oil on board and a bell ringer. It measures 16 by 20. It is currently sitting at 300. Um, that means we'll still keep taking bids. You know, 
if this reminds you of some place you went on your honeymoon, what a great anniversary gift. You know, sort of expand your horizons in this one. Item number 41B is Grand Gesture by Rochelle Sherbert. This is a very large piece at 40 by 60, quite the statement piece. It has a retail of 500. We are sitting right now on 200, so I wanna get 300 for this. This would become a great focal point in your home. Item number 41C is Shoreline Gualala Point Regional Park by Patrick Co Cosgrove. It's an oil on board at 24 by 36. It has a $2,400 retail value. It is currently sitting at 725. Let's get that up to 825. If I love Gualala and Bodega Bay and that whole area, if you have a beach home, what a beautiful piece to put in your beach home. The only way you're gonna put this in your beach home or make it a gift is to call right now. These go really fast. They're only on, on for a few minutes. And when, when, when it's over, they're gone. And you don't wanna live with regret. So call right now. Put your fork down, put your wine glass down and call us at KVIE and bid on one of these beautiful landscapes. Item number 41A is Firehouse by Patricia Peak. That is currently a bell ringer at $300, but we are still taking bids. <laughs> Item number 41B is Grand Gesture by Rochelle Sherbert. This is that big, glorious piece at 40 by 60. It has a retail of $500. We're sitting at 200, and I really wanna see this one become a bell ringer because it is glorious. Item number 41C is Shoreline Gualala Point Regional Park by Patrick Crosgrove. Again, a really lush landscape. It measures 24 by 36, which is fairly large. It's got a retail value of $2,400. I am, it's at 725. I'm looking for 825 on this one. Remember, the next time you see me, we're gonna be almost done with these. So you gotta make that call right now. Call in and let's take a look at some more art from Landscape Collection with Rob and Steve. All right, we are back with the second half of this landscape category, continuing with item 41D. This is Ready, Set, Go by Nina Thompson. And this is oil on canvas, uh, measuring 24 by 30. Retail value is $400. Again, this is 41D by Nina Thompson. So. Tell me what you think. Well, when I first saw this uh, piece by Nina, I said, my God, it reminds me of a like a big uh, Rothko painting in New York with big blocks of modern color. And uh, uh, that was at first intriguing. And then I, then I noticed why it's not an abstract at all. This is, a, this is very definitely a landscape painting, but done in a very unique and wonderfully minimalist way. Okay. Uh, so we have the advantage of having a large contemporary uh, abstract and at the same time, Time. This is pure Sacramento. Oh yeah, and uh, uh, it's sort of like a little miniature condos reference. Uh, we know immediately where we are as Sacramentans, as, as Northern Californians. The story goes that uh, Nina's uh, uh, daughter uh, is a triathlete, and this was the Ready Set Go title. This was uh, Nina looking at uh, the very waters that her daughter was ready to plunge in oh, during, cool. during the uh, uh, right prior to the uh, the uh, the water segment, the swimming segment. And as she was watching the scene, the excitement, the tension, and uh, the fun, uh, her uh, uh, artist's eye kicked in. And suddenly she began to see this not just as what it is literally in, in the real world, but as a possibility for an abstract painting that at the same time has subject matter to it. I like that. So it's inspiration. A, yeah, there's a serenity to it, and there's also excitement behind it. And, and there's uh, a call to action a call to, to it to as action. well. So pick up the phone and call the number on your screen. You see the current bid below, as well as the phone number for you to get involved. Uh, reach out to a friend and have them watch the auction with you. This is, uh, again, 4D Ready, Set, Go by Nina Thompson. $400 retail current bid on the screen. Take what, it away. What a dazzler. Uh, uh, this is the kind of thing that that would fit into any uh, any home, but especially a contemporary uh, home where where a, a, minimal, a minimalist style would be interesting. But you want but you want something more than that. It's pure California, Northern California too, as well as being a minimalist abstract. You know, you you called that also with the last piece we looked at. Two for the price. You of can one. tell <laughs> they really are California. They really are California. Quintessential California. Pick up the phone right now and support your California PBS station, KV. IE, all the money that we raise goes directly 
to PBS KVIE right here in our local area. Stays local. Final thoughts. Uh, well, uh, she is a longtime uh, contributor to K KVIE auction, and uh, I, I like to mention that because uh, I, I have a tremendous respect for people who who are uh, who do this on a regular basis is because they care about KVIE and uh, my hat is off to them. Uh, we feel that way about you, by the way. <laughs> so <laughs> Thank I you, just Rob. have to throw that in there because <laughs> we you, can Rob. say the same thing about you. We're going to keep this piece open right now. So exciting to see uh, the current bit on the screen right there, as well as the phone number for you to call and get involved. Okay, the next piece is 41E. What a beautiful piece of art. Steve and I were just talking about this one as we were preparing to walk over here while we were at the recap station. And this is uh, Grape Harvesting in the California Foothills by Paulette Pesavento. This is oil on canvas measuring 16 by 20. The retail value is $600. And Steve, tell me what strikes you. Well, this is a charming little genre piece and a kind of a love, a kind of a love letter to, uh, uh, to, uh, nor, uh, to the foothills of California. Her, uh, her daughter, uh, her, her son rather, uh, uh, owns a vineyard in the uh, Lodi area, foothill area. And uh, so she, once again, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, an example of uh, the artist's eye turned on when she, when Paulette was, uh, uh, was uh, looking at this scene and she did sketches on site and then went home and in her studio developed this into this little love letter. Uh, I love that explanation. It really is. And you can feel the love in the painting. It's got a, it's such warmth and joy to it. And also in the phone bank. So pick up the phone right now and call the phone bank. A friendly volunteer is waiting to talk with you. If you are connecting with this piece, don't sit on the fence too long because they move very quickly. Current bit on your screen as well as the phone number to call. Uh, just talking technically about how clever the artist is. Uh, once again, it's a one point perspective view. Uh, we are drawn in to the, the, with the rows of uh, vineyards. Uh, but the center of interest is the, these wonderful little genre characters right here. And uh, they are in the complementary color of the green, so it enriches it, re enriches it even, even more. I love, you've taught me about the artist purposely drawing you in yes. and taking you through, and I can see that in here now as well. Well, what's, what's important also, Rob, is the fact that she knows how to stop the eye so that we're not just looking down a tunnel. Uh, so uh, uh, as a result, the, the, the center of interest stops us in our tracks because we want to come up closer and we want to enjoy these characters while they're doing their job. Another window to the world. Another window. That's what we are here at PBS KVIE, your window to the world for arts, entertainment, education, inspiration, and we are so glad you are with us for the 2023 KVIE Art Auction. The number on the screen right there is how you can call and place a bid for this beautiful piece of art, as well as any of the art that you're seeing in this half hour. Pick up the phone and call that number and you see the current bid right there. Final thoughts on oh, this well, it's one. Such, it's so beautifully framed and uh, once again, a window into the world uh, because of the way it's framed. This is the kind of painting you want to take off our wall and put on yours. <laughs> yes, and it's ready to go. It's ready to go. But only if you call. So call the number on your screen and place your bid now. We're going to keep this beautiful piece open. Thank you so much, Paulette, and move on to the next. Item 41F is Dreams of Patagonia by Kathy Donna. Wow, that's gorgeous. Oil on canvas measuring 18 by 36. Um, and this is a retail value of $450. Take it away. I love this. Uh, the artist uh, uh, had a uh, took a trip to uh, uh, Argentina by, and then w went on to uh, Antarctica. I'll pause for a moment while I, I, I envy her. Uh, <laughs> and uh, Patagonia was one of the stops, and I've seen Patagonia in in. Uh, 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 videos and so on and and uh, pictures and it's a singular place the 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 uh, Andes erupting from the, uh, the from the plains is just uh, uh, stunning and, and unusual and breathtaking and what I like about this too is that uh, she managed to give us just what she wanted to give us creating a mood of quiet serenity and grandeur on a relatively small scale and what I
really appreciate is the fact that she didn't distract us by a lot of unnecessary details. We don't have birds, we don't have boats, we don't have people. We have, she's giving us exactly what she wants to, us to focus on in a very sophisticated way. It's a kind of work, uh, Rob, that would, uh, you could live with for a long time because it, it, it creates its own mood and I think it would be different every time you walk past it. It would catch you in a different way. I can't, you just said exactly I was thinking how interesting it would be to be different every time you passed it, as well as with the lighting of the day. This, the golds in here, if I'm, those are just exquisite. Yes. Pick up the phone and maybe you can be the winning bidder on this piece by just keep bidding. And when you have the highest bidding amount and no one else has challenged that, you will be the winner. So the number's on the screen. <clears throat> Call that number right now, as well as the uh, current bid on your screen. Take it away. Uh, well, just in conclusion, I think one of the characteristics of a really good painting is that uh, it changes as you change. Every mm. time you walk into the room and you're in a different mood, the painting the painting reflects that. And it also can help you get in a good mood. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So you have a relationship with, with it all the time. It's not just a piece of decoration. Uh, something I've learned in adulthood is that art really can help set a mood and change a mood for the positive. It tells a story. Also, by the way, in conclusion, uh, the uh, uh, this is gallery wrapped, and she uh, you can't see it, but she she has continued the the uh, the composition on the sides of the uh, stretcher bars so that you can view this from any angle, and it still reads as a as the landscape that it is. It's it's very cleverly done, and it's just another selling point that that makes this a unique piece of artwork. Absolutely beautiful. Great piece. Thank you so much. Kathy Donna, we love this. It's Dreams of Patagonia Oil on Campus, measuring 18 by 36. And the retail value, 450. There you see your current bid right there on the screen. We're nearing the end of this break, which means it's your turn and your opportunity to bid on the art featured in this half hour. You have to move quickly, so call the number on your screen, and we'll head back to the recap station for an update on this artwork and more. Okay, just a few more minutes are left in this break, so I'm gonna recap. These are all things that are open now that I'm talking about, and they're gonna close soon. Item number 41D is Ready, Set, Go by Nina Thompson. This is classic Sacramento landscape. It's an oil on canvas. It measures 24 by 30. It has a retail of 400, and we are currently sitting at 275. So let's get that one up. Item number 41E is grape harvesting in the California foothills. Okay, all you people with the wine cellars <laughs> and the, <laughs> that love to go to Napa. This one's a bell ringer and we're currently sitting at 650, but if you need a gift for the wine lover in your life, this is a fabulous piece. And it's still open just for a few more minutes. I'm looking for a bid of 750. Item number 41F is Dreams of Patagonia by Kathy Donna. It's an oil on canvas measuring 18 by 36. It's beautifully framed by archival framing, if I do say so myself. It has a retail value of $450. We're sitting at 150. I'd like to get that up to 250. I know you can't see the gorgeous frame in the current image, but you saw it when Rob was talking about it. It is framed, ready to go home, and you can pick it up this weekend. So I'm gonna go through everything in the break. These are all still open, but closing fast. Item number 41A is Firehouse by Patricia Peak. It is an oil on board, 16 by 20. This is a big bell ringer. It is currently sitting at 425. Oh, it's sitting at 700, but it's still open. I've got a couple people fighting over it on the phone and let's keep that, that fight up because it all goes to KVIE. Item number 41, B is Grand Gesture by Rochelle Sherbert. This is a big, beautiful canvas. It's 40 by 60. It has a retail of 500, which I think is a bit low. Um, it is sitting at 425. Make this a bell ringer and call up and bid 500. This is a statement piece. It would look great in your office. It's the kind of piece that you put in the dining room or you put over the fireplace. Item number 41C is Shoreline Gualala Point 
Regional Park by Patrick Cosgrove. Patrick did a beautiful job on this 24 by 36. If you love the Bodega Bay area like I do, you need to own this. It's a $2,400 piece. It is currently sitting at $1,300. Let's get it up to $15. Item number 41D is Ready, Set, Go by Nina Thompson. This is a great piece for your office. It's definitely got a little Sacramento love in it. It is 24 by 30, so it is a pretty good size. And it is currently sitting at 300. It has a $400 retail, which I still think is low. Um, I want to see that get up to 400, and let's ring those bells for the artists. Item number 41E is Grape Harvesting in the California Foothills by Paula Pasavento. It's already a bell ringer. It is 16 by 20. It is still open for bids. It's at 750. Buy it for the wine lover in your life. Uh, item number 41F is Dreams of Patagonia by Kathy Donna. This is an oil on canvas. It measures 18 by 36. Um, it was framed by my shop, and it was so I got to see it live, and it was a real joy to be able to frame it. It has a retail value of $450. It's at $175. I really need to get this one up to $250. It's ready to go. It won't be yours, though, unless you call right now, 844-584-3278. So stay with us. We've got some more great art coming up in the next half hour of your PBS KVIE Art Auction. Rescue Dog Wines proudly supports KVIE and Rescue Dog Month. We donate 50% of profits from our sustainable wines to animal rescue organizations. Learn more about our mission at rescuedogwines.com. Picking up your purchased artwork is quick and easy to do. Visit PBS KVIE Sunday through Tuesday during these posted hours to claim your art. All purchased artwork must be claimed within 30 days of auction closure. For questions, location, and hours, visit kvie.org slash art auction. Thank you for being a part of the PBS KVIE Art Auction and for making art a part of your home today. Coming up next is the Travel the World category. Inspired by Rick Steves' programming, this half hour celebrates the beauty and wonder of exciting locations around the world. View all of the art featured in this year's auction at kvie.org slash art auction. Hi, I'm Dean Neath, AKA the Art Lady, and I thank you for joining us for this Travel the World break. And now here's an overview of the art that's coming up for bid during this next half hour. The first one is super exciting. Item number 42A is Neusch von Stein Castle in Germany by our favorite Rick Steves. Yeah, that Rick Steves. It is a photography and it measures 30 by 20 and has a retail value of $550. Item number 42B is Fall in Love by Christine Springer. This is an oil on canvas measuring 20 by 24 and has a retail value of $1,200. Item number 42C is Near Portofino by Steve Walters. This beautiful watercolor measures 15 by 22 and has a retail of $900. Item number 42D is Pados Village Scene by Tom Sellis. This is an oil on canvas measuring 32 by 26 and has a retail value of $500. Item number 42E is Pete Goletso Matutini, which means morning gossip, by Tim Bid, Mid, Midbo. Sorry about that. Still struggling with the Italian. This is beautiful acrylic on canvas, measures 16 by 20, and it has a retail of $200. Item number 42F is Hong Kong Harbor by Roger Lanzini. This is a watercolor measuring 14 by 20, and it was framed beautifully by the University Art Center. It has a retail value of $350. The phone lines are open, and we are so ready to take your bids. So let's see the art with our auctioneer and our art expert. 
Hi there, I'm Rob Stewart, and thank you for joining us for the Travel the World category. It's a brand new category, and during this break, I'm pleased to be back once again with expert Steve Memering. It's thank so you. good to have you here, our art expert, and we're always thrilled to be with you. And this is a new category, and it is an homage to Rick Steves. We'll tell you about that in just a moment as we begin with his piece. Y'all, this is from Rick Steves, this beautiful piece of art right behind me of Neuschwanstein Castle, Germany by Rick Steves. Photography measuring 30 by 20 and the retail value is $550. It is signed by Rick Steves. He con he worked with us here at the auction and he took this beautiful photograph in Germany, had it printed on metal, sent back to him to sign and now Steve, take it away. By the way, this is one on one, or one out of one, so it is an original that you're never gonna see anywhere else. This is just uh, your own personal Rick Steve's masterpiece, so uh, uh, it's, wow. another, it's another point. Yeah, good uh, one. Everyone is familiar, I think most of our viewers are familiar with the uh, with this castle. It's the inspiration, uh, Disney's inspiration for all of the uh, Sleeping Beauty castles. I and, did not know that. Oh yeah, yeah. Until you told me that just a second yeah, ago. Yeah, the original uh, in Anaheim is very closely related and all of the uh, other Disneyland castles uh, throughout the world are based on this castle. Wow. So it's a, it's it's a gem. It was always a fantasy castle because it was built by the mad king Ludwig in the uh, uh, in the previous centuries and uh, he uh, was a among other things a huge Wagner fan and uh, all of his all of the uh, murals inside the the castle are scenes from Lohengrin and Tristan and Isolde and uh, he was he was nuts but he was wonderful. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I think they finally uh, assassinated uh, for, uh, assassinated him because he was so crazy and was spending so much money on stuff like this. Pick up the phone and call the number on your screen. You see the current bid right there for this amazing one of a kind, as well as everything in the auction one of a kind. This is by Rick Steves. It's Neuschwanstein Castle. A uh, wonderful collaboration between Rick and PBS KVI because he wants to support the auction too, which I think is fantastic. Tell Tell us more about this. Uh, well, the fact that it is printed on metal, don't don't be uh, put off by the fact that it's on metal. It's not heavy at all. It's light as a feather, but it gives it a a, 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 a beautiful sort of uh, resonance that he wouldn't get if it were just uh, printed traditionally on paper. Uh, it's uh, mounted in such a way that it seems to float off the wall. So this is not just a, a nice picture that's framed and, and put on the wall. This is something that is quite extraordinary. And when you consider that it's such a collector's item by being uh, a Rick Steves, uh, it's... Uh, uh, it you got to you, you got to take this one seriously. This is a real conversation piece and a feather in your cap. I love that. It is a one of a kind. Yeah. As you said, a feather in your cap piece where this is a wonderful conversation piece as well and it's also a wonderful piece for a kid because of the castle. A kid for the castle and also a wonderful piece for the uh, for the for an office for example yeah. when you your clients come in and you say, "Oh, uh, oh by the way, and uh, you know you're going to have nothing to talk about." <laughs> this is what you talk about. Rick the, Steve travels the, uh, the the signature is, is prominent so uh, yeah. it's uh, it's easy to spot that this is this is special it is a beautiful piece Rick thank you so much Rick Steves for this Indeed. wonderful piece um, Neuschwanstein Castle Germany Rick Steves and you see the current bid right there on your screen retail value $500 but this is a priceless experiential piece with Rick Steves and PBS KVIE we're gonna keep this piece open and move on to the next piece 42B, Fall in Love by Christine Springer, oil on canvas. This is beautiful. It is measuring 20 by 24. Retail value is $1,200, and this is a masterful use of color and eye direction. What do you think? Well, how do you not love Paris? Uh, right. Obviously, she does. Uh, the it's uh, the uh, Fall in uh, Fall in Love is the name of the uh, uh, of the piece. And uh, it's sort of a play on words. Uh, it's in the fall, and Paris is, uh, uh, among other things, a city of love. Oh, and so uh, it all sort of adds up. Um, this is done, this is an aerial view, which makes it singularly different from, uh, you know, Paris streets and so forth. It's like, a, we're like birds flying over this gorgeous city. 
uh, her her use of color and her 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 uh, way she frames the com frames the Eiffel Tower with this uh, these golden uh, shapes here uh, is pretty uh, pretty remarkable. The perspective on it, I the think, is phenomenal, and I hope yours is too. So pick up the phone and call the number on your screen. Get involved in the auction. Your current bid right here, and I want to remind you that all the money goes to support PBS KVIE, and this is our new break, which is in homage to Rick Steves, all about traveling. So tell us more about this. Well, uh, uh, she's a very skillful uh, artist. Uh, she's able to give the impression of great detail without actually giving it to us, just enough to let us fill in the rest, and a good characteristic of an impressionistic painter. She's not laboring with details and uh, weighing the piece down with a lot of unnecessary information. And yet you feel like you're there. You feel like you're there. Uh, uh, also, the uh, the fact that uh, the streets are radial, we have two uh, different uh, uh, perspective views, uh, is very characteristic of Paris with radiation, uh, radiating uh, uh, streets. It's, it's, it's very, very Parisian. I love it. Fall in love, that's a great title, as you said, fall. Fall, painted uh, during the fall season, and that's where we are right now. But this piece is timeless and can be yours forever by calling the number on your screen, placing a bid for 40 to be Fall in Love by Christine Springer Oil on canvas measuring 20 by 24. And the retail value is 1200 You see your current bid there. Final thoughts, we've got about 20 seconds left. Well, it's uh, a quintessentially Parisian. And uh, you look at this piece, you, walk, you your eyes walk down that street, you can almost hear Edith Piaf singing in the distance. It's <laughs> Paris. I love that. Absolutely love that. We had an egret earlier, and we had I had an egret once named egret peon. It wasn't my egret, but it was near the house, so I called it that. All right, we're going to keep this piece open. This is Fall in Love by Christine Springer. $1,200 is the retail value, and there you have it. We'll move on to the next piece in the auction. 42C near Portofino by Steve Walters. This is beautiful watercolor, measuring 15 by 22. Retail value is $900, and I believe the 15 by 22 is the size of the watercolor. Okay, take it away. Well, this is a breathtaker again, and I'm using that term a lot because uh, it's justifiable. We've got uh, such wonderful work in this section. Uh, this is the pa a painter by someone who really, really knows what he's doing in probably the most difficult of all mediums. Uh, everything that watercolor does well, he's doing in this piece. Really? This is someone who does did not pick up the brush yesterday. He's been doing this all of his life. That should be a t-shirt. <laughs> I like really? that. Look at this detail. The detail is wonderful, but it's just the right amount of detail. Uh, uh, this is morning light, so you get a really sense of time and place on in Portofino. Uh, the the fact that these are these uh, are warm shadows and not cool ones. The cool ones are all back here. Uh, these oranges and then the complementary color in the uh, turquoise uh, uh, water. This is all very carefully thought out. The extreme, the high detail here, and then the muted detail in the background, atmospheric, etheric, atmospheric perspective. The fact that these greens frame are are are, are counterbalanced by this the red counterpoint here uh, of the boat. This is all extraordinarily well thought out, and the overall effect is just dreamy. It's like a wonderful, wonderful memory of uh, a magical. Place. A memoring. <laughs> <laughs> That's your last name. Pick really? up the phone call, the number on your screen. The current bid is right there on your screen for this spectacular creation by Steve Walters. Near Portofino is the title. Watercolor measuring 15 by 22 and retail is $900. Continue. Uh, uh, Mr. Walters is a consummate painter and uh, I've seen his work uh, before. Uh, it's the, his price is very, very low for when you consider how what an expert he is. As I say, everything that watercolor does well, and some people are are absolutely uh, watercolor chauvinists. That's all they 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 want to see is watercolor. This guy knows how to do it, and um, it's it's a it's absolutely uh, stunning. Clearly been doing this for a long Obviously, time. Obviously, yeah. Absolutely of, love it. We're in the hands of a master when we look at this. Say that again. We are in the hands of a master when we look at this.
That's a pretty good sentence. All right, I just want to remind you again, this is 42C near Portofino by Steve Walters. Watercolor measuring 15 by 22. Retail value is $900. Current bid is right there on your screen, as well as the number to call and get involved. We are already halfway through this break, which means we're gonna keep things open and check in over at the recap station for bidding updates while you call in and place your bids. Bring it out. <laughs> You could have a beautiful piece of art on your wall before you know it, but you need to call in and bid to win. The phone number is on your screen, and we have plenty of lovely volunteers waiting to talk to you. So let's let's go over these first three pieces in this break. Item number 42A is Neuschwanstein Castle in Germany by the incomparable Rick Steves. Um, it has a retail value of $550. We're sitting at $350. Make this a bell ringer at 500, and I'm going to kick down two tickets to the to the live um, lecture by Rick Steves in Sacramento on December 4th at the Crest Theater. Um, the retail is 550 on that, so we need to get up 350 now. Get me up to 550, and not only do you get this beautiful piece by Rick Steves, but you get to go listen to him speak, and he is an excellent speaker. His um, lectures are amazing at the Crest Theater, December 4th in the evening. Item number 42B is Fall in Love by Christine Springer. It's an oil on canvas. It measures 20 by 24, and it has a retail value of 1,200. We are currently sitting at 450. If you love to travel and you've been to any of these places, this is a great way to remember that trip or give it to somebody that you went with. Item number 42C is Near Portofino by Steve Walters. This beautiful watercolor measures 15 by 22. It has a retail value of $900, and we are currently sitting at 375. So you've got about four or five minutes to get your bid in on these three pieces, but if you don't call 844-584-3278, that's the number on your screen, you can't, you, you got to bid it to win it. Um, we've got plenty of volunteers working right now. If you're interested in these three pieces or the next three pieces, you need to get on the phone now because they go really fast. Um, I'm going to go through them really quick. Item number 42A, that beautiful photo by Rick Steves and two tickets to go see him. We're currently at 375. We need that to be a 550 bid and you can go to the lecture. Item number 42B is Fall in Love by Christine Springer. It's an oil on canvas. It's 20 by 24. I am currently sitting at 450. It is a $1,200 retail. So let's get that up. Item number 42C is Near Portofino by Steve Walters. This is a watercolor. It measures 15 by 22. It's got a retail value of 900. And right now we're sitting at 425. Remember, these pieces are ready to go on your wall and ready to be picked up. But you can't do it unless you bid. So let's head back to the art with Steve and Rob. All right, we're back with the second half of this category. We are looking at item 42D. This is a Paris Village Scene by Thomas Sellis. Oil on canvas, measuring 32 by 26. The retail value is $500 for this beauty. Steve, where do you want to start? Well, it's hard to, hard to know where to start. I'll talk, talk a little bit about the artist. Uh, he's a man after my own heart. He's a school teacher at the Elk Grove School District, and he teaches his students the fundamentals. He really emphasizes uh, the really know how to do it. And so when inspiration uh, happens, you'll know what how to, how to proceed, and you, you won't be lost. Uh, I tip my hat to that uh, attitude. This is one of those uh, uh, scenes that is instantly recognized. Recognizable. We know where we are. Uh, anyone who has been to the Greek Isles, uh, uh, Santorini, and so forth, know where uh, know where we are. Uh, the uh, uh, this is Paros, not Paris, but Paros uh, in the Greek Isles. Uh, uh, the artist was there uh, uh, studying art in art school uh, in on the island and had a had a wonderful ability to kind of absorb uh, his environment. And I find that this is such. A, a, such a, a technically excellent piece. Um, it's a it's a one point perspective view. 
but every, he's done it in such a subtle way. I want the camera might want to look at how he introduces us into the picture and he brings us forward and then he stops us and we step up again and then we have another point of view and another perspective uh, on the road and then he stops us again. It's sort of like a, a Zen garden where the, the stones are placed in such a way as it makes you want to stop and pause and look around at what you're seeing. Here. And I was going to tell you, I'm yeah. obsessed with that area and I didn't know why. Yeah, yeah. It's all very cleverly, uh, cleverly invent, uh, very inventive and it, the man knows what he's doing. The cools bring us up the painting and then we have this, we are bathed in Mediterranean light up here and this little uh, kind of a Santorini style dome in the distance. Mm -hmm. So the, we, we, he pops the warms here in the center of interest. Beautiful and, uh, piece. Wonderful. It is wonderful, and I hope that this is connecting with you too. Um, pick up the phone, call the number on your screen. You see the current bid on your screen right now, as well as the phone number to get involved in the auction. All the money goes to PPS KVIE. It stays local, and I just I love your description of this. The colors are so immersive. Uh, I'll tell you again, this is 42D Peros Village scene. Uh, oil on canvas measuring 32 by 26 you see there. Retail value is $500. Well, in conclusion, uh, uh, like all really good, uh, like so many really good uh, paintings, it works as an abstract as well as a very precise uh, uh, subject matter. And uh, I, I think every time you pass this painting, you'll want to walk up this street and get lost in that wonderful Greek world. It does take you right into yeah. another world. I love that with art. We're going to keep this piece open. That's 42D. Place your bids. They go fast and move on to the next piece. We're excited to tell you about this next piece. 42E Petagolezzo Matutini, which means morning gossip and it's by Tim Midbow. This is acrylic on canvas, measuring 16 by 20. Retail value is $200. This piece is one of those that makes you gather. It makes you gather. In fact, uh, uh, I was amused by watching the staff before uh, before we started filming. Uh, some of the crew was coming up, and they were just nose to nose with this painting, wanting to look at the details. That tells you a lot. It tells you a lot. And I did the same thing, and Rob did the same thing. We want to get climb into this world and enjoy every minute of it. Uh, the the painter it, it had it has sort of a folk art style it's not meant to be taken too terribly seriously and uh, also it's one of those pieces where you look at it you know exactly where you are uh, this could be no other place than Italy and these could be no other people but Italians and they're gossiping and having a wonderful time in the morning <laughs> even the little just to look the at the cats list just to look at the detail the cats all about it everybody's listening <laughs> checking them out and also checking out the store maybe uh, he wants to get in there and and sniff around all of these details like the the little bicycle here le uh, leaning against the wall the fruit stand uh, the lady uh, and her laundry on the side there. You can almost hear the voices, hear the music, and feel the vitality of this little Fellini-esque uh, 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 snippet here of Italian life. It really does tell a story, and this, this piece of art is so universal. It takes you into the moment, and this is an exquisite and exceptional artist. Uh, Tim Midbow. Retail value, $200. Don't miss out. Call the number on your screen. You see the current bid there. For such a happy piece of art, that means a lot to me. Yeah, yeah, I, I was thinking the same thing. This is a joyful little gem mm -hmm. that will make you smile every time you look at it. Uh, uh, what a treat to add to your home or your office. Let me tell you again that this is acrylic on canvas, measuring 16 by 20. Uh, it's 42E, and the retail is for $200. And I love the meaning, the morning gossip, but it looks like this is very happy tales that we're discussing. Happy because, tales indeed. Yes, it just yeah. leaps off of the canvas, yeah. and hopefully right into your home by picking up the phone number and calling the number right there. You see the retail value, and we have time for your final thoughts as we look at this beautiful piece. Well, uh, anytime someone new comes into your home or your office, they're going to want to put their nose right next to that painting and look at it because it invites you in and it'll make you happy every time you go in there too. Yes, A we saw visit. that in real time right yeah. here as the entire crew was over here 
right close to it, just looking in. It's a We're fun gonna piece. Keep this piece open, uh, and thank you so much for this uh, Tim Midbo, and move on to the next piece. Item 42F is Hong Kong Harbor by Roger Lanzini. This is a watercolor measuring 14 by 20. And this framing services provided by University Art in this uh, watercolor and the retail value is $350. Again, the name is Hong Kong Harbor by Roger Lanzini, item 42F. Roger is obviously a, 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 propor, a proponent of uh, transparent watercolor, which is uh, a whole world unto itself. And the, the, the effects that you can get with transparent pen, excuse me, transparent watercolor, you can't get it with any other medium. Transparent watercolor. It's like stained glass window. You've got the light coming through. Oh. Uh, the, the, the white paper comes through in, in the same way it does in a, in a stained glass window. And the luminosity that uh, results is singular to this particular medium. We know exactly, by the way, where we are. Uh, uh, even if you've never been to Hong Kong, well, we, we know this is a Chinese junk ship. We have the modern buildings behind it. Um, it is uh, a lovely contrast between the old and the new. And the atmospheric, uh, atmospheric perspective uh, of the uh, windows in the background, it's not labored. And in the, they go back gr into the distance in a very uh, atmospheric and charming way. What a beautiful piece and the beautiful sails right there. And I love the the transparent, translucent yes. nature that yes. you talk about um, with this type of watercolor. You see the new and the old and then the original hillside there, exactly. which is so beautiful in the background. 42F Hong Kong Harbor uh, by Roger Lanzini, watercolor measuring 14 by 20, framing services, University Art and I also, University Art Center, and the retail value is $350. Your current bid's right there. What else? Uh, just in conclusion, uh, uh, the uh, the framers did a wonderful job on this. You'll notice that the 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 orange of the uh, of the sail uh, of the Chinese junk is repeated in the lining of the uh, uh, of the mat, and it just gives it a a a, a stunning little effect. It uh, frames it so excitingly, and it, it's, it's one of those pieces that you could put anywhere yeah. in your home. It, it just, just jumps right perfectly. off the wall. It is so beautiful, and we want to remind you that all of the money raised, just look at that. And if you're in another room, come in and take a peek. Uh, all the money raised goes to PBS KVIE. The artist uh, sets the retail value because that's what they could get for it, but instead they give it to us so that we can sell it to you and make money for PBS KVIE, your arts, entertainment, education, and inspiration front row seat. We are thrilled to be able to bring you this auction all weekend long. Largest gallery right now in uh, Northern California, and it's Indeed. right here on your television. How cool is that? We are nearing the end of this break, which means that now is your last opportunity to bid on the art featured in this half hour. Let's check in over at the recap station for an update and more. We've only got a few more minutes during this break. I want to remind everybody, this is the largest art auction in Northern California. And I think the only one that's on that's a televised one. These pieces come from art galleries, have been shown in art galleries, and these are professional artists. So with that caveat, pick up your phone and I'm gonna go through the current bids. Item number 42D is Pados Village Scene by Thomas Sellis. It's an oil on canvas. It measures 32 by 26. It has a retail of $500 and we are currently sitting at 425. Let's make that a bell ringer. Remember, that's what it would cost you in a gallery. It is framed, it is ready to go home. Item number 42E is Morning Gossip by Tim Midbo. This is an acrylic on canvas that measures 16 by 20. It has a retail value of $200. And this one's a bell ringer. But we are currently looking for a bid of 400. Item number 42F is Hong Kong Harbor by Roger Lanzini. It measures 14 by 20. It has a retail value of 350. And we're currently sitting at 125. We need to get that one up there. Okay, I'm gonna recap all of them. Item number 42A is a big fight in the studio with a bunch of bidders. It's a bell ringer. It has a retail of 550. We're sitting at 650. 
If you are the high bidder on this Rick Steves, and it's, yeah, it's that Rick Steves, beautiful painting on, um, a photograph on aluminum. It's signed. It's a one of a kind. You also get to go see his live lecture on December 4th. We'll give you two tickets to that for a lovely evening at the Crest with Rick Steves. We're still holding the bidding open. We're sitting at 650. Item number 42B is Fall in Love by Christina Springer. This is an oil on canvas that measures 20 by 24. It has a retail value of $1,200. I am currently sitting on 500. We need to get that up there. Like I said, this would be $1,200 in the gallery. Right now the bid is sitting at six. Item number 42C is by Steve Walters. It is a beautiful watercolor that measures 15 by 22. It's got a gallery value of $900. And right now we're sitting at 800. If the artist sold this in their gallery, which they would have if they weren't so gracious to give it to us, they would be getting 900 for it. So let's get that 800 bid up to 900. And remember, all of that goes to KVIE. The artists have been very gracious in donating their piece 100%. Item number 42D is by Thomas Sellis. It's an oil on canvas measuring 32 by 26. It's a $500 value. We're currently sitting at 424, 425. Again, we are really close to the retail on that one. 42E, Morning Gossip by Tim Midbow is a big bell winner, uh, bell ringer, but we're still holding it open, right? Right now it's sitting at 450. We want to get five for that one. Remember, it all goes to your KVIE. Uh, item number 42F is Hong Kong Harbor. The watercolor measures 14 by 20. It's beautifully framed by University Art Center. It has a value of 350. We're sitting at 125. Remember, you need to call 844 584. Oh. <laughs> 3278, they changed the number a couple years back. Anyway, you don't call that, you're not gonna go home with one of these pieces. And again, 100% of what you pay for this professional art goes straight to your KVIE program. So stay with us, there's more art coming up in the next half hour of your PBS KVIE Art Auction. Welcome to the 42nd annual PBS KVIE Art Auction. Join us all weekend for a celebration of Northern California's visual arts. Over 270 works of art will be auctioned off to the highest bidder, and you can be part of the action by watching and bidding on your favorite artwork. View the entire collection online at kvie.org slash art auction. Then, when your favorite item appears, call 1-844-KVIE-ART to place your bid. Auction proceeds benefit the programs and services of your PBS station, KVIE. So thank you for watching and bidding. And now, let the auction begin. Bidding on items in the art auction is quick and easy to do. First, explore the collection online at kvie.org slash art auction. Or keep watching PBS KVIE. When a piece of art catches your eye, call 1-844-KVIE-ART and a volunteer will assist you. KVIE accepts all major credit cards for your art purchase a member of our accounting team will confirm your payment within five minutes of item sale. Thank you for being a part of the PBS KVIE Art Auction and for making art a part of your home today. Coming up next is the Contemporary category. Awards juried by Barry Sakata. this category features abstract and non-objective works in a variety of media. View all of the artwork featured in this year's auction at kvie.org slash art auction. Good evening, I'm Dean Neath, and thank you for joining us for the contemporary category. This portion of the art auction is sponsored by Rescue Dog Wines, and we would like to thank them for their commitment to supporting the arts on PBS and KVIE. So let's look at an overview on what's coming up next. Item number 43A is Sky Palette 2 by Jaya King. This is an acrylic on canvas measuring 12 by 12 and has a retail value of 625. Item number 42B is Horton's Crow by Charlotte Cooper. This is an encaustic, which is a wax, measuring 24 by 20. It has a retail value of 675. I love this piece. Um, item number 43C is a drink by Linda Nunes. 
This is a mixed media. It measures 24 by 24. It has a retail value of 1200. Item number 43D is Portraits Rip and True by NKID. This is a pastel measuring 24 by 24, and it has a retail value of $370. Item number 43E is Chinatown and Calusa with a touch of Van Gogh by Annie Hughes. This is a watercolor. It measures 16 by 48. It has a retail value of $800. Item number 43F is Bali Sunset by Paula Sugarman. It's an acrylic on canvas and it's 24 square. It has a retail value of 450. All right, the phone lines are open, call now. So let's see what we've got now with the art expert and auctioneer. Hi there, I'm Rob Stewart. Thank you for joining us for this contemporary break. I am pleased to be back once again with art expert extraordinaire Steve Memmering. Thanks for joining us again, Steve. Thanks, Rob. So good to have you here at the 2023 PBS KVIE Art Auction. Let's start with 43A Sky Palette 2 by Jaya King, wonderful artist, acrylic on canvas, measuring 12 by 12. Retail value $625. We both know Jaya, so you take it away. Jaya is a force of, a force of nature. If you've never met Jaya, uh, you've missed something. She uh, fills the room and she's full of energy. Uh, in a wonderful in way. A wonderful, ex in a wonderful way. And just like her little painting here, this is like a pre-sketch for a 12 foot by 12 foot abstract that you see at the Whitney. Mm -hmm. You know, only it's all of that energy is condensed into a very, very small, delicious scale. What a compliment. Yeah. That you just paid. I'll also tell you her mural is the large mural on the side of the Guild uh, Theater in, um, in uh, Oak Park. Oak Park. Yep. And uh, yeah, it's, a, it's uh, sensational. Uh, she's a, 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 a person of tremendous versatility. Uh, I primarily know Jaya's, uh, Jaya's work from her uh, encaustic work that she, uh, she, a lot of it was in the, uh, the uh, Sparrow Gallery and uh, they're large, impressive, hard to dismiss works. And uh, this, this is hard to dismiss too. Yeah, this is a, an amazing, this is an amazing little gem. Uh, it uh, is so layered and so complex that uh, uh, it's hard not to stop and figure, how did she do this? It's incredibly heavy, too. Really? Yeah. It's a, it's a gallery wrap piece so that the, the composition extends uh, an inch and a half on all, all sides. So you, from every view of the piece, you're, you're getting an experience. Uh, some, of the, some of the sides are some of the prettiest parts, too, in my oh, opinion. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, uh, the entire thing, it's like an artifact rather than a, just a, a flat painting. It's like something you hold in your hands. It's, it's, uh, it's gorgeous. Uh, really smart, uh, energetic. Uh, this is done with uh, squeegees and palette knives as opposed to the traditional brush. And she gets an enormous amount of energy. It's just packed with energy on an extremely small scale. What a, what a joy to have in your house. It is a joyful piece. Yeah. Sky yeah. Palette 2 by artist Jaya King. Acrylic on canvas measuring 12 by 12. Retail value is $625 and all of her pieces make a statement. We interviewed her and she was just so lively. Isn't she fun? She's phenomenal yeah. and so is this piece. And so is the painting. That she has given to PBS KVIE. You see the current bid there on the screen as well as the phone number to call, and this can be yours from a collectible California artist, Jaya King, whose murals grace the city, and her artwork can now grace your walls if you are the winning bidder. Final thoughts. Final thoughts would be, um, Jaya is an up-and-comer, and if you're interested in catching someone while they're uh, affordable, this would be a good way to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, she's, uh, she's, her work is going to be much more expensive in a very short time. Yeah, like act now, yeah, act short now. amount of time. <laughs> yeah, really. Okay, thank you so much, Jaya. We're gonna keep this piece open. I love it, 43A, that's Sky Palette too. On to the next piece, 43B, Horton's Crow by Charlotte Cooper. Wow, this is encaustic, measuring 24 by 20. And this is retail value $675. Again, Horton's Crow by Charlotte Cooper. What a fun piece. 
Uh, absolutely. Uh, charming. Uh, I mean, you've you're, you got to look at the crow, first of all, <laughs> obviously, because it's so engaging. And just as the crow is looking up at this, this, this uh, uh, flower, uh, we're right along with the, co uh, with the crow doing the same thing. <laughs> looking up. I didn't notice that, but we are. <laughs> we are. We are the crows in this pre piece. Uh, this was uh, uh, the, the title. It's referring to the Horton uh, Iris of, uh, uh, Garden, and uh, it was at the end of the season for zinnias, and uh, Charlotte took a few of them home and stuck them uh, uh, in a container, and they began to droop. That is an end of season zinnia. I did not. I was yeah. wondering, is it a yeah. daylily? Is it? And I, I, I see that it's gorgeous. Well, I, I didn't know quite what it was until I read the story, and uh, uh, it is uh, media-wise, it's a. a a series of, uh, of things. Uh, it's encaustic, it's gel, it's a combination of a, of a, a variety of mediums that give it a certain sort of translucent quality. If you look at the, the area right here, you see underlining all of this, uh, the original pencil drawing here. It can just be seen and it gives it a, an interesting sort of graphic feel with all of this uh, this stuff coming, go, going around. If you've picked zinnias, which zinnias don't smell, but the stems have a very, I don't know, for lack of a better word, green smell. Yeah. And you can see that in yeah. here. It's just exquisite. And the crow looking up at these beautiful flowers. Horton's crow, Charlotte Cooper is the artist. Encaustic, measuring 24 by 24. Uh, retail value is $675. And yes, it's just impossible not to look up at. I'm still looking up just like the crow. <laughs> you, tell me really quickly about encaustic. It is a, it's a very ancient uh, uh, form. The Egyptian used it. It's a kind of wax. Uh, Jaya King uh, is an expert at it. And it gives a translucent quality to the, uh, to the work that you can't get in any other uh, medium. Uh -huh. And Jaya was the piece we looked at yeah, before. Yeah, yeah she's mm -hmm. an expert at that. And this is certainly in the hands of an expert as well. Yep. What a warm and engaging, creamy feel this painting has to it. And Charlotte has done that with this piece. And um, is it, is it, is encaustic because it is wax, right? Yeah. Is it fragile or not? No. Okay. No, not not with modern technology. Not if it's withstood the test of time from Egypt. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And uh, certainly uh, not something to worry about. It's something to enjoy. Yes, wonderful. Okay, we're going to keep this piece open for you. Call the number on the screen. You see your uh, current bid right here as well as the phone number. We are going to move on to the next piece, but thank you so much for this. Charlotte Cooper. Next is 43 C, a drink by Linda Nunes. And this is a fun piece as she is a fun artist. This is mixed media, measuring 24 by 24. Retail value is $1,200. And Linda is such a kind person. A lovely person. I've known Linda for a long time, and uh, she's, she's been a joy to know. And uh, I think uh, that joyfulness is reflected in this particular piece. It's a fun piece. Tell me about it. I like the good for you up there. <laughs> the. Uh, uh, she was uh, grinning off her uh, canvas and decided she wanted to do a variation on a, on a theme. <clears throat> and she looked at her coffee cup on the table and says, well, I'll start with that. And we see that coffee, that coffee cup right there. And uh, each one of these little squares is like a little gem of a painting in its own. Um, it's witty. It's fun. It's not meant to to make you think too deeply. It's meant to entertain you and, and kind of a, a give you joy. I'm looking at she's so she's so smart. I'm looking at Linda's uh, first statement with these dots across uh, the top, and then she restates it here like a major musical theme, and then we see variations now going vertical down here. Here's another variation of uh, those spots. I'm using spots as just yeah. one element that she's playing with. And then look what happens here. The spots suddenly become r something new. Th these are not spots anymore. These are in tiny little coffee cups. Wow. What a right. great idea. And then that sort of, uh, that sort of uh, uh, direction <clears throat> is then repeated here in another form. Each one of these is a little jewel, and uh, there's a cohesiveness to the to the piece that uh, it all holds together as one unit, and uh, 
endlessly entertaining and amusing. It really honestly yeah. is. I was looking at each one and realizing that if you drink three cups of coffee a day, this is how many cups of coffee you have in a week. <laughs> you know, I hadn't even thought of that. Each one of these <laughs> is, uh, there's one for you, I can promise you. <laughs> and good for you if you're the winning bidder on this piece by calling the number and you will speak to a friendly PBS KVIE volunteer ready to take your bid and your information which is secure and hopefully you will be the winning bidder for this 43C A Drink by Linda Nunes. Mixed media measuring 24 by 24. You're seeing it on your monitor so beautifully. Retail value is $1,200. And I will ask you for your final thoughts. Final thoughts is can you think of a nice little niche to put this in by your by your breakfast niche or uh, uh, somewhere in your home, like over the bar? This is just begging to, uh, for you to find the perfect spot for it. It would I go anywhere. That. Yep, it's absolutely beautiful. Don't wait too long or you'll be too latte <laughs> late. I know I couldn't help it. All right, we're halfway through the break, which means we're going to keep this piece open. Thank you, Linda. And head over to the recap station for bidding updates and so much more. All right, you just heard from Rob and Steve talking about this great artwork from the Contemporary Collection. So we're going to review the bids, and remember, they sell fast. Item number 43A is Sky Palette 2 by Jaya King. It's an acrylic on canvas. It's a nice square 12 by 12. It has a retail value of $625. We're sitting at $325. Remember, these are professional artists. This is a beautiful piece. It needs to be in your home. Item number 43B is Horton's Crow by Charlotte Cooper. Everybody knows I'm a fan of the crow image, and this is a gorgeous encaustic piece. We're so close to a bell ringer. It's very dreamy. Um, it's, I love the median, and obviously, I love the crow. Its retail value is $675. We're currently sitting at $625. Help me make this into a bell ringer. This would have been showing in my gallery had she not been gracious enough to donate it. So it's a $675 piece. I'm asking for another $50 on that bid of $625. Item number 43C is a drink by Linda Nunes. What a fun piece this is. This would be great in your kitchen, your dining room. If you own a restaurant, fill it with original art. It's a mixed media. It has a retail value of $1,200. This artist is widely co collected. And right now we are sitting at $350. This is a $1,200 piece. I need to get it up to five and you need to take it home. You can't take it home unless you call 844-584-3278 and place your bid. We are getting down to the very last of the art auction. So if you haven't gotten a great piece yet, there's still a couple left, but you got to call. So I'm going to uh, head back to Steve and Rob um, right after I read these one more time. Item number 43A, Sky Palette by Jaya King. It's $625 value. We're sitting at $350. Let's get it to $450. It's uh, item number 40 through B is Horton's Crow by Charlotte Cooper. This great crow is encaustic. It measures 24 by 20. It has a $675 value. We are sitting at 625. We just need another $50 to make this into a bell ringer. Again, this item number 43 B. We want to see it at 650 or 675, excuse me. Item number 43 C is a drink by Linda Nunez. This is a fun poppy piece. It just makes me smile every time I see it. It's a nice square 24 by 24. It's a $1,200 value. She is a well sought after artist. We are sitting at 350. We need to get that up to five. So let's head back to Steve and Rob for our remaining pieces in this break. All right, the current bid is on your screen as well as the number to call to place your bid in the PBS KVIE Art Auction. Get involved right now. The piece we're looking at is 43D Portraits, Rip and True by NKID. This is pastel measuring 24 by 24, the pastel portion, and the retail value is $370. All right. 
Tell me about NK's piece. Well, uh, the first time I saw it in real life, uh, I said, what a pleasant piece this is. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what I'm looking at, but it's pleasant nonetheless. And then I said, uh, then I had to do a little research. What did the artist say about this? And he's very interested in starting starting something that looks like a still life and actually takes on the, the, the feeling of a portrait. And I'm saying, well, I understand that. I can kind of see this as, as my modern figures here. And a rip then, and true, okay. Yeah, yeah, and then I said, well, what the heck are these things? And uh, they're obviously an attempt to be, is it like a, like a garden sculpture? I was totally confused. What do you think they look like, Rob? So when we first talked about this, I talked about this, I thought it was a chop, like maybe a hallmark like or a, a hallmark. chop. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then I thought maybe it's something that you would like hit with a hammer to remove a nail uh -huh. from the bottom portion. And then I went, oh, it's a hammer. <laughs> That's exactly it. But, I went <laughs> but it the... took me yeah. four minutes to get there. You see the conversation that we're having here? That's the kind of conversation that you're going to have with your friends and your guests and your family when you put this on your wall and have the same kind of yeah. uh, uh, adventure as to what this is. It's a fun piece, and I love piece. when something shows the respect of materials and reusing, uh, repurposing over and over. And you can see how many times these hammers were adjusted so that they would fit to the exactly. actual piece yeah. of wood. And uh, one of the uh, one of the qualities of a really fine artist is getting us to look at something but in an entirely new way. Well, and he did. This person did it. Really did it. Yeah. Beautiful piece of art by N. K. I. D. And this is Rip and True Pastel. Uh, measuring 24 by 24. NK, you did a phenomenal job. Yeah. Retail value 370 if you're calling in to speak to a PBS KVIE volunteer on the phone bank. This is item 43D, current bid on the screen. Very handsome piece to have on a wall, and at the same time, a spectacular conversation piece. You'll have l no end of fun with this one. I think it's a lot of fun, and it took us really that long oh, to yeah. figure it out we, earlier. We, we, were, so we were going back and thank forth. Thank you for doing that, because it really showed the conversational oh. uh, fun that you can have in art, and it tells a story, and it can take you places and take you back in time, or who knows where. Final <laughs> thoughts. We have about 10 seconds left. Well... Like I say, one of the characteristics of a really good artist is making us see a familiar subject in an entirely new way, and I think that's what this artist has managed to do uh, without hitting us over the head with it. No, no, pu <laughs> no pun with a hammer. Yeah. Uh, he's done it in a subtle and very engaging and pleasant, pleasant piece. Beautiful piece of art. Thank you so much. This is from NKID. We appreciate this gorgeous creation. We'll keep it open and move on to the next piece. 43E, Chinatown in Calusa with a touch of Van Gogh by Annie Hughes. That's a great title. It explains it right there. Watercolor measuring 16 by 48. I love this size of painting. Retail is $800, and this is so fun. Exactly. Tell me about this that's, by Annie Hughes. That's the right work, uh, Rob. This is this is quintessentially the fun piece of the of the evening uh, I don't know uh, I don't know Annie but I'd sure like to meet her I, right? I think I she's a character because her art her art is singular uh, absolutely joyful uh, there is not there's nothing uh, dull or dark or or depressing this is a joy from from one end to the other uh, she was uh, evidently on the on a uh, uh, levee overlooking Calusa and there's a Chinese uh, market uh, there that she uh, was very familiar with and decided, you know, I need to paint that. So she did it on a small scale and then uh, uh, she looked at it and her, her small pieces said, I've got to do this on a larger scale. And of course, the further and further away for, that she got from the subject, the more, uh, the more entertaining and loose she could be with it. And uh, this thing absolutely pops. It's like a little shadow box the way it's framed. And you just want to crawl into it and walk down that street and enjoy every minute of it. The, the, the noises and the color and the, the fun of it. This is a happy painting. Could you see this in a child's room or uh, 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 in a kitchen? I could see it anywhere. anywhere. I love yeah. pieces this size over a door. Uh huh. I love perfect, that. Perfect it room. means welcome, come in yeah. and have fun. And as the camera was going along, uh, these each individual places in this Chinatown in Calusa, 
they almost took on their own personalities and a couple of them looked like people. <laughs> I just thought it was fascinating and, we'll and I love Annie's signature yeah. right there in yeah. the middle. Um, pick up the phone, call the number on your screen. Isn't this a fantastic piece of art? It can be yours by calling the number that you see right there. Phone a friend, have them join in as well, watching the auction with you. There you see the hand of the artist, her signature right there. Uh, Annie Hughes. This is a beautiful piece and I'm gonna ask you for your final thoughts right now. Well, the this painting absolutely bustles with fun and life and uh, would be a joy on anyone's wall anywhere. So, uh, a lot of work. A lot of work. And by the way, the retail value, uh, $370. That's a, a lot of work for, for that price. For 43D is the item right here that you're looking at. Uh, pastels, nope. This is, I'm sorry, 40, yeah, 43E, Chinatown in Calusa. Let me correct the price I just said. Retail value of $800. The one we saw before this was 370. This is Chinatown in Calusa with a touch of Van Gogh by Annie Hughes. It's watercolor measuring 16 by 48. A beauty, Annie. Uh, retail value is $800 and you see the current bid right there on your screen. We're gonna keep this open. We're gonna leave Chinatown in Calusa open with a touch of Van Gogh and move on to the next. Thank you. This is 43F Bali Sunset. Wow, that's a fun amount of color by Paula Sugarman. Acrylic on canvas, 24 by 24 are your measurements and the retail value is $450. This is a beautiful piece and I'm curious for your thoughts. Well, Paula, um uh, was lucky enough to spend uh, some time in Bali. I think she, she said that she was there for about six weeks and uh, was able to simply relax and absorb the, the magic of that singular uh, uh, location. Uh, this is not meant to be something where, oh, I can see the sunset here. I can see the sun is here and I can see. This is totally a, a, a true abstract where she's simply trying to evoke some of the, the beauty and energy of that place. This is one of a piece uh, one of a piece of, I believe, six for the group that she did there, and uh, perhaps with an eye towards making a, a larger, uh, larger paintings in, in the future. But what one is uh, uh, just struck by is the the excitement and the energy and the color well of this of this spectacular piece. Um, a lot packed into a very small uh, area. And uh, it absolutely pulsates with uh, energy. Uh, the, the lady knows what she's doing. I love that you described this the way you just did because it takes you to a Bali sunset. Exactly. And it shows you that each person has their own experience with it yes when they are watching it uh, the number on your screen is the way to get involved in the auction the current bid right there the retail is 450 for this acrylic on canvas 24 by 24 bali sunset paula sugarman is your artist and look at those colors right there uh, Steve, those are just popping through. She, uh, uh, well, that's of course one of the things she really wanted to emphasize. And one of her, uh, one of her devices is that the, the orange that we're seeing in the in the uh, uh, in the sunset abstract is actually a fluorescent orange, which could go really the wrong way, but not in her hands. She's uh, uh, layered that and subdued it and placed complementary colors against it in a very smart way that just enriches it further it just uh, we are in the in the in the presence of someone who really really knows what they're doing in terms of an abstract and I always tell my students that one of the easiest things in the world to do is a bad abstract and one of the hardest things to do is a good one and this is a good one wow. a real good one that was a fantastic uh, artist's statement and I'll tell you I've never seen a piece of art and wanted to go to the place that it was painted about this makes me want to go to Bali. Oh, well. For real. 
Give us, get us both tickets. Let's go. <laughs> right. Thank you so much. And uh, we're nearing the end of this break, which means it's your final opportunity to bid on the art featured in this half hour. A big thank you to this wonderful person, art expert Steve Memering, thank who you, joined us for this uh, and prior segments. And your piece this year is just a showstopper in the auction. Thank you for I think that. That's coming up, by the way. Yes. Just after this. It certainly is. And now we'll check in over at the recap station for an update while you pick up your phone and get involved. Okay, let's keep those phones ringing. You gotta call the number on your screen because our volunteers are here to take bids. I'm gonna go through these three pieces really quick. Item number 43D is by Norman ID. It's called Rip and True. I'm gonna tell a quick story here. I was sitting at an artist studio. I was doing a sale for a, an estate sale this weekend on Saturday. Really nice guy comes in, he's got a handful of hammers. So I'm looking at him and I say, oh, do you collect hammers? And he says, no, I paint them. And he proceeds to explain that he's doing this series and he turns them into, you know, they look like figures. And he goes, oh, and by the way, I'll be in the KVIE art auction tomorrow night. And I looked at him and I went, oh, and by the way, I'll be selling your piece. And that's this one. It's item number 43D, Portraits Rip and True, by my new friend Norman, who I might try to get in my gallery. It's a beautiful piece. It has a retail of 370. We are currently sitting at 250. This guy's gonna go somewhere and he's just a doll to boot. Um, item number 43E is Chinatown in Calusa with the touch of Van Gogh by Annie Hughes. It's a watercolor. It measures 16 by 48. It's nice and long and thin, which means it's easy to place. This is a big bell ringer. But that doesn't mean that doesn't mean you can't bid on it still. So keep the bidding up on this piece as well. Item number 43F is Bali Sunset. This is a really striking abstract work. It's a big square canvas, 24 by 24, has a retail value of $450. We are currently sitting at 225. This needs to be on a gallery wall, but tonight it can be on your wall. But not if you don't call us on the number on your screen and get your bid in fast. I'm gonna run through everything super quick here. 43A Sky Palette by Jaya King is acrylic on canvas. It's 625, we are currently sitting at 450. We need to get that up. Item number 43B is Horton's Crow by Charlotte Cooper. Love this piece with the with the little crow. It's 675. We're sitting at 625. Make this into a bell ringer. I'm looking for 675 on Charlotte's piece. Item number 43C is a drink by Linda Nunez. Super bright poppy, just makes you happy thing. It's 24 by 24. It has a $1,200 value. We are sitting at five. We need to get that up there to six. She is one of Sacramento's favorite artists. Item number 43D, Rip and True by my new friend Norman, is now sitting at 250. We want to get that up near retail at 370. China in Calusa by Annie Hughes is currently sitting, is a bell ringer at 1300, but you can still bid on it. Bally Sunset was his retail of 450. We're sitting at 225. So stay with us. There's more art coming up in the next half hour of your PBS KVIE art auction. Rescue Dog Wines proudly supports KVIE and Rescue Dog Month. We donate 50% of profits from our sustainable wines to animal rescue organizations. Learn more about our mission at rescuedogwines.com. Coming up next is the California Masters category. This half hour recognizes the works of our region's amazing artists. Don't miss your chance to secure a work of art from a California master today. View all of the art featured in this year's auction at kvie.org slash art auction. Hi there, I'm David Lowe and we are back with more art. Thanks for joining us for this California Masters segment. Some incredible work is ahead, and here's an overview of the art that will be up for bid this half hour. Item number 44A is Sea View Saint Tropez by Leslie Toms. This is oil on wood panel, measures 12 by 12 inches, and has a retail value of $1,200. Item 44B is Morning Mist by Sandy Delahanty. This is a watercolor, and it measures 20 by 26 inches, has a value of $1,600. Item 44C is Chimney Rock by William Ishmael. This is a ceramic and it measures seven, or I'm sorry, 22 by seven by seven inches and has a retail value of $750. 
Item 44D is Tower Remembered by Steve Memring. This is oil on canvas measuring 30 by 30 inches, has a retail value of $2,500. Item 44E is Fall Pomegranates by Marie Therese Brown. And it's oil on canvas, measures 24 by 24 inches, retail value of $900. And the final piece in this half hour lot is 44F, A New Day Awaits by Maya Lowe. It's acrylic on canvas and it measures 12 by 36 inches, has a retail value of $2,500. Hundred dollars. All right, the phone lines, they're open. Volunteers, they're ready to take your bids. Let's see the art. Hello, I'm Doug Elmitz, and thank you for joining us for this California Masters category. During this break, I'm pleased to be here with art expert Colleen Schulman. Colleen holds a BA in art history, a Master of Science in Art Administration, and has held various roles in art fundraising. Colleen is also on staff here at KVIE as the Chief Philanthropy Officer. We're excited to be here tonight with you. Thank you so much. We've got now the first item. This is 44A. It is Sea View San Tropez by Leslie Toms. It's an oil on wood. It's a panel, small actually, measuring 12 by 12, and it's got a retail value of $1,200. I'm a big fan of Leslie Toms, and this is a pretty special piece. Tell us a little bit about it. This is a fantastic piece, and you know, you note that it's a little small. I actually think it's the perfect size, especially right. if you have a larger collection and you're looking to add something here or there. This will fit anywhere in your home. Um, but Leslie was born and raised here in Sacramento, and the scene that you see here is um, part of a group that she had done studies on previous trips that she'd taken to Europe. And so during the pandemic, when she couldn't really travel so much, she really was focusing on um, returning to those studies and and you can see that really displayed here with the beautiful sea. We've got the wonderful architectural elements with the buildings, as well as this wonderful umbrella tree in the foreground. Um, these are actually a species of pine that form an umbrella shape, and they're appreciated for their shade and their unique shapes. And Leslie, you know, putting that kind of front and center, that's really um, something that's, that's wonderful about her work, is she's always focusing on the way that the natural shapes kind of juxtapose against her main focus, which is the buildings here. Well, not that I'm not enjoying being here at the KVA studio, but frankly, I'd rather be in Saint-Tropez. <laughs> and one of the beautiful things about art is it can actually transport you into another place. And maybe you are here in the KVA art, you know, uh, gallery, the largest gallery in Northern California this weekend. But really, this beauty is amazing. Now, this is painted on board and then floated in this very natural, um, sort of wide uh, uh, frame. I, I love the way in which it's matted because it really, really stands out. It's a square shape and as you said, it would, it's great if, whether you have a small collection or a large collection. If you want to add to your collection, the number's right there on your screen. The bid is right there on your screen. We need to hear from you now. You don't want to wake up tomorrow and think, oh, I wish I had only bid on this because it's one of a kind. Absolutely. And, you know, this is a little bit of a departure from um, her early painting years. She actually started out as a printmaker. And one of the things that she shared with us is that in printmaking, everything's done backwards. So when it reverses, it comes out the way it should face. And she decided to start working more in oil painting because she decided to live her life forward and gave up printmaking. Well, the value is $1,200. And uh, maybe you know somebody that is having a wedding coming up, maybe the holidays, Christmas, Hanukkah, you want to give this as a gift. What a great gift it would be. I think that, it, you know, sometimes people search around on Amazon and other places looking for that perfect gift. I really believe art is such a wonderful gift. And maybe you have an office, maybe you're a dentist or a doctor, or a lawyer, and you're looking for something really special in your office, what a wonderful uh, piece. And every cent is actually comes to KVA so we can bring you the quality TV you count on. We're gonna keep this open, this is 44A, and we're gonna move along to 44B, and it is Morning Mist 
by Sandy Delahante. This is watercolor measuring 20 by 26. It's got a retail value of $1,600. Tell us a little bit about this. So for those who may be unfamiliar with Sandy's work, she does watercolors, but the technique that she used is called a poured watercolor. Mm -hmm. And so what she's actually doing is she is literally pouring color in many, many layers over the watercolor paper versus putting the paint really? onto the paper and uh -huh. pushing it around with a brush. So you get these really lovely areas where you can see the color kind of seamlessly saturates mm -hmm. as you move through the painting. And she is able to get some of this detail using light that I really love. You know, she mentioned that this scene in particular is from the Yosemite Valley. And she says, as the morning air warms, the mist begins to rise, creating an awesome sight. And so she took some photographs and made some sketches in the very, very cold morning and then brought this back to her studio to work with the poured paint technique. The detail almost looks like a photograph in, in certain elements. And I love the fact that you can see the roots of the trees and the reflections and the shadows. Um, it's um, floated in this beautiful mat. The mat is gorgeous. The framing is gorgeous. Um, and it's a wonderful uh, piece valued at $1,600. This is your chance. It's a California master. Here at KVIE, you can get this. And again, every cent goes to KVIE so that we're able to bring you the quality programming you come to count on. Again, this is 44B, Morning Mist. It's a large piece, 20 by 26. It's got a retail value of 1,600. You see the, uh, the number on your screen that you can call, the current uh, number. We wanna make this a bell ringer. Again, uh, this is a, a, a wonderful gift, but more importantly, would be great for any collection. She's definitely a collector uh, and uh, somebody that should be in any any collection. And if, frankly, you've got uh, an Elvis velvet painting on your wall, get rid of those posters. Have some original, beautiful art. Do you have some additional thoughts? Uh, yeah, this particular painting, you know, you mentioned, Doug, that this looked very, very realistic, and that is a result of years of practice with this pouring technique. Mm -hmm. And I want to point out that this particular piece has been exhibited publicly. It was entered into the annual International Juried Watercolor West exhibition in 2022. It was accepted and earned the artist's signature status in Watercolor West, and that is a very high distinction in the watercolor uh, world. And for those who are interested in looking at more of Sandy's work, she's gonna have a solo show at Art House on R in October with a reception on second Saturday coming up October 14th. And we're very fortunate to be able to have this piece in our art auction, and it can be on your wall tomorrow, uh, but we need to hear from you now. Um, this is 44B by Sandley Delahente. We're gonna keep this open and move along to 44C, and it is Chimney Rock by William Ishmael. That's ceramic measuring 22 by seven by seven, and it's got a retail value of $750. I love this, and I love sculpture. Um, I can't get enough sculpture, and I think so many people have this impression that art has to be something that hangs on a wall. This is a beautiful piece. Tell us a little bit about it. It sure doesn't need to hang on your wall, and you know, the artist wanted to share his inspiration is, and many of you out there probably have this experience, driving or hiking through portions of the Red Rock country of Utah and Arizona. You've seen the magnificent towers, red oxidized stone soaring above the desert plains, and that's the inspiration for this beautiful piece, which was actually built, it is um, ceramic, and it was built using a slab technique, which is different than using form on a pottery wheel. These are actual slabs um, that the artist describes as leather hard, so that it's clay that's dried enough to have structural integrity, and you can really see that demonstrated in the way this is put together, but still amenable to be worked. And you can actually see the detail. If you look closely on the screen, you'll be able to see it. It's um, it's really a, a, a great conversation starter, if nothing else. But, you know, I, I like things that are uh, unique, things that um, generate discussion. This would be great on a coffee table. It would be great on a side table. It would be great in the middle of a dining room table. But we need to hear from you right now. The number is on your screen. The current value is there. This is one of a kind. It's great to be able to have it in our collection. It's called Chimney Rock. This is, is this indoor and outdoor? Can you have this outdoor? 
I'm glad you asked. So this piece has what's called an after glaze to highlight the contours of the piece, which you can see as we're doing the close up here. But since the glaze was encaustic based and encaustic is a wax based paint, mm -hmm. uh, it's not safe to be put in the sun. So it can be outside or it can be somewhere lovely in your home. Just watch where the sunlight is hitting and making sure that it's not in that direct heat. Right. I guess I'd keep it inside. You know, you don't want it to get knocked over, but this is something that I would, if I owned it, and I would love to own it, I might add, I would have uh, in the middle of our dining room table. I just feel like it's just such a really cool uh, piece. And one of the things I enjoy most about collecting art, Colleen, is when people come into my home and they think, wow, this is so amazing. And you know, if you're thinking about collecting art, if you wanna have an opportunity to have a beautiful piece like this, now's your opportunity. The number's on your screen, it's so easy. And the bidding is really actually pretty uh, simple as well. All you have to do is call the number. We've got lots of volunteers ready to take your name and phone number. Do you have some final thoughts on this? Actually, I want to share with everyone out there, you know, if you're unfamiliar with this artist, he teaches classes at the Sacramento Fine Arts Center on beginning ceramics. So you can try your hand at this. He says to share with everyone he's hooked on clay and he's recruiting. Hooked on clay. Well, all right, we're halfway through this break, which means that we're going to keep this piece open and check in over at the recap station for bidding updates. All right, thanks, Doug and Colleen. Okay, you've just seen the first three works of art from this California Masters break, and we want to hear from you. Call the number on your screen to keep the bids going. Here we go. We're going to do a quick recap. Item number 44A is Sea View San Tropez by Leslie Toms. Right now, that has a current high bid of $575. I was just looking at our bid board. There are a number of people on the phone right now. So if you're one of them, Push that bid up. Tell them I want to do 650. I want to do 700. I want to do 800. Still well below the value on that. And that piece, frankly, should sell for $1,200 or more. So if you're one of those bidders, jump in there. And if you are not one of those bidders, there's still time and you need to call the number on your screen. Okay, 44B is Morning Mist by Sandy Delahanty, and also have a couple bidders on that right now already, but you can join them. Uh, retail value is $1,600. And, and that is a 20 by 26 inch piece and you are gonna love it when you get to pick it up as early as tomorrow and add it to your collection. And then item 44C, this is Chimney Rock by William Ishmael. And William just had a very successful show at B. Sakata Gallery. And I have to think that this piece would have been in that gallery if he hadn't have chosen to give it to us so that we could present it on air and be able to raise the funds for KVIE and then hopefully find its way into your home. All we need is that starting bid. $250 is gonna make that starting bid for you. Call 844-KVI-ART and say, I want to bid on 44C Chimney Rock by William Ishmael. Okay, remember, this is an auction. You've probably been watching it all weekend. Uh, if you haven't, let me quickly go through it. These pieces, they come up, we talk about them for a little bit, and then they go away. They're gone forever. They're only going to exist in that one person, that one winning bidder. That can be you, but you have got to get on the phone and call when you see the piece that you want. Don't delay. If you try to wait too long, get a little cute, guess what? It might already be closed. You're calling in saying, I want this, and it's gone. All right, 44A. Let's look at this again. It's Sea View San Tropez by Leslie Toms. You can see it has a current high bid of $700, well towards its value of $1,200, and I think we're going to get that. Maybe it's going to be you. And if it's going to be you, call now, uh, jump in on the action, and join the other bidders. 44B is Morning Mist by Sandy Delahanty. This has a current high bid now of $500, and it's a watercolor that is gonna look fantastic no matter where you put it. Uh, but I can't have you spend too much time trying to figure out where you're gonna put it if it stops you from bidding. So just do the bidding first. Once you get the piece tomorrow, then you can figure out where it's gonna go. And then item 44C, uh, Chimney Rock by William Ishmael. We have a current high bid of $250, and there is still time though for you to jump in and be able to make your successful highest bid so you can own a piece of William Ishmael's and put it to your home. Okay, let's see the next three works of art in the break with Doug and Colleen. That's right, the number to call is on your screen and when you do, you'll be supporting PBS KVIE as well as the arts right here in our region. Now we're moving on now to item 44D, Tower Remembered 
by Steve Memering. This is an oil on canvas measuring 30 by 30 and has a retail value of $2,500. Colleen, initial thoughts? I just love this piece. Yeah. You know, for those folks who are born and raised in Sacramento, like the artist, many people have very fond memories of the Tower Theater, particularly during the 50s and 60s. And there's an energy that I think is really coming out in this particular oil painting that just, it transports you to the scene. It does, and it's such an iconic uh, sort of part of Sacramento. Uh, the colors are great. I love how he's uh, signed the art on this uh, park bench right down here. Um, the colors are great. It's uh, beautifully painted on canvas and the canvas is painted on the side, which I think is also very interesting. Um, again, it's, um, it's a beautiful piece by Steve Memering. It's 44D, Tower Remembered, oil on canvas measuring 30 by 30. It's got a retail value of $2,500. We need to hear from you. This is one of a kind. You don't want to wake up tomorrow and wish you would have gotten it. If you know a fan of maybe the movies, a fan of, you know, Tower, if you want something beautiful for your office, for your home, uh, maybe as a gift, what a great way to be able to be part of our auction and be able to know that every single cent goes to KVA, KVIE. So Colleen, you can do your job to bring us great quality TV all year long. Tell us a little bit more about this and your thoughts. Well, what I really love about this is you can see the artist's particular um, gravitation toward painting neon signs. This is something that he does a lot in some of his work, and you can see that really reflected in how well he's done the treatment of the tower sign at the very top here. And, you know, this is, while it looks like it's an architectural rendering, it's got a lot of paint marks that are kind of leaning more toward abstract, and it's, it's really meant to, from the artist's perspective, filter this image through the vision of time and memory, so he really sees this as a fantasy piece. You know, this isn't exactly how it's going to look when you walk up to the theater, but for those of us coming up with our rose-colored glasses, maybe having those memories, this is this is that look and feel that you feel it deepens your soul when you're walking up to the front doors. And memories is a really interesting point because one of the things that I noticed in this is this car is an old car. So this is not, you know, uh, of today. It's of a period gone by. Maybe um, it, the towers, you know, heyday may have been right when it opened up. It's got a real vintage feel to it, um, which is, I think, very, very special. And that's one of the things I enjoy most about art, and I know you do too, is that there is so much to be seen in a piece of art. And sometimes you don't see it initially until somebody points out to you. We've got about 30 seconds, Colleen, so tell us a little bit about this. Well, I also just want to share that this particular artist, you know, he has, a, he's doing a traditional oil painting process here, but he has a long history of painting in watercolor and acrylic as well. And so he shared with us when he finally attempted oil, it was like coming home. And it seems to suit the way I think I interpret the world. Okay, well, we're going to keep this open and we're going to move along. This was 44D. We're going to move on to 44E. Um, 44E is Fall Pomegranates by Marie Theresa Brown. It's oil on canvas measuring 24 by 24 and it's got a retail value of $900. And Marie Therese is a very special artist. Um, again, it's uh, a, a California master is what she is and I'm a big pomegranate fan. But tell us a little bit about this. I really love this piece. You know, the artist in particular shared that she painted from her studio looking out at her tree full of pomegranates, and you really get that coming across here in this oil painting. I have a pomegranate tree at home. I know many do people really? do. And this is the time of year. This is the, the perfect September, October, fall look. You see that really ripe fruit with the bright red color. You see in some of these pomegranates, you know, if we have a chance to get up close, you can see some of them starting to ripen a little bit too much on the vine, and they're starting to have those arrows pop through the skin. And the leaves, I really love the treatment of the leaves. Um, you know, you've got that fall kind of turning color happening. You've got these greens getting into that ochre color, getting into that brown color as we progress through the fall season. Well, I, I didn't realize you had a pomegranate tree. Um, we have actually two paintings um, next to each other in our kitchen 
of pomegranates, a one by Zhen Wang, who will be uh, auctioning off a piece in the next little segment, uh, and another by an Iowa artist. Um, and they're, they, they, they complement each other. It's just like so perfect, really, for, uh, for a kitchen. So if you're thinking about something special, you know, kitchens are more than just toasters and coffee makers. So we need to hear from you. The number's on your screen. The value is, um, what is the value? The value is $900. The value really ultimately is whatever you think it is. And trust me, I have bid far beyond whatever the value might be because I know that the, you know, I'm gonna get something that I want, but I also know, and, and being the chief uh, philanthropy officer of KVIE, it's important to know that, you know, we have the resources to be able to bring you the TV that you come to count on. It's always non-commercial, non-violent, always age appropriate. You're not gonna find any place else on the dial. Tell us a little bit more. Well, and what I really love about this is if you take this home today and have it in your kitchen, you know, it's a great memory of what you have supported here at right. KVIE, and it's an opportunity to have a real wonderful California artist in your collection. Some, a little bright spot of, of joy every day to see as you're pouring that cup of coffee and it, thinking about it, the season. Exactly, and she's a California master. And, you know, maybe on a gloomy day, this is exactly what you want to see. Um, and if you want to get it as a gift, what a great gift for somebody that needs to spice up their kitchen maybe a little bit. We're gonna keep this open. This was 44E, fall pomegranates, and we're gonna move on to 44F. And 44F is A New Day Awaits by Maya Lowe. It's acrylic on canvas measuring 12 by 36. It's got a retail value of $2,500. Um, this is a very special piece. This is a really special piece. I love the way in which it's um, sort of painted in this long, elongated way. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, Maya is known for her large landscapes, and you can see as we get up close to this particular piece that I, it, you know, her signature style is really coming through. This is a slightly abstracted view with very vivid color, and she actually was born in the Netherlands, and so growing up she was influenced by the Dutch school and later by the bright colors of the African landscape. She actually moved um, to South Africa and actually continued her schooling through fine arts and had a degree that she took at the Rhodes University. And so now, you know, being in our art auction, she's continuing to study in what she calls the search for the holy grail of composition, paint, and technique. And I see that that's, she's well on her way. Definitely. And one of the things that you can't see by watching on TV, but what we can see is that the painting ex extends onto the side of the canvas. So um, if you're looking at it, you wanna make sure if you have it, you hang it in a place where you can see the side of the canvas as well because it extends along. This is a really beautiful, I love the shape. This is the type of thing that would look so great over a, a couch or maybe over the headboard. Um, I just really think it's a special piece. It's a new day awaits. Maybe you want to get this for a gift. Maybe you're uh, looking to go to a wedding or the holidays and you're thinking, what a special thing. Or if you're looking for maybe something for your home or your office, the value is $2,500. You see the number on your screen. We need to hear from you. One, account, one of a kind, a California master. The value is $2,500, and again, it's measuring 20 by 36. So, although it might look a little small on the screen, maybe it doesn't, I don't know, it's difficult. I'm not, like, watching it from TV, but I'm looking at it here, and it's a good piece. It's a good size piece, it's very special. Do you have some additional thoughts? Well, what I find really interesting here is that this is done in an acrylic medium, although the artist herself is trained primarily in oils. And so I, I really see that as we get up close to the canvas, you know, she has very subtle layers and the light is glazing those layers and it's adding an additional vibrancy to the piece that I think is just really fantastic, especially when you're here seeing it in person and hopefully that's coming through on the screen. It definitely is. All right, well, we're nearing the end of this break, which means that now is your final opportunity to bid on the art featured in this half hour. Now let's check out uh, what's going on at the recap station for an update on auction activity. Recap, Doug? No thanks, I don't wear one. All right, just a few uh, remaining moments in this break. Let's review the bids. And we're gonna start with item 44D. This is Tower Remembered by Steve Memring. 
and oil on canvas, and you can see we're getting oh so close to the value of $2,500. Remember, that's the value that Steve put on this painting and wanted KVIE to receive from you, the highest bidder, uh, to go to support the mission of KVIE. So let's uh, let's do a favor for Steve. Let's do a favor for KVIE. And you know what? It just happened. So we're going to have a bell ringer come in, and you hear that? Current high bid right now is $2,500, but we're not done yet. So keep bidding if you are interested in 44D Tower Remembered. Item 44E is fall pomegranates. We're going to check in on that by Marie Therese Brown. It's oil on canvas, has a current high bid of $400 on its way to the value of $900. So few people bidding on that right now, but you can still join them. You got to call though right now. Don't delay 844-KVI-ART and tell them I want to make a bid on item 44E Paul uh, Paul, fall pomegranates. You can actually call it whatever you want as long as you get the item number correct. 44E, jump in right now and make a high bid. Item 44F, let's go check in on a new day awaits. Has a current high bid of $800. There's a couple bidders right now who are interested in that, but again, you can join them. That's the whole point of an auction. We want everybody who is interested in Maya Lowe's piece right now to be able to call in and see if you can end up being the high bidder for a new day awaits item 44F by Maya Lowe. It's a very nice acrylic, three feet wide. It's gonna look amazing no matter where you put it. All right, let's go all the way back to the first item in this half hour lot. It's item 44A, Sea View by uh, San Tropez by Leslie Thompson. Guess what, that is a bell ringer. We hit the uh, value and we keep going over. Uh, hopefully it's gonna close soon for the very happy high bidder. Uh, don't know if it's gonna be the 1400 or not. We'll just have to wait and see. Item 44B, Morning Mist by Sandy Delahanty. It's a watercolor, has a current high bid of $500. And that one is well undervalued right now based on uh, the current bid and the value of $1,600. So if you're interested in Morning Mist, item 44B, you've got to call right now. Don't let it slip away. We always say like, don't wake up with regret in the morning and say, dang, I should have called. Uh, make it happen. You've got to just do it right now. 844-KVIE art. Item 44C, Chimney Rock by William Ishmael. And this is the ceramic piece. Has a current high bid of $350. As I mentioned before, he just finished up a very successful showing uh, and sale at B. Sakata Gallery. And, and again, this was the type of piece that was there. And right now, someone at $350 is going to be... Uh, if they end up the high bid right there, wow. I mean, that's less than the gallery price. So if you're interested uh, from a, a professional artist like William Ishmael, this is your chance to own a piece, but you've got to be the high bidder and you can't delay. You've got to call right now. Item 44D, Tower Remembered by Steve Memring and has a the high bid of $2,600. Again, that is a bell ringer, but we're not done yet. Uh, we will be closing all of these pieces in a few minutes, of course, but uh, there's still time for you to call in on any of these. 44E is fall pomegranates and has a current high bid of $400 on Retrease Brown's piece. And this is the oil on canvas and it's two feet by two feet. It's gonna look great in your home or office. But again, you've gotta be the high bidder to get that. And then 44F, a new day awaits by Maya Lowe and has a current high bid of $850. And that needs to keep moving up in, I would say $100 increments because it's still well below the value of 2,500. So that one needs to start moving in. Okay, stay with us. More art coming up in the next half hour of the PBS KVIE Art Auction. Coming up next is the Collector's Corner. This category features regional, national, or internationally known artists and award winners. View all of the art featured in this year's auction at kvie.org slash art auction. All right, good evening. I'm David Lowe, and thank you for joining us for the Collector's Corner category. This portion of the art auction is sponsored by Rescue Dog Wines. We want to thank them for their commitment to supporting the arts right here on PBS KVIE. Now, here's an overview of the art that's going to be up for bid during this next half hour. And we're going to start with item 45A. It's Late Summer in Sacramento Valley by Jin Wang. And it's oil on board, measures 32 by 20 inches, has a retail value of 8,200. Item 45B is myself 
with puppy octopuses by Maya Peoples Bright. And this is mixed media measuring 15 by 19 inches, has a retail value of $3,500. Item 45C is hand painted cards by Clay Voorhees. It's oil on canvas, measures three feet by three feet. It's 36 by 36. It's framed by Blue Bus Framing and has a retail value of $10,000. Item 45D is House on the River by Gregory Condos. It's a G clay on canvas. It measures 23 by 35 inches, retail value of $1,000. Item 45E is Harmony in Hues by Earl Boley. It's oil on canvas and it measures 40 by 30 inches. It's framed by Blue Bus Framing and it has a retail value of $1,650. And then the final item in this 30 minute lot is 45F. It's Steve McQueen by Jesse Bravo. This is photography and it measures 26 by 22 inches, has a retail value of $1,600. All right, let's get our collector's corner started. The phone lines, they're open to take your bids and let's see the art with Doug and Colleen. Hello, I am Doug Elmitz, and welcome to the final hour of the 2023 PBS KVA Art Auction. This is the Collector's Corner, and we've got some incredible artworks available for you to bid on right now. Now, during this break, I'm pleased to be back here with Colleen Schulman, and we're going to be discussing works from several highly regarded artists. So let's get started, Colleen, with our very first item. This is 45A. It's Late Summer in Sacramento Valley by Jin Wang. This is oil on board, measuring 32 by 20, and it's got a retail value of $8,200. Tell us a little bit about this. Well, for those who are unfamiliar with the artist, he grew up in China, and as a child, he studied Rembrandt and Michelangelo's work, and you can really see that as evidenced by the palette that's going on here. Um, he was encouraged by his parents to get a degree in engineering, and so while he was teaching at the Railway Institute, he met a retired art teacher from Sacramento, and she was teaching English there, and she was very impressed by his art and sponsored his journey to the United States to develop his artistic talent. And so in 1986, he arrived here in Sacramento and studied art at UC Davis and has an MFA from Sacramento State. Truth be told, uh, Jen is a friend of mine, and we have nine pieces uh, done by Jin Wang in our uh, home and actually in our son's home. Uh, he's such a special artist. He's an amazing, amazing guy. Um, and talk about a real master. His works are in galleries and collections all over the world, in embassies in different parts of the world. Now's your opportunity really to get an amazing California artist, a real master, somebody internationally known. The value is $8,200. He has generously contributed art year after year. I actually introduced him to the KVA art auction many years ago, so it's always very special that he's willing to share his beautiful art with, uh, with all of us. If you wanna have a piece like this, if you want an amazing piece in your collection, if you're just starting a collection, what better way to start than with an amazing master? Tell us a little bit more about this. What I really enjoy about the technique from this California master is really the way he sculpts the image with very energetic brush strokes with very thick oil paint. So as we're kind of zooming in, you can really see some of those brush strokes. And what's also very unique and, and signature for this artist is that he mixes and blends paint, not on a palette, but on directly on the canvas, or in this case, a board. And he only uses, if you can believe it, eight colors. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. And if you look closely, um, sometimes you can see it on TV, sometimes not, but the, the thickness of the acrylic, how it literally pops off of the canvas. I like how it is, um, oil, excuse me, how it is uh, floated inside this uh, frame. The frame is a very natural frame so that it, I feel like it complements the painting, but it doesn't distract from it. 
Absolutely. And, you know, I also love the way that this is framed. It also harkens back. You can see the influence in his technique and of the subject matter. It's a realism with an impressionism over it. And this really simple but elegant wood framing does this justice. Well, this is 45A, Late Summer in Sacramento Valley by Jin Wang. It's oil on board, measuring 32 by 20. It's got a retail value of $8,200. We need to hear from you. We're going to move along to 45B. Uh, 45B is Myself with Puppy Octopuses by uh, Maya Peoples Bright. It's mixed media uh, measuring 19 by 15 and it's got a retail value of $3,500. And I, I remember her art from previous years and it's always so special. And uh, it's amazing how many people are just so eager to collect her work really, really celebrated artist. And this is such a special piece. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, what I enjoy so much about Maya is that she is best known for what she terms her beasties. And just as in the title, she's talking about puppy octopuses. And as we get a little bit closer, you'll see that there's actual puppy faces within the character of the octopus. And that's really a signature style for her. She does a lot of these fantastical works. She does a lot of what's termed kind of world building. You'll see as we go along, there are mermaids in here. There's these, you know, new organisms per se, these puppy octopuses that she's created. But she's also placed herself front and center in this world. This is the universe she exists in. I think that she does this pretty frequently, correct? Where she places herself in it. And you know, one of the other things I noticed, Colleen, is she's painted the, uh, the frame. So the frame has different painting around it um, so that, that the painting actually extends beyond the canvas. Yes, and that is really signature of her work as well. You know, she was part of the group at UC Davis that was really starting what we know of as funk art, and she was also instrumental in the beginnings of the nut art movement. And so for her, there's a lot of texture, there's a lot of use of color and other elements throughout. You'll see in some of these areas, she's got some glitter use in here. And when we do get down to the frame and her beautiful um, shirt that she's wearing, these are actually little penguins when we get up close and I actually didn't notice that until oh, I walked I up not, to the, I to the piece here. I didn't notice that until you mentioned <laughs> that. There is a lot going on in this painting. Um, we need to hear from you. Pick up the phone right now. The number's on your screen. The retail value is $3,500. Again, everything comes to KVIE. This would be a great piece for uh, any place in your house which really spice things up. This could be in the kitchen, living room, dining room. You know, the important thing is to collect art and collect collectors. And now is your opportunity. Very few times throughout the year do you have an opportunity where you can collect really well-known artists and be able to have it in your collection. If you're thinking about starting a collection, what easier way? All you have to do is pick up the phone and call right number. Do you have some, fall, uh, some final thoughts? Just that, you know, I think because there have been so many recent exhibitions talking about funk art, either the UC Davis school and all the candy store era right. um, artists, of which, you know, Maya is one, she's starting to be seen a little bit more often in a new realm for collectors. So I'm excited to see this piece here, and this is a great opportunity to take a piece home with you today. Okay, well, we'll leave it open. This is 45B. We're going to move on to 45C. It's called Hand Painted Cards by Clay Voorhees, and uh, it's an oil on canvas measuring 36 by 36. It's framed by Blue Bus Framing. It's got a retail value of $10,000. Uh, I'll just tell you right up front that every year I've bid on a piece by Clay Voorhees, and I've never gotten it. <laughs> So, Maybe this is the year. I again. don't know if this is the year, but I just love his art. So tell us a little bit about this. I love his art as well. And everything here that you're seeing is extremely whimsical. It's extremely in character for him. You know, in prior years, we've had um, some of his desserts. I know last year we had two of his very, very delicious looking cakes. and heavily frosted, if you will, with the. I oil wanted paint. those cakes. Oh, they were so <laughs> delicious looking. And one of them appears in, in the cards here down in 
the bottom. So this, this work has hand-painted cards, and we'll also note here that the way cards is spelled is C-A-R-D-Z, so you've got a little bit of that uh, fun tongue-in-cheek. And a lot of the elements from some of his works that art others might be familiar with, um, he does a lot of foods, you can see some foods in here, and you also see very clearly some of the representations from his teacher and mentor, the late Wayne Tebow. Right. Um, this is clearly an investment piece. Um, and I, just to, to reiterate, and it's instructive for you that are watching, and that is that if you're interested in this piece, it's important to bid now, bid often, and frankly, bid high, because you'll end up like me wishing you would have gotten the piece. You just bid a little bit more. And um, this is just very, very special. He is a really well-known, collected all over the country, but this is really, really special. Tell us a little bit more about um, how this is done because you can see the the acrylic really just pop off of this, uh, this uh, mat. Yes, there's very, very sharp lines here. And what I also like is you'll notice that there really is very little black paint used in here. Yeah. It's all a master technique of light and shadow using different depths of color. And you know the way that the paint has been applied to the canvas too, you can see there's some palette knife work, but a lot of this is heavy, heavy brushwork. And that's doing a, not, a wonderful treatment with all of the oil paint. You know, it's it's hard to see, I think on TV, this is a great experience to see up close right, when it you're is. in person. Right. Yeah. Um, you can see how thick some of these layers are and that it's clearly been built upon, built upon, built upon to create that depth of field. It definitely has a very Wayne Tebow feel. You can tell that he was a student of Wayne Tebow. And uh, we need to hear from you now. The number is on your screen. It's just so easy. All you have to do is pick up the phone and dial the number. Let us know that you believe in what we're doing here. Believe in KVIE, believe in PBS TV. We need to hear from you now. All right, now we're gonna move on. We're uh, halfway through the break, which means we're going to keep this piece open. Check on in over at the recap station for some bidding updates. All right, thanks, Doug. You've just seen the first three pieces up for bid in this collector's corner. Now it's your time to call and win this amazing art. Let's review the bids. 45A is Late Summer in Sacramento Valley by Jin Wong. It's oil on board measuring 32 by 20 inches, has a current bid of $3,500. I guarantee you that person who's on the phone right now with $3,500 bid is going, I can't believe I'm probably gonna get this piece. Uh, they probably won't though, because more people are gonna call in. This is an auction and it's gonna be bid high. Jin Wong does haystacks, uh, for, but he does a lot of different things, but the haystacks, I just love them. I'm a sucker for haystacks uh, here in this region. Let's move in on uh, 45B. Myself with Puppy Octopuses by Maya Peoples Bright and has a current high bid of $1,500. Doug mentioned how she even paints the frame. I just saw Maya a few days ago. She painted her shoes. She paints everything. She is amazing, and you are going to love having this piece. She is a huge part of the California uh, art history, and she is right now showing in a prominent gallery in Los Angeles. This is a chance for you to have one of her pieces in your home or office. And then item 45C is hand-painted cards by Clay Voorhees, has a current high bid of $1,500. There's room for you to come in at $2,000 with a value like $10,000. We're going to need to be moving up in like $500 increments. He is highly collected. You heard uh, Colleen mention how he studied under Wayne Tebow. I think you can kind of see uh, that influence right here. But, you know, on his own, he is an amazing artist and you would uh, highly collectible you would love to have one of his pieces if you don't already and maybe if you do this is a chance to be able to get another one and add it to your so this is three feet by three feet it's an amazing piece again if you want this you've got to pick up your phone and dial 844 kvie art and say i want item number 45C if you want Clay Voorhees' piece, 45B with uh, Maya Peoples Bright, and 45A, which of course is the Jin Wang. These are collectible pieces that you will be the pride of your neighborhood, the pride of your family for having these. All right, the number, it's on your screen. We want to hear from you. Let's see some more art with Doug and Colleen. 
The number to call is on your screen, as well as the current bid for our next item, which is 45D House on the River by the Lake Gregory Condos. This is a G clay measuring 23 by 35 inches, and it has a retail value of $1,000. And again, we'd like to thank Monty Van Camp Condos for her generous donation of Gregory's work to KVIE. So do you have some initial thoughts on this, uh, Colleen? Oh my goodness, how lucky are we to have this piece in our auction this year? So this is very typical of Condos' work. It's a very balanced and vibrant palette. It's a serene and quiet scene. You're in a moment in nature right along the river. Right. And one of the special things, again, about this gicle is that the painting actually extends along to the side of the uh, the canvas. So it's a it's called a gallery wrap, and it's uh, very, very special. Um, you know, we, as I was mentioning right before we came on the air, um, collect actually several uh, paintings by Gregory Condos, very, very special. And I will say that they've increased in value. And again, this is the collector's corner. So if you're looking for something that's going to increase in value, if you're looking for something that's really special for your collection, you can take it from me. It does increase in value. And sadly, he passed away in 2021, um, but his, his works and his life lives on through uh, certainly pieces like this. The number's on your screen. We need to hear from you right now. Again, this is uh, gonna be your opportunity. You don't wanna wake up tomorrow morning and wish you would have gotten it. Now's your opportunity. Colleen, some additional thoughts? So Gregory Condos is very well known for his landscapes and particularly those in the Sacramento Valley and including a coastline. So you see here we've got a lovely house alongside the river. And in this instance, um, you know, I think this is a great representation of what he also had in many of his works, which is a, a bit of a lonely quality. You know, he has a generally a solitary element somewhere in the painting. In this case, it's the house on the river. Um, one of the things I also want to mention is that, you know, for people who want to collect these types of artists, we mentioned at the top that this is a gicle. This is a fine art print that's created using a very high resolution um, printing process. It's a very affordable way for folks who want to collect these artists. And what's great about it is that it's archival quality. So this is only going to increase over time in terms of value, and it's going to have some longevity. Um, you know, it's a great way for you to add a, a piece by Gregory Condos to your collection, especially since the values have been increasing substantially since his passing. I think that that's a great way of putting it because um, people look at it and they know that his pieces are very expensive. This is a great, way to get into uh, certainly a piece. Gicle are beautiful quality pieces. Um, and again, every cent goes to KVIE. So that if you believe in our mission here, then you'll believe in the largest art auction any place in Northern California right now. The number's on your screen. It's so easy. All you have to do is pick up the phone. Maybe you want to give this as a gift. Um, in fact, my wife, for our anniversary many years ago, gave uh, me a, a condos painting. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. It's one of those things that we're so happy to have in our collection. We're going to keep this open we're going to move along to 45E, but call now. I want to make sure you get this. 45E is Harmony and Hughes. It's by Earl Boley, and uh, it's an oil on canvas measuring 40 by 30, framed by Blue Bus Framing. So we want to thank very, uh, Blue Bus Framing for framing this. Uh, the retail value is $1,650. Really special piece. Tell us a little bit about this very special piece and we want to thank the um, late artist's widow Susan Leith for generously donating this piece to the art auction. Mm -hmm. you know, what I very much love about this is it's a little bit different from some of the works that we've had by Earl in the auction prior. He does a lot of landscapes and it's very exciting to have a still life in yeah. the auction this year. It really is and it's big. It's a big piece. This would look lovely in the entryway to a home. It would look great in a dining room, a kitchen, frankly, any place in a home. I love to put art in the most uh, s surprising locations because the, it really is such a great conversation starter. Again, this is um, a, a master, California master. 
He uh, passed away, um, very, very collectible in collections all over uh, the country. It's an oil on canvas measuring 40 by 30. Again, we want to thank Blue Bus Framing. That's a tongue twister, isn't it? Uh, for <laughs> donating the framing. It's really beautiful. Um, I love how it's sort of set and then it's got this uh, beautiful sort of matting around it. Um, again, the value is $1,650. You see the number on your screen. This is one of a kind. So tomorrow, it's you're going to wake up and you're going to wish you would have bid on it if you haven't bid. Uh, my theory, Colleen, is bid high, bid often, and do it for KVIE. Um, do you have some additional thoughts on this? I love the colors. Tell us a little bit about sort of how he does this. I love the colors too. And so this piece, it's it's called Harmony in Hues. And so you see a lot of yellow, orange, darker, kind of below the shelf. And what I really like is that the plant that he's chosen here is what's called a paper white. And that's in the same genus as daffodils. And so this is a bulb plant. And they smell. They do. They smell good. They do. They smell great. But in this instance, you can see it's it's a little bit keeled over here, and so you can see it had a, a, an assist yeah. with the with the pole here behind. And these don't bloom for very very no, long. They don't, yeah. And so he's chosen a moment to really focus more on the plant kind of post growth here. And you know, as the bloom is wilted, we kind of think a little bit about you know thinking about how it grows in bright indirect light and you can kind of see the, his use of light, which I think is fantastic in his work, you can see that the light is starting to shift. So you have this kind of momentum of, you know, it's been summertime, everything's vibrant, and we're passing into fall. Well, now's your chance to be able to get an amazing piece of art. We're gonna keep it open. We're gonna move along. The number's on your screen. We need to hear from you. We're gonna move on now to 45F, and it is a piece by uh, Jesse Bravo. It's a photograph, it's called Steve McQueen. I've known Jesse for many, many years, and he is a real photographer. I mean, he's got some of the most amazing photographs I've ever seen, and he captures them in such an interesting way. Tell us a little bit about this. Well, and this is just really a fantastic photo. Everyone knows Steve McQueen. This is a quintessential photo. He's got the cigarette in his mouth, the driving goggles down around his neck. He's tying his shoe. Um, what I really love about this is that you can see the artist who's a longtime photojournalist. You can see that technique coming out in the way this photo has been taken. Jesse is such an interesting and, and pleasant gentleman, um, and he's taken photos of the Beatles, um, you name it, he, and, and he manages to really capture so much of the personality. One of the things I really like about this painting is it's, um, is, is, is the, excuse me, the photograph is, um, you know, the, the clouds in the back. And, you know, this is just, a, a, you know, it's, it's a photo. It's just so unique. 22 by uh, 26, it's a value of $1,600. Uh, again, it's called Steve McQueen by Jesse Bravo, a one of a kind, and uh, it's an iconic uh, photo uh, from 1963, Steve McQueen in 1963. Tell us a little bit more. And so the when this photo was taken, this is a few years before everyone's favorite bullet came out. Um, and what would happen is this was actually taken down in the San Diego area in Del Mar. And Steve, would, when he had breaks, uh, he would come down and join the San Diego chapter of the Sports Car Club of America. And he would drive his Lotus open wheel race car. And what's very interesting is that the photographer himself drove a 1957 MGA at the same track. Um, they had that in common. They were both avid uh, aficionados of race car driving. And so in this case, I really love how those two elements come together, the subject of the photo and the person behind the lens. Well, this is a real piece of history. And, you know, I know that this piece is going to, to sell well and uh, go high. And what a great thing to have in a collection. I, I mean, I would love to be able to have this any place. My brother uh, is a collector of art and he loves photography. Um, and it always is so interesting that how it, it, it just fits into a collection. If you're thinking about, um, about a wonderful photograph, you can have this. It's that easy. All you have to do is call the number on your screen. Again, everything goes to KVA. We want to thank Jesse Bravo for generously donating uh, this. He's a fine, fine man, very iconic, um, and is 
just an amazing photo. I'm so excited to be able to be here to talk about them too. <laughs> Tell us uh, some final thoughts. Well, what I would also share is that the photographer Jesse Bravo is also in the collection at the Crocker. He's photographed many of the works for the Crocker in many of their catalogs. And so I really love kind of this juxtaposition of you've got a king of cool race car driving photographer as well as the king of cool himself, Steve McQueen. Right, absolutely. Well, we're nearing the end of this break, which means that now is your final opportunity to bid on the art featured in this half hour. And I'd like to thank Colleen Schulman for serving as the art expert this break, discussing all this fantastic work with me. Let's check in over at the recap station for an update on all of the artwork. All right, we are down to the final few minutes of this collector's corner break. So now it's the time for you to pick up the phone and cast your bid. Here is a recap. Item 45D is House on the River by Gregory Condos. And this currently is a bell ringer. Actually, it's not current. It's going to stay a bell ringer. That's just how it works. $2,100 right now. Um, but it doesn't mean that it's closed yet. So there's still a chance for you to come in with your highest bid for Gregory Condos' House on the River. Item 45E is Earl Boley's Harmony in Hughes. Has a current bid of $700. It's oil on canvas. And remember, too, this was framed by Blue Bus Framing. Has a retail value of $1,650. So there is plenty of room for other bidders to come in and, and really maybe even still get it under value. We don't love it when that happens. We're happy for you. Uh, sometimes that's just how it works for an auction. But, you know, we would love to be able to get the retail value for every single piece because that's what the artist intended uh, when they donated their piece in full to KVIE. So call right now if you are interested in 45E, but you can't wait too long. So 844-KVIE-ART and make that bid. Item 45F. We're moving on to Jesse Bravo's Steve McQueen. And you can see there's a current high bid right now of $900 on Jesse's photograph. And again, a value of $1,600. There's plenty of room for others to come in and make this auction successful. Someone's going to be really happy, though, if they can get this for $900. But hey, if you're interested, call right now, make a $1,000 bid. That's how you get in on the action. All right, we're going to go all the way back to the very first piece in this 30-minute lot. And that's 45A Late Summer in Sacramento Valley by Jin Wong. And you can see the haystacks right there. A current bid of $5,100. That is still more than $3,000 away from the value. So you can jump in and make a bid right now and feel pretty good that you're coming in kind of early on that auction price. And let's see $5,200. Let's see it right now. All you have to do is make that call. Or if you're on the line right now and you're kind of hemming and hawing, Stop hemming and on. Uh, just say, I want to move to 5,200. I want to move to 5,500. Whatever you're going to do, make your best bid. 45B, myself with Puppy Octopuses by Maya Peoples Bright. And you can see that's only $300 from a bell ringer. If you are on the phone right now and you don't have that $3,200 bid, why don't you just make it a bell ringer and say, you know what, I want $3,500 to go to support the mission of KVIE and I want this Maya Peoples Bright piece. 3,200 is the current bid. You can call in right now and make a bid of 3,500. Item 45C, hand-painted cards by Clay Voorhees. Oil on canvas. Remember, it was also framed by Blue Bus Framing. Has a current high bid of $4,000. That's fantastic. Let's see 4,500. That is still half of the value that Clay set for this piece, which you already saw. It's a three feet by three feet piece. Uh, it's an investment level piece. And right now, the current bid is 4,000. You can be the high bidder. Call right now with your best bid. Uh, make a bid of 4,500. Then someone else be ready for 5,000. That's how it works. This is a great auction. All right, 45D. House on the River by Gregory Condos. Again, that's a bell ringer at $2,100, but it's not closed yet. So if you're interested in having that piece in your home or office, call now and don't let it get away. 45E, Harmony in Hughes by Earl Boley. Uh, again, framed by Blue Bus Framing. Current high bid of $900. All we want to do is see that one right now move to 1000 It just moved to 1000 Now let's see 1100 That's how an auction works. So 1100 will put you in the lead if you are interested in item 45E, Harmony in Hughes. And then the final piece in this 30-minute lot is 45F, Steve McQueen. Current high bid of $900. $1,000 will put you in the lead if you are interested in this piece. Okay? Hey, stay with us. More art coming up in the final 
half hour of the PBS KVIE Art Auction. Rescue Dog Wines proudly supports KVIE and Rescue Dog Month. We donate 50% of profits from our sustainable wines to animal rescue organizations. Learn more about our mission at rescuedogwines.com. Coming up next is the Collector's Corner. This category features regional, national, or internationally known artists and award winners. View all of the art featured in this year's auction at kvie.org slash art auction. And we're back. I'm David Lowe and welcome to the final half hour of the 2023 PBS KVIE Art Auction. We're going to be showcasing six more, six final incredible works of art in the collector's corner. Don't miss your opportunity to take one home. Here's an overview of the work that's coming up. Item number 46A is Carmel Morning by Miles Herman. It's oil on canvas, measures 24 by 36 inches, retail value of $4,100 has been exceeded by its current bid of $4,200. Item 46B is On the Levy by Susan Ballinger. It's acrylic on board, measures 20 by 20 inches, retail value of $850. Item 46C is Surfside by Kathy Dana. It's acrylic on canvas, measures 18 by 24 inches, a retail value of $1,650. Item 46D is Sunlit Path by Varia McMillan. It's oil on canvas, measures 28 by 22 inches, retail value of $2,200. This is the first place winner in the contemporary category. Item 46E, My Heart is Like a Singing Bird by Patricia Altschul. It's oil on panel, measures 20 by 20 inches, retail value of $2,500. And the final item in this year's auction, 46F, Daffodil Memories by Pat Mahoney. It's oil on canvas, measures 24 by 24 inches, retail value of $3,200. Okay, the phone lines, they're open. Volunteers, they're ready to take your bids. Let's see the art with auctioneer Doug Elmitz and PBS KVA's art curator, Jill Astroff. Hi there, I am Doug Elmitz, and thank you for joining us for the Collector's Corner category. This is the final half hour of the 2023 art auction, and I'm spending it here with PBS KVIE's art curator, Jill Estroff. Jill, it's been a big weekend of fabulous art, and you must be incredibly excited. I am. The work is really amazing this year. Let's talk a little bit about 46A. This is Carmel Morning by Miles Herman. This is oil and canvas measuring 24 by 36 and it's got a retail value of $4,100. I'm so excited to have this by Miles. Um, Carmel, as you know, has sand that's like no other in California. He says it even uh, kind of crunches under your feet like snowpack. It's been a while since I've been there, but I can kind of recognize this entrance to the beach. We see these shadows in the front are from the pines that sort of frame this beautiful vista. It, it was, we were talking shortly uh, ago. Um, you know, Miles Herman is an incredible artist and many years ago when he sort of first came upon the scene, I told you I wish I would have bought something <laughs> then. Well, now's your chance. Now's my now's chance. chance. Well, I, frankly, it's a chance for anybody <laughs> that's watching. I Hopefully you realize not only how collectible his work is, uh, but how beautiful it is. And if you're somebody who loves the ocean, who loves Carmel, I mean, what could be more beautiful than a piece by Miles Herman called Carmel Morning? Right, and I just love the lavender reflections in the water, uh, the curve of the wave, it draws you in. Um, Miles said that the morning walkers and their pinks and reds were just too, uh, too beautiful not to, to paint. Well, the current bit is on your screen, uh, which is, um, uh, great, and you know, we need to hear from you. The number's on your screen. You can also go to kvie.org. This is, of course, the largest art auction any place in Northern California right now. Uh, so if you want to get some really beautiful art, what an easy way to do it. Just call the number on your screen. But you've got to call, you have to bid, and uh, obviously we're gonna be hearing from a lot of people uh, because this is such a magnificent piece. Do you have any additional thoughts on this, Jill? Uh, yes, I just love the way, even though 
he uses the opaque medium of oil, he really glazes it uh, much like the watercolorist that he began as. And he builds up these transparent glazes over the fields of color that just make it so beautiful. Uh, he says he didn't paint this on site, that he doesn't have to be in such a place uh, to be inspired, and that often uh, when he begins, he thinks about who do I want to channel? Do I want it to be like a Matisse? Mm -hmm. Do I want to take something from Condos? He's always referencing art history, but then he makes it uniquely his own. So this is item 46A, it's Carmel Morning by Miles Herman. This is again, oil on canvas measuring 24 by 36. It's got a retail value of $4,100. And I thought it was interesting, uh, you mentioned that he wasn't actually on site when he painted this. And I think that, you know, a lot of people imagine that, you know, painters are on site when they pay, you know, paint vistas like this. Uh, so it's interesting that he was well, Maybe he, in his uh, studio. To, yeah, he tried to capture remembering the feel of the day. And if you were lucky enough to see his recent uh, solo show at um, Elliot Fouts Gallery, you'll know how wildly successful he is. The paintings just flew off the wall. I'm very happy that he saved this one for us. Well, I'm happy too. And <laughs> hopefully uh, our viewing audience is happy as well as they are bidding now. The numbers on your screen or go to kvi.org. Let's move on to 46B. This is um, Oil on the Levee by Susan Ballinger. It's, on it's the um, acrylic on board, 20 by 20, and it's got a retail value of $850. Again, it's on the levee. Uh, beautiful, beautiful piece. Um, Again, I want to just, this is 46B, the number's on your screen. Tell us a little bit about this piece. Well, this was painted by our former Best of Show winner. Uh, she's inspired by her walks along the American River. Uh, it was also, this painting was featured on a cover of Inside Publications, mm -hmm. sort of our partner in right. promoting the auction. And it was in Sue's solo show of Watermark at the PBS Gallery. Her goal is always to capture the light, the shadow, and the local color. <clears throat> as simply as possible, sort of using the bold shapes and brushwork. Frankly, I think that we should have this, at least my wife and I, because <laughs> she walks along the levee uh, every day, and it is beautiful, and I did notice this on Inside Arden. Of course, we appreciate Inside Arden for mm. everything they've done for the art auction, as well as you, Jill. This, again, is 46B, On the Levee, by Susan Ballinger. It's acrylic on board, measuring 20 by 20, and it's got a retail value of $850. And it's um, interestingly uh, framed. It's floated in this uh, wood frame. I love, frankly, paintings that are, um, you know, floated, but it's painted on a board. So a lot of people have, I think, this impression that maybe painting is done on canvas, but this is actually done on board and then uh, floated inside this beautiful frame. Right, and um, what I love about it is the angle of the reflection on the bank. It almost gives this an abstract quality, but we know exactly what we're looking at. The delicate branches of the trees, it really creates a sense of depth that make you want to uh, go back to that trail on the other side. Uh, Sue took various photos at different times of day to get the perfect light situation. Then she sketched. But I found this interesting. She did not paint from the photo. She painted from her sketches because she wanted to be able to give it the bold color, the jewel-like tones of her mind's eye, not what the camera caught. Well, we want you to pick up the phone. The phone is obviously right there near you. Just pick it up, call the number on your screen. Also, go to kvie.org. This is a wonderful value. If you know somebody who enjoys the American River, enjoys the levee, uh, now's an opportunity to get a beautiful piece. Maybe you want to give this as a gift. Um, we actually, my wife and I, give uh, art as gifts primarily to our family. Um, but if you know somebody who has a, a, a wedding coming up, a birthday, the holidays that are coming up, what a beautiful gift that would be as well. It would be. And I love how you can see her training as a watercolorist as well and sort of the layers of translucent color that works so well for reflections. Uh, on water, and she does list her influences as Edward Hopper, Wayne Tebow, uh, Richard Diebenkorn, and others, and I think she's definitely made the style her own. She's just a wonderful painter.
Okay, Joel, we've got to keep this one open and move on. So thank you very much. We're going to move on to 46C. It's called Surfside by Kathy Dana. It's acrylic on canvas measuring 18 by 24, and it's got a retail value of $1,650. I love this. This is just so beautiful. I, you know, at Surfside, you can sort of imagine actually being on location someplace on vacation and being near the surf. Why don't you tell us a little bit about this? Well, my favorite aspects of this, uh, there's so many to choose from, but I just love the red and blue, unexpected pops of color yeah. everywhere. Uh, and the trees, the shadow in the road, and almost the candy-like color of the buildings, uh, the creamy white over here against the dark of the cypress. Uh, she's really achieved uh, such a feeling, a sense of place with this painting. You know, you're so right, Jill, about the pops of color. It's one of those things that I was looking at and I was thinking it's so interesting. And then, you know, it takes somebody with, uh, I think, an eye like yours to sort of point that out to the viewing audience. But the pops of color really are um, make it just really sort of amazingly beautiful. I love how it's framed as well. Yeah, um, it kind of echoes the boards on the building. I think she did a good job with that. And I love the way the horizontal brush stroke and the light on the tree, you can really, it creates a real depth. And a wonderful thing about Kathy, she painted this specifically for the art auction. We always appreciate that. Oh, that's fantastic. See that. Well, and this is in fact the collector's corner. Tell us a little bit about the collector's corner and what this all means. Well, it's just that we choose art here as an investment and also artists that we feel have attained a certain level of skill and it's just an honor to be in the collector's corner and Kathy expressed that she was delighted to be there. Uh, she came upon this scene when she was visiting her uh, niece in the Marin Headlands. This is actually uh, Fort Cronkite mm -hmm. and she loved how the cypress trees seemed to actually be guarding the premises. I love how you can sort of feel the cool breeze coming up from the water and and that's why she named it Surfside. And I like the shadows. I like the, the sunlight that hits the, um, the building. So again, this is 46C. It's called Surfside by Kathy Dana. And now it's an acrylic on canvas. It's 18 by 24, so it's a, it's a good size. And it's got a retail value of $1,650. The current bid is on your screen. We need to hear from you. The number's on your screen. If, the, uh, if somebody else is bidding, well, you know, you can always bid over them. I always say, Jill, bid high and bid <laughs> often. Uh, that's what really makes us uh, a click here. Well, just our final thoughts on this. Well, just if you saw Kathy's solo show, Ocean Obsession, you'll know that she just loves the ocean and coastal settings. And um, I just think it's an amazing piece. The, the range of color, it will just pop on any wall in your home. Well, all right. Well, we're halfway through this break, which means we're going to keep this piece open and check in over at the recap station for bidding updates. That's right. We're halfway through our last break, and now it's your opportunity to take home an amazing work of art. So let's recap those items. 46A is Carmel Morning by Miles Herman. Oil on canvas, and you can see it's a bell ringer with that current high bid of $4,200. Still an opportunity for you, though, if you want to jump in and make your best bid. Item 46B is On the Levy by Susan Ballinger. It's acrylic on board, has a current high value of, of uh, I'm sorry, has a current bid of $500 on its value of $850. And then I'm going to ask that we go to me live if we're able to. And I just wanted to show you, this was on a uh, cover of Inside Sacramento, in, well, it was on the cover of Inside Sacramento last year, and we want to thank Cecily Hastings and Inside Publications for presenting her on this, uh, on this cover. So thank you, Cecily, and Inside Publications. Uh, now we're going to go to item 46C. It's Surfside by Kathy Dana. And this is acrylic on canvas measuring 18 by 24 inches. Has a retail value of $1,650 with a current high bid of $1. $1,000. So these are opportunities for you. There's one bell ringer right now, but it doesn't mean that that one's closed. We've got the two other ones. You can call in right now and make a high bid, 844-KVIE-ART. Well, let's go back to 46A if we can. That's Carmel Morning by Miles Herman. Again, oil on canvas 
uh, it's going to come up, or maybe it won't. It's okay. It's oil on canvas. Uh, again, has a current high bid of forty-two hundred dollars, and uh, you can be the next bidder right now. Call and make a bid of forty-three hundred dollars. Uh, item forty-six B is on the levy by Susan Ballinger. Has a current high bid of. $500, and you can be the high bidder right now with a bid of $600. Item 46C, Surf Surfside by Kathy Dana. It's acrylic on canvas, measures 18 by 24 inches, has a current high bid of $1,000. You can jump in and take the lead with a bid of $1,100 if you're interested in that. All right, let's head back to Jill and Doug for the last three works of art in this year's auction. Some really beautiful art in this break, and it can be on your wall before you know it. The current bid is on your screen, as well as the number to call to place your bid. The piece we're looking at right now is item 46D by uh, Varia McMillan. It's called Sunlit Path. This is oil on canvas. It's measuring 28 by 22 with a retail value of $2,200. Jill, let's get started on item D. And I might also add, this is first place in the Contemporary Award. Right, and our contemporary juror, Barry Sagata, chose it for just the whole idea of it. The figures, the texture, the colors. And you can see close up that she builds lots of layers using a palette knife as she often sands it and then builds it up again and again to get the texture that she wants. Uh, you can see that uh, she uses acrylic, oil, and actually there's some metal leaf in there as well. Uh, the inspiration for this piece was sunlight and the joy of shared moments. And I think you can see that. It really just emanates from this piece. And it's, you can see the acrylic that actually comes off of the, uh, the canvas. It's, it's actually pretty thick. Um, one of the things that sometimes is uh, difficult to see on TV, but I think you and I can see right here in the studio, is that the perspective of the painting changes the further you get away. The closer you are, the further you get away. It's really a, a beautiful piece with so many fantastic colors. Again, this is uh, first place in the contemporary category. Tell us a little bit about the, uh, the collector's corner and how you decided to select this for the contemporary award. Because, uh, well, the juror, uh, Barry Sagata, really loved it. Um, I love how you can almost feel a breeze, the dappling of the sunlight. It's just an immersive piece. Um, Varya is of uh, Bulgarian Greek descent, but she credits her two years in Paris studying and seeing works by Matisse, Picasso, Cezanne, and Clay. And I think you can see her earlier art degree, which was in costume design. It comes through in this colorful way she's clothed these women. Uh, she's known for her cityscapes and figures that capture movement, energy, and rhythm. And she won first place actually in the figurative category uh, last year. Well, the current value is uh, $2,200. You see the current uh, bid right now on your screen. We've got to hear from you. The number is on your screen. We're going to be moving on. This is your opportunity. And I, Jill, we've talked about this in previous years, and that is that sometimes I've wanted to bid on something I haven't. And the next morning, I've woken up and I've thought, oh my gosh, why did I not bid on that? You don't want to be one of those people who sees something that you love and then you pass it up because it's one of a kind. These are collector's items. These are wonderful in, uh, investment pieces. And it's a way to help KVIE. Everything that is bid here today is coming directly to KVIE so we can bring you the quality programming that you come to count on 360 uh, days a year, 365 days a year. Um, tell us some additional thoughts and then we're gonna move along. Well, just that when you're up close, you can really be intrigued by the patterns, the intensity, the saturation, and then from a distance, you see the playfulness. And I really think she conveys the emotions of togetherness, uh, connection, and a reminder about the small moments in life that matter the most. Um, she said uh, it's supposed to evoke a peaceful and uplifting energy. She was excited to be jured into this year's Crocker Art Museum auction, and she was also awarded Best of Show at the Sacramento Fine Arts Center. So this is an award-winning artist with good reason. Well, and very good reason, and we're going to keep it open. So if you're watching and you're near your phone, you can call in a bit, and we're going to move on to 46E in a moment. But again, this is 46D, 
call. The number's on your screen. The current bid is on your screen. We need to hear from you now. Let's move on to 46E, and this is My Heart is Like a Singing Bird by Patricia Atschel. It's oil on panel measuring 20 by 20. It's got a retail value of $2,500. I'm a big fan of Patricia Atschel. Uh, she's a, a been part of this uh, auction for many years. Tell us a little bit about this. Well, I love how we go from the pulsing energy of the last painting to this very different artwork that just displays a sense of calm with the vibrant yellow background and the blue of the dress and the bird. And Patricia tells us this was inspired by the first line in a poem by Christina Rossetti entitled A Birthday. And she also was inspired and used several old family photographs. She has a big solo exhibition coming up at Visa Gatogaro in November. And so we're very lucky to have this piece now in our auction. So where would you put a piece like this? In your oh home. gosh, uh, the mantle. <laughs> the mantle, of course, exactly. You know, I, I think there's sometimes a perception that um, you know a, a painting has to fit the space. Sometimes I think the smaller the painting on the larger the wall really makes the painting stand out in well, a significant way. This is a size that one could make room for in any collection. Right. Uh, I visited her light-filled studio. It's near a lovely backyard garden, and I love how her work focuses on the female figure in moments of thoughts uh, and contemplation and it's usually oil on panel or canvas there's just something so peaceful about this woman's countenance that even a bird feels safe in her hand well we need to hear from our uh, listening and viewing audience the number is on your screen the current bid is on your screen the value is twenty five hundred dollars we need to make this a bell ringer we need to hear from you again uh, Jill as I've often said and I said just a little while ago you don't want to wake up tomorrow morning and think oh I wish I would have bid on this it's one of a kind it's beautifully um, you know painted on this board um, it's so unique um, I love it and you know I collect art as you know Jill and so I, I sort of run out of space and then I, I, I show share it with my children and uh, sometimes with my friends. But the good thing about art is it increases in value. It's a wonderful investment. It's a great way to sort of decorate your home, to bring conversation into uh, your, your, where you live. So, I mean, that's one of the reasons I love art. If you're thinking about it, we want to hear from you. Do you have some final thoughts on this, Jill? Yeah, just how Patricia, she, she captures the private world of thoughts. And I love how you really can sort of tap into this woman's inner peace. Uh, when she dropped it off, she thought of how the colors uh, did uh, echo the Ukrainian flag, but she said it was painted before the conflict but her heart does go out uh, to those caught up in the war. But it's just, it's a deep piece all around. It's beautiful. I think, you know, it would brighten any home. Absolutely. Well, we're going to keep this open uh, and we're going to move along. Again, this was 46E, My Heart is Like a Singing Bird by Patricia Atchell. We'll move on to 46F now. This is Daffodil Memories by Pat Mahoney. This is oil on canvas, measuring 24 by 24. It's got a retail value of $3,200. And I have to say that I am a big collector of Pat Mahoney's art. We have several of her paintings in our home. I can never get enough. She is just an amazing artist. Tell us a little bit about this. Well, I was so lucky to see her amazing uh, solo show at the Natsulis Gallery in uh, Davis this summer. And it was luminous and full of, uh, it was just a riot of color, much like you see here. We're so lucky that she set aside this painting. A riot of she... color. I love that. <laughs> a riot of color. That is really, I mean, a great description of it. Sorry, I didn't mean to no, interrupt you, okay. but I think it really sort of caught me. Yeah, and it, I love how the thicket of the uh, blue and green uh, leaves and stems sort of provide this perfect foreground for the daffodils that are kind of peeking through and some have sort of turned toward that light in the upper right hand corner. Um, it was noted at a recent show that she closely observes the immediate chaotic quality of sunlight on leaves and petals, and then she paints it with these confident, vigorous strokes. I, I, for me, the energy just bounces right off the canvas. It does, and it's uh, beautifully painted on canvas, and then it's floated in this uh, really beautiful, natural frame. Um, it, it, that's, I think, really 
such an, an interesting statement because it, the framing doesn't take away from the riot of colors uh, right. in the uh, painting. So again, this is Pat Mahoney, very well known uh, in lots of collections throughout the country. She's a California master. Again, it's 46F Daffodil Memories by Pat Mahoney. It's an oil on canvas measuring 24 by 24, so it's a good uh, size. The current bid is on your screen. The retail value is $3,200. We need to hear from you now. You don't want to wake up and not uh, have this in your collection. If you're already a collector of Pat Mahoney, like I am, it's probably one of those things you might have a difficult time passing up. Do you have some final thoughts on this, Jill? Yeah, just that living next to the American River gives her ample opportunity to capture these kinds of images. And uh, speaking of collecting, uh, she her work has been shown in New York City at the Allen Stone Gallery, where Wayne Tebow got his start. She is collected uh, widely. We're so lucky that she gives this painting to us. And I just love the randomness of the light and color, understanding how sunlight changes. I feel like it it's a timeless piece. It is a timeless piece. Well, thank you so much, Jill. It's been great working with you. And we're nearing the end of this break, which means that now is your final opportunity to bid on the art featured in this half hour from Collector's Corner. These are the remaining minutes of the 2023 PBS KVA Art Auction, so don't hesitate. I'm Doug Elmitz, and I'd like to thank PBS Yes, KVIE art curator Jill Estroff for joining me to discuss this incredible artwork. Now let's check in over at the recap station for an update while you bid during these final remaining moments. That's right. This is the final update. If you want this artwork, you have to call us right now. Okay, here we go. Item 46D, it's Sunlit Path by Varia McMillan and has a current bid of $2,600. That's a bell ringer, but it doesn't mean we have to stop. So if you're interested in the piece, you've got to call right now. We're going to be closing this auction very soon and you're not going to want to miss out on that piece. Item 46E, My Heart is Like a Singing Bird by Patricia Altschul. And you can see that has a current high bid of $850. Plenty of opportunity and room for you to be the high bidder, but you can't delay. 844-KVI-ART, pick up your phone right now. And 46F Daffodil Memories by Pat Mahoney. Oil on canvas, and right, it has a retail value of $3,200. Current high bid of $1,700. And if we'll come out to me on camera, I want to show you that uh, Pat Mahoney's piece right there, Daffodil uh, Memories, is in um, the September episode, or sept episode, ha, the September publication for Inside. So we want to thank Cecily Hastings and Inside Publications for putting that on the cover and featuring the KBIE art auction. All right, let's go back to item 46A. It's Carmel Morning, and that's Miles Herman's, Miles Herman's piece. And guess what? High bid of 4300 That's a bell ringer. It's not closed yet, so if you're interested, you got to call right now. 46B on the levy by Susan Ballinger has a current high bid of $900, also a bell ringer. Isn't that fantastic? We get to ring the bell for that. It's not closed yet, though, so if you're interested, you got to call. 46C, Surfside by Kathy Dana, and that has a current high bid of $1,300. let us make that a bell ringer uh, before we go off air. You could be the one to do it if you pick up the phone and say, yes, I want to make that high bid for item 46C, Surfside by Kathy Dana. All right, one last time, we're going to look at 46D, Sunlit Path. This is Varia McMillan. And again, a bell ringer at $2,600. It's not closed yet, so there's still time for you. 46E, My Heart is Like a Singing Bird by Patricia Altschul. And it has a bid currently of $900. We need you to call right now if you're interested in that piece and make a bid of 1000 or jump it up to 1500 or even more. And then 46F, Daffodil Memories by Pat Mahoney has a current bid right now of $1,700, well on its way towards the value of $3,200. And I'll bet you we're going to hit that. It just may not happen right now while we're live on air. All right? Well, we've reached the end of the 2023 PBS KVIE Art Auction, and I want to thank all of our Art Auction sponsors. Their support goes such a long way to making this event possible over the many months of the project and a big finish this weekend. And a huge thank you to our participating artists. We can't do it without you. We're so grateful for your generosity in donating your incredible art to us and to our volunteers on the phones. Art Movers Beyond can't do this without you. Also want to acknowledge our staff, all of them who have been here all weekend for pulling this off. It's an all hands on deck 
effort. And congratulations to, come on in, Jill Estroff, uh, who curated this year's beautiful collection. Great job, Jill. Thank you. And to you, the viewers who bid and bought artwork this weekend, thank you for supporting your PBS station, KVA. Enjoy your new art, everyone. Have a great night.